now. Okay, oh, now really? talk wow. about your gay little things. Oh, Ew. are we live now? Well, what we're not live yet, but this will be on the re-upload. Oh, okay. So people will hear this. So, unlisted okay. gang, what's up? Hey, unlisted folks. Hey. Yo, hey. fam. Haha. <laughs> Hello. Anyway, so, uh, you're talking about when your hot takes the Heisenberg is bad, like like Kano was bad, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty horrific shit. take. You know? I'm being misrepresented. You're being very oh, untrue. This is like right bullying. Now. Stop it. I'll uh, fucking kill you. He said he was um, No, I just like, I, I understand what you mean. So we were just talking about Rags was saying that like he enjoyed Heisenberg's delivery and voice and inflection. He thought it was lovely. And I, I, I kind of had a little bit of a different response to that just because there's, there's, Occasionally, at least in like kind of the voiceover scene, you'll get people who they try really hard to do like deeper voices and you and then they'll kind of uh, their voice will kind of bottom out and sound strained. I'm not saying Heisenberg sounded quite that bad. In fact, yeah, I, I think he was he's was totally an acceptable performance, but I, have, I just heard a guy. I have an I alternative like... take that potentially bolsters you, Chase. OK, it's slightly different. Okay, you can actually see it. in my playthrough. I, I, I wasn't sure about Heisenberg's big voice and it was it's less I like his accent find he's very like it felt a little unnatural how he was raising and lowering yeah. different parts of the sentences yeah, so I, like, i'm so theatrical and what would solve it for me stammer and... what would solve it for me is if i got to know him a bit better and i felt like the way he talks that way on purpose is a part of yeah. who he is but i yeah. barely got to fucking know him because well we can mm. get into that <laughs> it's yeah, we can get game that. For like 12 minutes i just looked it up yeah it's, <laughs> it's weird how the best part of the game is like not even hardly in it at all it's uh man uh. I noticed that he sounded very different in person than he did over the radio. Like he was kind of putting on a radio announcer voice. Oh, dude! Like, like you know, when you meet him in person, that's like the best scene. When he's like, yeah, it really, really is. Uh, <laughs> you in front of the open anyway. Um. <laughs> so what should, what should we do? we got? There's a couple things we can do. Okay, and I think I'm gonna do memes first. All right, I've only got a couple. Yeah, they're, they're amusing. All right. The may -mays, okay. uh -huh. yeah, Where are you? Where are my may -mays? Did you post that any Maybe links it's... I should have clicked on already? Well, uh... this one, this one is the only one you might not get. All right, so that'll we'll start with this one. I have Fringy and Rags. Yeah, get it, though. no fucking <laughs> idea what the Let's fuck see, this is. is. Oh, I like this. I like the this meme. Hell I enjoy this meme. <laughs> this is this is both appropriate and humorous. Yes, I get I get half of it. <laughs> well, yeah, half, half is it. good enough. Um, you, do you not get Do you not get the white half, or do you not get the black half? I don't black get the black hat. Oh, uh, no, I'm oh, racist. Damn it. <laughs> All right, so the I'm German doesn't get the black yesterday. experience. Mm -hmm. No. So in <laughs> Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Zemo, uh, Zemo has an opportunity to kill Carly with his loaded handgun. And mm -hmm. he, like, gets her once, and the show forgets about it. But then, for some reason, he won't just kill her. She takes cover right in front of his face, but behind a wooden table, which oh. are not at all bulletproof. They're hardly even bullet resistant. And... Yeah. He just won't kill her. He, he has a moment where he is, genuinely seems yeah. confused. He's like, "What? What, what is? What? What? A table? Where'd you what? go? What is this?" Um, we got we got this. Wonderful. Uh, Fringy will enjoy that. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! What? Baby gang signs. <laughs> hey, I don't get this at all. Hey, for your lives. I... I just like the picture in general, but I don't know if there's a reference in there somewhere. <laughs> he, I, I like stressed yeah. out Friggy. He looks funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> That's an early beta screenshot. That's not in the final. Yeah. I <laughs> Naturally. Used to be we dug in the code thing. a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of oh, course. God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like we, all, said, yeah. we all know about that one. <laughs> That's why you always hear chewing. This, you this one is just him. thrown in because why not, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Easy Rider Bob Chipman. <laughs> I'm about to Look the at same him going. Face. I, uh, I do. I will be honest. I worry for his forearms. That is sunburn right there. I worry for his motorcycle. <laughs> I worry for all yeah. of it. I guess everything beneath him. I, uh, There's one thing I, I don't think it'd be easy for him to ride. Now, th now this is going all the way back to The Last of Us Two. Must have been the wind. Must have been the wind. When this time it was literally the wind. Oh, it must. Whoa. What a terrible place to ambush Ethan. Oh, well, we'll, no. we, we, we'll get. You know. <laughs> So, oh wait, is that one not loading? Well, this is when no, you use it's not. two little Jesus juice on your hand stump and it doesn't all the way come back. But it's a Scary Movie 2 reference. Good stuff. I think it's the thing everybody remembers from Scary Movie 2, even if you haven't seen the film. Um, a nice, nice little graph hand. here. It's just to let everyone know, short woman, short man, tall woman, tall man, long man, and long woman. 
Mm-hmm. Are you blushing? I might be. Yeah, he is. So speaking of that, <laughs> cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> a couple of people made you know just some art here and there about that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I saw a fair share of that. <laughs> We've even so, she's got oh, the long oh. fingers too. This is oh, perfect wife material. I almost, I almost didn't even see your hands there for a second. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> slender. And look, she's blushing too. It means we're, we're all good. So, so yeah. what's more important to you, Mahler, that she's very long or that she's 80 years fucking old? Um, age is a number. Uh, she's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, well, prison's hey, just on. a room. So, then we, then we got a reference to good old chairs. If, 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 <laughs> Alright, I like the, yeah, I like that. I like the chair a bit. I so, like the chairs. It's that kind of power. <laughs> you can tell from the guy's face, that hurt. That was a chair. Oh, yeah. More powerful than Captain that's America's not... shield, and that's going right into him. You ain't just walking away from that. Um, these are all, uh, these ones are from Shark E, by the way. They are wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I did enjoy that one. I saw that one on Twitter, I think. Hello. I like how, <laughs> like how, I like like, how there's, a, scared of you. We're friends. there's a chandelier above you, and, yeah. and you're just, like, <laughs> pressing into it anyway. Yeah, just... <laughs> I generally, like, when, when I was playing the game, I felt bad for her back. She bends quite far over, you know? Because obviously <laughs> all of us noted that she was bending very far over, because that's, you know, you, you, you know, just keeping an eye on the enemy, you know, you got to make sure you're safe and stuff. So, yeah, I was just like, oh, no, that's not good for her. She needs to make a castle that's better suited for her. But she has that's an extra, good point. XL bathtub, though, so they clearly made that there's for a, her. There's probably a lot of things in that castle they could fix over time, but that's all right. At one point, you do see her clothes are, like, lined up, and you're like, oh, my God, did she take them off? Who knows? <laughs> Sweat she sweat and just like, well, She's a know. woman. She has more than one dress. True. And then um, <laughs> he made these as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's so right. evil. I like it. I actually mm. kind of appreciate this pairing. I'm not even gonna lie. This uh, really? I just love the expression these got on my. Visually, she mask. matches you too. Yeah, if you, if I like you guys his went mask, to a fancy. Yeah. If you guys, if you and the tall lady went to a fancy, fancy restaurant, you would match quite nicely. Oh, that's, that's nice. I'll ask her if she's interested. Yeah. You're not kidding. She got all person. sad about her whole daughter's dying thing. But, you know, there's a toxic brood to <laughs> this replace is good. Them. I mean, they're, I, like they're, they're I like how your face is smiling, like your eyes are smiling, <laughs> yeah. like your eyebrows. And I look so genuinely happy. sad about the dead daughters, but like, in fitness, they attacked me. Like, I don't really know how You're this is. You're pressing your fingers together like, how do I tell her about this? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, okay, self-defense. And then, this is, this is my favorite. Uh, even though, like, like, the others are phenomenal, I just, I just love this. <laughs> yeah. That is my favorite. That's my favorite one. I just, I just love the visual of you just kneeling over with your fucking tie and jacket, just like. <laughs> if you're a bystander watching Ethan, and you're like, "What the fuck is he doing?" It was, it was genuinely I like he had to save Rose. It was satisfying watching Fringy stream and him having the same problem. I was like, "Thank you." At least I wasn't the only yeah. one like trying to stab these chickens. The chickens really are all right hot. with me. It was the fish for me that were just the oh, pain yeah, in the ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In well, fact, the, well, I won't go any further. I, I was, all I was going to say, as an is, not a not a critique or anything. I just I ended up going with the guns instead because you know I had, I, I had a lot of ammo. Anyway, let's move <laughs> on. Oh the my goodness! Not shoot its own bullets. <laughs> do do do. These chickens won't shoot themselves. No. Bill Grum. I want to show some some clips. In these clips, you may detect forms of things to criticize about the game, mainly doing it for the funsies, alright? Think of them as little conversations. Everyone have a notepad open, okay, on your little Windows computer. No. Uh, no. So that okay. any topics we blast through and you don't get to say something on, you can always come back to it. Because that's obviously, um, I, I should say, there are one, two, three, seven, oh yeah, nine of us right now. Um, uh, oh my goodness, 11 people were set to be here, we, uh, and so two are currently unavailable. That would be Jay Longbone and uh, Mark, I believe, but both of them uh, uh, said they wanted to jump on, so we'll see mm. what happens as time goes on. Either way, with that many people, there's going to be a, a, you know, a bit of a fight to get your, uh, your perspective out there, and that's totally fine. Just remember, you may end up saying something like, I thought that, I thought that, I thought yeah. like 10 <laughs> times, and that's okay, okay, because that's just how it works, you have this many people. Um, We'll go. We'll go around in a big circle in a sec. I'm just gonna just gonna show some clips first, okay? 
You guys ready? It's going to be a full on bukake, so put your goggles on, everybody. Mm -mm -mm. I already I'm have that, about. technically. Brings the right Yeah, too. grab yeah. your goggles, yeah. get your funnel, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Alright, uh, is everybody in? Yeah, one, I am. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You say seven like there's not nine of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was about to say, wait a second, wait a second. Well, someone. I... And then someone we're else being is not accounted for. I mean, I, I'm, I'm expecting to start it, and then we'll all react, and someone will be like, what are you, what are you guys watching? <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Alright, last chance. Whoever it is who may not be in here, I'm hoping everyone is, and it's just displaying the wrong amount of people. Last chance. Right. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, 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 well. Oh my god. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna go Waller set this plays shit. Resident Evil Village. True. That's an eight hour clip. I think that's not correct. Or we're watching all the hours. Oh, timestamps. Look at you. I know, right? Come prepared. Ew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm gonna display to you in this video is a, is a classic. Okay, here we go. I'm safe. You're all gonna be aware of this one. You know what? Let's just let's just go save. Let's see what happens here. Uh, yeah. Wait long. No 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 no. <laughs> Bye. That <is> so dumb. <laughs> oh, oh! I was tempted to see how that Hello. works. I guess I know now. Door is her one weakness. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> <sighs> This is making me mad. Like, I guess I don't want to kill him that bad. After he gets shot in the head. <laughs> Disgusting outsider. Racist. Rude. <laughs> That's what we call bigotry. <laughs> I'm not perfectly that so rolled right to her feet. Yeah. This is just something that all the Resident Evil games have to deal with. Like, look, dude, look, look. He's right there. Can you believe it? I don't, they didn't make her leave. Awesome, they didn't make it. She's just. <laughs> she, she's confused. Yeah, they didn't program her to say. Well, I don't know what you can do. I don't know either, yeah. Out. This leech. whole, yeah, um, you've, you've created a horrific problem for yourself. The fetus is just an evolved liver. It's like yeah, well, their leash points. I, <laughs> I think I ended up just trying to take a Lord, picture of it. Yeah, I had, <laughs> I had clips of that stuff as well. He just yes, looks um, confused. Chris being able to sit there in the doorway with the door open as she stares at you and you <laughs> unload round after round after round into her and she's just saying she doesn't move, she doesn't say ah ah oh, oh the, or anything. One time she does say you dirty my dress when I yeah. shot her. Oh hey, what's she up? did say that the one time I shot her. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. And I was like, I know another dress that got dirty. Oh, no. oh yeah. no, she's you in an animation loop. <laughs> oh yeah, this one's great. Oh, that one was great. Quick, get this, the the <laughs> touch the butt metal. You got a chance. <laughs> Stop that, Ray. Jack Harris, man. <laughs> <laughs> this game wants to be a movie really bad. <laughs> oh no, digging right in. <laughs> Her eye is completely Jeez, metal. fucked, My dude. God. I knew you were lonely, but Jesus. <laughs> This is Mel's fetish. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> she missed. She suddenly fixed herself. <laughs> she fixed herself. That's how it works. Let me, let me get a um, <laughs> oh. oh Alright, what else we got here? Oh, yeah. I think we need to cancel Metal now after that. That was pretty sufficient evidence Lady to D. say that. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's more than a tweet. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> this is more of a meme. <laughs> oh, I would do that, too. <laughs> It's so fun. <laughs> now that taunting's a little unnecessary. It's like your it's like your verbal tea bag. <laughs> Magic Kazooie. I didn't even I'm gonna like to slap my weapon around <laughs> at you. Yeah, no, 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 no. Saved himself. How do you do the, you the kick up? The... <laughs> oh your chat, yeah, sorry. The, um, I had no clever. Idea. the kick away thing, is that a matter of you have to press the like spacebar a couple F? of times or 
I think after they hit you, you have to hit space af- twice yeah, or after something. after they hit you, you have to hit space bar at the right time. It's just oh, okay. a counter, yeah. Yeah, like yeah I did counter. that in my third playthrough by accident. <laughs> yeah, I never did that, not once. Well, it after says a while, it in the like, game, oh, yeah. but it, it doesn't tell you, it says press space bar, so you press space bar and it just blocks. It doesn't actually mm-hmm. tell you when to press space I shall put you to rest. It kind of does. Oh, and, um, oh, this was great. All you guys on your end, if you just, if you want to mute it or turn it down or whatever, so we can talk over it, basically, is the idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't worry mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just throwing out all the stuff I've gotten across the game because why not at this point? And one of the things is obviously the good old flashbang. This will be fun for anybody who hasn't seen this before. Uh, yeah, flashbangs are classics. Sorry. Uh, you, uh, oh, does it yeah. reset your AI? <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Oh, no. You know what's really intuitive too, that you have to aim to fucking change ammo type. The way that she's oh, broken. Oh yeah, I had to figure that out. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really that's counterintuitive, wasn't it? Because it exactly. says F. It, it says, says F, F but you have and then you hit F and nothing happens. Yep, you have yep. to aim S to actually change the uh, fucking ammo type. And it's like what? Yep. Yeah, I I think I figured that out it, like uh, five minutes ago in this fight. I was like tried like how the fuck does this work? Somebody had to. Tell yeah, me I didn't know how. It I had no either. fucking idea. I was just sitting there also. I thought oh, yeah, the fact you had that me aiming, yeah. I didn't know they were flashbangs. I thought they were what? like explodies because From the, the icon is like a, you know, you wouldn't oh, assume like, that you like only get incendiary and flashbangs. Yeah. Explosive and incendiary, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That would yeah, not that too. I, I didn't really look at it like, what's the difference yeah. between these two bullets, these two shell types? Do you think they forgot to make a stun animation for her, and that's why she got bugged? I'm thinking I, that might be the case. Could be. I mean, yeah, if they, I, I tried to run her and it didn't stun her at all, but I also got to her later than you guys probably. You guys kind of did this in like two days. It took me like <laughs> five. <laughs> <laughs> she's spinning. I say, towards you. Oh, she's <laughs> spinning. Oh, my yeah. oh. I was four hours less than that. <laughs> Just putting mines all over it, boss <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, man. What I is he doing? Their home bitch is perfectly <laughs> locked on. <laughs> Good luck. You want to make a sandwich? So, back when I was streaming games like every single day, I would always break them. Jesus Christ. This, this, this gets funnier though. Because like, I figure back. at this point, as soon as I shoot here, I'll knock her out of the stun. That's going to be how it works. If you would have shown me this boss image, like this character, out of context and asked, what game is this from? I would have said. Dark Souls, um, I don't like know, something like that. It's something crazy. A weird turn. And it's like, no, 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 this is the Resident <laughs> Evil final boss. No. I'm like, oh, oh this is really? Like a, some weird fucking alternate universe Uncharted bullshit. It really I'm does shot. look like, it's like a fucking Dark Souls boss. Not even like a penultimate boss, just a boss. Yeah, it doesn't look very... It lacks well, that sort of... Like really, when he fight... Um, kind of came out of nowhere as well like because we knew nothing about Miranda at this point. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's just but like what do you oh, mean at this point? Bad. This is the end of the game. Oh Hence. god, those fingers. I never noticed. Kind of like Dimitris. Like I felt how gross those nails are. It oh, felt yeah, very silent hill to me. Yeah, I can see yeah, I can see that. For destruction. <laughs> It reminds me of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like how her head wobbles. <laughs> yeah, little yeah, her head wobbles. Nene, nene, nene. Oh, it's so good. Is this how you beat the fucking final boss the first time? <laughs> no, no, I actually die at, uh, here. She wakes up when she gets into a new phase. Oh, gotcha. This is always happening. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, uh, quite, quite a fun thing to have happen, of course. It would have been so funny if that happened to you on, like, the hardest difficulty final boss. You're just like, oh, thank you. You handed me a freebie. You know what she reminds me of? She reminds me of that angel in, uh... Hellboy 2. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh. The one with the I eyes on its wings. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that kind of a Guillermo del Toro look to it. Yeah. Now, what Metal's yeah. highlighting here is what you could call the most common strategy in the game. Walk around. Oh, yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Kill the boy. A, a little table, yeah. Abs- every every, go- every roundabout, essentially, around cover, is pretty much... Invincibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Enemies don't know how to deal with it. They never gave them a chance. <laughs> they didn't design them to be able to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird because you know when you're designing this, it's like, oh yeah, this is going to be an obviously exploitable thing that players can do. We should probably have something. 
like maybe they should have a ranged attack of some kind, or yeah. maybe we should have two enemies. God forbid, two enemies. But... No, they got drill arms. Why would they need a fucking long range attack? Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. But there might be a table. We'll and not to... only that, I think that was a gurney, so it was on wheels. But By the way, why, why do they constantly need to refer to everything as man flesh, man hands? Is there like, what's the. It's hot, okay, Chase? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I like how she really wants to kill exotic. you, but instead she pushes you through the floor. Right? Because um, there happened to be a. She's like, I'm not going to dirty my dress by going down one floor. I'll meet with you later. I think the real reason they call you like man thing and stuff is because they think women are superior. <gasps> I think it's because they think. I think it's they are superior to just. People. Vampires are better yes. than humans. Exactly. Yeah, I suppose so. It just seems somewhat out of place. What if she hits you so That's what it seems like, though. Also, we're, we're, we're about. 50 seconds away from the thing I actually wanted to show you. I just mis misput oh, okay. the thing. No, you're Don't worry. She's gonna um, okay. This is this isn't hugely interesting. It's more just like, huh, and, a, and an example of stuff we will definitely be talking about as soon as we. We already got this clip and I think one more. So, um, just showcasing some fun things from old Resident Evil 8. So I'm one of them players like Teehee. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be naughty, and and I know that I get my hand chopped off here. So what if? What if oh, I protect that's myself? <laughs> <laughs> that's smart. <laughs> see? I'm what's called it. I wonder what ha I didn't see this one, so I'm, I'm curious what happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm legit curious. You'll be disappointed, right? Yeah. Oh, don't say it now. Nothing special. <laughs> oh, she even sets it off. She actually set off. Really she funny. even sets it off. Yeah. Too. Wow. It's so like, she's actually in the environment for the thing to detect it. I mean, to, to be fair, it, I don't do think she, I don't think she would flinch much even if you did blow her up. What? I, I, I don't fucking I, believe you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Did you, did you see the clip game? you posted earlier where you threw but a that's fucking grenade That's because the game's broken. Yeah, I was going to say, that's because it broke, not because that's how it works. Uh, I, I, if this was Resident Evil 4, killed her that with explosives much. and stuff. She didn't seem to feel very strongly about me shooting her throughout her entire section in my playthrough. Until she died. Her in her true form, apparently. Okay. So, context for this one, works. Metal is playing on oh, the hardest difficulty. Oh, I saw this. And of course, yeah. uh, at this point, Propeller Man chases oh, you into yeah. a into an area, and on normal mode, is there one guy in the area, Metal? Or There's no enemies on No that, enemies on there. Any other, uh, on so, any difficulty. There's and no for enemies. reference, Metal's got a very good gun with 80, well, 79 shots, I guess. Oh, no, well, 70-ish. Yeah, <laughs> Alright. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Wow. And those are just normal enemies. These yeah. are like the lowest of the low enemies. Yeah, that's not a normal I can like see her face. The... You're his... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, yeah. yeah, that's... Uh, that's what that's the correct response. On, Holy on shit. That, it's the worst side. kind of thing to do when you increase difficulty, is just well, to turn enemies the, the into other thing, bullet this, sponges. This, the next time I tried it, I killed them all, made it, and he still damaged me, though. So I still got almost killed. Oh, yeah, with really? um, my yeah. playthrough, I don't even remember what I did the first time around, but the state gun can plow through like three at once, so it's... Uh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. My, my issue Last was, clip. I, like, I started a normal... Like, I started on normal. Oh, God. This was, it, this was the only slightly <laughs> clever thing that, like... Was in the game, sort of, where you have to turn your... Like, the, blo the black block is the same one, but the paper's turned. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the mild cleverness of that was the like the fact oh, that they gave you I... um, a cheat code though the lights go yeah. up more the more you get right yeah they do yeah, yeah. I wasn't even looking at that that, that note when I was doing yeah. this <laughs> yeah you just go to each one and click it until the green goes up and then Why is yeah. the just to the brute force right your way next through to it the puzzle? <laughs> all righty um because what this is uh, this is a game that doesn't want to be a game but it still has to put game things in it so you can proceed to the next <laughs> cutscene. Um, what I'm going to do is, my playthrough will just be going in the background on mute for uh, when we're talking about the game, so don't worry about it. You don't, you don't need to put the volume up. You don't even need to be in this, in this thing, to be honest with you guys. Yeah. It's all good now. Alright, that's um, fair enough. So, what we'll do with, with the fun of those memes and those clips, we'll go from good old fashioned left to right. You have, like, one to two minutes. Just summarize what you think of Resident Evil 8 after... Oh, and probably mention what you've played of it, like, depending on difficulty, time time amount. Belch. Obviously, you can go a little over your time if you've got stuff to say. But uh, then we'll open it up to a big old discussion. It's going to be great. So, um, a monk.
What, 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 what are you, what are you? Welcome to an EFAP episode, by the way. I can't remember if you've been on a main one before. You've been on gaming? You've been on gaming, nope. haven't you? I've not been on a main one. Well, welcome. We're welcome. here to talk about video games and stuff. So it's, uh, we love it's you, good friend. to see you. He does, he does stream in a bunch. The links for everybody's channels will be in the description. Um, and uh, he streamed this game. I believe he loved it, but I'll let him describe it himself. <laughs> Go right ahead. It seems to be what we remember, yeah. Okay, so Resident Evil 8 is the biggest fucking disappointing in gaming I've ever had in my life. <gasps> Jesus. Do you play Last of Us 2? Uh, no, because I, I knew that would be bad. So, literally, my entire playthrough of this game was disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. At no point did it feel like it was any sort of cohesiveness, not to mention how much it shits on the rest of the Resident Evil story. So, I, I yeah, I played through regular difficulty, and then I played through hardcore, and I played through mercenary mode. And I got to the point in the end of the game where they start telling you the secrets and all that stuff about the plot that I can hear your air quotes. I, I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I literally got up, said nothing and walked away from my fucking stream. Cause I couldn't take it. Oh, damn. Well, I it guess that's literally <laughs> disturbing. It's a really Did good. You literally summer? put one foot in front of the other. No, I don't. I don't need. I like lost my mind. I didn't even know what I was doing. I just you slithered. You just went <laughs> right out the room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nick, fucking melted and just washed just away. Turned to goop. All right. Well, that's an opinion. Chase face. Welcome back. What did you think me. of Resident Evil Village Eight? <laughs> uh, he hello. First of all, thank you for having me. It's oh, me. Uh, cool. Overall, I mean. Overall, I, I would say it was more of a favorable opinion than an unfavorable one, but I definitely had some, you know, some some issues here and there. Uh, one thing I'll talk about later that I was particularly impressed with is just the the way that the game kind of blended together a bunch of different sort of specific horror flavors. Uh, like sort of, uh, I don't really want to go too into detail for when we do get there, but I just, yeah, I thought that uh, for the gameplay... I enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a significant improvement from seven and it was much more fluid, but uh, yeah, not, not perfect in the narrative or the story or the, you know, character development or writing or whatever, but that's what we're uh, here to talk about. So yeah, overall it was, uh, it was very interesting. All right. Fringy. Hello. What did you uh, think of resident eight village evil resident evil? <laughs> yeah. That one. yeah. So like I'm not very familiar with Resident Evil at all. I played two, and I really the remake, and I really liked it. But otherwise, all I know about it is the memes of like boulder punching and complete global saturation. Point of reference. So I came into this one having not played seven, and I don't really play a lot of horror games at all. Like I haven't. So I I had fun with the game, but. Like, I'm pretty sure it's not good. <laughs> like, the more that I think about it, that's kind of that's kind of the conclusion I have. Even putting to one side, like, that the story is terrible, which I think is not even really up for debate. I'm not sure how good I could say that a lot of what the game is, because I think it's really basic. And even in how basic it is, I feel like there's a lot that's wrong with it. Um, but we'll get into that. So yeah, I had fun, but I'm not sure if it's a good game. All right. Uh, and welcome to your first EFAP episode, Mr. Indigo Gaming. Is, do, you, do, you, do you go by Indigo, or is there, is there another name we should... Uh, yeah, sample? Indigo's good. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, I've, I've heard you play video games, and this, nah, this is one you've that's checked a lie. out. Disgusting. I know. So, of course, welcome. Uh, how you doing? Swiss, what's up? Good. Thanks um, for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what did you think of Revil... I'm finding different ways to say that. Ed Village? Just say the fucking <laughs> game name. Just say the normal name. All right, Resident Evil Piece 4. What did you think? Remake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Revil V? I don't know. Um, I, I had mixed feelings on it. Um, it. Just a quick background. I've played uh, 1, 2, 4, 5, 
six resident evil 2 remake resident evil 3 remake so i've got like a kind of mixed uh selection of uh re games around belt i didn't actually play seven so i might have a slightly unique perspective since i i, I caught up on the seven storyline i watched your retro perspective series on it marlar to get a better insight on like you know what you thought about it oh um but uh and you know obviously you've got the whole storyline recap and everything I liked the game as a game, but I had some really, really, really big problems with the story and how it, the, the kind of tone it set. Uh, like it, it introduces you into like a, a household. So you, you get the idea that it's supposed to be kind of a grounded story, but it really goes off the rails pretty quickly. There are a lot of like, you know, visual and, and audio things I liked about the game a lot. And the, the shooting was tight, but yeah, there was definitely some problems with the AI, um, the story. There are a couple points, the uh, parts of the story, which we'll probably get into that I feel kind of ruined the entire story completely. And I could definitely see uh, from somebody who, if somebody really liked the story of RE7, was really invested in, you know, Ethan as a character, that you get pretty upset of how things turned out because it basically, I think it it's one of those sequels that makes the original uh, a lot worse in, in retrospect because um, it kind of like undermines everything that happened. Uh, and yeah, it, it, one thing that I found interesting about the game is it's probably the, one of the most direct sequels to any Resident Evil game before. Like, there you have re recurring characters like Chris and and uh, Leon and stuff like that, but they're all kind of detached from each other. But this is meant to be a direct sequel that you know follows the events of RE7 shortly after. So I, I found that be to be an interesting turn of events for the the series. But yeah, uh, fun game if you turn your brain off. Uh, I definitely enjoy it more. Um, Oh, and I played it in standard all the way through, and I played through about half of uh, the castle on uh, New Game Plus with uh, on the hardest difficulty without unlimited ammo, just to see kind of how it played and so get a better idea of what it plays like in higher difficulties. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I uh, John is currently just a little unavailable. He'll be right back, presumably. Uh, we will then just skip over to me. And I would want to say, don't feel bad if you thought the game was incredible, all right? I wouldn't want anybody to be like, oh, no, I'm surrounded by people who didn't like it. Oh, well, in case anyone is. Well, you feel a little bad. Oh, well, you feel yeah, a little bad. A little you probably should have a little bit of, like, <laughs> just shame. In a general. little bit of remorse. <laughs> a little bit of remorse. Just a bit. Yeah. Um, Never hurt anyone. I played through normal, I played through Village of Shadows, and then I fucked around on casual, and I've done all of Mercenaries mode up to double S. I got a triple S on a couple of them. Oh. Um, and then just, you know, random screwing around and stuff. I had loads of fun with this game. Oh boy. All cut, just laughing and just, just, just pushing it this way and that way. Felt a lot like some crazy person in my house telling me a whole bunch of their stories while I was drinking alcohol, just laughing at them because that sounds really amusing. And then someone else who was like, hey, want to play like, um, some kind of shooting practice game where you just got to hit the targets and then you'll get to the next part of the story I want to tell you. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then, you know, every once in a while I'd be like, man, remember what games are like? And then I'd try and do something like that games could do, and then I'd be like, oh shit, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, carry on with your story, or you're shooting at targets sort of thing. So, you might be able to tell that without further inspection, I'd be like, that was neat. Anyway, back to talking about media. But if, if someone was like, wait, can you, can you talk about it more in depth? I'd be like, oh, well... You'll end up with the same, a similar perspective that I had with uh, Resident Evil 8, but better and worse in different ways at different points. And so, yeah, I look forward to getting into it. But uh, I wouldn't want to take away from the fact that I did have some fun. It was entertaining. Um, before jumping to Metal, we'll jump back to, to John. Um, how are you doing, Everybody. sir? Welcome back. Good, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I so was, what, what did you think um, of Resident Evil 8 Village? <laughs> I had a fucking blast with this game. Um, I yeah. think the story is terrible. <laughs> um, I find the gunplay really engaging. Um, I think I love the enemy variety. Um, the The combat feels sl uh, sluggish, and in the same way Resident Evil Seven felt sluggish. It, it was they t they turned up the speed a little bit, and they made it a little more smoother to control which i like but the sluggishness kind of worked for me given the kind of game it's trying to be um i mean it looks terrific i love the atmosphere of it 
like I love the design of that place and um the it it has this vibe it's a really unique game and I couldn't wait to like play it again like the the ending is so stupid but <laughs> Like, I, I couldn't wait to, like, start a new game plus and, like, keep leveling up my guns and, like, selling guns and buying new guns, which I felt was all pretty well balanced, like, prices and guns and leveling them up and, like, a variety of guns and weighing one against the other. And uh, the characters are <laughs> ridiculous. It felt like I was playing, like a, like, a Hammer horror movie or something that was really goofy. I think Heisenberg is complete cringe. Um, yes. But uh, yeah, that whole kind of last part of it is a little bit of a drag for me. But mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of fun with this. All right. I think it's, I think it's good. Um, uh, Metal Commander, welcome yes, to your first episode of EFAP. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I, I, oh, I, da, 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 da. I peed da, all over da, da, myself. We brought you on as the... So you've only seen one vague Let's Play of this game. You've not played it, right? That's, that's, so, tell us, no. what did you think of Resident 8? Uh, Revel 8? Yes. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, I mean, as, as a bunch of people already know, I pretty much played this all week, last week, or the last couple of days. Uh, I mean, I played through all the difficulties. Uh, did the casual one last with an infinite ammo gun, which was just hilarious to play through because everything just dies just when you look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mainly did this because of uh, getting those uh, completion points to get more infinite ammo weapons and see how much I can break this game even more. Uh, so yeah, I have four playthroughs. I'm currently halfway through another playthrough just with my talking. Uh... But yeah, I had a lot of fun, but it's absolutely broken and overall pretty much terrible. But I love it somehow. <laughs> I think that's yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'm saving the cast screen we had there because I, I feel like we might not get the other people showing up, which is all right. Uh, which leads us to Mr. Moriarty. How do you do, sir? Hi. Hello. Um, I believe you play video games too, correct? Occasionally, very rarely, but you know, occasionally. Yeah. Well, what did you think of Resident Evil Eight? <clears throat> so I played on standard. Uh, I played some mercenaries. I loaded up Village of Shadows and said, "Yeah, forget this." And um, then I uninstalled. <laughs> the The game is fine. Ethan is maybe the least attentive, slowest witted protagonist ever. Like, hey, what's going on here? Hey, who are you? What was that? What's happening? <laughs> like, like, he's an audience stand-in for the lowest common denominator. Um, the the pacing issues are pretty intense. With the first half of the game being mostly puzzles and like amnesia-style running from monsters, and the the, the second half being mostly combat followed by cutscenes. Um. <sighs> How in depth am I am I getting right now? Because <laughs> hey, like you have like a whole other minute if you want to use it. Uh, I was I was shocked by by how on rails the game was. The the bosses, the tone of the bosses, how tonally opposite they are, and like holy shit, is Ethan the wettest tissue of all time? He's a complete turnip, like. Oh, the voice acting is trash. The lore, the lore. Oh my god, the lore is really dumb. And the controls. I played this on PC, right? And like technically speaking, the controls are trash. It's just such a basic console port. I mean, it even still has auto aiming turned on by default. The the, the uh, controls menu is a controller. You can't change FOV. Plus, like, the basic mouse speed is so slow that I couldn't turn 90 degrees without, like, lifting up my mouse. Speed. Oh, that's what you're so, right. like, They had a button to just flip you around. Isn't that what you want? It's so... No. <laughs> so I have a they lot of... About face, but, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of problems with this game. <laughs> uh, that's how I would describe it. Very well. And finally, Mr. Raggleton. 
Oh my hey, goodness! Hey, how you it's doing? Me. It's time. It's Rounding time. out. I'm bring, you. bringing up the rear. Time for you to say what? What is it that oh, you loved goodness. about Resident Evil Eight? <laughs> oh, um, the graphics were pretty. Um, Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil Eight. What an incredible, what an incredible series of massive disappointments, just one after the other, sometimes blending together consecutively. Just what. I, what an incredible disappointment. Uh, what an insanely poorly designed, lazily uh, put together, just linear awfulness. Um, technically, I would say, I, I would say this is better than Seven. Seven was like the trial run for a new thing that they wanted to do. And I guess enough people warmed up to it and, but well, enough people bought it and it made them enough money that they wanted to do Resident Evil 7 again. And it's slightly better than Resident Evil 7. I, I would way I would much rather play this again than Resident Evil 7. But um what an incredibly disappointing game. What there's very, very little in this game to praise. Um in fact, I think the only thing that's worthy of praise on this entire game is just the graphics of it. Almost everything that relates to the gameplay is mediocre and boring and tedious. The characters are awful. The writing is an absolute mess. The story is catastrophically bad. Um, there are plenty of gameplay decisions that make no sense at all. Um, it is a it's a tedious, boring chore of a video game that offers basically nothing in the realm of positives except for some superficial elements like just the graphics of it. There's very little to praise here. It, a, a total regression for the Resident Evil series, kind of in general. Um, they're not taking this series, even though it's slightly better than Seven, they're not taking the series forward in any interesting, meaningful way. Um, I think they should just drop it and do what they really want to do, which is make movies and don't waste my time with playing this game and making me go through all that. So there you have it. Well... Sounds Other than that, you liked it, right? <laughs> yeah. Other than that, it was pretty great. So game of the year? <laughs> Not this year. If the if it was like twelve, the year twelve, I'd be like, yeah, it's game of the year. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, uh, compared to rocks and stones, uh, this is game seems great. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, it's 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 a little bit better than hoops and sticks. That's all right, you yeah. know. Um, find the witch yeah. and so it seems yeah. to me that we've got a, a vast array of different opinions here but that basically nobody seems to want to take the position that it's a it's like a great game like it's, that's out oh no <laughs> so, no i i wouldn't i i i just i couldn't i couldn't call this a good game i i couldn't it would devalue what it means to be a good game it would tarnish me calling things good and it just isn't also it, it just flat it isn't a good game it's not well constructed in really any way um if i was to use this as an example for game makers maybe graphically it's impressive um, yeah i think it runs I think the characters pretty well. look really nice yeah, yeah it, it's, a, world, it's a very yeah. good looking game capcom yeah. has money to throw at graphics um but if you're if you're just starting out making games there's really not anything you can pull from this i feel um, that would be a value. Um, if you can't emulate this game's graphics, I don't think you could really find anything worthy of learning. Uh, except uh, bad examples, because you can always profit from a bad example. So maybe that's the most useful this game could be. Um, what a shame. Well, a shame. Uh, I, I, we could honestly start anywhere, anywhere anyone wants mm. to. Like a ma someone could bring in one of their major singular criticisms or a major singular form of praise, and then we can tear into the subject. I consider it completely yeah, open. Yeah, I've been talking a while. If anyone mm -hmm. wants to let, let, start let, off okay. with something, we can. Sure, I'll, I'll start. Absolutely. Let's talk about how this game is so linear and on rails, and it's really, really sad. Because this, there's this, like, could have been approach at the beginning where maybe it's an open world kind of game similar to, like, like a Dark Souls where you defeat the mini-bosses and unlock the big boss, right? However, it's... Mm -hmm all a lie it's locked behind <laughs> literal locks that you can this only do door is locked from the other side moriarty yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't climb that fence damn it you're not allowed so to climb you, that fence 
you have to go through in this very very specific path you just walk through a series of rooms with almost no backtracking until of course you get to the last of the four bosses which is only backtracking just metroidvania walking back and forth to unlock stuff all right i'm back so, what i miss I, just that yeah, section I, that it could have been so much better i'm gonna <laughs> modify what you said about linearity um because I, I think there's one important thing to sort of tack on and perfect it right this game is this game is very linear that does not give you the sense of progression or moving forwards. It doesn't give you the um, sense of any remote choice either. Yeah, the so what will probably happen a lot in this conversation is I will be bringing up Resident Evil 4, a game that is very <laughs> old, a game that was sort of the first of its kind, that was the first attempt to do something sort of new. The trend um, so it, it yeah, it was. It really was a trendsetter. Resident Evil 4 was, it was really trying something Literally new. inspired Dark Souls, not Dark Souls, that'd be fucking insane. Uh, <laughs> Dead Space. <laughs> Dark Souls, like, wait a Dead minute. Dead Space. Resident Evil 4 is a game that I've, uh, I own on four systems. I have beaten it countless times. I, I love Resident Evil 4. Yeah, same. Um, In every way. And yes. it, it's, it is the gold standard, which it's, it's weird to say, but Resident Evil 4... The one, and we're talking about Resident Evil Eight, but Four is the gold standard for Resident Evil. If you if you're gonna play Resident Evil, play Four. Yeah, um, certainly for its type. There's like a tree with Resident Evil for different yeah. types of games. Yeah, like if you're looking for like good horror, horror, it's like two, three, one. You know, one, like two, and three, oh yeah, one. Resident Evil's Actually not scary. Four. Fuck, fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> Seven is creepy sometimes. I, I or strongly the disagree action, the Resident Evil are... isn't scary. Modern Resident Evil is, yeah, a bit hackneyed and, and not very well executed. The original but like the... 1, 2, 3 was scary. They were fucking terrifying in every yeah. way. I played them all are when they, they came out. And they were fucking are they terrifying. really, though? Yeah, they actually <laughs> At the time, at the yeah, time, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you disagree, you can explain why you disagree. You no, know, the first one, here's the moment I'm that hot. I think most people were scared of in the very first one. I think even Mahler mentioned this, is the when when in the very first Resident Evil, you open the door and you walk and you see that, that you know, uh, form zombie. hunched over something. And then he turns around and it's a zombie and there's the blood and like, you know, you remember that? In yeah, the yeah, very, yeah. very first zombie, that, yeah, that was absolutely terrifying. is terrifying. Yeah, well, the dog sure. jumping through the windows too, and you had no idea what was coming in that yeah. hallway. But it's, it's, we should probably just move past it anyway. It's scary as yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they, I was, yeah. I was just bringing up Resident Evil Four, just that. prepping everybody. I'm going to be doing a lot of comparisons because this game it wants to be. It wants to be. Resident it Evil wants 4. to feel like Resident Evil Four. I don't think this anyone disagrees with you. This game clearly yeah, tried. Yeah. Want, this this game tries to feel like Resident Evil Four. Problem is that unless you've played, you might believe that if you haven't played Resident Evil Four lately, which most people just flat out haven't. It's been a long time since that game came right. out. This game only like is similar like to Four. Year. Oh yeah, I I'll always just I can just always go back to it and play it. Yeah, just um, you're in a mood. Just like, oh, let's just fucking beat Resident Evil 4 over yeah. the course of, like, an entire day. Only in the loosest, broadest ways is this game reminiscent of Resident Evil 4. You have the village, and you have the castle, and you have the water bottle. It's very, very, um, very superficial. The, There's a water the similarities monster. practically like, stop there. That's not Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Yeah. It, there, there there's go. practically... The, the similarities should just end there. Black um, boxes only. Yeah. There's chickens. But the, uh, there's fish to kill. Yeah, 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 there's some it's stuff like that. On the back of the but box. <laughs> Resident Evil 4, <laughs> 4 was linear Kill too. Me. 4 was a very linear game. There was not a lot, and in terms of story and progression, there's very little room for like, yeah. going out of bounds and exploring. I suppose we just not, need it's, a, it's, for the sake of chat, it's like, yeah, there's a difference between linear and railroaded. I don't I don't actually have a problem with yes. linear games. None of us do, I, right. I would imagine. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah right. Well-scripted and, and uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. Linearity is fine in, in a story. You can't have, you know, this massive open world thing with all these different and have a really tightly scripted story. It's hard to do. But this... You don't have choice, and I think that's the difference, right? Like, well, you d you didn't have you didn't have choice in Resident Evil Four either in terms of where you're going and how you get there. Yeah, but and what Resident Evil Four Four was a game that, for instance, you have linearity and it makes you feel like you've gone places. The village section, the castle section, and the island are all very distinct. 
in terms of the enemies that are present, in terms of this, the locations itself, even as you get away from the village to the castle, there are big segments where you feel like the, the, the environment is changing. Mm -hmm. When you go from the castle to the island, there a whole cutscene with Ada taking you on the boat. You, you're just in a, you're totally in a new place. Um, you feel like you are progressing. You are not where you started. You have gone on a journey. You've gone on an adventure. But in Resident Evil Village, when you get to the end, the end is, it's right next to where you began. <laughs> yeah, Dude, it's like early. You don't go on a adventure. The ending, you, the ending is just like the, the, the devs were like, by the way, you're at the end. You're like, oh, yep, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, here, you, here's the end of the game. Here you go. Just yep. geographically yeah. speaking, this isn't necessarily an issue, but in the way that it's done in Resident Evil Village, you do not feel, even though you have, you do not feel like you've accomplished things because you're just right back where you started, essentially. The final boss is almost literally a stone's throw away from where you start. Mm -hmm. um, it is, you don't get a sense of progression, like you're accomplishing things and doing things. To, um, I just want a funny thing to add to this, right? So when I, I think I was like two or three quarters into my stream and I let people know that on my first part, I was like, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to last you, but they all wanted me to go through the spooky section, which we will talk about. And then um, a lot of people in chat, which I didn't realize my first time around, but I do now, were saying, oh, do, do spooky doll section first, don't do Moreau first. And I remember being like, I don't know how to, I can't choose them because I don't even know where they are. And I looked at the map and I was like, oh, okay, this is spooky doll. All right, I'll go to her first. You have to go to her first. Yeah. You yeah, don't yeah, have a choice. Sense. But yeah. people, and but this game, that, that is a microcosm, by the way, of this game will make people think that it is much more, like, there's so much more for the player to be able to choose than there actually is. More open Oh, yeah, it lays it out like, oh, look, here's the four lords, you just need to kill them, but you have to kill them in this order, by the way. Here you go. Yeah. Which is sad, right? Because, like, imagine if they had opened it up, you could have had a lot more feeling that you're choosing and making this yep. story happen. Well, you should and also you have can't, a um, choice with each of the lords as well. You can't return you know. to the areas. What the fuck's that about? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of... Infuriating. Oh. oh, Invisible Walls is its own fucking section. I mean, this would be... The, the idea... Invisible section... Uh, invisible Walls apply to you. They apply to almost literally all of the enemies in this game. There yeah. is, for no reason whatsoever you will be prevented from backtracking and going to a place to explore. Um, the castle is a good example. Great Once example. you leave the castle, you just can't go back. The drawbridge yeah. has now been pulled up. You cannot go back into Which the castle. Makes zero fucking sense unless... Yeah, I don't get a... it. I can't well, even think yeah, of why. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know well, why. I, why would you not let me reason. go back? The only thing I could think of is performance issues with having the, all the areas loaded at once in the game. Yeah, but I, will, I will take a loading screen. I am okay with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they could have they could have they yeah, done a hidden... They could have done the as you open the drawbridge again or something, that's the animation right. that plays over it loading in the back. No, yeah. I agree. I'm just saying that's the only logical it might thing be. I can think of. R really quick, but we have to speculate. When, like, remember back in the day when having like even reasonably loading, uh, reasonably long loading times was such a point of contention for everyone in reviews. It's like, yeah, oh, it's yeah. Really long. Like, Sonic Go Six. I understand that, but like, I, I, I think I speak for everyone when I say I'd be okay with like a six or fucking eight second loading screen. Yeah. If it means if it doubling the size of the map, the whole yes. castle. Yeah, yeah. 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 It means Absolutely. I can go back and explore everything and actually get treasure and stuff that I might have missed. Oh, Absolutely. this fucking... Yeah. You reminded me as well yeah. of how, like, this game, much like many others, does not tell you when you're about to fuck yourself over. You're like, right. I'll open this yes. door. It's like, goodbye, it's all of the castle. Thing. You're like, yep. thanks. Yep. Yes. Thanks so much. The game does not tell you that. It is yeah. super annoying. It 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 frustrates me because every time in this game you see a path diverge left and right, You're like, oh, you okay, go, I'll oh play. fuck, <laughs> which yeah. one of these will lock me which behind one? a cutscene and the story progresses yep. and Dude, prevent me in, from going back? Well, it's not what I've been saying like... since 2015. Which way is the not way? I want the not way yep. first. And there's some yeah. games yeah. that account yeah. for right. this. The example I always bring up is Dead Space. You put down your little beam on the floor and it's like, that's the campaign way. And I'm like, cool, Resident I'm Evil 4 Four did this. Resident Evil Four oh. did this shit because the door that would go to a whole new section, it was in green, and the icon oh. for opening it was different. But normal doors and all that stuff, it was in white. So you always knew that a next section, quote unquote, was a gr was a, the door text in green. I mean, I, I'm not one of the biggest. 
the, the there are a lot of games where you click on it and it says, you know, this is the point of no return or whatever. And I'm not saying yeah. that that necessarily needs to be in every game, but it is a really nice. Oh feature. fuck, I will take that over nothing. I, if it yeah. Yeah. Like, what huge what text on my screen saying, "You sure castle? about this?" Right. What if you're going to leave the castle and finally, when that door opens, it goes, "Are you sure you want to leave?" I yeah, didn't find that's it. Bad. That's all you got to like, do. Even if yeah, and, and talk and to not himself, only... saying, "Do I want to leave yet?" Cool. That's a sense to mark progression too. That's in, in a lot of games, especially when you get to the ending section, they say, "All right, this is the final fight. There's no going back after this." And you feel like, "Oh shit, we're like in the end game. This is yeah. the final fight. This is the final section. There, I if I want to do stuff, I need to do it now because we're about to progress." They did that. Yeah, that once. was even working in Cyberpunk. I mean, like, come on. <laughs> yeah, they did that once before uh, the the big fight with um, Heisenberg. But you even get a save point after that, so it was kind of yep. weird, random, random decision to make that. Like, you sure you want to do this? You can't go back. It's like, dude, I'm stuck in the basement. I can't go yeah, back yeah, anyway. Yeah, you, you yeah. Have, where where the hold fuck else am I gonna go? Yeah, you have to hold down F to do go? it. It's like, why are you? Yeah, telling me yeah. This now? Like, this I, is the only time in the fucking game that you've done this. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't mean anything because I'm just no. in this room now. With like four things, you've got like three things you can pick up in a computer you can read. Yeah, yeah and uh, and literally after that fight, you get put back to the duke and you can actually do more after that there's yeah. a save point and you can talk to the duke you can even, even walk around in the village a little bit uh i'm not i think a lot of it's blocked off by the yeah, uh duke have or whatever, say, but... yeah a lot's blocked off there's only one uh, line uh, from duke that even made me like double take and it's just the reference to the old mitch and i was like oh, i yeah, yeah that's, that's the only one <laughs> that pissed me off i'm not gonna lie can i just say i, I hated I, it yeah i was talking to my friend about and i was just like i even if, if there was like some subtext that we could get from that where it's like, oh yeah, the fucking merchants guild or whatever, it turns out like they're all <laughs> fucking college buddies or like fucking anything. Right. Even if you just like suggest there might be some thread there that they were friends or like their brothers or like whatever it could be rather than just, how, you remember Resident Evil 4's merchants? That's just Lord. something you used to say. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's, it's like, it's, a, it's like, dude, a, who I are you? Sorry. It was, it just feels like forced fan service is what it feels like. Yeah, there, that's it feels what it like is. There's there a magic. forced. Yeah, there's something in so the the RE4 merchant, basically he's not even a character essentially. He's just a dude, and he says some lines that are funny, right. and that has become very iconic, and people love that because mm -hmm. they weren't they weren't trying. He was cheesy. It just sort it of became there. as it sort of became a thing. Yeah, the merchant mm -hmm. was your friend. He was your he buddy. Up, you were always happy oh. to see him. He was just around. Oh, yeah, he was he was always a sign of safety. You. Yep. Yeah, yes, you absolutely. Absolutely. You knew it. You yeah. knew you it was safe. a safe haven. So, uh, for uh, two different de to different degrees, but I so I guess I'll elaborate on that just a little bit. So, hey, sorry, R Rags, really quickly, not to cut you off. Uh, and this is like ahead. a gotcha, but just genuinely curious. Uh, I remember on Metal Stream last night, I believe you were praising uh, the Evil Within two, which I agree, I, I really like that game a lot, significantly more than the first one. But how did you feel about the way that they handled the um, the sort of merchant, quote unquote, in that game? I forget her name. I oh, I forget the merchant stuff. How was who was the you have to remind it was, me it was like that nurse woman who would kind of sit you down and tell you like human beings need socialization oh survive, yeah like, a like in its own light. like in your office section thing yeah yeah that yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that was the first game right Medical I kind of liked it because she would give you little fucking little little like not super known uh, factoids about uh, psychology and just like mental health and stuff like that it was like a little it was very small but it was well, sounds like it's more than the duke so I kind of actually was I yeah. like it more because I feel like it was trying to really be something i yeah. feel yeah. i feel like the duke was just we want to try and do the their re4 merchant again but <laughs> fat man but we really want to try <laughs> yeah like honestly in, in, when they wrote this they were like what if he was really fat you're like okay he can't uh, yeah. well that yeah you're like but that doesn't make any fucking sense what for a traveling boy, merchant yeah. it's like buddy it just uh, is well i think it just is dude i think it's even worse than doesn't make sense there's no idea it's he's really fat like okay that's not anything <laughs> this is my favorite my favorite thing was uh, late in the game, you're like, who even are you? And it's like, mm -hmm. a good question for another time. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, never even happened. I can't, even I can't really tell you or something. It's like, oh, okay. And then you <laughs> wait for something something more. It's like, then it just goes ahead. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh that oh, was a conversation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, you, you know what I would be okay with? If you put on Mega64's Resident Evil video where he just goes to a mall and just asks people, what are you buying? Until they call the police on him. <laughs> 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 Mega64, <laughs> that's a great video. <laughs>
I don't think I minded the Duke so much. I, well, he was I, so I, I, little that he didn't bother. I don't. Me. Uh, he doesn't upset me. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. know what they're trying to do. And he's a yeah, waste. Yeah, so or, something that's going to be a common theme. He's a waste, right? And that's going to be yeah. my conclusion on basically yep. almost every element in this game. So the Duke yep. is yeah. a waste. They didn't do anything with him. He was fat. Like, all right. And that's I, it. Yeah, that's all that his entire yeah, characterization is the fat guy. Yep. I'd be yep. a lot less upset if he wasn't the most helpful character in the entire fucking game. Like he's he saves your life. He you provides you with so many secrets. Machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he, he, he does he does so many things for you. He like tells you how to how to save well, your daughter, yeah, like where to go. He, he gives you things. He like you know he like I, is constantly helping you. And he actually I think he saves you at the end or something like that too. But he doesn't. Oh. Tell I think you. that what they tried to do with the Duke was so in the game the Duke is. They try to involve him in the story as a character in ways that make you question his existence and the rest of the, yeah, uh, the like game. Yeah, like sort of a helpful narrator or something like that. Well, yeah. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't even say that because a narrator almost implies that they exist outside of the universe and you're you're getting knowledge from some source that isn't like localized to your player. Like like a narrator would be a title crawl well, in Star Wars or I, something like that. That that's kind of the exact reason is, I agree with Chase. He feels like he's not a part of the world because he he can't be because well, yeah. Well, I, well but here's the thing: they didn't well, even they, 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 make they didn't, him even, a part they didn't of the even like remember to contextualize they him because they, they were going to have they were going to have the thing where like his they lost his horse in the beginning and then that's when mm. you encounter him. Like they cut that out of the beginning. There's well, like oh, he's just fucking in a, in a thing. They also cut out that he was meant to be a lord too, and they were like, oh no, we're not doing that. Right well, at the last minute. Yeah. That's what I mean. It, fe it, it feels like there was probably some other idea because because it, it sounds like a just a what? jumbled set of details. It's like he's remember yeah. every time you kill a lord, he's got like a, a part of them that re kind of represents their area of the land. And he's like tee hee, you know, you kill them, and it's like what is what yeah. are you, what are you, what is <laughs> so like, so so you exist in this world and you know who these characters are that I've just killed. Yeah, and you're you're here and you're helping me. Like he, so does this the Dimitres people? Do they allow you to just keep exactly, your shop yeah. there? Well, like, because he, yeah, he talks it, about it really flowery, more, like yeah. he is writing a book. He's like, and then, yeah. you know, what will you do next? And you're like, what the well, fuck, there's, dude? There's a note in the castle that says, that's from the traitor. And it says that he's allowed free roam and he's got a meeting with uh, yes. Demetrius. Oh, yeah, I it's that right, note, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like so, when you hmm. first get in, yeah. Yeah, but there's so much more. It seems like there was like another half a story written with him that they just decided that eh, fuck it the the only thing i really really liked a lot about him is the fact that they would make him kind of growl in his sleep when you weren't there and then he would kind of wake up when you'd come oh, like oh. so you'd hear him through the wall you'd hear what sounded like a really big fucking werewolf boss through the wall and you're like oh shit i better reload my shotgun make sure i'm healed and you open the door you're like oh dude what's up and it's just well, completely it's like, deflated oh, it's and fat merchant but yeah my experience <laughs> like was slightly times. different i could hear his like heavy gasping for air and I was like, oh, merchant, where are you? Give me, give me stuff. <laughs> I heard the guy never turned on to it. Oh, shit, it's metal. It, it's <laughs> excellent. Oh, oh. The, yeah, eat shit metal. Fuck you. Hard, oh. I'm going to beat your ass with my dick. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, whoops. Bring it, I'll bite it. Flight of Deutschland. The Duke is an excellent it, example. I'll bite it. <laughs> So if, if you're making a game or if you make just like characters or just anything, it's one of those you can learn of, out of this game's bad example. The Duke. The problem with him is that you want it, they want it both ways. He is the merchant from Resident Evil 4, but he's also a part of this game's story and a part of this game's world in ways that can't mix and make any level of sense. Mm. Yeah, Which no, means I it matches the rest it. of the story, but that's probably not a good thing. It's, no, just it's, not. it's just amazing to me that they Duke was so underdeveloped in a game that's uh, character anorexic like this game was starving yeah. for characters and so, like, someone in chat really just said like combination of words someone in chat said like it doesn't need anorexic. to be explained and presumably it's like it doesn't need it's not, it's not this game didn't need to be made that's not like <laughs> the requirement well, I, I, to explain well here's it, but the it thing fucking nice yeah I well like i think at the point where the duke is a, an actor in the plot and he progresses the plot and he does Instead things the and there are notes referring to him yeah, you have to yeah. explain that because now you're presenting me with because you have because someone in, someone in the chat said but the re4 merchants a non-character as well i know <laughs> but he was main, always a non-character like the main difference is that well, he doesn't come know up everything. to the merchant he doesn't come up to the like uh sorry leon doesn't come up to the merchant resident evil 4 and go oh merchant it's you i need but i need to find ashley he doesn't fucking do that he well, never communicates with them ever and this go, game, hey this is how you get ashley back 
you can go here and then yeah. you can go there and yeah. guess what yeah, the duke <laughs> literally pushes the story forward yeah, he's the most yeah, important part of the plot when you have the, the merchant sneaking around the world selling and buying shit because he's on his own team meanwhile the duke mm -hmm. has to like yeah. roll up to these castles and shit be like <laughs> i will help you not only with like you know resources and weapons and stuff i will give you specific information that will allow you to complete your very specific goal against all of the interests of the lords in this area and they're not going to do anything to me yeah. you're like what yeah they're you get like, every in, single in, objective from him, like right? the merchant has the fucking glowing red eyes so then when you kill him and he comes back there's kind of that weird i mean obviously <laughs> it's very video gamey but there's that part of it where it's kind of like is he a fucking otherworldly because i've seen some weird shit in here but then the duke is in just a normal guy who's like oh i just happened to teleport around yeah and four he has like glowing and, red well eyes. he was a ganado in four uh yeah so it's not a stretch to be like well maybe there's some f other fucking part of him that explains why he's able to fucking yeah, you, come back from from this yeah he's special more of a mission. yeah yeah he's he's more of a game mechanic he's like he's a yeah. shop mechanic personified sure. but yeah. that's all they ever made him to be and that's what that's cool. all he ever was the, the fact that you can kill him and he comes back is like yeah obviously that's gamey but like as as a kid it wasn't it wasn't a stretch for me to be like oh maybe there's like something to him that he's yeah just maybe there's yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But this, but you get to a certain point where you try and explain and describe things oh, where sure. your mind starts tanking it seriously because you're clearly trying to, it, it's like the Doom Eternal story. You, you're trying too hard and now it's an issue. Yeah, if it, think, less is more with, with uh, the merchant, but if you're going to go all out, it's like, okay, but now you need to, you, you like providing us too many things and now it's like, wait, what the fuck? What's happening? Well, I think all of us when playing it at one point would have been like, Duke, what is, what is up with you? Like the fucking character says it. So, you know, even worse than that though, I, I, is there a single main objective that you don't get from the Duke? He, like, he gives you almost every single objective. Yeah, he directs here, you throughout the whole here, game. Yeah. So to and say, then Ethan's oh, a dick, dick to him. Yeah. yeah, Ethan's also a twat to him. Yeah, Ethan's a dick to the one guy who's like sort of helping him because Ethan's a shit character and I hate him. And I'm glad we, oh, he's terrible. Dead. He's the, the worst. Only time, that could be our segue really on the next. Oh, hold on, hold on. Was towards the Segway. end. He is not hmm? dead. Fuck off. No, I'm dead serious. I, so, so, no, so I wanted to bring this up and I told Metal. Well, that's this. why I'm upset. I'm Metal <laughs> the only person I told this. So there is a actually. Well, well go, sorry, ahead, go ahead. I just want to. I just want to get. Are you talking about the after credits scene? Yes, there's a camera mod, and Ethan's walking next to the car. That's who that is. And it's now, see, the question is, did they just but use that because it was it was a convenient model, camera or do you think setup? they actually meant that? I think they did because it's his exact model without the jacket on. You well, it's his if, model. Yeah, but like, if you were developing it and you could put any model there, putting Ethan there is like, mm, exactly. we're definitely gonna give off an impression. Why would you put really better on Chris there? Why? Well, why would you not? Unless like magically the mold didn't destroy and it just he fucking com gooped back together. I mean, he survived. The, he survived a lot, he right? So yeah, car stops right next to him. So it's mm. not like it's a vision or anything. No, no, I saw that too. Uh, and when you're looking at it, it's like clearly supposed to look like Ethan, you know, like to even from really far away. Um, but I got to hope that they like, come on, maybe they were just leaving it. So maybe there could be something, but they couldn't possibly have actually intended. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> could you imagine if they bring him well, back for we were, RE9? No, I wonder if say, so many people would say, it's a, it's a placeholder uh, thing. He's like, be, you, put oh, another fucking yeah. character there. I, here's my the thing. Actually we're, made a very compelling point. My friend pointed out that like, uh, and I mean, I'm curious to hear how you guys sound because I'm not really married to the idea, but. The concept that, like, I originally approached it, like, I don't give a fuck about Ethan. Who the fuck is this guy? He just got whisked away to save his girlfriend. Now he got whisked away to save his wife. And it just happens to be that, like, the entire Resident Evil fucking chronology just, like, smacked into sorry, his, the, sorry, his life. Yeah, that's fine. And, uh, yeah, just the, everything involving Resident Evil just fucking rammed into his life. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was obnoxious. Like, I don't care about him. I care about Chris. I care about Jill. I care about Wesker. I care about Barry. I care about Brad. I care, that whole, like, group of dudes. And then my friend was well, like, yeah, but like Ethan doesn't know any of this shit. He's complete. He's a complete civilian. He's just fighting desperately for his life. So there's actually like a justifiable explanation or, you know, a justifiable expectation that he would be like, fuck, shit, what the fuck? To like everything. I'm Whereas Chris would just problem. be like, oh, I've seen zombies and hunters and tyrants. Well, and if we want to move to criticizing his dialogue, there's so many counters to that. Because yeah. I've seen oh, that. Actually, argument. Before, before we <laughs> go further, before we get away too far from the whole uh, getting locked off of things in this game. Uh, one one thing that's especially weird to me is that one thing in the in the graveyard with the door in front of it. 
uh, and yeah. it's like yeah. a little crypt or anything, whatever it is. Right. That only specifically opens after the doll. After the doll fight. And then it closes yeah. right oh, after. Right? Sorry, it closes uh, right after. You can't get it before, you can't get it after. So, so, so to clarify years. for people who are confused, in the graveyard, yeah. in the village, there is a tomb that is locked. Tomb, yeah. And uh, there's, some, there's something in it, you know, something. Like, quote, could, quote. Um, see, it, like the, it's a piece yeah. of the crypt that matches the one that's like the big shriny thing on the way to oh, the spooky the slab, house. The slab. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's part of the slab. So when you kill Spooky Doll, that opens up, you grab it, you take it back, and then you can unlock. Uh, it's like a. Is it like a chalice or something? I can't quite yeah, remember. Yeah, it's, it's, but... it's something to, to sell. It's, a, yeah. it's one of the treasures. Yeah. It's the it's... only treasure I, I, I couldn't get in my first playthrough. And I was really annoyed that it was just locked yeah, out. Well, of it. you know what, Mel? It's pretty counterintuitive, I would say. Yeah, how the fuck am I supposed to figure out it's going to open up at this exact moment? I, I got I... it. By... Well, there is only, I would argue, a small clue for that. Um, Which would be? You have to yeah, know, what, get, you get, your, get your sniper, zoom into the treasure and it, where it's locked in, and notice that it's uh, kind okay. of a part of a slab, and then see no, the I... part of the slab is missing, and then be like, oh, maybe it'll open up when I kill the spooky lady. Like that is this is what I mean. It's like, oh yeah, because that's really natural. Everyone's gonna be fucking playing the game that way. That's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, no. Before we before we jump off of the whole getting locked out of places, can I just say it was really annoying when the fetus thing showed up when I went to go through a door <laughs> yeah. that was previously yeah. unlocked and then it was locked and then I died. That was really fucking yeah. annoying. And then, I, I'm pretty sure the as, game as does it a few times. As annoying as that times. part became, that the initial bit of that entire section was like, I mean, I, I really enjoyed at last. I like the idea oh, of just being completely. Sorry, I don't want to. Hide. I, so I'm not talking about the 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 broader thing of like having this enemy chasing you. Like I thought that was cool. No, no, no I, I know My you're talking about like the actual specific locked. the fact that it locked. Yeah, you know, I, I was just praising the... the fact that that like. That made me shit myself. That part, like just the <laughs> yeah, design but, alone, well, fucking yeah. incredible. We'll get yeah, to it. Is cool, the, the game, the game yeah, betrayed yeah, yeah. Fringy is the point. No, what, no, yeah, that's okay. what I'm, I'm saying. Is like say it's that. really, <laughs> and I know you're on the part because I've got it up on the stream. The opening part where the enemies just swarm you. Mm -hmm. um, I thought yeah. that sequence was incredibly bad. Like it was, it was. Yeah, in, just, it's, I was actually astounded by how bad it was because I had no idea what to do. Yeah, it's just fine. It well. It, I've got, the, the, very... I'll, if I can kick it off with a quick criticism, because I'm not entirely sure we are going to go with that, but I was just going to say that mm -hmm. uh, you are forced into the end of this, like, really, really clunkily. Uh, you'll see it in this playthrough, but I'm grabbed while I'm, like, in a, in a, in a house and just thrown through all the walls oh, to really? land into the cutscene. It's oh, super yeah. awkward, and it's just the game being, it's probably the best example of the developer being like, can you please do what we say? You're like, oh, <laughs> sorry, I, yeah, no problem. Well, uh, so yeah, the game does I it think, a couple of times over uh, in, the, yeah. in the game. Th that particular sequence is, because it's, it's a force loss scenario, but the problem is that force loss scenarios generally should not be done ever, because as a player, you go into any encounter reasonably expecting that you can win, Yep. So, like, in this particular encounter, the way to win is to not win in a specific area of the map. Can I, and what I are don't you guys know talking how... about? Well, I just the, got the, the, the opening sequence. The werewolf fight. Yeah. Well, the, like, uh, the werewolf that... fight, the opening the one? Fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the opening oh, yeah. one. There's oh, that... yeah, this um, one is, this one seems to be time-based. Uh, six minutes, as to compare it to, apparently. As to compare it with Resident Evil 4, I don't want to hijack the conversation, but... Um, Resident Evil 4, this is clearly trying to set up the opening of Resident Evil 4's village sequence. Yep. But in Resident Evil 4 sequence, you had to kill, I think, 15 Ganados before the bell yeah, would ring. You right. couldn't yeah. just wait mm. it out. So it's that is a that is a difference yeah. between and the two. And ringing the I'm bell saying... doesn't like fucking drag you through walls to to give you a cutscene or whatever. It, it just you, the bell yeah. rings. So and the enemies could magically spare you for no reason. Just magical mm. fucking segue. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I I never had the drag through walls thing. Uh, I got from what I understood, oh, you'll, hopefully you'll if, see if, it soon. If you yeah, if you, you if you uh, kill enough guys, uh, Ethan says, "Oh, there's no end to them or whatever." And at that mm -hmm. point, um, something at, at some point the big the the big bad comes by. Your eyes. And, one, and once yeah. the big bad comes by, if you walk to the river, it'll initiate. You getting yeah. shot through the the leg, and I think that's yeah. the, the way. You're that's yeah, that's what they oh, want you to do. I, I didn't get shot yeah. through the leg. Oh, that happened yeah, she, different for me. 
Yeah, well, yeah, no, you, everyone, share, everyone, so, everyone gets so shot through the leg because he pulled it out. With you guys, can I share a personal anecdote with you guys about that entire like werewolf like beginning section, a la like Resident Evil Four's opening? I don't think that you're right. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> go for it. Uh, I I was blazed out of my fucking mind with that part, and it it was so. <laughs> That was just so out of out of nowhere and effective for establishing the threat that is the lichens that I like I was really genuinely terrified. I didn't know whether or not like this is one of those like oh win the battle. This game's fun with drugs, kind of everyone. It's different. <laughs> Most games are fun with drugs, but yeah, no, it was it was it was it was something, man. I don't know. I just oh, had yeah. to I just had to share that. <laughs> I was yeah. still on board with the game on my first playthrough, but I think that's just because this is the kind of the first thing that happens of any real like. Of remem remembrance, mm -hmm. so I was totally on board with this game because I hadn't figured out that it's basically completely broken in every aspect yet. Um, yeah. but I, I actually yeah. I actually survived the whole thing on my on my first try when I, I ran out it. of ammo. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I yeah. killed so many of those guys. I'm like, oh shit, I'm making so much cash. It's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if we take this, we take the compare. It. So this game is. Not in this is game spits in the face of the concept of intuition. Um, mm -hmm. Resident Evil 4's village sequence, because we're talking about these sequences, they're supposed to be in reference, or the latter is supposed to be in reference to the former. They're trying to recreate that. Resident Evil 4 happens, Ganados are coming, they want to kill you, so you kill them back, you defend yourself, you fight them. This is mm -hmm. extremely intuitive and it makes total sense in every way imaginable. The game even has the thing where, oh, if you go inside the one house to grab the shotgun, well, now you're much more powerful. So mm. we're going to spawn a chainsaw mini boss for you to kind of, you know, balance that out. He drops a ruby. Always kill him. So, no, the first one drops 10,000 and the second one drops a ruby. It's going to matter. I mean, order. That, that, even that's so, like an interesting design choice because you have to yes. force the player to decide whether, like, on subsequent playthroughs, okay, do I want to save? Do I want to just go the path of least resistance and survive and get a fucking shotgun? And because the moment you get that shotgun, you're using that with its stopping power to stop the, the chainsaw man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a very it's yeah, impressive. The, yeah. It's, it's a nifty little thing that the game does to say, all right, you've increased mm -hmm. in power and yep. we're going to throw a little mini, little mini boss at you. He's not difficult, really. But he's yeah. certainly very intimidating the first time you're oh, playing yeah. through. Once yeah. you, the other know, enemies play. are more forgiving compared to him, but, and he just one-shots you. So it's like, you have to make these choices as a player in the first and second time you play it. I, I think little stuff like that is really interesting. And yeah. so if you compare that to, as I was saying, um, if you compare that village sequence of how the way to progress is the intuitive thing to do, killing the Ganados that are trying to kill you, in Resident Evil Village, it's just a timer. You don't want to kill the enemies because it doesn't matter if you kill them so because you have ammo. to survive for a time. So why would you bother wasting your resources for the not really to much the of a player return? on a first playthrough? Yes, gonna, it's yeah. This game is about crafting an illusion to you about intuition. Yes. Yeah. But so many things in this game, you have to do the thing that doesn't make any sense so mm -hmm. that you can progress forwards because mm -hmm. the yeah, game is on rails it wants that's to be why there's a lot of normies that genuinely think that like the first time they play through an action game like this they play through it once and with no further investigation like that was fucking perfect was like yeah 10 and, the, 10. and then people like us were massive fucking nerds play it twice and they're like, yes exactly oh, that <laughs> um, yep. i think a lot of people will come away being like my experience was so cool and then the next guy they're like oh you know what did you do in this part and they go oh, i did that and you're like, oh same what did you do in this part it's like yeah i did that it's like oh yeah yeah <laughs> that, yeah <laughs> I did the um, exact yeah. same thing. That's I did the awesome. exact same thing too. Uh, everything is the same. same way. Crazy. Red minds think alike. Well, in, in RE4, uh, I think there actually is a timer, but it's like seven minutes. And by that time, okay. you've probably been. If you kill the Ganados first, it activates it, which I think almost certainly happens. Yeah, it, it might be some um, weird modifier, like, oh, you have to kill I like, think a the timer. Of five. I think the timer is almost like a forgiveness mechanic. Can I also just highlight some? Because you're this. almost certainly going to kill the Ganados first. This footage is reminding me. They all slowly move toward you in this sequence. If you just walk around, they're all just slowly. Mm -hmm. They don't like, even attack you. They just kind of really, walk around. You just as a player again, you're like, what is happening? <laughs> I thought it was a stealth sequence. I don't know. Well, I thought when the when the glycans are up on top and they're not not moving or looking around, I thought this was a stealth sequence. Yeah, I mean, but. Yeah. I guess it wasn't because if you get to cause crouching in this game, I don't know what the purpose of crouching in this game is. There's nothing. 
to go through holes. Go, to go through the <laughs> fireplace. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah go oh, through the fireplace. Oh, no. Okay. That's the only the reason. Factory. But yeah, I, I, I think because I was just like random thoughts like, oh, am I, are we, is there some kind of awkward piece right now? Am I allowed to walk through here? Because they clearly can see me if they want to, so they're not attacking me. It's like, what is happening? It's like, no, no, they're about to attack you. You're like, okay. <laughs> All right. It's like, yeah, you got to wait 10 seconds. They're, they're going to attack you. That's, that's just, yeah. Someone said they literally spell it out to you, survive. So, survive <laughs> could mean killing all of your attackers. Yep. Most, mm -hmm. I mean, especially in a fighting game, you survive by killing the attackers. If you, if you give me a game, with, if you give me a shotgun and a pistol, and you, and you push me into an area with enemies and say survive. I survive, yeah. I'm going to kill gonna the kill enemies everything. trying to kill me. I'm not going to think, think um... oh, well, once I survive six minutes, I'll be all right. I think yeah. it's uh it it depends on the context, right? Because like in Halo Reach, when at the end of the game they say survive, you should be able to, you should know that you can't. And the, in Reach, but, yeah, but, in like you know that you can't survive this. I suppose it but wouldn't matter, right? Even if you, you get the same ending, well, that's the thing. Even if you don't recognize it, you're still going to lose eventually. There's yeah. nowhere to go. There's no, this is the beginning of the game. My assumption is that there's a place I'm meant to get to or, uh, or something, yeah, this... especially when you give me a map. Like, I assume that there's somewhere I need to go. Mm -hmm. And how, I don't, how is anybody supposed to understand that you're meant to go to a very specific part of the level and then get shot in the leg? And then that will trigger a cutscene. Well, or you, is you it, I don't know. It's, well, I don't, think it's I don't know if it's place. specific. It's not a yeah. special place. No, it uses some was, trickery with the editing. Yeah, you'll point got, your no, perspective it, to the okay. ground. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll have him. Roof. He'll grab you. The camera will like spin around, and there'll be a shot mm -hmm. of the sky, and then they'll they'll transport you to where you need to be for the cutscene to yes. continue. Uh, Which was right. funny because I was on the roof in it, and then all of a sudden the lichen threw me, and I was in the middle of the river. Yeah, for oh, me, yeah. Um, me off a roof Metal well. was watching me. Yeah, Metal was watching me when I played that. It's gonna happen in my footage soon, but what? I get grabbed while I'm in this house and I get thrown to a <coughs> to the place, and I'm very confused. On a later playthrough, um, I actually sat in the bottom of this corner of this place, and uh, huh. it was a good like two minutes of nothing. Everything was dead as well, and then like the second I stood outside, something spawned behind me and grabbed me. So the game tr sometimes tries to account for players not working with them but then sometimes it just gives up and it's like no fuck you this is what happens it You're normally like, okay. gives up yeah um i also yeah. saw someone in, in, in the chat saying like this sucks there's like no one here defending the game it's like this game's not very good um it's, it's really not hard good game. this is a very you poorly constructed game and this is the thing, very this, unintuitive hence the opening i know that you enjoyed it person listening right now who's very frustrated enjoy i enjoyed it, it too yeah. but this is oh, yeah. not I'm playing it right now. <laughs> this is not what <laughs> games are capable of don't, okay don't worry about it because we, we might be more charitable later and have some interesting things to say about it. so it's yeah like when we get to the story and the writing you know? i'm sure we'll be very yeah wait until i get to the story and I lose my fucking mind. So yeah, I I have a I have a positive and negative about the scene. One like the scene might work in like Left 4 Dead or Halo Reach or whatever, but in a survival game where you've got at most like two magazines on you at all, all times, you're you're it seems like you're meant to just kill all of these guys. So I I like you, Mar Muller. I at used stage, all my ammo. Yeah. I used all my ammo. By the end of this, I'm like, oh, I'm completely screwed. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. I just wasted uh, all my ammo on these guys. Yeah, you feel I, didn't, I have to kill. You feel a little bit cheated because you're like, oh, was I supposed yeah. to just run away? And then, and if you look at my second place well, attempt now, I've ran into a corner by accident. I, I, I didn't necessarily know I was doing that. And I was just like, I guess I gotta just fucking try and kill him, try and run past him. It's getting a little confusing because I'm just like, what, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, what? Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah, my That's first exactly playthrough. Like, experience was. My, my first playthrough, I was like, kill everything, you know, as, as intelligently as I can, and hide and survive. Oh, I never saw the guy get you from behind. Or no, that was just. Oh, wrong. here we go. Yeah, and then yeah. he throws so, you. Oh, he throws you. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah. So this yeah, is suddenly you're in the river. I think it, it might have been my second playthrough because I, I remember I get tossed through. I was tossed through a house at some point. Yeah, I was in a house and got I pulled and thrown straight through a door. So, That's funny. It seems for me it just happened to line up. Yeah, yeah. I, you I, have, I, you I, have I, to be at that river. So there's two triggers. It looks like there's one trigger yeah. where you kill it. You kill enough. You get the big bad to come out. And then if you if you run to the river, which I guess they assume you're going to run to the river because that's kind of the roughly the way you would go to try to escape if you want to run back to where you you mm -hmm. you know but could potentially escape. That will happen naturally, where you look up to the sky, you'll get your knee you know shot or whatever, and you see the big bad. But I guess if you take too long, they have like a state like a a, yeah. a backup uh, like a 
contingency yeah. effect it's where like they'll throw you. you. Yeah, just um, some Randy grabs you like from behind or whatever, and mm -hmm. he just throws, he just throws you, you where you need to yeah. be. I'm two sure things. it spawns there too. Yeah. Uh, two yeah. things. One, did any of you guys find any of the lichens very scary, or were they more cool, or was it just like, oh yeah, they were not scary. Threat. It was boring. Honestly. They were not yeah. scary. I feel like they wasted the concept and the designs were kind of it, boring. It, it just did, felt... Really quickly, did you guys, I'll let you answer that more, but Dulce, did you also realize that like every major enemy and boss in that game, when they like get introduced to you, they just like lean in and yeah. you're yep. sitting there staring. It's like, oh, look, at the fucking, I, look at the Resident Evil engine. It's like, yeah, I know. It, yeah, I think, I think the, uh, the it, peak of that is when you just allow Moreau to vomit all over you. You're like, yep. well, why yeah. not, I guess. Why, don't, why do you even <laughs> listen to him? Just take yeah. your fucking piece of your daughter oh, and be like, he's dude, I know, I know. <laughs> in, yeah, I, in the it opening me... segment, good. In, in the opening segment, I recall them on horses. Yes. yes. Does that yeah. ever pop up again? No. no. Nope. 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 Uh -uh. Which, because when I saw them on horses, I was like, oh, like they're they're a society. Wait. They have. Oh, cool. he had a fucking like, person those on a bike. It was those awesome. were presumably the horses from the merchant's carriage. Oh, well, oh when funny. they had oh, that the storyline really? intended, then they oh. were doing, yeah, those. Jesus, Clearly, there was no. things that they were going to do at some point in some way, but it just like with, they just didn't do it. Yeah, because like the rest of the game treats it as though they're kind of just rabid, you know, lads mm -hmm, right. just running around the world. Not yeah, the cause, uh, well, as, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. Can I bring up one thing about that whole scene, that like cut scene where they're fighting you and forcing you? Yeah, go for it. So, all right. So there's like forty fucking lichens or whatever, and there's the big bad Ur Urius or whatever his name is. They surround you. You have a fucking arrow in your leg. You're on the ground. They could easily kill you, right? Mm -hmm. Why the fuck does Miranda call them off? Well, I don't so know. So if we're going to talk about that, that's going to lead into talking about the story, probably, right? Because uh -huh. yes, but I'm I'm just I'm bringing that up because. Well, regardless, it's incredibly lucky because why would they have been sent to kill you but then to told not to kill you? Like, what exactly. the hell's going on there? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um. And just yeah, like like the timing of it all, because any of you, any of them could have killed him at any point. It's very very strange. Um, which yeah, I don't know if you guys do. do we could start with that because we can just go chronologically, right? Like, and we have yeah. the benefit of knowing the storyline. So, you know, if if I, this is gonna be tough chat, if there's anyone here right now who thinks this was a well written story, I, I oh, so oh, I know you <laughs> might want to leave. <laughs> just get out of here <laughs> while you can. <laughs> so you might want to just leave. It, it, rather than leaving, post in the chat why this is a fucking 10 out of 10 story, and we'll explain why you're wrong. <laughs> no, they're just gonna say that we're wrong, and they're not ever gonna offer any actual they're explanation. No, they're just gonna say well, we're uh, wrong. I, I hope we're it was, like, and... fucking memes, but someone said, like, I don't, how many games have you made, Bola? And it's like, oh boy. Oh, <laughs> I have made no games Zoriak? as bad as Resident Evil 8. I yep, I have that. not made any as bad as this, so yeah, this is a plus. Um, how many so, well, if we're gonna talk about the story, mean, right, there's two different sides of that. There's Ethan and then the lore, right? So... Like, Ethan is probably a good sp spot to start. Oh, yeah. I well, I was going to start just um, where the game starts, right? Like, yeah. Uh, we, can, we can talk about Mia. it with context from the rest of the game. So, Chris's decision to mow down Mia slash Miranda right. and not and tell Ethan nothing. anything was and really fucking nothing. stupid. That was like, yep. very stupid. Well, it, when it, you know it's really bad when the game later on tells you, you it's bad. Told him. Yeah. yeah. That, and the, Chris yeah, the game is literally like, you're dumb. You should have told him. And it's like, oh my God, really? And then like, he goes, yeah. yeah. It yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I don't think yeah. it matches up either because they're clearly like trying to keep the meme going with the audience for as long as possible. When Chris sees you in Moreau's place, he should be like, "Holy fuck, Ethan! What are you doing? Like, are you okay?" Yeah, how, like, but in, how are you here? here? Instead, he's like, "Ethan, look who I it is! You. You're out I of your depth." Like, I, just I still, you. I'm still definitely the villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, Ethan, it's I'm a. Fucking... a, a Lord, I'm Chris's... fucking epic, Ethan. Hello. Just every Chris... scene is just like, whoa, it's Chris. It's so cool. I like Chris's attitude. It's like, well, what are you doing, Ethan? Looking for your daughter or something? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right. like, Who would do okay. that? Well, okay, so I think this is the fundamental fuck up because there's lots of ways to look at it, right? But um, Chris decides it would be better for Ethan to think I assassinated his fucking wife than realizing that wasn't his wife. It's like, yeah. are you yeah. insane? Why? It's like, well, I don't want him to look into this. It's like, Chris. He's gonna try and kill you. Like what? Yeah. Why would you? Like how? And, and you know the solution is just yeah. Tell him everything that's happening, and if you don't want him to get involved, you arrest him. I don't yeah. understand. It's even better than that. Uh, he tells his wife everything. Well, like, every time Ethan sees Chris, he's not even <laughs> mad. He's just like, oh yeah, you killed my wife, but like okay. 
He's the <laughs> Ollie has yeah, he does well, how, dude, dude, if some dude killed your wife, wouldn't you fucking like the second you see them try to kill them? Like Well, look you, at this you kind game of from I was just gonna say Go you ahead. get a, you get a little bit of that. You know, he's like, "Kill me, like you killed my wife," because his dialogue's great. Uh, uh, you know, Chris yeah, is kind of just like, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the the one thing I uh, about two thirds of the story, I realized um, that the one thing that ruins the story of this game is uh, uh, throughout any point in the game, ask yourself, where in the hell is Chris? Because yeah. at every single point, like at the end, he's freaking incredible he can mow down people he's got tons of ammo he's got a, a literal uh you know airborne you know bombs and stuff AC bombs are gonna blow up the entire village like at any point in time chris could have uh done everything that ethan did at 10 times the speed but for some reason he's just absent ethan does literally everything like up until everything. the end everything and, and then yeah. and then chris yeah. at the end is like oh yeah i guess i should probably uh kill the bad things and it's like, yep. what are you doing the entire why, time? Uh, yeah. it's like, why was the, that's what I'm saying? Like, why did Ethan kill the lords when Chris could have just fucked everything up and mowed yeah. everyone down? There? Exactly, it's so painful because you find uh, that I know someone in chat's going to mention it as well, but the the game is trying to imply like, no, 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 no. Chris is doing his own thing. You find uh, so, some of his stuff in different parts of the he's game. You know, mission. he's around. Yeah. He's but it's like, no, what was he doing? Because I did everything. So what did he yeah. do? Yeah. <laughs> You Not only Chris, but Chris at the very his last second, dudes. him and his entire squadron show up in the square you've been yep. like perusing around for fucking ten hours. There's a huge number of soldiers. Everyone you know, just thought there's a fucking huge castle that just all this shit and his team everything. disappear. Um, that was one of the. I think I was in a call with like metal or something when I was doing it on Village of Shadows, and I was like, you you introduce with your whole team. They talk about how ah, oh, it's been so long since we've been together since we've been doing recon stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. And by the way, another example of really shitty dialogue. Uh, if you guys remember, she says like, "Oh, it's it's weird doing this compared to recon." He goes, "Yes, but the recon gave us Miranda's location or something like that." It's like, oh. <laughs> um, I want to say one thing about that. Well, wait. So the point I wanted to make was that like you see them all, and one of them hands you like binoculars or whatever, and then you're like, "All right, time to move." You move slightly to the right. Enemy spawn. Your entire team's gone. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> he says, he says, I bet we're gonna like. Be on the lookout to encounter the enemy, and then it's you turn. To, I encounter the enemy, and then and it's just Chris. He's like, yeah, he's yeah. like, oh, we're, we're gonna just go do our thing. You, you go ahead and take out the entire village, Chris. It's like, cool, <laughs> thanks. Also, are we not going to talk about the deep subtext and the, like the the B plot of? Oh, of, well, wait of a sec. Chris um, trying to get yeah. Ethan to to fuck Claire. We let's, they could make the big since like Leon didn't want to do it. You remember that? Let's start back at the um yeah the beginning here. Yeah, Think yeah. about it's, no one's gonna happens, acknowledge what I just said. I'm not I'm not touching characters. that. I'm not <laughs> touching it. Not no, touching it. Gotcha. Not even with my butt okay. cheeks. <laughs> Think about how this game no changes story wise. If Chris opened up the game, or if he contacted you, or sent you a little message or a letter, or pulled you aside one day when you were out getting groceries and said, "Hey, dude, so like that Mia is actually this weird, crazy bioweapon that we invented for this game." <laughs> and she is a shapeshifter and she's she looks like your wife but she's not actually your wife she's a weird creepy person and we don't know where mia is right now and also your daughter rose like man fucking get this so rose is like this crazy thing it blah 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 blah. and then he just tells ethan this the game just wouldn't happen <laughs> no. it wouldn't exist yeah the game uh, wouldn't exist i would love to hear that voicemail it's like Hey Ethan, if I come by and actually shoot your wife twenty times and and <laughs> yeah, dinner, don't you hit. know, don't 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 take it personally. But, Chris, you're cool. Don't be at home tonight. <laughs> if that happens, just like don't act surprised, okay? Like, it's just, yeah, right. Like, don't just, worry, it'll be all right. Just take yeah, my word for it. Just do. Trust me, it's fine. But we'll if we got okay. if we've got to have the big crate, Chris just really he just loves to shoot chicks. So he goes in there and he blasts his. the Miranda shapeshifter with <laughs> with lots of bullets. Chris should know better than anyone that bullets clearly just don't do the trick in this yes. universe. Yes, yep. yeah. So well, why don't Chris they do more than anyone she, shoots well, this crazy no, fire they, weapon? They, she, she faked herself as a, uh, a corpse, I remember? She should have yeah. instantly oh, poured gasoline. A, yes. Instantly Dude, should have lit course. that bitch on fire. Yeah, burns her. was like one of the most fucking you know, advanced shapeshifters so ever. Spread her ashes of to the floor into damage. the earth. <laughs> we just went out. She's dead. It's fine. Chris, oh, but yeah, this but is after Resident Evil Seven, of course. Girl. Well, she pretended like, to be a corpse. No. That's sure to trick Chris. Pretended to be yeah, a corpse. It worked. <laughs> pretended to it's so be it's a so corpse. fucking absurd. It's like Chris. Most yeah. of what you fight fucking used to be a corpse. Not to mention, you said it's the most like one of the most advanced. You know. Bioweapons in the world. 
and you just go, and oh, is, she's dead, and just throw her in the is, car with you. Like, what? Well, this no, he's like like immediately he, after he Resident Evil 7. Him. Yeah. So they, Chris goes I don't know, with his buddies, they just go get some beers, like, yeah, well done, high fives all around, we killed the bitch. Uh, you, Chris, baby, bioweapon, and you, random guy, uh, guy who for some reason doesn't have a weapon, by the way. <laughs> you just you just drive, drive wherever you want to go. All right, boss, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Oh, yeah. no, she's alive. And everyone gets slaughtered, and you just Freezing. wake up. And she spares yeah, you yeah. because Miranda wants you dead, but alive, but dead, but alive, but dead, but alive throughout this entire game. She calls off the lichens because she wants you alive. Well, they also right. drive you out towards this castle and village for some reason. But I guess my, well... I guess the point I was getting at there at the beginning was, let's say you're Chris and you just have to shoot Miranda a lot. And then you think, I shot her a lot, so she's probably dead because bioweapons I could just kill with small arms very easily. Sure. Um, and you kill Miranda, quote unquote kill Miranda. Mm -hmm. You take Rose. Ethan is there to witness all of this. And you don't just tell him what's going on. Even then, Chris doesn't yeah. tell Ethan no. what's happening. So you put him... Without telling him anything, you put him into a truck, and then Mia, I guess she's in another truck, or is maybe no, she, she's she, in that truck? She might be in that one. Not, she might be, yeah. that's the thing, we don't know. They, they take only this one, body. There's only one crash truck in, uh, in the beginning. Yeah, I think they're all guy. in that, it's the super all truck, in everyone's truck. in there. <laughs> that's they're what I was trying to get at. And Chris is just in some, some different truck, I guess, because I think there's like a note that says, oh, we were too late when we arrived at the truck. It's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah right so Chris end, yeah. wasn't with the truck, He would. it, yeah. it wasn't that important, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, so when Chris had well, Chris had Rose. Chris had Rose when they left the house. So yeah, had, where was the baby? They put Rose it in the same there. truck with the corpse. Oh, and yeah, they put it on the you? corpse in Ethan's truck. Yep. yep. So, yeah, that's what I was trying here. to explain earlier. It's like they're, yeah. they're all in the same truck, but the guys with the weapons Chris, are not for some reason. Yeah, the guys with all the weapons are in a different truck. Don't worry. It's <laughs> really stupid. It's like a soldier. Well, it's not stupid two. because it allows the story to happen. <laughs> uh, they could have written it slightly differently oh, so slightly, that it would make just sense slightly. like it's really fucking stupid there's a lot of problems they, with that yeah they could have just written it to where crit like so miranda as mia is waiting for her time to reveal herself and take rose or fucking whatever but chris and his team of super cool gun people they're watching because they think they're not sure but they have a hunch that this shapeshifter might be Mia to get close to Rose. Or maybe the shapeshifter is Ethan. They don't know which one it is, so they're keeping an eye on both of them. Well, Miranda reveals herself. She feels the time's right to abduct Rose or whatever. Ethan puts up a struggle, and then boom, boom, bam, bam, bullets come through the window. It's very dramatic. And then Miranda falls over, and she's definitely dead because bullets are very effective. And... Then Chris in, Usually, comes yeah. in and explains what's going on. And then you have the initial shock for your fucking trailer. Mm -hmm. And then you have moments after where Chris oh. explains things like any reasonable person oh, yeah. would do to Probably someone who believes cool. that their wife could, is you could, sure. not really. I would even yeah, settle for the, the cliche of he shoots her down and because the, the story no will be that he well no I, I was gonna try and we can try and try and make it a little bit better than that right like he finds out she's Miranda he immediately rushes to this place kills her and Ethan like you know Ethan would have a pistol in this house he would absolutely have one at this point and so he like you they, go to grab one you aim it at Chris and Chris is like no 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 stop 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 you don't understand he could even shoot Chris to knock Chris out of the campaign temporarily um she and you know, he, he doesn't get to kill him, but then the other guys, like, shoot a taser, and Ethan's knocked out. So you don't find out, and it's clear that Chris was going to explain something, but we don't get it from him yet, you know? Something, That's yes. You've got to do yeah. something. Anything. This story Anything. falls apart at the at the most Literally casual the of observations. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's not like you even have to look into it. It just falls apart in front of you. You don't realize it makes you upset how... when you meet Chris later on, so it persists throughout the whole game. Yeah. It's not like, oh, this yeah. is a silly setting we can forget about. When no, you meet Chris later, game. Chris is like, oh, I didn't tell you because I'm a fucking retard. And then he tries <laughs> to explain it to you later, and you get upset because Ethan is... Well, maybe Chris was right about Ethan, and Ethan it really is an idiot. No. It, it, it continues yeah. to be <laughs> an issue throughout the plot, this Chris yeah. thing. Oh, like, Chris just a dick to you. He's like, oh, plot. you're out of your depth. Like, I just killed two Yes. Hard. What are you talking yep, about? Exactly. Like, what were you doing? Yeah, <laughs> because he <laughs> needs to be, we have to have him be a villain until the end where he's not a villain. Well, you know what I wanted on that? Okay, so on that part where you know we're near the end when he's like, all right, I'm going to tell you everything. And he goes, he goes to Ethan and says, hey, me that wrench. <laughs> Fades so to black. Fades black. Oh, I, was I was so, so shocked. I was going to beat him over the fucking head and knock him out again. I was like, yes, do it. Do it. It'll be even worse. Do it. And then he didn't. I got sad. 
<laughs> this person I don't trust and think is a villain who murdered my uh, my wife in front of me and attacks me. He wants that wrench over there. Uh, yep. Well, here yep. you go. <laughs> yep. It um, might fade yep. to black, but not the way you were expecting. <laughs> just, just a quick deviation, and we'll jump right back on. But I just saw it in the gameplay a little bit earlier there. But if you guys remember when you first meet the old hag, she closes the door to the entire other portion yeah, of the village. Slowly. You just stand and, there. And Chris, yeah, Chris, uh, fuck it, not Chris. Ethan is like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. I want to you know, ask you more quite Wait, don't, don't. It's like, it's, also, it's an old woman slowly closing a door. <laughs> you can stop it. <laughs> well, and not only that, but when she closes the door, Miranda. you could see her model disappear through the yeah. cracks. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> and it's, it's a permanent lock as well. That door never opens back up. It's fucking yep. annoying. There's no yeah, reason because it, it interconnects through the Duke. Why can't I open that door back up? Not, not to mention, why, why is the old lady even in the game when it's Miranda? Well, so she could be the there. Toy with like Ethan? Like just, just, I, th with I think it's literally to satisfy a trope. It's the old crone. Yeah, the, it's the right. witch of the wild. Yeah, it's oh, the old why? witch who lives in the woods, who's really weird, and like you think she's evil, but she's not like evil, evil. She still like will work with you and help you, but maybe to satisfy some strange goal you're not aware of. She's very enigmatic and mysterious and she weird. That old crone the in the woods. Game. Yeah, she has nothing. You're right. Uh, she no, she alludes to the either. Dark yeah. Souls 2 old women. I was just like, oh, you're completely fucking inconsequential to the overall Well, if you're H-Bomber guy, you're you can right interpret it as a detailed reference that tells you a lot about all the history and stuff. It's just like, yeah. Okay, yeah, you yeah. fucking virgin. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you loser. Exactly. Uh, yeah, fuck that, you. that's directed at H-Bomber guy, not me. I just said. That's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, Miranda is actually a really avid cosplayer, and Village Con's been, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, empty for the last couple of years. So she likes dressing up. She keeps killing people. all the villagers. Village no wonder Village Con is empty. What a horrible <laughs> venue. Holy shit. In Romania. Just, just why? Why does she like why does why does she feel the need to do this? It, oh, none so, of that someone, is explained. Someone in chat yeah. said it opens up after you kill Moreau, it actually disappears. Yeah, I, I obviously I, I meant to clarify before. Well, like literally you when you were opening up um the Moreau route, it's still closed. And at that point it just feels arbitrary, but um, you have oh, a locked door to Moreau's anyway. You have to get the, the winged key upgrade, so I don't know why. What is the point of locking that off? It's just a place I could look in, but now can't. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned that, that you were going to say it's a, a waste. I kind of feel like Miranda is the biggest waste. You have a character who can shapeshift into anything. She could show up to you as Chris. She could show up to you as Oh, yeah, Ian. man. She could oh, show up to you in all these other ways. Fair, yeah. And really, Rose. What I will say, yeah, and I'm Rose. assuming everyone's gonna agree with this, like a biggest waste. That's a tough one to see who wins. Like when you go well. through each of these characters and everything they have in this game, oh, yeah. biggest waste is a tough. Like I don't know who gets that trophy. <laughs> like, why is me still, still she's a huge waste. She could yeah, have yeah. been used a lot better in the entire oh, story. Well, that's what I'm really saying. Like flow. the user is an old witch. What? And the, yeah. she yeah. shows up like three yeah. times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I was. In the game. That's so like this... Arya Stark, uh, season seven plus all over again. It's like, why didn't you use your powers? <laughs> I guess yes. if we're still talking about the old witch lady. Um, I, cause I want to, cause that sort of, she segues me into another point. First off, upset. I never got to ruin her, which I guess I do in the end. So maybe this game <laughs> yeah, you ruined her. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so where before the, the witch ties in with, they want this aesthetic, they want this idea and they want, they want to rely, they they have to rely on you as the player putting all those little pieces of common lore together that exist in, you know, the real world. The creepy castle with the vampires, the lycanthropy, you know, the werewolves, the village and the mountains that's away from civilization, the old creepy witch, the ravens and the bone totems, all of this stuff that mesh in this Innistrad-like classic horror sort of vibe. And everyone, pretty much everybody's familiar with it and they know mm -hmm. it. And they want to evoke these kinds of feelings and this imagery and this style, but they never do anything with it. It's all aesthetic and it's all practically wasted. All right. So, I just chat that made me laugh. I think you guys um, are a waste of time. If you have anything better to do than to make fun of the game. <laughs> oh. No, yeah, it's fine. Holy this shit. is our job. It's PS. fine. It's no big deal. You're stupid. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> one of the, one of the oh, biggest games of I the year. We're, we're media critics. We are friends that discuss games. Like, I don't even... There's so many... Re and, then, and then the ultimate hilarity. They're listening to it. Like, what, what does that make sense? Like, you're listening to it. That's why I had... I'm sorry. I had to... I didn't mean to cut you off, but I had to bring that up. No, I'm that's sorry, just fine. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> we're, a, we're a free form discussion here. Oh, yeah. Well, but, while we're free forming, I did want to mention that I think it's hilarious in this footage that you're still trying to uh, save ammo. Oh yeah, this is this is just how I like to play. I want to test everything and make sure I'm doing well. And then by the end of the game, yeah. I had like a million bullets, and I was like, "Well, that was a mistake." I was first, selling the first, ammo. The first enemy that I encountered, the, like the first like in your encounter, I was like, "Okay, let's see how fast we can kill him with with, with the knife." And I was like, "Oh, he's still not dead. Still not dead. Still not dead." Oh uh, god, this sucks. I'm just gonna shoot him. <laughs> well, that's that's like some of my other issue with this, like. So I I started my first playthrough on standard, right? I just was like, yeah, let me. Yeah, that's what I did, too. right? Yeah, yeah, because right. yeah, yeah, that's the way. That's the way that the okay. I always even when I reviewed games, I would always play through on normal, right? Because right. ideally, that's the game at its best because it's what the developers ideally sort of design right. it for uh, people to play. I feel like there's a discussion to be had here. It is. It well, is. It's, 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 it's sure on the game. game. But I, I, well, okay. it's it's what well okay I I can see the contention with at its best I can I can see the contention there but I think that I would I want to see what the game is presented as for what the developers want the vast majority of people to actually experience and play through I think that's fair yeah. Yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. just to clarify what Fringy was saying, uh, Guitar Hero, for me at its best, is on the hardest difficulty, not a, like fucking normal, which is right, cancer right. to play because it's oh, so well, slow. My, my, my mind immediately yeah, goes like, to, like Metro, where there's Ranger mm -hmm. mode, and the developers yes. themselves explicitly state, like, this is what we believe the game to be. Well, like, yeah. this is what... You're right, certain I games, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then, in, like, and yeah, then depending on saying. a game, like, I only play Risk of Rain 2 on Monsoon. I only play RE4 on Professional. Like, you just... Or did I say RE2? RE4 unprofessional. But you mm -hmm. just, you, you settle into a difficulty that's appropriate for you and that you find the mm -hmm. most, you know, giving, you know, giving, but gonna, by default, I'll go with normal. I want to see what the devs intend for most people to get. Right, well, unless... And plus, with, um, it means that the stuff yeah, we say will apply guess, to most uh, you know, people. Yeah, unless they imply something else that this is the way you should play it to give the best experience. And even when they say that, I'm almost wondering, like, is that just marketing bullshit? Play the game as it's intended to be played. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, oh, this is the real, this is the true challenge. This is the experience. This is the experience of our game. I think that you can often find instances where the developers will tell you to play in a harder difficulty, and that's clearly what they actually mean. Like, Halo games are Heroic is generally what... You know, yes. Halo is balanced for heroic difficulty. And yeah, and hard. some games are that's designed to keep getting harder and harder. And, and if a game and, says like yeah, this Metro. is the difficulty you should do if you're brand new to this game or whatever, I'd just be like, oh, I'll go with that. But like, I regret choosing standard. It was way too easy. Right. Well, see, right. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, like I had so many it's fucking it's... handgun bullets, I could dispatch anything that came remotely close to me. Was, I was, was selling so ammo. Many... I've never sold ammo in a Resident Evil game, and then yeah, I, I was gonna say that ammo. too. That made it very <laughs> easy. This so, is, like, um, this might be the interesting thing to add, because I bought ammo consistently throughout the game. I was there's a reason for that, though. On ammo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, know. I did that too. But, I would, I'm, I um, haven't watched Fringy's playthrough yet. Um, well, I've watched so, parts of your Cosmoronic uploads on YouTube, and I noticed your yeah. ammo count was significantly lower than mine was. There's a reason Because you're a bad that, gamer, yeah. but try and explain yourself. <laughs> you can't shoot straight, <laughs> Sorry. idiot. Well, I, I do, see, this is because... I'm the same person who will proudly de declare that I beat Dark Souls 3 a lot quicker than most people. I don't know, mm -hmm. that's, I just beat games quick. Yeah, I, uh, I don't explore that much. I just go through Let's where I think I need to go. I reckon that's fine with pretty thing? much all games, but don't do it with Soma, okay? Go through nice and slow with Soma, okay? <laughs> sure. Don't it's rush just, um, <laughs> Please, I beg of you, don't do it. Like, so, uh, well, I um, guess, I guess, custom. um... My first playthrough was six hours and fifty minutes, I think, something like that. Uh, my beat, yeah. my completion time. I think like double the time. I just looked at every nook and cranny. Mine, <laughs> yeah, same. same. So I looked at like everything. Yeah, and and, and I noted well, as well. Is, um, I had a spare two hundred fifty thousand lay at one point yep. while uh, mm. uh, Fringy was like yeah, obviously yeah, spending it whenever he was in the shop because the just needed more ammo and stuff. It's just like very the the game. I I think what we can take away from it at least is that um if you're rushing and fucking around, the game will still carry you right through. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yes. 
Um, yeah, they, that's, that's it definitely, they always drop ammo when you need it. Like that's well, they that's have what to, or else you'll get soft locked. <laughs> that's right. Um, that's that's the thing about survival games in general. Is like if you ha if you get to a point where you actually do need ammo and the player doesn't have it, they're going to get soft. I mean, that's how old Resident Evil games used progress. to be. Code Veronica, if you fucking, if you waste all your ammo on the fucking tyrant at that part where you're supposed to knock him off with the crate, you're just done. Like, you can't fucking I, go past so that point anymore. Is that I think I mean, that soft locking people out of games is like just fundamentally bad game design. I believe. I, um, if I, it I would agree and not, disagree. I, what, how would you disagree? I don't know. I need to think about that more. But Sorry, Chase, <laughs> Chase, Chase, like, Chase, I got you, buddy. It's not that fucking simple. Chase, Chase, I, Chase, I got I you, buddy. Very right? easily be wrong. It's, no, it's not I fundamentally mean, bad because that's a type of fucking gameplay. That is, if you engage yeah. deliberately with every decision is going to matter, you can lose yeah. your game if you're not careful. Sure. Do you think Correct. that a game should tell you right at the beginning, like seriously? Yeah, maybe. Um, I, 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 like I think that might all. be the solution to all the middle I just, ground. I mean, as long as like the player has that expectation, like this game's gonna be fucking hard. As long well, as yeah, you know, there's it, not I'm gonna sure. be auto saves during every fucking corner, and like It'll, you fucking also, it creates a very check unique the mini experience. Map and there's a guide to your next location, like just you know. Yeah, it creates well, a really unique experience sometimes... as well. Go ahead. Go it ahead. creates no. a really unique experience with with when you know yeah. every single choice you make is going to matter down to the bullet. Yeah, sure, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Think, Which is Resident, Evil 3. Resident Evil 3, the original, is fucking jam-packed with moments like that because you have to constantly navigate your way around Nemesis and his constantly well, evolving AI and whether or not it's worth it to even, like, kill him to get his drop and just, well, you know, it's... And you, love that one game of so the much. issues is... yourself on the last Nemesis fight because if you don't save enough gunpowder and stuff to make, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the clock tower it's fight when Jill gets infected is, like, for many people in Resident Evil 3, that's, like, the make or break. Like, you, if you didn't prepare, if you wasted your... But, but the if game you were frivolous say, with your ammo, you're fucked here. You're done. Re say, start though, over. It is a survival uh, horror game that you need to be careful with your resources. It it is kind of laid out. Yeah, that way. I guess. Well, yeah, they've but given up on that now. Right? It's, they I have the my... thing is, I, So what I would say is, be careful. What does that mean? Does that mean it'll just be really hard, or it is impossible now? Sorry, try again. Because I think there's a meaningful distinction between the two. And there needs to be a clear distinction as well. The player needs to know the difference between you're wasting ammo and when you're not wasting ammo. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So like, when I felt when like I was wasting shows it, but up, I wasn't. Yeah, like when it, if an enemy shows up and is on the way, if the if me doing damage to him and me not actually doing damage to him has the same animation and the same noise, and I don't know if this is a cutscene I'm supposed to run away from or when I'm supposed to actually fight him. You can't fault the player if they don't have more resources later because, oh, you no, no, that enemy in front of your face that was trying to kill you, you were supposed to run away and waste time. You, you weren't supposed to, like, shoot them with your guns. There needs yeah. to be a clear distinction between these two things. Yeah, I don't know. And if you're, yeah, if you have an armadura, like Resident Evil 4, and you shoot a bullet at it, and it's just, it plinks off the shoulder or the chest or whatever, you can clearly tell it doesn't do any damage. And then if you keep shooting, that's on you. Okay, so, there needs to so the be... thing is, the original Resident Evils, it was not an action game, so it was very much resource-based. You knew this going into yes. it. Yes. This game being more, when it shifted from 4 on, and it is an action game, it, 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 you don't really care about resources. Well, they it's, certainly yeah. encourage you not to care. Like, there's exactly. no reason to care. Exactly. So, like, me going into this game, I went into it like, I'm a huge old school Resident Evil fan. I yes. love Tier 3. Absolutely adore them. Mm -hmm. And so I went into this game and people in the chat are like, why the hell aren't you like yeah, dude, demo, same. And, and I was so over prepared for every I single say, thing. I, had, yeah. I, I can, yep. literally annihilated everything. Can, can I, Monk, I want to know if you feel the same way about this, okay? Resident Evil 3 is my, like, fucking goat. It's the best Resident Evil game in the entire fucking series for me. The original PlayStation 1. I uh, ideally, you can play it on the GameCube. You can play it like a dolphin with, like, a texture pack mod. I think if you look up Resident Evil 3 HD, you can find it. It's fucking the best way to play it. That game, when you start off, is so incredibly difficult. And if you don't, like, if you don't know where to go and you're just kind of shooting things indiscriminately, by the time you get to the, your first encounter with Nemesis, you're fucking done. You have to restart. Like even once you're in the RPD, like there's so many close quarters enemies, you have to just take damage and push them back. And it's it, the game will be significantly easier for you if you're actually really careful and strategic. And that's what I love about it is the very beginning. Really make sure you understand the tone like, hey, this is going to fucking kick your ass. You really have to be, you know, conserving of your ammo and your healing items and everything. Like, don't be a fucking idiot.
And then if you do make too many mistakes, it's like, all right, well, you, we told you, like, <laughs> through the gameplay, this is very clearly not the way you should have played this. Yep. Yeah, I, I would agree with Fringy that it's not fun at all to be soft locked, but yeah, it's I not think supposed it, to be. I, yeah. I, I, it's not, no. not supposed to be fun at all. It's, it really, really sucks, but right um survival horror was always based on on resource scarcity and finite mm -hmm. resources like in any well, action game there's usually always some sort of uh helping hand mechanic to get to help you back on your feet if you're somehow like low on health like kits behind, or yeah. re regenerating uh, regenerating health or you know ammo or whatever like a, there's kind of like little little things to bring you back like i think in destiny if you run out of every single type of ammo it'll actually just give you more ammo just rant magically after a while yeah, there are but different approaches the game, obviously doing it. Elastic banding is like the yeah, overall yeah, concept I, there, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. I feel but like it, an it, appeal it, to it, the genre though isn't isn't a but, good idea because but, of how insanely broad and different different games within the genre can be. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm not appealing to anything. I'm just saying that uh by its definition, finite resources equals potential soft lock. If you have truly finite resources where there's only like 520 bullets in the entire game or whatever and that's all you can get i mean that's how the original the resident evil one like was they they told you explicitly yeah. in that game there are not enough bullets to kill everything in this yep. game and i really like what matthew sure. matosa said in his dark souls commentary where he was talking about how oswald of karim was like you know if you fuck up and you can go to him and you can you know if you if you anger any other npcs you can be forgiven through him and he said i kind of wish they didn't do that because if i make that mistake it's like that's on me i did a stupid thing i hit an npc that should be like a memorable part of mm -hmm. my first playthrough and then the next time i'll do it right I don't think that everything should be handholdy and everything should be like, oh yeah, well, oh sorry, you fucking you just yeah, shot yeah. every enemy in the in your nearby vicinity. Okay, well next time you go through this next area, there's gonna be some bullets nearby. Oh, like, like making yeah. respecking really easy annoys me in Dark Souls. It's like oh, yeah, re way, reset all your points yeah. at whim. It's like ah. Uh... Someone so, says yeah, your sure. decision so, mean nothing. There's no consequences. Someone yeah. said that's not a in chat. They said that's not a soft lock, just a fail state. It's like no. So if you get no. to a boss and yeah. you're in a boss fight and you can't beat him because you don't have ammo and you actually need ammo, that's soft locking. Yeah. Yeah. Unless yeah. they offer you, you like soft fail... locking, yeah. Unless, unless they offer yeah. you prior save states, that uh, that's right. a soft lock, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, in it, the game... and someone else said it's not a soft lock. No, no, no. It is a fail <laughs> state. Is when the game says game over. You lose, reload you a previous the wrong save, thing. or yeah, it's, the it's wrong done, thing. you're finished. A soft lock is when you can still play the game, but you can't actually progress. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and I mean, maybe maybe that uh, what we can, we're can we calling a soft lock doesn't quite exactly 100% true, because technically it is possible to beat the game with a knife, and the knife is infinite, but that's I, that's a I bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I'm fine calling it a soft lock if it... Yeah, it, it gets to a certain level of insane, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Like, Isn't there a yeah. YouTuber whose entire channel is dedicated to, like, finding out if he can perpetually, like, completely fuck his, up his progress in, like, Pokemon Blue or whatever? He's just like, <laughs> can I make it so that I'm completely trapped with no money and I can't heal my Pokemon? And just, there's, like, I've one dude who does those, that yeah. shit. Yeah, they're pretty entertaining. <laughs> Someone just said, wow, dub with EFAB. Bye. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See ya. Okay, toodaloo. Bye. Sure. So yeah, my, my point wasn't that uh, it was a good or bad idea. I just was saying that like yeah. uh, potentially soft locking isn't necessarily a mechanic. It's it's a lack of a, an elastic, a what would you say like an elastic band mechanic? It's a lack of a helping hand. It's a lack of a elastic band rather than yeah, I th a specific I think thing. With so. how we've kind of defined it, it's a bad thing if it's happening. And so we would we would hope there was either good warning or there's a system in place. Like even if the game, because we're advanced enough now that we may have this, but if you enter that soft lock and it's like you can rewind the game by like a full, we will require it be at least two hours. That's the punishment now. You you just look it cost yourself. Like if they really want to go hardcore on the survival element, yeah. Do you want to hit the button and go back two hours? It's like you can. Play Play this again and play it better. Well, but like we're already highlighting, kind of like <laughs> rogue is a rogue, like a ro rogue games are um, all built around like you get one life, you go through it, and then if you expand that into a genre, like if Resident Evil played that way, like if there really was only like 100 bullets in this campaign, and that they mostly encourage you to run away from the enemies, like I mean that would be an experience. Uh, you know, I, well, I would. would have, in this part game, of they would redesign the whole level design because. Yeah, of course. Running away from enemies oh, yeah. in this game is sometimes impossible. Sometimes yeah. asinine, because the, the and grab like and they lock you into a cutscene that yes, lasts like 10 yeah. seconds and it's frustrating as hell. I'm not bitter. Even when you put your arms up and block it. I, I guess... And, I'm not bitter. So, with so, <laughs> well, I I no one else did, but I the, the more that I think about the soft lock thing, the more I wonder about... um, I think 
I think as a general rule, it's usually a good idea to let people always have some way to progress, but I guess the problem is it depends what oh, type sure. of game you're making. Because, like, for example, in Deus yeah. Ex, if you run out of ammo, it's like, oh, you can just sneak past everybody. It's going to be really hard, but yeah. you can do that. I mean, if you're really Whereas, fucking good with a knife in any given Resident Evil uh, game, you can, you'll be fine. They're like, every Resident Evil game gets a knife, one, that is anti-soft lock. But no, here's the thing, Evil, you if can't. you're so good at the knife that you can beat Resident Evil with only a knife, then soft locking's the least of your concerns if you're at that level. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, balancing issues. Like the yeah. only yeah, the mm. only people who can get around that issue are people the issue isn't even there for anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, um like the original Resident Evil locking. one, like using a knife was really hard because the tank controls were very limited. So you could get the hits in, but then retreating was difficult because walking backwards was like a third mm. of your normal speed yep. and doing an yeah. about face was an animation. The enemy can grab you from behind. And then when they made it, when they brought it to Steam and PS4 and Xbox One and all that, they made it so that, yeah, if you hold left, then from your perspective, you move left. But the, so you can do a knife and then just flip around. Your character doesn't even have an animation. They just move that way. So it's so, a completely um, like trivialized the complexity of like a knife only run in Resident Evil 1. Uh, remake um it, someone said of uh, re pro your re4 pro you're screwed with a knife like an auto's attack animation is too fast as someone who not true only basically plays re4 on professional um the knife is extremely effective shockingly yes. so um, yeah, it is, it's yeah. real but it's it's go in and hit him in the face and clear fun. him out with a kick it's op every time yeah, it's wonderful it's, it's too. very good because you, mm -hmm. you stop you, playing you, it you you, you you learn that each enemy, based on the weapon they have, they have different attacks. So you bait their attack out, and then when their attack's done, you run up and you can knife them. And, oh, by the way, it, like the Ganados in Resident Evil, the worst ones are the ones who don't have a weapons because they're like grabbing attacks and what they can do yes. are actually the I'll most difficult you. to dodge. Yeah, they're the most difficult to dodge. Um, but the knife's insanely powerful in Resident Evil. Uh, hey, on can any I just Soul say, uh, we can go back to the knife if you want, but I just fucking love, I was, my girlfriend was playing it recently and I was realizing since I wasn't playing it, I was just listening to sound effects and stuff. They make the funniest sound effects at all the time. Like whenever a girl, whenever like a female character jumps wow. down a ledge, they go, Whoa! and then whenever like a fucking, <laughs> whenever someone throws something, they go, Whoa! like it's, um, just, it's, such, it's so specific. Yeah, there are just, you know what it is yeah, every time. You're like, here comes the boomerang. Are, yeah, RE4 is full of distinct sound clues that you yeah, are listening it's charming. to. Yeah, it's that. great so, because you can use that to your advantage in gameplay. Is, you hear something and you know screen. what's happening. Um, someone just yeah. said soft locking implies that you absolutely cannot progress. Extreme difficulty is different than being completely stuck and able to progress. So the reason is soft lock rather than hard lock. Hard lock is you cannot progress. Soft lock is it's so astronomically unlikely that you may as well be hard locked. I would agree with soft. that. That's, oh, how, no, that's how like, I've understood it to mean anyway. No, yeah. soft. So no, soft locking is when you can still play, um, but you cannot progress. Right. So well, no, 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 we just, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. We just highlighted that with the knife and extreme skill, like 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 basement dwelling skill, you can actually right. beat the boss. <laughs> but it's so unlikely that to any of us here, it would be a soft lock. It's, it's like we cannot do yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah, for they're the, highlighting. The, well, even if even if there's one way that we might be able to do it, even all of us in the history of our lives, it's like it's not really a soft lock. That it's like, well, no, it's a soft. I lock. would say, it's, yeah, I'd say that technicality yes. is so insanely. Hence the word astronomical. It's, it's a sin Did you yes, are you aware of the the problem with the Resident Evil Two remake final boss tied to frame rate? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, so, what is it? No. For those for those who don't know, uh, it's basically pay to win. The higher your frame rate and refresh rate and everything of your system uh, in Resident Evil 2 Remake, the more damage you do with the knife. I don't oh. know why exactly. Oh, and weird. so you can do 240 frames per second. I was uh, playing, I was watching a friend play the final boss and he was really excited. He got to the final boss and then he realized he was all out of ammo. And then he was just like, fuck, I'm soft locked. And I said, no, just turn up your frame rate all the way and use the knife. And like three stabs, he won. He's like, I love you, so thank weird. you. Yeah, um, it's very weird. And I, I don't think it's common practice. I think and they that's put still the, in the, the game. Code. They have not patched they, it out. It's, they're not going to. <laughs> yeah, there. They um, put that like, code in the actual advancement of frames. So every time a frame progresses, right. where the knife is in collision with the boss mesh or whatever, yeah, it multiplies. Helps. Yeah. So if you have more frames, that yeah, code stuff keeps like that. executing. There's stuff like that in Resident Evil on the different versions, because we talk about 4 a lot, so some examples would be how on the Wii version, the worst version of Resident Evil 4, um, the motion controls <laughs> allow you to be... I liked it, it was sort of fun. It, it, it the broke everything that needed you, a scope. It, it would, yeah, it, it broke a lot of stuff. Like, you could beat the uh, El Gigante in 
like insanely fast because the motion controls would be how you swing your knife and you could right. swing it so much faster than the devs like ever intended <laughs> yeah. for you to actually oh, yeah. be able to do it. <laughs> that sounds funny. Just wiggle, Another wiggle, example wiggle is wiggle your remote back and forth really really fast like you're playing and, uh, Red Steel or something. Mm -hmm. And the original was at 30 God, fps. Uh subsequent remakes I think are all at 60 if I remember correctly. I can't don't hold me to that. I know that like the PC version is. So the PC version what was the is question? 60. It wasn't it's more of a statement. Um but uh, what was the at 30 fps statement? well oh we're getting there um so at 30 <laughs> fps and 60 fps the games will behave differently for different reasons so an example would right, be in yeah, re4 yeah. when you're in the cabin with uh, louis Sarah and you're defending against the ganados he will toss you twice the amount of items because there are twice as or because the frames like it, it just goes faster it registers as having twice yeah yeah, it, it just registers the, the time in a different way. So he'll give you twice as much at 60 FPS than he will at 30. So mm -hmm. just little things like that, little little quirks of the engine. But it happens with a lot of old games when you speed them up to playable frame rates. <laughs> like Dark they, Souls uh, and ladder sliding in 60 FPS on the original yes. PC port. Mm. Oh, God, yeah. Um, Remember that one? <laughs> we, can, we can go right back onto uh, th this topic. I just wanted to quickly, because this is the part yeah. of the game that the playthrough is up to. Now, talking about video games, just in general, right? I, I've talked about this part to rags before. So... Um, Story-wise, we'll also talk about this whole sequence because Jesus Christ. But anyway, the the old man, <laughs> the, the old man is is in this little you know oh, hallway here, section. and you're about to pull out your lemmy. You know, like all right, shoot him. And so, to me, if you if you present the situation, it's like I'm assuming that I've got to shoot him like four times, maybe, and then he'll back up, and that'll give us a time yeah. to escape. It's like, well, no, he grabs you no matter what, and you're like. Second playthrough, you're like, do I ammo. do I even use ammo then? You don't, and then he grabs you anyway, oh. and you're like. So what, what is this? And it's like, I'll tell you what it is. It's to give you a sense that you're making choices, but you're not. It's mm -hmm. just more movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. this, ties, this ties in really well to the soft locking discussion we just had, where I mentioned how you need to... A good game differentiate, differentiates to the player the difference between da you know actually doing damage and not doing it. It's wasting and not wasting. Yeah. This is a perfect example. Everything in your brain's intuition tells you, oh... I gotta shoot this guy or he'll yep. eat my brains. But you don't. It's it's more advantageous for you to not shoot him because yep. she comes in with a shotgun no matter you what and blows him away. Yep. Yeah, on my second playthrough, I was like, I don't have to shoot him, do I? And the yep. same thing played out. Also, I just wanted to yeah. There's nothing, reference. there's no point. Four pistol shots to the head, shotgun to the torso, and then a bunch of shit falls on him in a fiery pit and, and, and he's he survives. Fire. And he's on fire. Yeah, 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 I said a bunch of shit that's on fire falls on him, and he's in a pit that's on fire. Like I this, just that, that whole section super, like that chick that was too. so what funny because about? at first I was like, oh, okay, so this girl, she actually seems to get it the moment that she shot right. him, and then he goes on fire. And <laughs> it's <laughs> all but also, that girl. That girl, I cared more about her than basically anyone else, and then she's yeah. like, yeah, she yeah. Dies. yeah. I'm like, same. Oh, I was really like where that's we were gonna go hard. with her. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh man, okay, I guess she's dead. All right, I guess I'll. I gotta I felt, go save Rose, I guess. See, this yeah. fucking baby I don't give a shit about. I felt pretty <laughs> burned by this scene. I, I'm sure everybody is agree. Like yes. you introduce you introduce the 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 kind of matron lady, very interesting, yep. got obviously got a history, missing and husband. All for you nothing. The, yeah. the the drunkard, you introduce the the gruff, you know, unthankful uh father who's wounded. Maybe that's a bite that'll turn into something later. We don't know. We introduce the daughter who you I, I agree with Regs, probably the most compelling uh, character empathetic character yeah empathetic character in the whole oh, yeah the whole thing you got like the the crying widow in the back i don't know if that's a corpse and there's like a wounded the, the, dude a wounded yeah. dude yeah that's like all, all these interesting cast of characters if you would have spread that out over like act two act three you know I maybe was, maybe the maybe yeah, the dad imagine, turns yeah, like, legit thought that was what was going to happen yeah. uh, the, the, yeah, I, I, there was even the sense that like the drug could will come through at the end right he's going to come yeah, through yeah the drunk guy <laughs> who's really like model all these characters just to remove them in one scene Yep. <laughs> the drunk guy's character changes by the end and he learns to appreciate the people around him. The the wounded guy who's a cripple, he feels useless and he can't actually help, yep. but he finds a way to be useful and maybe he even dies doing something incredibly amazing. The timid girl here who's constantly scared, she finds her courage when things she cares about are on the line. You have <laughs> yeah. all of these yeah. ideas, like the most basic of writing 
basically tropes at this point, but yep. we're not even going to worry about that. This is trope the game. And but I like the little bit of, the little bit of improvisation with the way that the dude like kind of lost his balance to do that needs the stilts. Like yeah, that was yeah. totally improvised by his motion capture actor. And I was like, oh, okay, there's all oh, these little. Th I wonder. The, I wonder yeah, if I would notice these thing. things focusing on each individual person. What did their their specific sort of improv skills teach them that they could add to the scene? And then just okay, they're all dead. Goodbye. They literally all dead. I was surprised. I, I thought maybe maybe they would kill maybe two or three, but I was like all one or two. Them. They're yeah, done, no, and you don't me. even get to save the young, well, yeah. the girl that you like. She's she's no. gone. You get an extra ten seconds with her, and she's fucking dead. Her like, death was oh. garbage too. It's uh, so yeah. Yeah. If I if so I send you a video to have you play it, will that not be possible? Since we don't want to like interrupt the flow of this. Oh, video? we got, We're not gonna have the time probably to have the full discussion. Oh, yeah, even so, it's, yeah. Like uh, the guy yeah, with the bottle. It was, it was oh, just also, like a fifteen uh, second clip just, from the Resident Evil Three remake. <laughs> set, setting the whole place on fire as well. Just fucking hell, because he knocked over yeah. the lamp. Just like, ugh. It's but like, it's a cool okay, shot, so, dude. So he jumps in the fucking car, right? And he goes straight for the brick wall when there's a fucking garage door right fucking <laughs> next to him <laughs> that he could have <laughs> drove through. But you Ethan drive through a idiot. fucking brick wall. Correct. Ethan is an idiot. Because we have Ethan to get back to the show and prove he is we an have, idiot. Well, well, we have to get back to the village. People are in stressful moments of crisis. They don't make the best decisions in that moment. <laughs> They'll so, literally like, drive through multiple walls. You can't the know that you would do things them. any differently. <laughs> Well, uh, no, can no, I just situations that's fucking retarded. Just want to highlight this again. We, can't, we, we will jump from story to gameplay, but like I have to for this bit where you get into the car, you you put in the key, and you're like play the cutscene game. It's like no 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 no. I want you to press left click. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The left but then want, it's cutscene. We don't make sure it's, you're still it's here. It's hilarious. Gonna make sure you give a shit. Play, where there was my second playthrough, where I was like, oh, I'm just gonna skip everything. Was fuck this, and you go to this like, oh okay. You get in the car, skip, and then it goes like press left press click. Left click, skip. So, then you can skip more. Yeah, like, skip oh, again. That's, oh, it's gameplay. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, gameplay. Yeah. Can gameplay. I ask you guys, is it just me or were there a lot of situations in this game where you felt like, okay, we're in a cutscene, settling back into my position, gonna be able to control my character again? We're gonna, here we go, any second I'm gonna control. And then you press W, and then you see the, in the lower right corner, P to skip the cutscene. Uh, You're like, no, yeah. I thought I'm playing now. Like, that happened yep. to me like fucking 12 times in this game. Like, uh, consistently was thinking, I, I would love to be playing this scene myself yeah. instead of watching my character be played for right. me. Not, not only any any character uh, or any key press, any anytime you, I think, aggressively moved your mouse, it would do the skip photo yeah, mode. No, That's like the alternative, you you do the, al the alternative title of this game <laughs> could be skip photo mode because uh, there's so many cutscenes. <laughs> yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, also, I think in, I think in one terrible. part they forgot to include the skip thing, because uh, I think when you go up to the, the dollhouse for the first time, you see the Mia illusion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think they just so, don't so let you, you skip it. You hit <laughs> also, people in chat are saying built Ford tough. Yeah, I agree. But <laughs> you hit, you hit can P. Handle it. And then the, the 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 menu goes up, and normally you have like the pause menu, you, you or, have, you have, the, or you have skip, challenge, exit, or whatever. The, there are two types of cutscenes in this game. The, so, there, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. there are like action cutscenes, like where you're getting bitten by a wolf or or like attacked or whatever. Then there's oh, actual yeah. like story cutscenes, and the and but which one's longer? They, it varies, like you said. That they must question. have actually well, yeah, must have done like an action cutscene that time, which wasn't. Skipping. Yeah, I was gonna say that well, those two menus. I was, I was joking about the how long the animations <laughs> are for when enemies like attack you and bite you. They're very long. Oh, that's a, that's a really, really good point, Ray. Because I was actually gonna say this. Probably the most frustrating thing about the gameplay in this game was the sense of uh, I wrote it down here: artificial helplessness. Like yeah. you're you're constantly like, oh no, I'm struggling. I can't I can't shoot. I can't aim. I, I'm something's My on top of me i've off. been grabbed you know it's just like that it's not it's not like in um previous games uh a lot of re games on all of them but a lot of re games where like uh zombies in real time are attacking you and like bashing you or shoot you know and even like re5 like shooting at you or whatever where you're you feel like you're in danger in real time this is just like okay i'm gonna cut scene i can't do anything but i'm helpless like it just constantly puts you in that state whether it's like lady d grabbing you or or whatever like that that, but, that was a very frustrating uh, aspect of the game where I'm constantly uh, like basically the controller is just yanked from my hands and I just have to watch my character struggle. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was What's interesting too is that no in choice. this very game on that exact same topic you have those scene those action cutscenes essentially. Yeah. If if a lichen will jump on you or whatever that is and start gnawing on you and you're just passively okay with it, I don't know what Ethan's doing. <laughs> yeah. I would put more resistance myself. 
but remember when the first daughter grabs you but and you pull out your ahead, pistol? Can I finish my, my thought from earlier? <laughs> Clearly not. Sure. Yeah. Red yeah. is currently well, talking! I was, I was gonna say, what the fuck, Mel? <laughs> you couldn't have pushed in like an hour ago? <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine, fine but I was just in the middle of the, <laughs> the middle of the thought. All right, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wrap it up really quick. It'll be, it'll okay. be just a second. But uh, how when the first uh, Dimitrescu daughter jumps on you, and then by I mean, wow, luck 100, you, you you pull out your gun and you start shooting at her, which is a sensical thing to do. And it mm -hmm. just so happens that the bullet hit the window and the cold air happens, and then hooray, I guess we get to live. That doesn't happen with the other. It's it's weird to see you doing that in one cutscene, but not the I, other. I swear I'll do I it real, yeah. real, real, real quick, just to bolster what Rag said. The first time you get bitten by a Randy, you have a knife and I think a gun at that point, right? And you don't use either of them. You just get bitten. And then when um, yeah. you get bitten but by Mahler. the big wolf, who bites you like fucking five times, you just watch it happen over and over and over again. It is bizarre, because it, it feels like he's gumming you. Like, he's not actually biting. Yeah. Just like, yeah. And you're still able to maintain you just, his hand throughout. You have all your that. arms and you just but, don't do anything about it. But, Mahler, this you, isn't a series where you can stab people who are grabbing you and trying to eat you. Oh. Your arm, your I love, arm, the, I love the people pointing out, like out that. Manium. I love that the people pointed out that there was that line from Resident Evil 4. Like, because in this in this game, there's the part where, like, you know, your hand gets cut off and you put it back on and just it just happens to go neatly together. And someone paired that with the fucking Resident Evil 4 line, your right hand comes off. I was, was curious like, hey. if that was supposed to be like a a, a reference to that I line. I don't think so. That'd be giving I don't a lot think of credit. it is. Because if you if you look through like the concept art, like what the fucking I forget the the little blubbery poison puke guy, whatever his name is. Moreau. 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 Uh, they're just like Moreau. We we made him a a, a a mermaid, like a merman, but like he's like a more gross version of a merman because we thought it'd be cool. And he's a pathetic like if you, moron. That's basically what it says. It's like, we'll we did this because we thought it would look cool. Man, um, I, all right. I keep thinking uh, about that your hand comes offline. It, it reminds me <laughs> how great Leon was as Dude, a Dude, Resident Evil 4 protagonist. Cool. No thanks, bro. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. It's like, your right <laughs> hand comes <laughs> off. Um, uh, it, fucking it, hilarious. Right. I believe it is It is time, Mel. Go right ahead. Metal. now you may speak. We are done. Fuck you, Chase. Resume. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, what, what I what I was saying, uh, they just forget the the skip option in one of the cutscenes. When when you go to the dollhouse, you see Mia, and you hit P. You only have chalice, uh, challenges and and quit, but not the the skip. Oh, option. so you're saying they give you the option for P, oh. but that it doesn't give you the options Correct. that P gives you. <laughs> you, hit P, not the, you either have like the whole menu. Like when I hit P right now, you have like restart options, control, challenges, photo mode, quit game. But in this one instance, you only have photo mode and quit game, but no skip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there's some Just, funky I, stuff with... Well, you know what's weird game. about that same sequence, too, is it gatekeeps that whole entire sequence. You can only go a certain way. But then when you come back, the gates are magically open. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, there's some weird things with pausing. Um, I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but occasionally, if you ever pause it right in front of Duke, everything, even the candles are stopped, but Duke is not. Yes, I've noticed you're that. Oh that? shit, I need yeah. to go Super back to weird. right now and <laughs> yeah. that yeah. out. Also, That's I like to imagine that the reason why, like, gates are opening and closing behind you, you just turn around in one second, and you're like, you know how with the stage plays, they have the dudes in, like, the all completely black, like, fucking onesies? Mm -hmm. so you can't, <laughs> I just want to imagine that, but just they're, like, they're in, like, fucking leaf, like, camouflage. <laughs> you just can't see them. <laughs> uh, I, had a, I had a counterpoint Thank about the linearity, uh, the <sighs> counterpoint about the linearity of the, this game, you know, how, like, you, you can't get through doors, can't th through, uh, you know, invisible walls and stuff, but have you ever tried to climb over a picket fence? It's really hard. Like, you have to, like, lift up one leg a couple yeah. feet and, yeah. like, lean oh, over. Yeah. It's, it's really, really difficult. I, I, I don't know. It, it, uh, yeah. Well, wait, literally, you have to lift up a couple feet? Yeah, oh, I know. Nice. It's, re it's really tough. Like, like you know, struggle. when there's... I can't there's get like out a, of my chair. Yeah. And there's, oh. like, a, a, a door made out of, like, a few loosely nailed together planks. It's pretty much basically impossible. Well, especially like, I, when um, it's, like, 70 years old, you totally couldn't just, like, kick the no. board. Yeah, and it's already fallen apart, and it's half yeah. rotten. Yeah, well, the nail, uh, there's the not um, more suggestions than anything. Yeah. There's that meme with um, uh, Fallout 3, I think it is, it comes from, where it's the, there's a door that's basically only the handle or something with a lock, and it's like, lock pick it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, nah, I could just walk through this. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know the, exactly the door. It's, like, half completely half gone. Like it, there's giant holes through it, and it's like, oh, it's locked. I, I, I can forgive that. that sort of thing in games that don't take themselves so seriously. 
right. if they're very very arcadey and very gamey games well they're like this game feet. really yeah. wants to be realistic and super highly detailed Except so when it does when i have to lift up a tractor a foot so that i can get underneath it to progress to the next area when tractors literally have like doors. places to climb up yeah. on the side and doors and stuff i'm like i fuck off you should have come up with something it's not like it's well, like no, extreme no, no, no. fucking it's not like it's like zombie poison ivy he could go well, through some of the foliage too yeah have yeah you guys ever, have you guys ever used a object you guys ever used a hydraulic <laughs> jack like that jack a car up no uh no no I okay times. well mm -hmm. i have i drive a miata i just lift it up I used to work on cars. <laughs> all right, so all you all he had to do was kick that fucking jack out of the way, and the car would have rolled backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, why, 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 why do you have to go get a fucking well, handle and lower the jack? Someone who's been on many tractors, tractors feature useful features like step ladders that are built into the side and, and doors, a, so that you can enter into setting? them and climb up over them. Dude, the whole place. I mean, is as, a jungle as, gym. as a kid, I've climbed. I, as a child, I've climbed over so many tractors that I just, it baffles me that just a tractor in the road is an obstacle that cannot be overcome. Lord, I, I, I think that your, I think that exactly. your tractor preferences blind you with bias. So I don't think we can consider your <laughs> no, opinion. No, no, I can see everything. <laughs> yeah, the, the, um, the whole village is a jungle gym. There's options everywhere and it sucks because if they were mm -hmm. not, I know this is retarded to say, but like if it was Mirror's Edge, you'd just be jumping all over the place, jumping up everything. It's like, this is easy. And it's like, well, it's not, it's Resident Evil. It's like, okay, so now Mirror's we have a problem fucking werewolves. because you can't use your intuition for fucking anything. You no. can't look at something and nope. go, what would I do? You have to go, no, what does the game want me to do? Yeah. Also, and someone in chat said, yes, Rags, when I think of a game based in realism, Resident Evil is my first series I think of. Oh my god. Uh, so, yeah, I hate that. No. So, you know, so that means thing. we can never try then. It's just, just so, don't ever just give up forever. Even Resident Evil is the normal world, except it's got some weird monsters in it, is essentially how it is. It's so, supposed to be real life. I, yeah. Yeah, when I see it, it's instance, fairly based in reality because the entire idea is like, what would happen if a fucking horribly corrupt pharmaceutical company, right. you know, hell bent on making, you know, weapons of like biological warfare weapons, then, you know, yeah, it's, so it's fairly, in, it's fairly believable in some regards. In basically every game, games that are oh, in yeah. space, games that are in fantasy, games like Resident Evil that are almost completely realistic, um, except for the game parts. If I see something like, like if, um, if, if I'm in a game and I had come across a knee-high wall and the game will just not let me go over it when it's just a knee-high wall, okay. especially when I've seen the character clambering over things yep. and squeezing into tight spaces yep. and stuff, yes. that yes. My, my, my brain goes, wait a second, that's not right. This isn't quite, something's not right here. That's yeah, not good. You need, so, so. you need to design better because a lot of this is nothing. It's it's graphical. This is off. It's yeah. not even like design. <clears throat> it's graphical. The, well, the like, can I just say barrier, someone someone in no. chat said imagine that EFAP overthinking, overthinking. things. Yeah. So so if you have a doing. barrier that you don't want the player to progress, you need to have the aesthetic of what that barrier is, what it looks like, be believable that it's actually a barrier. Exactly. Not there's just well, there's, see, there's a tractor in the road. Right. Resident Evil right. 3, on that point, it's, Resident yes. Evil 3 yeah. does that very well because the city's destroyed. There was cars, there's stuff piled up. Like you literally cannot get through certain areas except for the way you go. Um, well, you'll also have the aspect in games like that that you don't want to go all the way over there because that's not where your goal is. Right. In this game, right. this is the problem. If you have door, right? Door, you need to get it through door. Over there is the super weapon. You gotta get through door. You're like, okay, so what's the door? And it's just like it's big steel. It's got one big keyhole. We're gonna have to get the key. You're like, all right, great. But then another game is like, well, no, it's a, it's a wooden door with a big key. And you're like, okay, well, I guess I'll get the key, but I feel like I could bash that in, maybe? And it's like, now it's a straw door. You're like, alright, now you've lost me. I don't understand, like, why can't I just walk through it? And another one could be like, oh, it's a steel door, but there's no keyhole, there's just chains keeping it together. And you're like, okay, maybe a bolt cutter then, or something like that. I can't really do that myself. It's like, well, no, now it's string. You're like, what? String? Like... Or bandages. It, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so... An evil... Yeah. There's a reason why they choose particular... Like, look at the cuffs Ethan has on in this in this scene. If it would just sell a tape. I think people will be like, all right, that's a bit weird. Why is that, yeah. that's not going to do anything? There's a reason they choose what they choose to indicate what they want to indicate. So whenever the, these things are broken or they're lazy, we're going to point it out. You can't just go, nah, it's fine. Resident Evil has zombies in it. Shut up. It's like, nah, it's not working. <laughs> You're not getting away yeah, with I mean... that. Well, not to mention how stupid this fucking part is because 
So when he puts his hands up in front of his face for this stupid fucking spinny thing where he's going to get turned into American ground beef, as fucking Heisenberg would say. Mm -hmm. You put your hands up and if you had the metal handcuffs on like that with like 13 foot long spikes coming off of it, it's, it's going to literally lift suck you, you up. into that motherfucker <laughs> yeah. and it's going to spin you around it. It's not going to cut those fucking handcuffs yeah, off. It's not a Yeah, blade. it's not just going to melt through it like butter. No, it's like, it's that's not, not how fucking blade. physics work. Well, and if you look really closely, the spikes are like all the way through the back of the wall because yep. they're so long. Yep. <laughs> it's like, are you hmm. fucking kidding me? It's it's just an aspect of there are you. This will obviously be different for every individual, but there is generally a level of believability and suspension of disbelief that goes into both movies and to video games. Definitely. And the trick in video games is that that ludo narrative dissonance that in that aspect of. I, it needs to be intuitive what I'll believe and what I think is real and how I can interact with the world, but there are certain consistent. things that um, are just um, too I suppose, strange. I suppose, to be clear, though, that there is there is a difference between dumb stuff that happens in cutscenes and, like, really poorly communicated level design in terms of what you can or can't do. I think... Um, well, I want to... Someone in chat just said, like, find a game that isn't full of arbitrarily cordoned off areas. As I said, there are plenty of places we do not want to go, so it doesn't matter whether or not there's a big blockage there. Like, oh, well, go jump yeah, on that stack a Or make a blockage that's world. believable. Make a, a blockage that's, that's actually a blockage. Well, and if, a, a and if every it. single... I'll be really quick, I swear. If every single game ever had the problem that doesn't mean it's not a problem can we stop using right. the shitty argument well, yeah but again it's it's just um a lot of what it comes down to is really good level design and art art direction in terms of communicating very clearly to the player the places that you can or cannot go so that it's because basically all that ludo narrative dissonance is when we're talking about it is it's that the like you, what you want to do and like what the character in the world wants to do become misaligned or like the actions that they take become misaligned um, and the I, easiest I think way it's, to get is, is it more specifically that like the the type of game <laughs> like the type of gameplay that the game has is is antithetical so to like the sort of narrative, narrative or no, the moral and that's, no it's, that's it's one what way to look at it yeah hmm. so ludo narrative dissonance is effectively where what's the game sort of the gameplay kind of contradicts narrative or uh or just there's there's some sort of break between right. um, yeah that's what i mean, and, yeah. and the world yeah so the the clear example is like in un the obvious example is like in tomb raider you kill a dude in the cutscene and it's really sad and lara croft is struggling with it and then a minute later it's gameplay so you just kill a bunch of people like yeah. it's nothing that's the clear example because the characters should be reacting this way but this is a video game that you're playing, so you react in this way. Um, I'm pretty sure I had a point, but now it's gone. So <laughs> they don't do that uh, sometimes. We'll be here all day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're nearly think, done with the intro. Oh, sorry, it was it was about yeah, the, we're almost, we're almost it was about level design. That's yeah. right. So like yeah. a lot of a lot of what it comes down to is you think about something like Metroid Prime, which is like peak level design it's pretty clear the places that you can or cannot go. Like, you're not going to be able to, as Samus, climb some rock cliff and then sort of explore on the upper portions of the of the map. It's just not something that you believe that you can do. But there are doors... You're not going to have a ledge. Passages. Well, yeah, you're there's not going to have a ledge, a ledge that... if you can jump on it. That's well, yeah, you can, you yeah, can that's look what I'm saying. Right, there's, yeah. there's not going to be a ledge that is just like it looks like you could totally jump on it and there's no reason i can't jump on it but when i go to jump on it oh no it's actually a lava pit down below and you could you weren't supposed to jump on that ledge that's clearly an empty space that you could occupy with your mass but enough about doom eternal let's go back to resident <laughs> evil that's, <laughs> oh boy that's a, part of the brilliant part of a metroidvania design is that quite often you'll see these various barriers uh that are completely formidable and that's like a really good point that rags brought up as you, you need to make uh, barriers look formidable, but most of yeah. the barriers you see, other than just solid walls in Metroid games and Castle, uh, you know, the Metroid video games, are, are quite often like, oh, you can't get through the, you can't get through this yet until you get some sort of tool later on. Cool. So yeah, you could have, you could have chains, you could have locks, you could have, you know, wooden doors, but maybe later in the game you get a a fire axe. Now, Fire Axe lets you get all yeah. through all wooden doors now. Yeah, be a now cool all those wooden doors. Yeah, is, all those wooden doors peak. I saw. Oh, well, now. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look at this. Look at the, the spikes. It's fucking oh. absurd. You'd be dead. 
<laughs> but whatever. That would break your arms and yeah, twist you up. But, like, like if it was you a grinder, are. maybe. Yeah. It's like it's like people arguing like, oh yeah, hook shot in Zelda. That makes sense. It's like oh, the thing that would literally dislocate all of your fucking bones the moment you got like guess. yanked with it. Oh, just your shoulder thing, would though, just completely dislocate. And... On, on that whole yeah. point, like to be clear, it's not. There are games that can just not operate like real life, and it's fine. And it just depends on what is being communicated. As long as they're consistent yeah, exactly. with themselves, well, though, at least. But like, this is that, it's, it, yeah. yeah, that's the important the part. So, like, for instance, in Halo, it's a little weird that Master Chief doesn't run around, but it's like, oh, but it's this is the game. Like, the game, you can't run. You just walk really fast. And it's like, this is consistent all the time. Yeah, it's, it's a gamey thing, but you know it. So, like, when your brain knows it's a gamey thing... You almost like you compartmentalize it and you put it to the side and you're like, okay, that's not yeah. that's a game part of the thing. That's not the story in the immersion aspect of it. But if you have a cutscene of a player climbing over a fence and then it's the game time and you can't <laughs> climb over any fences that prevent you from doing things your character really wants to do, like save your daughter. That would that's that's an issue. That's yeah. that's a bad. You need to and, come up with a different solution. And if there were one example, you'd be like, eh, it's fine. Ten, you're like, okay, that's not great, but it's like it's just throughout this fucking game. Like every goddamn room, there's something that's like you can't do that. You're like, okay. The door is right. locked from the other <laughs> side. Well, yeah, I, the problem is bandages. with you that too. The bandages earlier. You're carrying a fucking knife. Like yep. it's so stupid. <laughs> and then, well, on top of that too, like the puzzle. Did the knife disappear magically? Oh, well, well, we see, that's another great example. That'll be just, its own section. That'll yeah. be its own section. We'll get to the yeah. spooky house. We're not there yet. I think, uh, no, I'm just I saying, that, like, the... so, like, the puzzles in this game that I, I, I'm i using very, very air loosely. Quotes, mm -hmm. Every single I answer think... is right next to the fucking puzzle. Why is it even in the yeah. game? Yeah, It's I, literally, um... hey, do this. Here you go. I thought that was really weird that I, all the all the little safe cracking things you find the the codes are in like pretty much in the rooms that right the safes next, are in. Yeah, right. every answer yeah. is in the same room. There's no I have a clip. involved. I got a clip of me walking into the violinist's house, the the celloist, the the mm -hmm. music maker man. Oh, here. I walk it into his um house and there's the birthday date on the wall yep. and I'm I instantly before I even progress to the next room, I don't even know that there's a safe to be opened in this house. I'm like that's going to be the combination to the safe in this house, isn't it? <laughs> Next yep. room, boom, combinations right there. I put it in, boop, opens right up. And I'm like, well, all right. Yeah, but, um, yeah I really hate when you barely have to remember room. it at all. That I was a little bit in that room because there's another thing that has to, has a code, quote unquote, code on it, on it, or yes. could be a code. That's there's a bunch. There's first. actually like, there's actually like four. In that four? Room. Okay, I only right. saw two. Yeah. With uh, the second one, was the correct one. There's it's one on the table. There's one on the calendar, and then there's that sign that's the correct one, and then I think there's a license plate or something that has the number on it too. Yeah, there, I think that and, one was like that. I'll never forget my daughter's birthday, and on the yeah, calendar it yes. says like, yeah, I, yeah, but whatever, it's yeah. it's already the yeah. number you've devoted to memory because it's mm -hmm. right fucking there, and it's a number, and it fits it's a safe. And you know I was expecting it was going to be a small little thing on a table or like a frame thing, like right, something you, you have to, have to look for, but it was like a big read thing on the wall. I like am... old Resident Evils, you'd have to read through the notes and stuff. Like, oh, I forgot this password, but I keep it locked here. So you'd have There's to go no find it. Well, that's the thing. You, I expected to it's have to work for window. it just a little bit exactly. harder. Because when I read the note, it was exactly. like, it's the, on the calendar. I was like, oh, I remember there was a calendar. It's like the numbers there. I was like, all right, then. That's oh, that. That's yeah, that. Yeah, Bezo yeah. Razorback you know puts what? it. Well, look out the window. Oh, so look out the window. Okay. You know There's what? Yeah. a good example in another linear in another linear game that is that cerebral. No, yeah. Uncharted, actually. That that game has puzzles, and usually there'll be incomplete hints. Like, you have a notebook, and there'll be incomplete notes on uh, on the puzzle. And of course, it'd be like, it's it's the, the in-context reason for that is Nate's just walked into the room, he's written down what he can see, and then you have to intuitively figure it out with reference to that note. But the problem here is that the puzzle is, like, just written somewhere in full it's like here's the answer it's like when you flip the newspaper upside down it's like here's the answers to the you know crossword crosswords puzzle. yeah well yeah. uh yeah if you remove be yesterday's crosswords yeah yeah if you remove the note that said look through the window i think that just improves the puzzle yes i think it improves the puzzle because yeah. i didn't You're even like, know about these... the note yeah, yeah I would generally agree with you. I think there? in in like, in my in my unique situation, uh, as soon as I read "Look out the window," I got very paranoid. 
And I started, and I immediately realized, like, okay, this probably isn't going to pull any punches like some other games might, where it's just like, look behind you, and you turn to something there. So I, I started waiting, and then my guard was, like, a little, my guard was pretty high. And then I noticed the, the fucking numbers, like, oh, the, this one, and then that one, and then I kind of lined up. Oh, fuck, and then it just got me to do the jump cheerily scale. because <laughs> I, I started to focus on something else, and I, I forgot for a moment that, like, there was danger afoot. And then the moment that, like, it happened, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, shit, I almost forgot. So I, um, was like, for me, that part was really effective, but I do acknowledge that, like, it was goofy to, yeah, the numbers. That, that, on, I think I say in my stream, I really everyone. liked it uh, as well, but at the same time, right. I don't know that I have much to praise for it mechanically. It's like a... Um, no. It, they didn't have which to do puzzle? much. Sorry, so I'm, they... I'm a little slow. What? Which one? So when you have to look through the window to see the code, it doesn't always happen. It didn't happen oh. for me in two of my playthroughs, but they'll have um, a little wolfman go blah oh, when you, oh, when yeah, you look he at goes the code. It, it happened and, for me in both yeah. of mine, and I was aiming through the window with a shotgun, and the moment Wait, he went, I just killed him <laughs> immediately. So somebody, well, well, somebody said in chat, but they're cool puzzles. They're not no, really they're puzzles. Not. No. <laughs> they're not. Okay, yeah, that's that, what was I was. That that's what I was going to say a moment ago. So they they're not. This game. If they, you find a note that says puzzles. press the red button, this game doesn't have this game doesn't have puzzles. It has checklists. All yeah. right. Yeah. Just, yeah. Go, just go through all the things, and it's there's a Resident Evil Four. We're fucking doing it again. Oh my god. Resident Evil Four had we're gonna like, keep doing it. Sort of, sort of puzzles, um, where you would have to um, when you go to the church behind the church, there's mm -hmm. the green cat eye. And in order to get it, you have to find the symbols in the graveyard, and you have to line up the... For, it's yeah. a two-parter. Fucking two-parter. You not only have to know which symbols to light up, and you go to the graveyard and you look at the icons to find out that. You have to be able to light them all up when you can only move the dial in three in increments or three of four. Yep. That's already more complex than anything in Resident Evil 8. That's fun. I think it was fun. We're, we're gonna go even more basic. Um... In the castle, there's a segment where there are four portraits, and on the portraits, there's it's basically one, two, or three, and you can turn the portraits in a certain way so that six is the number, essentially, like, you have to sacrifice six lives to open the way in the portraits of people dying, so you have to get six people in the portraits to light up the way, or to open the way, but you can only turn, when you turn one, it only turns, like, the one, the one adjacent, the ones adjacent to it. Yeah, so they that's, did that one in uh, that's R3, a puzzle. that puzzle. Yeah, so it's like those are actually puzzles. It doesn't just it, a puzzle isn't copy the solution that we have right here. Yeah. Exactly, that's not a yeah. that's not a puzzle. Well, as, you as, need as, to actually think, the, the, you to, do. think to have a puzzle. The summary that the Chase just gave, which was a note says press the red button, and so you do it. That's not really a puzzle. No. Yeah, no. No. yeah, well, yeah. That's an instruction. Hey, in look in this direction, game. and that will give you the answer to this puzzle. That is the game the, holding your fucking hand and telling the, you. Think of it this way: if if you buy a Lego set. Putting the Lego set together without instructions is a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Putting it together with yeah. the instructions isn't a puzzle. It's a task. You're just you following, go. you're just a checklist. And why are there so many combination puzzles? What the hell? They're so lazy. Like, make it a checklist. Yeah. Makes it, check, checklist is a little disingenuous because it makes it sound way too routine. I would say just, yeah, just a task. Just go do a thing. But like a just, checklist well, makes it well, sound me, way more well, boring. A, a brief, and we'll go into it in further in detail, but sure. the when you go to the Beneviento Manor and you're doing all the puppet uh -oh. stuff, that's not a puzzle, that's a checklist. Yeah, it's more like an escape room almost. Yeah, the, that's the closest is, thing to yeah. Well, I wouldn't even call it an escape room. The, I've the done escape rooms. Else. Real escape rooms are more intuitive. That. I was, that was yeah. gonna, the yeah. keyword is intuitive, yeah. honestly it is. Yeah, um, that's true. We will get to the Beneviento. I'm mansion. sorry, does anyone actually fucking think dolls are scary? Yes, there's plenty of people who do, but I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no. I like, there are plenty of people like, oh no, who they're do. all weird and corrupted looking. They have like running fucking mascara. Oh no, this is yeah, a oh, hundred the times. The first few Resident Evil oh, games are really scary, but dolls aren't scary. Pick one. Mean, interesting so point. The, the concept uh, of one of your loved ones dying from being eaten alive. We're and not doing this again. Everybody finds different things scary. Shut up. No point in talking about what scares you or what doesn't. It's useless. Yes, people find yeah, dolls scary. People find clouds dolls scary. Have a huge resurgence compared to the zombie fucking like popularity. Yeah, people are bored yeah. of zombies. People find They're dolls scary, scary now. now. Yeah, definitely. Without going into a ghost in the shell innocence thing, dolls can be scary, but they yeah. sure as hell aren't in this. But yeah, I think I to get make dolls scary, you almost have to get like 
existential about what dolls can represent, and it has to be sure. with the right person. Oh, and, I just think but dolls this and game horror is just always done the scary. exact I mean, same way, where they just kind of their their heads well, go bobbleheady, and then well, like, they giggle. That's creepy. Like most of the time, that's all I see them do with dolls. If someone said, "Can a I mean, werewolf be scary?" I would just, the answer is the same for everything. It's yeah. about the execution. Always going to be sure. Right. What's that? Absolutely, be scary as fuck. Well, it's I actually pretty funny about the whole doll kind of. Uh, sorry, I mean, catch up, Fringy. Um, no, nah, it's all right. Go ahead. What's uh, what's actually funny about the doll thing is that uh, before RE4 came out, there was actually an unfinished prototype for the game uh, that was called, uh, you know, tentatively called Biohazard 4. And uh, there was actually a gameplay leak years ago. I actually posted it in chat where one of the segments was about animated creepy dolls. But that's mm -hmm. back when Capcom had her. Capcom was notoriously very, very picky about their games back then. And they actually, uh, that that kind of failed their test uh, at the time. So they canceled that right. game, started it all over again, and made what we now know as uh, Resident Evil 4. Wasn't Resident so, Evil 4 going to have, like, the fucking ghost antagonist with the chain or, like, the claw hand or some shit, the hook? What was it? That's what I there was the, yeah, there was Yeah, there was a ghost. Yeah, the, the claw ghost, there's, like, a struggle with them, with a quick time mm -hmm. event and everything like that. So they actually, it seems like they almost recycled some of those ideas. I mean, they're, it's not the first time those have been done, obviously. They're the Conjuring series. It, it looks like a decision dolls, made but... for the best, but I'm really curious to see how it would have panned out, kind of like with Resident Evil 1.5. We got like a playable yeah, leak of that. It's Direct, definitely like fascinating, cut. but uh, but it seemed like that just didn't like quite make the cut. And it's also like you know now we're doing ghosts and dolls. That's kind of weird. Like it wasn't about well, the T virus or whatever. But mm. <laughs> I, I like, like ghosts. Really... That can be cool. But uh, when you're ge when you're gearing up Resident Evil Four to have that kind of gunplay. Right. Ghost seems like a real mistake. Someone oh. in chat made a really good point. They said there's no fucking reason why we shouldn't have had silver bullet mechanics in this yeah. game. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because the, because I'll tell you why. Because this is a game that's lazy. Because it's about yeah. ooh. I think we remember all know what werewolves case. are? Yeah. Aren't those scary? All right, moving on. And well, then they use wanna... the word lichen. Yeah. There's like a pun Re achievement with the word lichen in it. Yeah. You guys know what vampires are, right? All right, we're done with oh, that. Oh, but they're not uh, real uh, vampires. To, um, they're not real vampires. No. Yeah, but well, so real. since we're at this point in the in the footage as well, right? What I what I feel this portion does is what they did in Resident Evil 7, but now they're cranking yeah, it up a bit more. Yeah, it's fucking verbatim. It's just, let's yeah, have yeah, everyone yeah. show off how crazy yep. they well, are for and this so, This is the thing. My, my, crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and talk for a whole minute, all right? <laughs> so, the, the, Sorry, I'm going to be we've, excited. We've got, it's, no, it's all good. I just wanted to, because if anyone wants to interject, it's just like warning you. I have we like a whole, yeah, 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 a whole gotcha, minute's gotcha. worth of things to say. So Physically uh, pressing uh, my mute button. We have the, 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 like, the family members. Now we have like all representations of the, the four big bads we're going to be fighting in this game. And they all, I think, in a good way, right? And this is part of the problem with the game, it's so hollow. We have um, Dimitrescu, who's like the, the vampire boss. She looks like really high class. She's she's you know quiet now. Child like all of her dialogue is gonna match that of like a snooty boss type. But underneath all of that, what kind of monster is Luke? He's like oh cool. Next up, it's like oh yeah Heisenberg. This um, telekinetic sort of uh, you, you could come across to evoke like a hillbilly type bad guy and a lot of the uh, standard horror stuff from um, let's say I don't know eighties ish late eighties a lot of the a lot of the slashery <laughs> stuff from then. Then you have Moreau, yeah. much more Seven representative days. of a horrible thing sludge monster. Just a standard, like, horrible creature of the Black Lagoon type shit. I was shit. about to say yeah, that. Yeah, it's then, more classic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Miranda being, like, cult boss, who possibly uses magic, might be, like, able to use illusions. It's just like, oh, that's, that's also kind of neat. And then the spooky right. doll, who's, like, you don't quite know what's going on with her. She seems more psychological. And the little doll running around like Chucky or something. It's like, yeah, holy shit! Scarecrow. How yeah. many things are we doing all at once? Like, whoa! Right. And, and, and if yeah, this right. game, if this game were like thirty hours long, and each of their areas were fully fleshed out, and let's give Heisenberg right. maybe the option to actually wolf out, and his whole kingdom right. is wolf related. Like, oh my god, the well, potential is enormous. Oh, Am I yeah. going a bit of a rant here? Well, that's mine done. That's so you go right here. ahead. <laughs> that's why you're here. Yeah. That's like, yeah. That's, well, that's, that's why we made it up. you. So this game, like I said in the beginning, pissed me off to no extent. Like this, I'm not joking when I say this is the most disappointed I've ever been with a gaming experience. And the, one of the biggest parts is at this part, we get all these awesome characters that they're trying to flush out and you get to finally see them. And you're like, okay, cool. You see them interact, like how they are, what are they, a family or are they a cult? But the problem is, okay, you go to the castle. And the castle's kind of cool, right? You get to see it, and it's awesome. Dami kind of chases yeah. you. 
I like the castle. The design is fantastic. The lighting, it, just the everything. The lighting, is fantastic. I, well, yeah. I had RTX on. It's fucking beautiful. Oh, I don't even it was, yeah, the, the was, art in this. Yeah. Oh my god, it was gorgeous. Castle's lovely. But then that's the longest fucking part of the game. That's the longest lord that you get. I have no idea what fucking Moreau is. Even reading all the notes, I have no idea what He's the fucking merman. doll bitch's name even is anymore because it pissed me off so much. The fact that you can beat that in less than three minutes if you just run through it, it's it's it means nothing. You're killing these things for nothing. It's arbitrary just filler that was thrown into the game to get to Miranda. There's I mean, no if it was a walking it. simulator, I'd be significantly less and I would I'd be way less happy with this game. Yes, stuff from- and it, it it's just the whole point of they're in there. You kill but them because they're bosses, them. not right. because you're, a, like a, you're not, a real reason. You're not killing you know? them for a right. reason other than they're in your way. I mean, maybe I, it would have been better if the game. I like how now I'm just thinking, like, what if the game was very, very, very different? But why you don't have to finish a just... sentence. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just it's like, just, like if, if, if you're looking if... at this game from like a gameplay oh, perspective. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll let you finish. I'm, I've, I've been really good about like not talking most of the time lately, <laughs> I feel. Um, but so what I was all I was going to say. Yeah, was go ahead. Go I ahead. Think, um, I think that if Resident Evil, I, there's there's like a lot of great potential in, in Village, like in this game. There's a lot of stuff that could be really cool. But if it was like the, it's only scratching the surface of what they could have done with it. Like the idea of having the four lords in these different parts of the map makes you wonder if it would have just been better to have the whole game have like have the village in the middle be this like massive hub, this really big hub, and then you jump back and forth between the locations and you can pick and shoot. It was made yes. earlier. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Which, which guys you fight first. Do kind of do a Breath of the Wild thing where it's just like you can pick who you want to go for first and um that'd be a cool way to oh. increase the replay value because you could have the story evolve in different ways like yes maybe yeah. there are different modifiers so even if you want to cut down the, the difficulty for the developers maybe like depending on the first two that you take down the next two will have these modifiers or buffs yes um and they can have unique dialogue not together. to mention they could work yeah. together even and then yes. maybe be, like, almost each- you can gain a bill, like some kind of thinking, benefit. You can uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna say that the game tricked me into thinking that I could choose which one I could go to next. Yes, it tricked my whole chat. When, my whole chat thought I could yeah, choose. Yep. Yeah, because it opens up and then Duke, who's a quasi character, who's isn't he sets all the places and he puts all the treasures out and which I'm fine with that. Um, then he tells you where they each are and he describes their areas and I'm like, oh, I could. Wow, I I can choose which one that I do next. And you know okay. what? This might and... this might improve the story too. Yes. What if you had, like you mentioned earlier, survivors in the in the town mm-hmm. who could give you specific things that they need you to do, who you can, can interact them. with as you they come and go between you places. Secrets. If you if you save us, they... I'll give you this one thing that I'll will you help you out bullet. on this one. It'll help you in yeah. this area. Or and, they could tell you, you can how make to it thematic, get into the so and things like that. Like, yeah. hey, there's a secret entrance. Here's to get a shortcut into the castle. Into the castle. Like, yeah, exactly. You need to jump oh yeah, places. you have yeah. the stonemason, the town stonemason. He worked right. on the castle. Maybe he knows a few things. The, the windmill entrance. operator. I don't know. Oh, a, a windmill monger. A windmonger. You go to if you go to him, he'll been tell amazing. you a little bit more about those windmills that <laughs> rows around Why? and he can help you out. I swear to Why God, if anyone says so, no, yeah. that's not Resident Fucking Evil, it's like stop. stop Good. Stop. 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 Evil then I don't fucking care. There are, and, well, the fact is, there are NPCs in Resident Evil. They already are, so we can do yeah. this. It but, doesn't change a lot. But it makes you think. And I was thinking about this a bit before we were talking about the issues with like navigating the levels, looter narrative dissonance and stuff. I almost feel like. This I'm game may have been hurt by how good it looks and just how how impressive the environments and stuff are. It's yes. like it does a really good job of tricking you into believing that the game has a lot more depth than it than it like actually has, and that can often lead you astray. It, it, yeah, like yeah. it almost hurts the game and because would... you believe that you can do more than you actually can. can I would say it? the same about Resident Evil Four, but in a positive way. Resident Evil 4 clearly had a lot of technical limitations on because it was that time and for that like the game came out for GameCube, GameCube. for fuck's sake, but the well, game GameCube they they try a lot of too, think, right? 
Yeah. Well, it. I mean, still then, when you consider the stuff that, that you could put in a good. game, and uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, for that time, with it, it tricks you in a good way of thinking the world is bigger and more mm -hmm. expansive in a way. Yeah, I know what you mean. When really it's a lot more closed in, but they're not trying to fool you in a bad way, and I feel like they kind of are here. Um, like when you don't have those, they think you don't have those limitations anymore. Really, you can pretty much make whatever you want for this kind of game, you could pretty mm -hmm. much go ham. You have the money, oh, yeah. your Capcom, you have the Resident Evil name, you all this stuff, and I just feel like they didn't do anything. Um, they, what's what's we'll hilarious, though. Sorry, God. I'll, I'll be quick, because I was going to say, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on what could have been mechanically, but I was just thinking, because it mentioned, like, saving survivors stuff. Imagine Dimitrescu, like, you could fight her without saving any of these theoretical villages, and in the final battle, like, you have to take her on yourself, blah, blah, blah. But if you save, oh, you know, for every one yeah. you save, they will turn up with a torch in the fight and, like, surround her or something, and it mm. weakens the fuck out. And then you could even have, like, if you save all ten out of ten, they'll burn her at the stake or something. It'd be so <laughs> fucking hey. cool. Well, yeah, the idea of the villagers in the village coming together to rise up against the this mad scientist in the castle, or the werewolf in the forest, or the da-da-da, or the witch in the woods, or the old crones, or anything like that. They want you to think that kind of vibe, but that they don't they don't do anything with it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, oh no, the villagers are right at the beginning, if though. You... Like, that's exactly it. The the biggest problem for me was that you can see how this could have been really fucking cool, and they completely just let it all go. I think that's I, why I like this more than Resident Evil 7, but this game has disappointed me far more than Resident Evil 7. I, I understand that, it's yeah. kind of like It's kind of like the new Mortal Kombat. It's definitely mm -hmm. better than the old Mortal Kombat, uh -oh. but the new one disappointed me a whole lot more. I don't know if you, you know. You're right? not going to know this, Rex, but that's an incredibly hot take. Um, people really? love the original Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh, <laughs> I love it too. It's terrible. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> you know, well, EFAB coverage what? coming one day. It's one of these days. Well, it's, one uh, of the things I was going to mention, sorry, uh, I was just going to mention something that the whole idea that you could take on um, all four, uh, well, slight tangent, there's actually five. It's very confusing. There's actually five main main uh, baddies under Miranda. Mm -hmm. It's very confusing because there's there's Lady D or Lady Double D, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's Moreau, there's, uh, uh, there's Heisenberg and there's Beneviento with the little doll thing. There's also the big wolfman in the stronghold. I thought that's the, I thought that one was going to be Heisenberg, but that's actually a separate. I thought it was going to be Heisenberg, Heisenberg too. I thought Heisenberg yeah, was going to be the wolfman. Um, well, yeah. yeah, I because he looks kind of a little bit grizzled. Yeah, and, you know. Yeah. And, and, oh, oh, I guess <laughs> they're brothers. The There's two of them. This, the, the Urias is one of the big. Well, wait. This here is, is the Urias marketing. The big, the big wolf. I I thought Chris was going to have lycanthropy. Yeah. Yeah, me too. But they, I think that was just like a cool. No, I didn't fucking upper. do it. And now Chris is just well, an idiot with a gun. What we're talking about here circles around a new new topic that I think we can totally jump into. Uh, what the fuck? You didn't do anything with a werewolf like that. You did. Yeah. You just had guys yeah, who are hairy run at you. That's all you. And it's like yeah. Th they had a couple of big wolf battles, but they're also randomly dropped on you. And it's just like you can kill them pretty fast. That's it. It's like where is all of the wolf stuff? Where's the wolf place? Where's yeah. all the you know. Maybe it would have been a cool idea to have Chris be the playable character and have that be him, you know, do do Sonic Unleashed, but good. Well, yeah, Sonic. I was going to say, you, you could have it be that you're balancing <laughs> the man and the wolf and you need, like, injections yeah. to stop it, but also if you wolf out, it'll actually give you, like, faster attacks, more damage, but you'll also <laughs> maybe uh -huh. lose sanity. You, there, there could be something going on there. Yeah. Yeah, a negative aspect maybe, to it. Maybe yeah. have it play tricks on him, have hallucinations and stuff like that. Um, there's, you know, even if yeah, he, and you can have Heisenberg taunt him Kelsey. because he wants him to join him. He's like, be a wolf. It's fucking yeah, great. Yeah, being a wolf's not so bad, Chris. You'll really <laughs> like it. You get it. to stay up all night drinking blood. You get to stay up <laughs> all night and you have You get a free fun. soda at the movies. And you get a big dick. By the way, I want this for the vampires too. Where the fuck was my vampire content? Jesus. No, she you licks your bug hand ladies. Once. They're, they're bug ladies. Maybe. They're not even vampires. They're bug ladies, exactly. They're not vampires. They're weird bug ladies who don't. The whole have, lore dumb, behind the vampires was stupid. The whole lore behind I, uh, the vampires was stupid. Yes. Like yeah, the reason wanna... why she's a vampire. It reminded it is was Batwoman. Stupid. It was actually Batwoman. It's it's really it's actually uh, one of the biggest criticisms of the of the game in terms of lore and world building is that this game. 
the resident evil part of this game actually makes the whole game worse like if they took out the whole oh this is actually tied to you know umbrella and these are it's actually yeah. a virus and you know mold or whatever that actually ruins a bit of the game like if they're actually yeah. just straight up oh i'm uh you know living in this village and there's a bunch of vampires and werewolves this is crazy you know that would actually make more sense than uh somehow heisenberg developing <laughs> magnet uh, control of magnetism because he, he yeah was it's, it's just mold. weird <laughs> you, that's, you read that's it. so out there and weird but it's, yeah. it's, yeah. honestly so it's like we, we just see a whole bunch of disconnected crazy shit and then it's like don't worry we explain it you pick up a note that says we injected them with it and it did that yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> okay oh, i yeah, i really okay. wish if going on that chris wolf idea how cool would it be to have the decision at the end do you actually want to cure yourself or do you want to use this new power to do plot stuff to fulfill to kill the evil bad guy to to try and to try and use it take the risk and try and use that 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 lycanthropy of yours also or, yet yeah another, to help you, people yet another you instance on screen of ethan just refusing to use any of his weapons as he is pulled yeah. away by the evil people because he sucks mm, he does suck. I, um, yeah, oh uh, my god how you does know, she I, hold you if she's bugs? I called. I don't. Know. I called uh, Ethan a turnip, and and I think <laughs> that's really accurate because, like, what kind of vegetable does mm, taste? Less? <laughs> what <laughs> vegetable so, does less? For, for right. example, it's with like, Moreau, yeah. where he just he just sits there and stares at this boss, letting him talk and get closer until he gets himself trapped. Like he grabs the flask and stares yeah. at Moreau, waiting to be spotted, oh. and then engages him in conversation. He's stupid uh, and boring. The one time a... you just need to take it and go is the one time you like engage these people in conversation, and right? that goes like, basically okay. nowhere. The best line dumb? that he has in the whole film, right? It's Some, dark. I, I saw. I, it's dark. It's also, dark. you called it a film, which <laughs> I'm sure Capcom would be happy with. I, I love that. Oh, by the way, this, because. This on the screen is the most vampire it ever gets. Right, she actually, hand. I really, really yeah. wanted to uh, talk about this. This was like the peak of my excitement for the vampire content. I was waiting for her to like not only drink the blood, but to sort of have a have a bit of a reaction, like I yeah, like I really like drinking blood. Sort of thing that this the what's going on underneath in this vampire because you have to maintain the look as a vampire, but really underneath you're a horrible monster. That's like the fucking point, and that um, yeah, that that's it really for the vampire content. That's about yeah. it. The rest of it is. And there's no. She's a reskin. There's no reveal here. Oh, go ahead, you finish. I was just gonna say that the reason, like, because I know someone's gonna be like, "Well, what do you mean? There's loads of content with her left. It's like it's her roaming around. Like it's nothing. There's nothing. Like you kill these three. The best you get is one line where she says, "Roar, you killed my daughters. That makes me unhappy." And then she turns into a giant monster and you kill her. Lame. Yeah, she's the I thinnest. Was... She's the thinnest character in the, probably the entire as, game. Like literally, a a, how uh, ironic! As um, a bit of a <laughs> diatribe, the, the three the three uh, sister daughter characters or whatever, all voiced by the same woman, who tragically died They're like a month or two the before the game came out. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks. oh sorry, yeah. you saying one of the oh, really? actresses? Yeah, that, one of them oh. passed away. Yeah, I really thought it was sad. her doing all three. I thought that was how they credited her. I, I think, could be wrong. Oh, well, there were. Well, I, I, honestly, I can't. I can't tell you because I can't remember a difference in their voices. Yeah, yeah, they don't have any different names. I don't think, do they? They have, have names, names, but you don't remember them, and neither does anyone well, else. Well, speaking of not remembering, I wanted to she just did, bring for up... the record. She Wait. she did a very good job. Her, her yeah, yeah. No, you know, well, I think the voice yeah. acting in the game is great. She's good. Like, yeah, like, yeah, maybe yeah. Ethan's acting. We'll go over that. Um, just just yeah. one thing, uh, Indigo. You said that uh, Dimitrescu is the thinnest of all of them. You fucking, there's one you forgot because she doesn't have a character. It's the stupid doll person. The She's just like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, they didn't even, I don't think they even yeah. give her a line. Maybe it's like, oh no, my well, daughter. Her, her doll like says, like, why are you <laughs> fucking with my friends? You're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> my cute Oh, doll sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. It's it's Bella, Cassandra, and Daniela, Chad is saying. Mm, yeah. Okay. So I guess yeah. they, they do have different <clears throat> names. Oh, different names and uh, voice actors. So one of them died then, yeah. And yeah, was, and was, it's unfortunate because all three of them aren't characters. They're all just like yeah. they they kind of just like I love drinking blood. Yeah, well, that's someone, me. Someone said, thing. someone said man no, blood. The voice acting is not good. What's what's yeah. not good about the voice? I it thought it was pretty man. Thing. Well, it was very I, solid. I honestly think it's the script. It's not the voice actors. The voice actors do. Yeah, great. It's, it's the script. script. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the yeah. script, not the voice. That's every Resident Evil game. Sorry. Right? I just saw it in the stream. We we, I, we need to talk about this. When I was playing this game, because I didn't play Seven, I saw him rip his hand through that mm. book, and I was like, oh, yeah. your hands don't work I, anymore. 
I, 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 I was, I'm, I'm right. I'm right there. <laughs> I with was you, about. Free. I was. I was yeah. looking. What's happening to his body? It was like, what? Why can I walk? What is? What is going well, on? Resident Evil Seven doesn't, doesn't was... help you. It's still confusing if if you play Resident Evil Seven. You don't really yeah. fully understand it. You know that, that you've got point... moldy juice in you, but you don't know what that means because the games never tell yeah. you. Until the yeah. end, when I, you go, you're, yeah, you're, you're mold. You're dead. <laughs> yeah, you you actually died at the beginning of the first game. And why is like, blood squirting out everywhere? Like, why does he even have blood well, then if he's all mold? I also don't thing. like the way she Ethan, fucking goes like, mm. that's like a little sour face she makes when she's sucking on your yeah. fucking blood Ooh, getting around her palate. Ew. It's just like, what yeah. face is that? Uh, Ethan's so, willingness mm. to just like rip his hands through the <laughs> sickles <laughs> is like, <laughs> holy no, fuck, hold Ethan, Jesus fucking Not Christ, how quickly you did that. I didn't see I, that coming. I posted well, the meme a while ago. I posted a meme a while ago. I thought it was great. It was uh, um, ha, name a character that's suffered more than Ethan's hands. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> but how does well, it, with the reveal at the end that Ethan is made of mold, whatever the fuck that means? How Lady Dimitrescu, when she tastes your blood, she's basically just like, "This is fine, I guess." The stale. There's right. no, I think she would have been she like, have, "Oh, hmm. there's no super weird reaction," and then she yeah. gets cut short by something else happening that leads us to go, "Wait, what's wrong with my blood? I don't have AIDS, do I?" Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no mystery. She's just like, "Your blood's." There's fine. more important okay, question. So, so when I think we know that she would you... recognize goo blood, she would have to. Like, right? Yeah, she'd be oh, like, she "What know the it was fuck not are right. you?" Well, not to yeah. mention, like, okay, this I've scene tasted where you're many man things, but you're fucking. Yeah, weird. you're not even a man what's thing. You're a goo you? thing. Yeah, <laughs> a goo thing. I mean, here, so here's the real question: <laughs> How much of whole like a uh, tall vampire mommy dommy? How much of that was just ironic, stupid, like degenerate shit posting, and how much of that was people actually being like, "Oh fuck you, yeah, this is exactly what I want out of a game." <laughs> like, how, what's what? What would you say the ratio I, is? I mean, I don't honestly, I don't, I don't really I care. Like, I just I don't, yeah, I don't either, care either. either. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, it, it concerns me a little bit. It's like in the back of my mind, I worry, but you know, yeah, I don't know why you always gotta fine. go there, Greg. It's like, geez, every time you always go here. I have this is to. the place I don't want to be. And you, you don't think the people who watch this fucking show jerk off? I'm talking for the every people. Every time, it's always you, Chase. You're always it's like, always oh, dick. let's talk about this now. And it's like, oh, God, yeah. Why? At least when I said when you were a werewolf, you get a big cock, and I just moved on with things. Yeah, and see, that's it. <laughs> There, um, there was a thing. I was uh, sorry. Let me catch up. My well, uh, on this scene, though, just that they leave you with a, a health pick. I agree, as well. Chad. It is a meme. Yeah. Like, they, nice. And Ethan no, knows my, exactly my what to do with it. Oh, thank God, no, this is here. Sprinkles. And all of your weapons. Better. Everyone who ever kidnaps you leaves you with all of your fucking weapons every yeah. time. If and he bullets, really like cigarette. ripped his hand out like that, you'd only do that with one hand because it would completely destroy your ligaments. You'd never be able to use that hand again. And wouldn't you grab the other one and like put it back through but, instead yeah, but, of ripping but, it out? He's mold. If he's mold. How come his two but fingers it doesn't make any bitten sense. off never come back? Well, you wouldn't fucking fool both look, hands that way. Fool, you can regrow a heart. You can't regrow your fingers. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's um yeah. For anybody out there who thought him being a zombie actually explains everything, like Jesus Christ, it doesn't. Yeah. You can <laughs> still no. die for some reason. Why can you die? You can get a spike to the chest, and that, like, kills you, or a werewolf can nibble you to death, and that's fail state. That's game over. Reload. Mm -hmm. You can have your heart ripped out, but it's fine. It, yeah, it's, it's fine. You're mold, you come back so it's well. cool. Come back. Well, Evelyn, Evelyn, Evelyn told me you're fine. And and I think if, you can't walk. I think it was on Metal Stream we mentioned this, but, like, to establish that we are so immune to death that not even pulling our heart out can kill us, and then in narrative we die. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> really? But apparently he's not dead, so who fucking knows? Well, yeah, well, I'm you know, you guys, I'm convinced we're really... indestructible. There was a part in the game where, like, you're fighting drill monsters, and mm, um, yeah. I accidentally messed up, and he started drilling like right through Ethan. Like, oh, I guess I died. I, I screwed that up. But then he like was alive because like <laughs> I don't know, he hadn't actually been killed. I was like, you're dead. You had a drill through. <laughs> like, hey, free! It went through his heart. That's like not things. even his weak spot. We know so, this. So yeah, one thing with that, like with that game, the gameplay part of that, with you know fighting those guys, is it just me or did even on standard difficulty, did everything feel super fucking tanky? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. We can, the armored we lichens really gotten, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, we, well, we, we, even, we can move we to that topic if you want. Game. Yeah, I, mean, I hated it. I, the gameplay yeah, it sucks. Yes, so, it's absolutely um, fucking atrocious. The concept the of a bullet sucks, sponge, uh, the only yeah, thing I have no, no, no. 
The only thing I had to say about like the con like the idea of the bullet spongy enemies was just that yes, but also I had so much fucking ammo that I was just like, I guess everything's just right. been scaled up. Like instead of me having it ten bullets and they take one to kill, I have a hundred bullets and they take ten to kill. I'd much rather have one ten bullets no, and I agree. one to kill. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't like it when my weapons feel weak and anemic. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And the knife, when I have to shoot I, I actually what? did a thing where I actually tried to kill everything with the knife while playing it. And the stupid, you know, the little lesser vampire things, the little females that they took to the yeah. basement and fucking, okay. It took, what was it? It took 16 knife hits to kill. That's stupid. It's fun. And I, well, the only way I could do it is I locked them in their animation because there's a leash they have to where they have to return to their home point. Yeah. The right. You can, stand, you can stand in front of them and block their path. And I did that and just knifed them. It took like 16 hits to kill. Yep. There is. There is something that is insanely unsatisfying about having a 1911 in your hands and having to and shoot an enemy six times in the fucking head to kill them. Yep. It's just so unfun and dull and I, tedious. Yeah, if we're comparing it to kind of, I mean, we're going to keep going back because everyone's comparing it to Resident Evil 4 because it literally shares a lot of the blueprints. It's trying um, to be Resident Evil 4. It, it wants tried to be Resident Evil 4. In a lot of ways. Yeah. In, in, in the original Resident Evil 4... Enemies would like run up to you, but then they would kind of stop short and they would kind of start slowly walking to you. So you had a moment even with a handgun out to get the um, get a headshot in and get a yeah, melee normal, yeah. attack Definitely. connected. Yeah, normally. But like with this game, it seems like the the lichens just they They're kind of like randomizer. to rush you a mm -hmm. lot. They 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 yeah. often like to just when they get close to you, they just rush you and slide and they like look up at you. They kind of lock onto you like an oblivion NPC and just like grimacing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I feel like the, they do do that. <laughs> they do. You can you can <laughs> learn, and maybe you can after extensive study of this game. But in Resident Evil Four, you could learn enemies after eventually playing with them in a positive way because the game is so gameplay focused. A, a game that's gameplay focused. Fucking Whoa. Shutter to thought. <laughs> the enemies in this feel like they're on a randomizer. Like I don't know. Maybe it's just the way that they. I don't like the way they move around. It often not for combat reasons, but. A lot, oftentimes, like the Shambly, I think they're called Morakai, the the basic Roby enemies that hold yeah, yeah. You know, things. The way that they stumble around means that they often get caught on the environment when they're trying to come and get you. That can happen. They'll yeah. be moving. They'll be moving towards you, and then they'll be at that part of their walking animation where they move like to the left and catch themselves, which means they won't go through the door. They'll hit the side of the door, and they'll be stuck there. And then they'll have to try and shamble their way back through the door. Yeah, and it is very. Eh. In in my in my experience with it, I I did have a little bit of that, but I had way more of enemies just never letting up on the pressure and just constantly fucking forcing me to retreat and reload and try to like turn corners really quickly. And uh, I I love when you, when you fight them in the really big tall kind of like werewolf home or whatever towards the end of the game. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, before the factory or something. If memory serves. Uh, when you just fight them and they just they're just like fucking climbing around like spider monkeys and shit and like launching landing right next to you and grabbing you like that whole part was really body. tense for me hanging yeah. on that body just eating it mm -hmm. when when an enemy grabbed you in Resident Evil 4 and you shook them off depending on the placement of the other enemies it would stumble the enemies back oh, or yes. it felt like you yeah. didn't oh, yes. yeah. what when an enemy so grabs you in this, you're like transported to a mini pocket dimension where only you and that creature <laughs> exist. Ugh. And you're just, you're locked into it. Dude, like, even and... talking about it frustrates me. Just just thinking about it. I, it was one of the immediate things that hit me in this fucking game. You get grabbed, you just have to wait. It's like, wow. Yep. And, I, and I feel, uh, I don't know if this happened. Maybe one of, it, it happened for one of you. I know in Resident Evil 4, if there's a Ganado that's attacking you or trying to strangle you or whatever, and an explosion goes off around you, it'll knock them off of you. Yeah. Does that happen fine. in this game? Sometimes. Um, I've noticed, because oh. I, I noticed it in Mercenaries, or actually in the Chris section, I um, activated the explosion with the, the, the tracky light thing, and someone grabbed me as the explosion came down, and he went to bite, and then he just flew away. And I was just like, oh. Huh. But the problem I feel is like compared to RE four, where there's all the dynamite, I didn't get the opportunity to see it as much. I didn't. I don't know if that was because of the fact that. By the way, the Chris section is so fucking on rails. Um, the when you complete that explosion, it like erases all of the enemies in the area. They have to they get deleted from existence, no matter where they are. They could be further away from the explosion than you are, and they will be killed by it. It's like okay. Yep. Um, but try this at home. 
I um on the hardest difficulty. I don't think I don't know if this was on stream or not, but um it was like on a replay. I was just fucking around. Um, I started. I I thought you know why not just run through the crisp part? I could because I was picturing in my head and I was like, there's no there's no part where I have to wait for anything, right? And I had like forgetting, of course, that um the final part is gonna be like where everything would stack up, right? And then and then and it's like, oh well, would that be funny? Like having fifty fucking enemies all crowd up at that area then? But of course, this is Resident Evil Eight. So you run through. And you spawn what is like an army of fucking wolves and, and, and flying dudes and just everything. If you're lucky enough to get through them all, which by the way, flashbang, uh, as someone in my chat was pointing out to me, I completely forgot I had, makes it real easy. You'll have like 30 people trying to kill you as soon as you cross over into a cutscene. It's not even a cutscene, it's an in-game cutscene, right? Where he goes, ah, oh, this is the thing, we gotta blow it up. They all disappear. You turn around, they're that all sucks. gone. There are, this game is filled with these little arbitrary lines that every enemy just yep. can no longer exist if you cross them. <laughs> I think you... So this is one of the biggest problems with this game. Okay. One of the biggest problems with this game. Um, there are... I think it's on practically every section. Yeah. Um, you would be... Sh if you actually went out looking for them, and you'll discover them by accident almost assuredly, you'd be shocked at how many there are. Um, I'll put it here in the chat because I recorded it just because I was I was testing it. Uh, so it'll show up in a second once I find it. In the section, this is kind of like in the first section you have to just sort of walk around and fight enemies. Um, you're going through the the field, the little the fallow field, and you meet the woman and her grandfather. Once you talk to them, uh, they say, oh, you have to open it. You, you, you're supposed to go forward. So you go into their little place they're hiding. You're supposed to go through the window, turn left, unlock the door, and you go inside Louise's house. And that's what you're supposed to do. If you turn around and instead exit that little shack the way you came, you notice that across the field there are multiple lichens holding torches, and they're just standing around. This is supposed to tell this. This tells the player you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to go this way. Um, you you have to go the other way. You you can't go this way. It's it's yeah, discouraging. Scary. You got to get into the house. Yes. However, I was like, you know what? Let's see how bad this gets if I don't do what this game wants me to do. Uh, so I I shot at one of them and I bugged them, and they will they they'll come and they'll try to get you. Our gnashing of teeth and all that stuff. And they'll, they'll, they'll get you, they'll, they'll, they'll come up and get you, they'll go through the field and try to get you. If you go back into the shack, where those two people are, who are hiding for fear of their life, of the lichens finding them, the lichens will not follow you. Nope. That door is an invisible wall that the enemies will not go through to get you. Um, and this is like, in the first hour of the game. And yeah, it's and pathetic. These, these are everywhere. It was funny, I was talking to, um, I think it was Franny everywhere. about different portions of the castle that uh, do different things, and I was like, I wanted to do puzzle solving and finding items, but I kept getting interrupted by Lady Dimitrescu just walking around being annoying. And Franny was like, oh, well, you know, the puzzles I was doing, I wasn't getting interrupted by her at all. And I was like, oh, of course, I just meant resource gathering, because all puzzle rooms are essentially locked off to enemies. It's simply safe. Yep. It's like, like they're not like allowed the because that would be rude. Can you <laughs> like, do the okay. wine? Can you do the wine puzzle? She's in the room next door where you killed her daughter. Why doesn't she just come fucking murder you, dude? Oh, when you uh, chase no, her up the stairs, size too big. I I was like sprinting to try and catch yeah. up with her, and uh -huh. you she's like crosses a corner, and I was like I'm like meters away. And then she said, "You killed my daughter." Yep. I was like, "Where'd you go?" I was why like, didn't she, <laughs> "Why didn't she just come kill you?" Like she, she right there, right then and there, like. But she obviously oh. can hear you behind her. Like we're we're talking about these invisible barriers, and we we can't go too far without talking about the most bizarrely designed invisible wall that exists in the game. The one yeah. that's so obvious, truly everyone who must have played this not only knows about it, but used it to exploit, which is of uh. course Duke's position. In mm -hmm. the um, in the castle. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, it's yep. it's just Resident Evil Two remake, Resident Evil Three remake again. They, they, they've had that with all the big bads the, that stalk you. The <laughs> the idea that you have a safe room that's one thing to consider. However, mm -hmm. the fact that the safe room is here, right there, and the fact that it's it's nothing preventing her from going through. It's just a doorway. It's just mm -hmm. like this. It's a doorway. It's meant for it's there for the transversal through walls. 
but she won't follow you. She'll stand there as you throw pipe bombs at her and shoot her full of holes, and she just yep. stands there looking at you. She won't yep. chase you, and she's got a bloodlust for you, literally. Yep. Uh, you killed, you her, killed her, kids. her daughters. Yeah. You, you you killed her kids. She hates you. You're disgusting and vile and horrible. And she wants to kill you, but not enough to walk through that door. No, because that door is the safe room. Because it is, and, and they I put it right there to be explored. I I wonder because I feel like there are a few things to take away from that. It's like, well, safe room should be safe, right? It's like, well, I guess the. Your choice could be that safe rooms aren't safe, so people are constantly on edge, but that would make it really difficult to save. You need really to have the player to weird. breathe. And she needs Yeah, you need to be able yeah. to go through your inventory. Well, so like so to, to which my next that. point to which my next point would be maybe the safe room the safe room needs to be located somewhere else other than right <laughs> not next there. to the giant <laughs> not there, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is anywhere else. It is adjacent to her patrol route. In my playthrough when I had collected all the masks, what I did was I went into the save room, <laughs> saved, I'm like, whoo, all right, she's right out there. All right, three, two, one, go. And then I ran out and just started frantically putting the masks on the, uh, on the, on the faces. It's like, <laughs> yeah. this is absurd. Like, this is so stupid. The game shouldn't have yeah, been set up where this would happen. As I recommended, it's like, you could have reloaded, but then a third observer might be like, that's even stupider. Like, you just yeah. reload your save and she's Why disappeared. Would you reload, like, you shouldn't have to reload it just to fucking do that part of the game. It's oh, well, I mean, I did it successfully, and it was stupid. It was yeah, really yeah, yeah. dumb. What, yeah, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting is both solutions are retarded, and it's just like, yeah, why is this yeah. ever happening at all? Like, why did you make it this way? I, I for yeah. the life of me, do not understand why they didn't have her enter into a... If you go into the safe room when she's chasing you, she should have a directive in her AI that takes her fast out of there. She needs to go. She needs to get to a different room. And you could even have her curse the duke. Be like, Duke, you keep yeah, right. ruining everything. Or have, or have the Duke be like, oh, yeah. I'm not here, and he closes up shop, and she can come in and fucking corner you. Like, yeah, something goofy like too. that, I'd be like, okay, touche game. Well, yeah, you know gonna what have would to... be cool, though? Go for it. It would be just really cool in general, as if you could actually incapacitate her, but you yes. can't, so... Yeah, yeah. This is yeah that's another thing. thing. That would yeah. be neat. I tried well, today. Can... All, all what happens is, she, I, I shot her with the steak gun, and she does, like, a little head back, so, ah... Uh, she does it three well, times, yeah. and after that, she yeah. just ignores everything else. Well, no, see, like, I shot her once a couple times, and she said, oh, you messed up my dress, and she got all angry and, like, brushed it off. <laughs> but that's well, the only time I never got that. Never got that. Exactly. Stronger than I... Nemesis and Tyrant. <laughs> Hilarious. No, she, no one else got yeah. that, but I did. So yeah, why... I never did, and I have a, I posted a clip in this room earlier of me just unloading multiple magazines into yeah. her, bam, 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 while she just sits there, staring, takes it, doesn't react, mm -hmm. she doesn't do anything, she does, she just, you're underneath no the, but, but, yeah, but she's like, underneath the, the lintel, I think it's called, I but she just, just can't. It's just uh, funny, because, like, a lot of these issues were fixed uh, kind of accidentally in older games by the fact that the earlier, like, one, two, three games, you would zone, Every time you go through a door, it would go through. A, you'd open the door, or you go to the other side, and close. So there was no connection between the two rooms. You could do something like that. Have like a and even then, they uh, often had them follow you through anyway, and like break doors and permanently what? alter yep. the way uh, yeah, the rooms yeah, work. Yeah, but like, but but like in the case of the Duke, you could have a like a mini cutscene when you open up the Duke's door, um, mm -hmm. and then we, a, as soon as the door closes, the uh, like some bolts come in, like clock clock, and then she like you hear some banging on there or something like that. Something yeah. to kind of remind you that she's out there, but. Because the door closes and there's no uh, room for her to try to get through the door, you could do whatever you want outside of that door. You could have a respawn somewhere else. You could make yeah, well, it disappear. Yeah, it's, it's like she's, she's in a different different. There's zone no exploit now, so punishment. That... Like if you had it yeah. so that because I actually like the I, I couldn't remember who suggested it, but I love the idea that she's right on your heels and you're almost trying to play with it. And then you go up to the door and it doesn't open, and the Duke is like, "She's not coming in here." Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, "Oh shit!" Textualizing the reason why that would be a thing, because like in Metal Gear Solid games, when you're in an alert state and the enemies are pursuing you and shooting at you, you don't get to go into the door and activate the cutscene, yeah, and then you come it. out and you're in fine status. So they, they call you and they go, "Snake, you're you can't be like they can't be chasing you in order for you to open up the door. Like you have to lose them." And then you're like, "Fuck, well, I'm just gonna die because I corner myself now." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very GTA clever. Five stars, you, know, you can't go into exactly. The yeah, yeah, same same basic, same basic yeah. game design. That's, that's what you I just don't prevent understand. exploits. That's the, that's your fucking job. <laughs> You're supposed to stop us from doing this. But the location is so perfect to exploit. It makes exactly. you wonder what were they thinking? You, you know, like it's, yeah, it's it's there they to be an exploit. Weren't 
thinking. You, you could have it's, several it's lines from the Duke, and he could imply that she has to be at least like a good two or two rooms away before he'll open that door back up. And well, so she's not she not active and alert. Yeah, yeah. Just she yeah. needs you need to, and that's the thing. Then I would, well, the problem would then move. She turns up way too fucking much in that castle. If you guys, yes, have, she's yep. dying every your progress. Time I'm doing she, something really important. She's there. I'm just really annoying. Because, yeah, I'm it's really annoying because her, really. I can't. I can't fight her. That's or her daughters. You can't fight them until they're too stupid to live. So that's <laughs> off the table. You so you know that the, the only thing you could do is just run back to the safe house. And now I, just, I, I did the think, game is wasting your time. I yeah. did think it was a little bit interesting that to juxtapose the fucking the strong pounding with almost the chain like rattling of Mr. X's footsteps above you in Resident Evil 2 remake. You just have right. like clacking heels, like stilettos, and just like, <laughs> oh fuck, somehow yeah, that's but, scary now. Yeah, but there's anyway. she, she doesn't make any sounds when she has to sneak up on you in cutscenes though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's another there's another factor that kind of came in the back of my mind, uh, which which made Mr. X work, but not uh Lady D, where Mr. X and you are both kind of foreigners to this area. Like you're both kind of exploring it so that, you know, they wouldn't necessarily know the layout. They're kind of like stalking, figuring things out, moving yeah, around, it's her hunting fucking for you. Home, yeah. But it's your home. <laughs> you know, every single <laughs> looking kind of, you've only lived here for 80 years. There's you a room she's not allowed year. in. What the hell is that about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's her house. She owns the damn That's place. That's the room I refuse this, to go in. I have I just, terrible this, memories. This, this, it has way, that one ball puzzle that isn't actually a puzzle in a typewriter. No. This is a uh, more it criticism to room. be led to Duke. By the way, this is more reason to be like, "What the fuck is Duke? Yes. What are they afraid mm -hmm. of, Duke?" <laughs> what do you, I mean, what do you, I, you, you probably yeah, should he's be. gonna beat him with that fucking huge sausage. Why are you helping him, <laughs> Duke? Yeah. Duke? Why? Why are you helping Ethan? What yeah. the fuck? Why? I don't know. Well, that's my point. It's, uh, he's, he's so empty. In he's terms, just a void of nothing. It's, in terms it's... of uh, the t tall lady, I guess the thing that frustrates me is that I don't like that I can't incapacitate her at all, but and then it also leads to mixed messaging because I remember encountering that werewolf that's stalking you, and I was like, oh, can I not kill him? Like, that was a thought that I had. Do I have to avoid him, or can I kill him? I think oh, it's yeah. unclear who you yeah, cannot, is, cannot kill. It's that also, soft lock thing of if if the game well, doesn't tell you who you can and can't kill, if there's no intuition behind it and you don't know when you're supposed to shoot at enemies or if it's even worth it, the game can't punish you by soft locking you. So no. somebody in the chat brought something up that's really interesting. So they said where where were I the castle? I don't believe you. Yeah, they said where were the castle staff? <laughs> this is what's dumb about this game. So if you read all the notes, they're the zombies that are in the basement, the vampire zombies that are in the basement. That's the mm. staff. They turned like what they fucked up and did something wrong. You read it in the notes. The one opened the window and yeah. obviously the cold kills them for some stupid fucking reason. Oh, and... well, they're bugs <laughs> and bugs don't like so, the cold. Well, so, so my point is that the, those are the castle staff, because if you remember, if you look back at the demo, you don't play as Ethan. You actually play as Ingrid. You're going through the basement. Oh, I, but I don't know why that's even in the game. It was like a like why, huh. hmm. but yeah, um, that's the castle staff. They're actually the that's just some include me on as well to so because we're jumping sort of around topics, but bolstering the um the whole vampire werewolf lack of fucking isms and then also counterintuitive counterintuitive counterintuitiveness whatever um <laughs> so counterintuition that's that's probably a yes uh the idea that you're like we have vampire enemies. And you're like, oh, wow, cool. They can walk around in the sunlight. You're like, okay. They're killed okay. by cold. <laughs> uh, so vampires <laughs> are, like, typically cold because... Wait a sec. Like, so vampires are typically cold they're because they're blooded. undead, right? Yeah. yeah like the, yeah, the, the whole point alive, is yeah. that you'll note when someone hasn't revealed that they're a vampire that they, like, a lot of content will be like, wow, you're so cold. And it's like, yeah, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Like, you're like, oh, shit. He's, he's such a night owl. He never goes, man. Well, and, and they so, don't, like, they should have had mirrors around and you can't see She reflects on the either. fucking mirror. Dimitrescu yeah, reflects yeah, on it. I was like, what are you doing? She's a because vampire. She's not a real vampire. <laughs> He's a mold vampire. Well, so this but is the, this, 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 this is really? what I was it's trying to get to, right? Counterintuitive. You're thinking about all these things, and the game is just like, nah, we're doing our own thing. They're bug mold vampires. And you're like, yeah, fuck oh. Them. Well, not real vampires. So why even bother? <laughs> it's just like, none of, <laughs> because, none of it was... Be, because I've explained <laughs> that, because they just want to evoke the imagery, and that's, that's yeah. it. They stole vampire. They didn't do yeah. anything with it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, 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 and they, they, made, like, they made a worse version of vampires. 
Well, uh, so, uh, and I think that really does highlight it, right? So what we just highlight, they don't do anything vampirish with the vampire concept they have, except for at one point she, like, drinks some blood. You're like, good job. Right, yeah. Werewolves, cool. there's no curse. There's no struggle. No. There's, there's no moonlight. There's, there's, there's no... no they're just mold experiments, yeah, they're I just, guess? Uh, they're yeah. just angry, hairy men trying to kill you. And they just turn into, <laughs> yeah, they just turn into <laughs> hairy people. If you read the fucking thing, it's the Why party. have <laughs> any of this shit if you're going to do nothing with it? It's like, well, exactly. because they get to claim they did it. <laughs> I was actually confused the first time I thought uh, the the daughters when the, I broke open the window and then she's like, "Oh no!" I'm like, "Oh yeah, sunlight, of course, windows, cool." Yeah, I think but so. That, no, but that's cold. not that's not even the case. Uh, so if I can fall you through the courtyard, cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fall you through the courtyard and she's fine. So it doesn't make like, any fucking sense. Them? The wind comes from the <laughs> courtyard, the but they can be in the courtyard. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, and and also like if if your precious daughters were so sacred to you that you would not you would do whatever you could to protect them, board up the windows. Oh, yeah, well, one of the daughter. No, nah, yeah. we're one just gonna the, leave so, them. These daughters, you know, this, they 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 fall in the category of too stupid to live. The <laughs> last daughter attacks you in the library, a room that has a lever that opens up the ceiling. <laughs> that's where she decides to attack you and well, fight yeah, you. Yeah, because that's that's the best place. And all libraries have a little lever you can open the ceiling, and you didn't know that. Yeah. Because so, you don't have yeah. like papers Libraries everywhere sunders, and books you know. and stuff, and and you don't want to keep your library like I don't know, not humid or anything like that. No, 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 no. And then you would, dude, it's dude, it's dude. the most it's so then, I laughed when it happened. Like, why would you attack me here? You <laughs> won't go into the safe but room. It's but room ugh. design, it's room design, it's it's area design, it's beautiful, and it and it, the game works. Well, so sometimes you just sometimes you're just like reading it. You got to like cool off. So you got to like open yeah, up the roof and like you know let but, but it's on a timer. It's that. on a timer. It closes too. <laughs> you um, talk so a little bit about uh, wanna... about intuition. This part of the of the game where you're at, where there's just that open sunlight part. I kept expecting that to be a safe area where you could go. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> But obviously, these are. You aren't, would think that you know, this is the last place they would well, ever attack you is here in this room. In this giant, well lit, you know, circle yeah, yeah, of yeah. sunlight. I um, really did think that was the point was that you could have a safe zone there, and then out comes a vampire who just walks through it. After we uh, killed the first one with the, the. I was just lost. I had no idea what just happened because I don't think I'd even grasped the concept that they're bugs. They're not nothing to do with right. vampires. I was still just confused. Mm -hmm. and I, someone in my chat was like, Mola. The vampire, you you hit it with sunlight, and I was like, "It's a window. Sunlight goes through windows." <laughs> I was like, what yeah. I was like yeah, "There's I no know. drapes on him. There's not like there's fucking curtains in front of him." I, I was so what lost. I was like, "What the fuck I just happened? How did I even what, just win?" What if I put oh yeah, what, what if if they had actually done the vampires with light and had the safe room be the courtyard? Right. Exactly. I mean, that'd be cool. Yes. 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 That would have worked. Also, also, like, why did the fucking the staff the turn into vampires in the basement? Why do they have fucking medieval weapons? I don't. I don't. Well, uh, Nineteen forties was really well yeah, known for having medieval. Well, weapons are they fucking? Like they're, it's yeah. like Dark Souls. Like they run around with a fucking <laughs> straight sword. That's the thing because stab that's my the, ass. That's the imagery you want to evoke. You want to. You want to give that aesthetic, but you don't want to do anything with it. It doesn't. Right. All the villagers have guns and stuff, but. I, I guess it, I don't know. I guess it's just old castle. I fuck. I don't know. They're they're vampires. <laughs> exactly. They shouldn't even need it. No, it's I mean, fucking unnecessary as fuck. The, the weird part is they go with the, like, oh yeah, the, the the bugs they 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 came out of or was were made of. They don't like the cold. But then when you fight uh, Lady Lady Dimitrescu uh, oh, on, yeah. on the ceiling, she attacks you with the flies. Yeah, everywhere they just fly around. They swarm just fly around. Flying. Don't give a shit. Well, and for some yeah, reason they can. can't go into the little uh, ceiling. Uh, the little she corner. attacks you outside. <laughs> by, the by the way, the, the boss the, with her is outside. By the way, the boss the, fight with her. The shoot. The, when you shoot the first sister, those bullets are not going anywhere near the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's no, weird. No, they're going, they're going straight up to the ceiling. Very unfortunate yeah. ricochet. Yeah, they're going straight up to the ceiling. <laughs> and, There's and, no way uh, that would fucking ricochet. Uh, after um, the first, after the first daughter, like, um, I was like, oh great, this game just told me Windows good, so I would yeah. go around systematically breaking every single window in the entire castle, and it never came up again. Well, I, every daughter I, um, had their had their own special window thing. Again, yep. super counterintuitive. You can watch my stream, and this literally happens. I was like, ah, so this is the room where I can kill the sisters. So whenever I bump into them, I've got to try and drag them back here and kill right. them. Yeah. Every time That's they bad. would disapparate when whenever I get close, and I was like, I'm confused. Why is this happening? It's like, well, because they have rooms in which they wish to die. They don't want to die here. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, then. we have to have our we have to have our t our boss fight in this tiny ass fucking room. Yes. And you know what's funny as fuck? So this is just a little nitpicky thing for me. 
So I'm the last daughter that you kill. I'm running up those stairs. I'm getting like 140 FPS. Game looks great. The oh, second I yeah. cross that threshold, I have my 22 FPS with a 3090. Wait, yeah, my, wait my, which section? Which section like are you talking about? The last daughter. Well, the thing you can kill the two uh, remaining daughters in a different order if you want. The ceiling trap and then the wall blow open one. They're the mm -hmm. two right, last the wall ones. Blow yeah, open room, yeah. The wall blow open room. That's the one where it drops to 20 FPS. Yeah, my yeah, stream was like dying trying to stream that. I don't yep. know what is going That's on weird. in that room. I, but the sec it's I never got that. The, stairs. the second I go across the stairs, it jumps right back to 120. Mm. Very strange. Probably yeah. uh, particles or part, you know, chunks of the wall that are modeled or whatever. It must be, yeah. Like but yeah. It was scary yeah. for me because I was like, oh my god, has the stream been this bad the whole time? You guys would have told me. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> that's what I thought too. I thought it was like literally just so fucked up when I was looking at it. I was like, what the fuck? I think yeah, it's the I'd, flies. I'd when they issues. burst into was... flies, that really kills it. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just un TI unoptimized, and... uh, unoptimized. Uh, uh, but but it was only that, that room. That happened. was the only room I had issues in. That was it. Yeah, only room. Yeah. That's that's weird. I have no idea why that happened to you. Yeah. Uh, well, I remember, uh, we were both streaming know. as well. Maybe uh, Rag survived because he wasn't. I don't know. <clears throat> Could be. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's kind of like uh, the the bog because... in that Dark Souls level where you have those fly yeah. enemies show up <laughs> and it lags the whole fucking game. Oh, Blight Town. Like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where, where, where I see that on your on, on your stream just now? Why is that bottle just in a puddle of blood? Like, what, how is that? Oh well, that's a great question, metal. Why is so every key and every lock where it is in this fucking nonsense it's, yeah, game? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> like, here's the thing: in how Resident Evil Four, a lot of the times it sort of made sense where a lot of stuff was. Like, okay, the insignia key, you got to get it from like Batoris Mendez's office. Is like. Okay, that makes sense. He's the village chief, and then you have he's got the eye that lets you leave the village to go to the castle. I was like, okay, and that sort of makes sense. It's not just lying around. It would be, you know, he would have it either on his person or in his room or Did whatever. Do you get um, a key item from killing black trench coat man? Does he drop like a key or, or anything? Because you you picture with um any villain getting killed, they get to drop something. Though, but that's like a really easy one to do. But fuck me, you 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 were up from the the dungeon, and it's just like, oh, this really important thing that opens a trap thing in her room that leads you to this thing is like well, it's just on the table. You're like okay. the piano or the harpsichord, I forget which one it is. But the, you play the piano, oh, yeah. and if you play the right thing, then <laughs> it closes, and then a slot opens up that has a key in it. That yeah. it's, it's like a really iron, important it's a big key. key. It's Not like an amazing. iron door key yeah. that opens oh, up. Do. Like what? You okay. just fucking jailbreak that puzzle. It's not a puzzle. You can just keep going. Puzzle. It doesn't even exactly. fucking reset. Yeah. Yeah. You just keep hitting the fucking button. It was Why? So now, I, I, I started I only that just... puzzle. I started that puzzle. It's like, oh shit, okay. I need to remember which buttons I need to press because I obviously, I, I don't fucking right. know. Right. I did work. the same thing. So it's well, like, okay, let's start this. Then I hit the right note for the first time. All right, okay, this is this one. And I almost started, started I, like, writing counted. it down. I yes. started, and then I noticed, oh, just jump to the next one. Okay, I guess I... Not allowed to press the wrong one. I guess it's this one, but then it's it, it just. I d I didn't discover that there. metal until Sorry. my second playthrough. So, cause for you, like, so my perspective, I can read sheet music. I took piano for like nine years and shit. Yeah, like I go. know I, I can read music. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. I can actually like I I know <laughs> how to do this and I can play this. So I did it correctly. Oh, nice. and I was like, oh, that's really that's really cool. I kind of yeah. like that. It sucks to all the people who don't know how to read sheet music, I guess. But I yeah. didn't really pay it too much thought. And so the second time I played through, I was like, so what if I just fuck up? Mm -hmm. And there and there's no fail, no. like there's no fail state. If you play the wrong note, it doesn't go like donk no, or make the wrong key, which summons enemies. Well, yeah. What if yeah. you, if you play it wrong, it summons enemies? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah. you're making mm -hmm. yeah. you're making Absolutely. noise. Absolutely. So you're like, uh oh, and and maybe you could you give a couple tries, you do it once and it's wrong, and Ethan's like, oh, I better not, you know, better not play it wrong, you know, make a noise. Ethan could say it's dark or something, and so you know that you need to get it right, yeah. and then enemies start coming, but they won't drop loot, so you can't abuse that mechanic, mm -hmm. and so you're like, it's a punishment to get it wrong, so you are encouraged to get it correct and to, you know, do what you need well, to do. No, you can just close your it. eyes and just hit all the buttons. Yep, and it brings it done. back to the point like, that every single yeah. puzzle in this game is fucking pointless and it's not a puzzle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, the, this the isn't supposed to offend anybody, intuitive. but they honestly feel like they're built for, like, four-year-olds. Just, yeah. like... Yeah. It, it feels like a fucking Mario puzzle. 
Which is weird, because mercenaries mode is like, you'd have to actually pay a huge amount of attention to be able to get the triple S. Yeah, I like mercenary modes. It was so it's actually like, pretty good in that game. Why can't we have harder puzzles? Like, just a little harder. Come on, game. You can do it. Mm -hmm. a lot, lot Someone of, said, uh, but Rags, like... wouldn't that softlock you? No, because you could lure the enemies to a different part of the room, play a note at a time. We if can... you needed to, which wouldn't be that difficult. And also, oh. it wouldn't matter anyway, because maybe the piano is an invisible wall that they just can't get to for whatever reason. You never know. Well, why can't you just sense. kill them in that scenario anyway? Well, the the here's the thing. This is why it's a punishment. You can kill them, but they'd never drop loot. So it's a punishment to have oh, to Oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. I, I was like, why would it be a soft lock? You just kill them. Like, oh, it you can be soft oh, lock because they use all your ammo. Yeah, eventually, well, if you okay, kept yeah, getting it wrong, yeah. wrong I but mean, holy you shit, you'd have to just... use all of your, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it be... if it's just one enemy per, like, every three wrong notes or something like that, or you can only get it wrong something. a certain amount of times, like, yeah, you can only set oh, that would have been cool. Yeah. If you get it wrong, yeah. like, three times, the little, because every piano has the little thing that comes down and protects the keys. What if that came out slammed shut, and it doesn't open again until you kill the enemies and clear the room again? Maybe, Maybe. yeah. Maybe. Um, you could apply, but you could apply here's that the thing. We... Not to humble brag for EFAP, but in like off the top of our heads, we came up with something better than in the multi gajillion dollar game they had a lot of time to make. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't say it's a bragging right thing because literally anything is just in almost better. every circumstance in this fucking game, anything would be better. Like any yeah. variable, please. The right. designer of this game, the I'll say the gameplay designer of this game is like a four year old. Oh, no, you want to know what's funny? Okay, so in my stream, we were, we were bitching about the writing, right? Which is natural. <laughs> if you played this game, you're gonna bitch about the writing. So, yeah. <laughs> no, Fredo, yeah. Fredo looked it up for me. Who wrote it? It. Every single writer in this is unknown. They don't have any experience writing except for the lead designer. What really? Yes, yes. None of them oh, have like wow. any experience writing except for the lead writer. Well, and the only what was the only I can't remember. There was only one other thing he even worked on, and it was atrocious. Anthony Johnston is the credit. I guess the main creditor. Let me take yeah. a look. What, um, look what does up. it say though about this game that fans of Resident Evil, like for the most part, feel that the writing quality fits in with the rest of Resident Evil, and it's written by people who have no I, fucking oh my god, doing. The, dude, the like the, story the, the absolute the they, state okay. of Resident Evil, you know. So Apparently he like, has a lot of it, he has a lot of comic credits. Yes. Wait, but it's this nothing... is the he's credited with the writer of Dead Space. That's what it is. It was Dead Space. Oh. Which Dead Space. I'm gonna be honest, didn't have great writing. It was okay. fine. Okay. It was okay. fine. But, but then he did else... Extraction and Ignition. Then he did the mobile Dead Space, mm -hmm. Binary Domain, CSR Racing, Zombie U, CSR Classics, Shadow of Mordor. And then Resident Evil Village. You can't fail in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> That's and my point. This is, well, dude, he's a this... 48 year old adult. You can't yes, fail in yes. this industry. This, um, this yes. game is going to do well. It is doing really well, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah people it... fucking love this. They like, absolutely it'll, adore it'll be, this game for some reason. It'll be a point of pride for those people. They'll be like, I wrote Resident Evil 8. Like, yeah. Yep. You should, like, oh, <laughs> you should be laughed at. Yes. You should be locked into an institution. So, so when I. I literally, I'll talk about it because, so this game, if this was in its own universe and 7 and 8 were in their own universe and it was their own part of Resident Evil, I'm fine with that, whatever, it's fucking weird, it's, I think it's horribly written, but whatever, it's a story. The second they tie it back in to the rest of the series, they shit all over anything that was even decent about the Resident I Evil I will story say... Line. I will say about that, once they, I was, I guess like a slight tangent, I don't mean to take away from your point, but I guess well, it's on my mind. So, Resident Evil Village, I hear about Village, I see the Chris half face and the half wolf face that was in the marketing, and it's on the Steam page, and I posted in the chat earlier. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, oh my god, is, is Chris like a werewolf? Oh, are they doing werewolves, and vampires, right. and creepy crones in the woods, and bone totems, and that is so cool! And then I thought, wait, that doesn't have anything to do with Resident Evil, yeah. which is an evil company that's evil. Correct. And yeah. all of its shitty fucking characters. So, like, why? I, I don't. So, how are, hmm, how are they going to make this? Oh, are what they are they going to do something that they need to do, which is just like hit the reset button? 
Resident right. Evil Village is its own thing, and it it's been. just different. Yeah. And there's it actually, and here's the thing: it's actually magic. There's actually a curse yeah. that you have to yes. fight and find a cure yes. for. Vampires are real, and you have to kill the vampire. It's not some bioweapon bullshit or right. some black mold nonsense. They're actually going to do that really cool fucking thing. And they don't. None of that. None of it's nope. true. It's all Chris Literally. Redfield and Black Goo. Me, and oh, here's where the umbrella logo is from. Isn't that cool? Yeah. No. Tell me how Spencer mm. saw a fucking umbrella logo painted on a fucking cave and decided I'm going to start a crazy pharmaceutical company because you taught me. That's and you're my yeah. not even that. Teacher. He just saw the symbol and said, I'll use the symbol and I yep. guess I'll call it umbrella. Do yep. that. And you're, uh. you're, not, you're not telling yeah. me that. Perfect fucking circle with those lines through. It was painted on. We a need to know how Han Solo got his last name. <laughs> no, and not, fuck and not, only, not only that, but it makes like the T virus and all the other infections that throughout all the other games, like oh, Miranda, sh sh shitty reproductions of the mold. Yeah, like, yes. the mold is yes. the real thing, guys. And Miranda inspired it all, but she yep. just stayed in this village for twenty five <laughs> years. Miranda the whole time. Yep, yeah. and never yeah. had any interaction with the rest of the world. It's it was it's yeah. fucking um. They do they do this a lot lately. Like Captain Marvel was this. It's just like turns out this was all this all the whole time. You're like, shut the fuck up! No, it wasn't. <laughs> like you <laughs> literally lying. just took you took like the good Resident Evils and the stories that were involved, and you just shit all over them. You're just fucking spewing this nasty shit just to try to make it canonical. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, because you know we all know the reason they did it is to make people go. <gasps> oh! Oh my God! It's the umbrella. I know and... that logo from the other game. Oh my God! It's Chris Red. And, and honestly, oh like, my god, it's Umbrella! It was like sign. I thought you were using like to... a fucking voice changer for that. I'm a dog of many, it? many talents. <laughs> so, so, was... Someone in the chat said, Rag saying RE4 on the Wii version is the worst version is so fucking wrong. No, it is the worst version. You get a reticle instead of a red dot, which makes the game insanely fucking easy. Um, and you can abuse the mechanics because they weren't intended to be used with motion controls. So you can you can flat out do shit on the Wii version that you just could not do. Yeah, I fucking love the versions. Wii version, but I'd be lying to myself if I said it wasn't like the most broken yeah, iteration. I, I played it. I enjoyed it. It's still it's good. Fun. If you yeah. only had a Wii, the I'd say, mode. yeah, absolutely buy RE4. It's just RE4 on the easiest possible mode. Yeah, the worst have. version of RE4 is probably still good. <laughs> like you, oh, yeah, be, it is. Yeah. It actually is. Yeah, it's still good. Unless it's, it's like on mobile or something. <laughs> So yeah, what I was gonna say is like, you know, with how shitty Ethan is, you can kind of forget he exists sometimes, and then you can just be like, this is the village, we got all the classic horror stuff, blah, blah, blah. But when they're like, here comes the army, BSAA, Black Mold, we gotta stop it, Miranda's a part of the T-Virus already, you're just like, eh. Yeah, and I kind of just uh, remembered, I was like, we're gonna do all this now, we're gonna try and tie it in. And it's like, well, the Well, is the mold and the T-Virus, are those completely separate? Oh well, I I just yeah. the T virus was inspired by. Isn't all the most supposed shit, to be right? like the they, progenitor virus? I think so. They, they, it's been they a lot in, in the more. laboratory. They explained it in the laboratory where uh, the doctor, whatever, took some of the mold samples and developed his own strain, Ugh. and he's going to be testing it. Basically, they they basically insinuate that all of the other Resident Evil games are derivatives of the mold. Yeah, this is the prequel game. Well, not yeah. trying like, to establish it gives us prequel an origin information. Point. Yeah, we got lore now, yeah. and it, this is where it all began. I was like, oh, shut up. And yeah, it really felt like bookending it. It was like, uh, the developers were like, how do we get to all this classic horror, the castles, the were werewolves, the vampires, all this awesome shit? It's like, well, it, we'll just go there. And we'll yeah, you wrote it backwards. You, you start at the, at, the, <laughs> like, at the result and then wrote it back like, oh, I guess. I was going to say that. It was like, exactly Chris, that, yeah. We, we find out Chris moved them near here. It's like, why? It's like, he just did. And you're like, but why? Chris. Chris because like, nothing bad honestly, ever happens person. in Romania. It's like, oh, oh, okay. And then at the end of the game, they just, they all turn back. It, like, it re really felt like they had a different game, but then they were like Resident Evil at the beginning at the end, just to make sure that people realize this is in the series. And you're like, yeah, okay. It's like the uh, the Cloverfield movies, you know? It's like, this is in the yeah, Cloverfield yeah. lore universe. You're like, okay. Oh. Yeah, it happens uh, that sometimes. It I remember Silent Hill 4 was like that. That was supposed to be a different game, and then they put the Silent Hill label on it. And and they've um, done this before, where like I, I think that uh, I want to say was it Onimusha or um, something like that started out as a Resident Evil game, uh, and they realized it changed so much. Or maybe I'm thinking of Devil May Cry. One of those Devil games. May Cry, start, yeah, that's yeah, what you're yes, thinking of. It started out as as a Resident Evil game, but that as it evolved, as they as they figured out what worked and what didn't, they're like it was so gothic. This, 
this is so different that let's just make it in its own IP. Like there, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but they had to like, I'm sure guys this at marketing and stuff. That way. Well, the marketing yeah, and yeah. all the stuff for this game, it feels so removed from Resident Evil. And I think yeah. that's just a fucking good thing at this point that I was mm. like excited to learn about this village and the people and the werewolf folks and the vampire and the castle. I was like, wow, this is so not Resident Evil. And I love it. Fun. Yeah, it's, and, it's cool. And like it's Resident Evil. No, it's Resident Evil. The Resident only thing Evil that made this like not Resident this Evil was that there wasn't a fucking like, a, there wasn't like a, a, a science lab at the end to tie it all together. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Moreau's lab well, they, they, is like three beakers, and <laughs> her lab is like six beakers, and that's their lab. And I'm like, I don't know. I just I ain't buying it. I don't that's believe it. Insane. They're just very efficient. Yeah, yeah. Just... super efficient. <laughs> so, so I'm at the point in the in this playthrough. Oh, this part. So Fuck this part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if, how many people here had this experience, but um, when you walk across that thing there, it yeah. breaks. Therefore, you cannot go back that way now. That way. That you might need to go to get collectibles or whatever else. It's literally a really long dead end. You have to go all yeah. the way through, and then it's just like nah, and you have to go all the way back if you want. And I have no idea why they've blocked it off. I don't yeah. see the benefit whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think in my first playthrough, I was, I made the mistake because I got to this point. I knew there was that wood thing, and it crossed over. But then there was this room to my left, and I peeked into the left room, and there was like that curtain, and I was like, oh. Is an enemy gonna come out of the curtain and I have to fight it or it triggers a cutscene? Like, oh, I don't I don't want to go into there yet because that curtain's I don't know about that. I guess I'll go over here to this terrace because it doesn't look like there's anything there, so I'll go smash that pot. Nope, you chose wrong. This is the cutscene route. <laughs> yep. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> That's the bridge how it is works. now the, the wood's broken. And like yeah, you, to you totally get it. That looks like a curtain that you press F on and you put a hand on it and you open it exactly. up. Exactly. Yes, that's what I thought would happen. But so no, it's like, it turns out, yeah. Yeah, and the terrace yeah. would just be, there'll be a couple of pots you can break, you pick up ammo, and then you come back here. That's what you'd expect. It was like, nope, you chose wrong. Get fucked, man. Yeah, you chose, little did you know that this was a cutscene because you look through the window and she can't see you even though she can see you. And then you have to go this other route. And so I learned what was in that room on my second plate. For anybody who's you know, what watched me. What if her field me... of view is just as narrow as ours is and that's why she couldn't see us? Well, she did see you because that's why she knows to come back in, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, also, she, you you take our key. How does she get through the door? And <laughs> well, you had funny, funny you say that. Her thought, room, her, her I, I, room she, locks from the outside. She has it's another very key. Bold design. She has another key. Oh, oh I don't don't want to usually remember we talked about this before. Well, we wait, wait, wait. Streaming. Before we jump to that, what I want to say. So, <laughs> oh, okay. in, in the footage you just saw, right? I just ran up to the the thing and it didn't open. And it's like you can do that. And it's like the thing is, I knew when I was walking up to it, I might be jumping into a cutscene here, but I think this mm -hmm. is the dot way. It was like a gamble. And, uh, yeah. and I, it paid off, but for Rags, it didn't because we went with the wrong way. This is the kind of design I fucking hate. It's so annoying. Anyway, there go was, ahead. The other one, the other one that comes to mind is when you is at the Moreau section. You have the Chris building, and then there's the route to the right that takes you to all the fishies in the pond, and there's a gym on the wall. Thank God I chose right because ooh, that yeah, that little yeah, drape right. thingy, I could smell cutscene on that shit, <laughs> and so I didn't want to go there. So I went to the right, and I'm glad I did because it had yeah. fishies. Oh, and to, to add to that, there was a chest I wanted in Burrow's place, and I was like, oh, we'll probably have to get it later when I drain the water. And then uh, someone in chat was like, oh, don't you want to get that chest when I was leaving the area? And I was like, oh yeah, good good reminder. Yeah, I'll go get that. And I was like, no, it's locked off now. I was like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it just know. doesn't work anymore. It's like Moreau's place. You can't go back. You can't go back to any of their places. And it's just like, I hate yeah. you. <laughs> like, and, and I think I, I think I know why they did that. I think it's to narrow the amount of choices and the amount of places to explore for the player. Like they, it's so it's so handholdy, so and, right. and they and they and they they expect mm. you to be so. Uh, bad at navigation that they actually lock off in entire sections. <laughs> you mean, might yeah, be that, right. That's the unfortunate thing, yeah. is you can say, I don't like that, that's an unfortunate design choice for me, but for, like, unfortunately, 80% of the video game playing fucking population, they get annoyed if you don't hold their hand like that. It's like they have yeah. to figure things oh, yeah, out and use a... their brain for a second. And it's, it's not like, even I got hand home, holding I, I, I work so nine weird. hours at my shift at my job, and I just want to come home and turn my brain off and just follow an arrow. Like, those people fucking exist in well, the millions, and they dictate watch, the entire fucking game play. economy. <laughs> Just watch the let's play jesus yeah. no i thing. agree i agree i'm just i'm just contextual well you're right um you're right and the, the proof is this game exists and it's successful that is the proof <laughs> yeah we, we, we know go. this exactly th this is also why people be like wow efab hates everything it's just like no seriously guys yeah guys <laughs> you're never gonna get another you're never gonna get resident evil 4 again no it's not gonna happen because people eat this crap up it's never gonna you're not gonna get good star wars shows 
You're not going to get good superhero shows. You're not going to get good things because people clap at mediocrity and they eat it up well, because they see a big vampire lady and her boobs are just, oh, they're modeled perfectly. <laughs> and that's the most important part of the game. Right, that was very so generous fuck of you. gameplay. To describe this as mediocre, that was very generous of you. Oh, it, it, it really kind of was. Yeah, this game is, ugh, it's not oh. mediocre. I was going to mention something in the last uh, one of the last topics. Like, uh, do you know that the whole idea of uh, fighting these bosses in different orders or going into each area like Moreau and Lady D and stuff mm -hmm. in different orders? Like, do you know a game that was also made by Capcom? Made before all, pretty much everybody in this chat was born. There's another game that's actually pretty popular that did that. Mega Man? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 1987 uh it, you could fight any all the four bosses and in, in whatever order you want and they they made it so that if you did it in certain sequences certain weapons were good against certain enemies a little bit better you could play it in any any uh sequence but if yeah. you beat like you know blade man he'd be better against fireman or yeah whatever. that's and, it, if you I, it's perfectly fine beating dimage I, I paused the video you, you could get like something from her that makes you better at killing Moreau, yeah. for example, or something like that. Just so yeah. simple interactions that make you go, you know what? I might just play this again. And maybe oh, pause the video yeah. for just a second because I wanted to sort of. There's the, so there's a section here in this room where you look at the crib because there's a crib here, and mm -hmm. you say, you know, Rose, where are you? Essentially, like just boring, basic, <laughs> shut up, Ethan stuff. Like, you, know, <laughs> you, you never think like. Why is there a crib here? Does Dimitres, does she have a baby? Why well, it, does she have like uh, Rosemary, you yes. never He thinks you, Rose has been no, kept in there though, right? That's maybe, but like did, she had a crib specifically so that a captured rose could be brought here, but it's a really nice crib and it makes you you would think that, oh, like was does Dimitras does she have a baby? Like it, stuff like that, but they don't do anything with it. And Ethan's only commentary on this is I gotta save Rose. Well, even better, Rose. Rags, crib related. I gotta save my daughter. I, um, Rose, where are you? I saw this on Fringy's playthrough as well, right? So one of the there's like a broken house you can see in the village at one point, and there's a crib yeah. in there. And Ethan walks up to her and he goes, "What's this doing here?" Oh yeah, <laughs> the, her toy is there, and that doesn't like yep. freak him the fuck out. It's a, he's he's uh and he's just like um what? like this, this is, is a weird. big like Rose's toy that she loves is in this random crib in this village. Like oh. does that not? He's it's like, not worthy, that's of, kind of, it's not worthy of some commentary, Ethan. Uh, for like, chat as well, that? and for everybody, this clip right here, right? This is the gap. Someone said she has daughters, Rags. They're not babies, you <laughs> adult. They're all grown up, and they're adults. How many people, when all of their three daughters are grown-ass women, and it's been 20-plus years since, since they were infants, they still keep a crib prominently displayed in their room? And this that's is the gap. Mental, you look, look at that gap. You can't do anything with that. No, no way. No way across that gap. Yeah, no, no, no mere mortal can cross that gap. Well, that's not even a defense because Ethan isn't a mere mortal. <laughs> that's true. Jump Quick, use your bold shoot. powers. Go across the gap. <laughs> I, uh, Just turns and, into and a worm, man. <laughs> I'll probably come up in a couple. Come up later, but uh, the whole Rose like mechanical plot, of, like splitting into four parts and combining them, like. So, I, I didn't know that uh, this is like the most complicated adaptation of Humpty Dumpty ever made. Like, <laughs> like, why do they Touché. take her apart? Why do they, why do they oh, put different, so, each part in each castle? So, and rags, I'm why, sorry, no one why? kept a crib when you were born. No, 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 I had a crib when I was an infant. And my parents had <laughs> to worry about me falling off the bed yeah. and dying. Believe it or not, a crib, uh, a crib very quickly outlives its usefulness. Yes, a crib yeah. is something that when your baby no longer needs a crib, you get rid of the I, crib. It takes is, up yes. a lot of space. This is genuinely wait, 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 one you, of those you, you, points. Shooting them out. This is genuinely one of those points where I'm just like, rags. I don't even. I don't even know if these people are human if they can't understand what you're saying. Like, I, I'm no, just... I, I, it was just a, a little thing. Just, just a little just, thing of they could have done so. Why is there a crib in Dimitres's room that she keeps close to her? But there's nothing about it, and Ethan doesn't comment on that. And it would have been interesting, well, he, and it would have been an opportunity to humanize Ethan well, instead Ethan, of him saying, oh, "We're we're Ethan, Rose." Ethan, Rose. Well, that's the thing. Ethan, <laughs> Ethan's only Rose thought Rose. is Rose was kept here at some point. That's all he has to think about it. But this is the problem. I I would say that this is just indicative that, that Ethan just never has interesting thoughts ever. He never yeah. comments in any oh, way. Yeah. But, um, and I just yeah. want to highlight quickly gameplay wise, right? So I was looking around and I realized that in Demitresk's room, there's a locked one just to the right. And I was like, oh, if I go outside to the terrace and break the window to that room, I can get in through there, right? And so I break it and then I just, I can't go through it. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. 
Like, yeah, that's one of the yeah. most standard approach. Like, this is literally an amnesia the doctor sent. You, you want to get to a room, you have to go outside, jump across the window sills, and then break the window, get Absolutely. in that way. Really normal Absolutely. gameplay, sort of like, you could call it a puzzle. It's just critical, you know, think a little bit harder and you might be able to get in there. But it's like, the game's like, yes, you can break the window, but it doesn't do anything. You're like, okay. <laughs> so it's like Resident Evil Village was a good game, guys. Come on, the story and writing was done back in the 90s. So, things yeah. continuing oh, to be bad doesn't mean they're good. Must Two, be new here. The bad story and characters are the least of this game's issues. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say... Game, the gameplay in this is shit. Like, it, it, yeah, like, I, I, I don't know how... How do you say this without being condescending? It's like, I know you had fun. I did too. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I had some fun. Yeah. Sure. I didn't... I wasn't miserable playing through. It was fun finding all the ways I could break this game with ease. And there were some well, sections that I like kind of liked. Would, would you guys what, say what seven or eight was better? No, somewhat. It's was oh eight's better. Eight's better than seven. I think eight's okay. better than seven. Yeah. Just making sure. Good, good. Yeah. Okay. Not a high it. bar, we, but we yeah. got we guys good. arguing with chat. So, I missed yeah. that. <laughs> they, just, oh, well. they just said the story and writing were bad since the 90s. It's actually a good game, and we're like, no, it's That's, not. Oh, these are all yeah. illegitimate arguments, anyway. Well, like, it does it does feel weird, right? Writing. It's like, yeah. since when has that argument ever worked on EFAB? Like, do you watch this show? Like, why would you even try yeah. that? Like, this is so. Weird. Is Dimitres waiting for you to go out that? door yeah yeah apparently. how long was she gonna wait she and knows she knows that you got in through the well, terrace and right so why lets, would she she lets you keep a key too oh yeah. Yeah, yeah well i'm like but but what if you like me i wouldn't have gone that way she went that way i'm gonna go yeah. back this way why would she think that you wouldn't go back out on the terrace the way you came there is a hole that leads to a dungeon underneath her room. There's a like, hole just... that leads to a dungeon that she punches. She wants to kill you, but she's going to push you through this yeah. hole in the floor. So, so look, Rags, so women are very dungeon. finicky creatures. Oh, and let's rem remember, fucking Thingy has phoned her now to say that Ethan's a part of the sacrifice. You can't kill him, but she will kill you. Look, this game yes. constantly oscillates between <laughs> Ethan cannot be killed, do not kill him, to, yeah, Ethan can die. And you know when Fuck it you, oscillates? Kill you. In cutscenes, he's not allowed to die. <laughs> In gameplay, he's allowed to die. <laughs> That's yeah, a classic ludo narrative dissonance, everybody. That's, That's yeah. the beginning when she pulls off the fucking lichen. Look at a pee. Good it. luck. L Lady, Lady D uh, suffers from what I like to call a uh, late Terminator uh, school of throwing people. Oh, where like, God, yes. uh, uh, like, like from unfortunately Terminator Salvation oh, God, Forward, yep. especially where like they will never ever punch or kill or Crush. strangle or whatever. They'll just like, oh, let's toss them over here, toss them back, toss them back. Ooh, I'm so strong, but I'm not going to kill you because you're the hero. You can snap and his neck. So many opportunities for her to like just completely end you. I mean, mm. again, whether you know, with knowing that Ethan's some sort of mold person, maybe that wouldn't have worked, but like. You slice well. off his hand, you know, like she has, she, her fingers can turn into like razor blades. Well, that's you know what I mean. Why does she slice off his hand? Why doesn't she just slice his face in half? Yeah. But it's just like, like why would you aim for his hand? And... She's like, I'm going to chop you into ribbons. Now I will toss you away from me. You're like, yeah. why? Right. What? Yeah. Like, not maybe, maybe, just... maybe not two, uh, two, two things for, uh, in the room. So if uh, you can shoot all the windows before you go to the cutscene, and she's already in there. And she doesn't care. I just find that to be funny. That <laughs> oh, that's that is funny. You can do. Yeah. You can just shoot all the windows. She's like, mm -hmm. windows happens. Uh, F's I, in the chat for and, Ethan's uh, I, I don't. I forget who mentioned it, but she she basically locked herself out. I, I noticed that today while I was just fucking around in the game, and and she apparently there's like two keys. Yeah, two keys. I guess. <laughs> I'm so just making that shit up. One, just, yeah, of course. So I make that shit. She puts that key up there somehow for some reason. Because I don't think she saw you then. She just puts it there. Then she goes out, locks the door from the outside with that alleged second key. And also, and then, apparently, you can. There's like the side room, which has like a huge bathtub in it, which which I guess is supposed to be the bathroom. But it's like well, yeah, because really, there were shitters it's, everywhere. It's really narrow though. Yeah, and it really looks like small. really. It looks really yeah. tacked on to the to the rest of the castle. It's yeah, like, did it just... and, and any architect with this salt would tell you that a bathroom with without tile is a mistake. Like you want to have something, yeah. you know, yeah. non yeah. non porous. Yeah, He's non porous. You're gonna. Yeah, it's so that I remember, I remember that sending out to me is like this is a really tacked on room and way too small for this bit. Yeah, for this bath. So it was like they they felt like oh. oh shit we she she she. Not to uh, mention, locked like, herself out. I, I, let's put a room here. That's the bathroom. Yeah, well, high five. Why was her so when you when you spy on like oh say in the very beginning when they hang you up on the fucking ceiling right? It that's her oh. bedroom right? 
Oh, sorry, That's sorry like, to interrupt, but, but uh, look, look at this. He attaches his hand, oh, yeah, and, and it fine. fixes uh, his shirt and his yeah. jacket, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's that, that too. good. <laughs> Does that make Fabric sense fixing. now that he's all mold? Is the mold, his jacket no, is mold? It doesn't, <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense, because when he takes the hand, the shirt part should just fall off. Okay, no, so it's that's mold. It's all really connected. Good. He's like a cake. The, the actually... shirt, the shirt's mold. <laughs> yeah, all of it's mold. It's just mold. He, oh, he's like a cake. That's... Well, at least they hey, at yeah, least so... they're consistent because when Rose is wearing the jacket at the end of the game, it still has that line where it molded back together. <laughs> Hooray! High five. That's actually a really good jumping off point for me to ask you guys. So this uh resident evil used to be really just survival horror and then sometimes if it didn't land it was like oh haha that's really funny how cringy and, and you know uh cheesy that is and then you know people would say oh we love the old kind of campy horror games and campy horror movies and stuff and now i feel sort of like the resident evil series is comfortably sitting on the fence and being like yeah, it's a horror game, but then if it's goofy, it's like, yeah, it's it's meant to be goofy. We did that on purpose. We're taking the piss. We're just this having a good time. This animation is so it's long. Fuck. It yeah, really I, is. I think it's so. Awful. Chase, for example, like you know the the spooky section in Resident Evil Seven, and then spooky section in this game. It's like that's yeah. they're like we're being super serious. This is fucking terrifying. This is down to yeah. like this is nuts and bolts yeah. horror. Yeah. And then awful. something yeah. something really stupid happens, like really crap dialogue or really dumb events, and they're like, yeah, yeah, it's Resident Evil. You know, it's tongue in cheek. It's nonsense. It's camp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can have We're Resident Evil is so games. crazy and disjointed with its story and its characters <laughs> yeah. and its tone. Every single Resident Evil could be so. Here's the thing: it could be like a Twilight Zone sort of thing. Resident Evil, the games, they're loosely maybe connected, even if that at all. But each game is its own thing. You can have werewolves and vampires nope. and and blood magic in this version, and that's okay because the next Resident Evil game. It's its own thing. But you're wrong. It's They're about a mad universe. scientist who makes no. a zombie virus in a city. And no, Miranda inspired it all. What are you talking about? They're all yeah. connected. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. all connected. The umbrella yeah. logo. It. Yeah. It is. It was in a cave, man. It was in a fucking cave. Rags and Spencer made it was so like, easily. Woo! Woo! <laughs> woo! No, I didn't get baited. I just wanted to have a conversation about something. No, no. If you it ever read bait. a comment and respond to it, you've been baited. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, but it was yeah. it, okay. In and fact, you've been baited so easily. I was about to say, all of us have been baited constantly whenever we respond to any <laughs> of us talking about anything. That's yeah. true. Yeah. When I when I, I when, I respond, my, but, when, yeah. when I read my stream chat, it's like all it's a bait fest. Like it's all. I'm baited. really good at baiting metal. <laughs> you're baited. I'm the you're master baiter. Got all of you just got baited by <laughs> me. There we go. Yeah, I just, the, uh, the obligatory. Uh, Someone had to do it. For me, for me, it was like old. Old Resident Evil was just very, like, it was all very kind of creepy and ominous and dark yeah. and, like, you know, the sort of city limits sort of shit. And it's, like, obviously, I'm I'm totally happy with 7 and 8 trying to go into more sort of outdoor, almost, like, out, out um, Outlast 2-esque sort of, like, uh, style. But I just, I really miss that, that, you know, like, Resident Evil Code Veronica, where it's, like, the most of the game is in a variety of different mansions, and they're all, like, fucking yeah. borderline haunted, and, like, these crazy aristocratic <laughs> lizard people who are doing fucking human genetic experiments, and you have to find out, like, the horror, and you have to fight the genetic experiment and results yourself. Like, it's very specific. And this one, it's just kind of, like, more occult. Well, and, like, yeah, everything's just That's together. fine, but... The tone is totally so, fucking different yeah, from what we grew whatever. up with. Yeah, yeah. It, which Chase, is you're being too generous. You're being too generous to the be game. Like they didn't give you anything in this. They, like no. they pretend to have the village. <laughs> they pretend to have the castle. You don't even the furry men and the sword wielding <laughs> mummy women. Yeah, it's, that, but, but all of it's thing, really like, thin and it's rushed and it just it slopped into each other and you yeah. just rush through each level. It was still significantly more fun to fight like the flying fucking dudes than it was to fight like four yeah. different variants of mold from Seven. I hated the gameplay yeah, in that seven, game compared to this. Okay, compared to that, yes. Yeah, but yeah. 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 But not saying it's like brilliant on its own, but compared to Seven, it was a breath of fresh air. Yeah. yeah no, I, is it, that. I do think that. Is yeah. it ironic? Is it ironic that this game doesn't break the mold? Oh, oh Jesus! Bam, 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 bam. I get it. <laughs> it was a pun. It was good. It was a we got pun. it because we're talking about Resident Evil Four a bunch, which is it I think, was very good, fair, Chase. But it God damn it, that that game was a trendsetter. <laughs> that game like redefined shit. That came out. Of, everyone was like, "Holy fuck, Resident Evil Four! Like, what a wow, jeez, what is this?" And this game's just come, Resident Evil Seven, but a little you come better. For I me, guess. and I will tell yeah, you, from Resident Evil Seven, me, better because it's Resident Evil Four again. Well, it stole a bunch of surface level things from Resident Evil 4, added them onto Resident Evil 7, and now everyone's fucking cooming. 
Can someone can someone make like a clip compilation of every time we say Resident Evil Four and just put it in one video? <laughs> it's <laughs> fair. They wanna they wanna. No, no, no. Be it Resident is fair. Evil I just think 4, it would be yeah. funny to hear how many well, times we say it. <laughs> I, I, I should um I should an article with Rags. I'd have to go back to try and find it. But there was an article that said something like um you know fuck the Resident Evil Four remake. That's what Resident Evil Eight is. It's like what? Ugh. Ew! Like no! Like, Ew! <laughs> I want to kill whoever yes. said that opinion. Oh no! I Rock. can't even compare this to four because they tried so hard, but. I'm not a fan of four, yeah, and I, so it's hard for me to even compare it. The, this game kind of felt to me like uh, we had almost like four directors direct different parts of the game. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, House, Husband of Vanto felt like a completely different game. Let's do a water monster. Uh, Let's do I fucking disagree. doll enemies. So Let's do a bunch it's of disjointed. It's completely disjointed. Should we, uh, if we do, should we just do the the boss fight for Vampire Lady, and then we can we'll be we'll be on um, Vento then. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it was, um, it was, I didn't, I was fine, I guess. I didn't really like it. Um, it's, um, it's just something with, and this applies to lots of things in this game. It just got worse the more I checked it out again and again. First time was like ago. chill and fine. Then, then the second playthrough, I was like, eh. And then later, we have to talk about it. Jesus Christ. It's one of my favorite parts of, I think, my stream, honestly. Um, playing it on normal, I kind of annihilated it. It was, it was relatively easy because I just had so much ammo and it's just like, yeah, it seems nice yep. and straightforward. Hardest difficulty. I was getting killed by a swarm of stupid flies, and I was just like, I'm confused. What am I supposed to do about this? And I, I talked to Rags already, right? You're supposed to use but... the cold against the fly. Well, well uh, yeah, there's no right. cold to use. <laughs> so that'll be intuitive, but never mind. So first mm. thought I have is, I think, a uh, block. I'm like, whenever they surround me, I block. That seems to be, that's probably what I have to do, you know, and then they, they leave me alone, and that's just the challenge. It's like, I died. I was like, okay. So next try, I'm like, I guess I'll fire my grenade launcher at my feet because I'm immune to the damage, but yep. that's literally like AOE... Da that'll that'll kill the flies surely so i do that when they're all surrounding me i die i was like to the flies obviously and i was like okay and then someone in chat was like yeah just hide in one of the huts and i was like <laughs> why would that do anything it was just like hide in one of the huts so i was like okay and i did and they just can't get in the hut it. Yeah. yeah they're immune to it and you, you yeah that's it i was that's just like a great bugs mechanic. notorious for not getting into it's, houses it's yeah. so intuitive so into i felt so rewarded as a player when i did that i was like oh yes that that's, is exactly what i thought would happen mechanic. Um, right. now, yeah. like, and that also uh, violates if those bugs are at all related to the daughter bugs, like, you think it'd be the opposite. You think that they'd be fine inside something, yes. but it's out dang. in the cold, they'd be hurt. So, and that's like, the coldest you... area. You're highest up yes. like, than ever. <laughs> You're, like, in the yeah. fucking cloud. <laughs> that's what we're talking so, about here. This game, this game is the opposite of what intuition is. It doesn't yeah, make com... any sense. And it's like it's a not fundamental with itself. Fundamental of game design. You're supposed to light up with your player. You're supposed to rely on what humans interpret and what they understand and what they choose to do. But instead, they keep doing the opposite with it, like everything. It's like stop, like, please. Uh, backseat, backseat designer. But like, uh, you could make it so that maybe you start the fight with Lady D inside, and she's ridiculously powerful. She's a vampire. She can regenerate. She turns into a monster, or whatever. And then maybe you blow off the roof. And now she's yeah. exposed to sunlight. Yeah, and you can do it section by section. Yeah, piece yeah. by yeah. piece. You have yeah. to fight her, you, you fight her down below and something. work her up to the top of the castle, running away from her. And yeah. then you then she's weak once she's outside. Great. Story and that, and, done. And and tying that, if you made it so the the daughters <laughs> got hurt by sunlight rather than cold, that'd be thematic. Well, I mean, Vampire yeah, sunlight, be bad. That you know? would actually like make that. sense, though. Yeah, that, <laughs> he's can't be the doing real that. vampire. Yeah, you can't. You can't use logic here. That, that's that's. Oh, so I like how this mouth attitude. just like refuses to eat you. All the yeah, time yeah. The I know it's like right on you, and she just doesn't eat you. Well, like we, we've highlighted so much of these. Like the, the the enemies just do not use their abilities to their advantages ever. Yeah. Like they just they're all stupid. They're like, look at this awesome model design. That's all it is because they don't do anything yeah. else. Yeah, it helps a lot when you're fighting. Let's say you know just a bunch of villagers with a plague thing inside of them and they're just like oh kill the american agent guy kill leon and they can they're just they're just dumb and simple so you it's it's fine for them all to be stupid it doesn't make that much you know it's not nonsensical that they're I, just dumb and that's the thing but if, in this you're fighting in you're like dimitres here or some other thing and you're like wow like you're supposed to be really smart yeah but you're mm. really dumb if you're gonna have like yep. Morose would be the assumed stupid one out of every one of them, but like yeah. the vampire high class asshole, like that's supposed to be the intelligent one, not the dumbass. Well, not to mention, just... hold on. Yeah, no, she doesn't. 
I yeah, but it's, she just fights you with stupid brute force. There's nothing. There's nothing vampiric and, about yeah. this, either aesthetically or in terms of how it plays out. Well, one thing I would give them is if you got her here, like if she you outsmarted her or whatever, she had, came up with smart things until she basically is giving up and she's just like no fucking. She goes rage mode and then she makes mistakes. Like I'm okay yeah. with that, but like she doesn't yeah. do a single smart thing in this entire game. No. Well, no. so I have a serious question. So, when you're right before the fight with her, you're coming up there. You see a coffin or a casket. Why the fuck do you open it, first of all? Well, like who, what else who are you going to do? That? <laughs> well, who, no, who is do. that? Yeah. Why are we there? Who the fuck is it? And then why do you why take the fucking the knife out of it? Well, yeah, why do you take the knife out of it? Wait, don't they tell you that that knife is, uh, no. is a thing? No, I think it's a note that you read. There's a note somewhere, somewhere yeah, that tells I you about it. I remember I knew why I'm getting the knife, but I don't remember where I got it from. So, if so it's, it's a the knife that, magic? Exactly. Well, yeah, it's, like, it's like a magic shit, whatever knife, I don't know. Yep. Yep, it's some... Why do you it's have a... that knife? Yeah, so in I was, was going to say, why exactly. is she... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why? Why is it? Why is it fucking? Why like do you this? have the room with the ceiling that opens up with a lever? Why did you not exactly. like weld that shut it, and, and no, cover it I, with tarp? It's it's it's. And like I a understand gym. chat saying this. I understand there is a note that explains this. I get it. That's this whole fucking game. They try to explain shit through stupid ass. Does notes. it? They, they only ever kick the can. They they never explain. They kick the can. They just say it is that way because it is that way. Yeah. And also, it's, it's, if you don't read that note, why would Ethan grab that? Like, why would he grab the so, dagger? Like, oh, I know this. He wants is... to sell it to the Duke. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, here you go. He's like, like oh, it's, it's a, a treasure. Money. All right. It's, it's, I, I have like no his, idea. I like this comeback here. Ethan's cool comeback when she says yeah. "curse you" as her final words. You're like, cursed. you're the one who's cursed. No, you're the one who's cursed. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> He's like, oh. wow, that was shit. Like yeah, a, such a burn. Ethan. Yeah, it, it took it took quite a few people out of that moment. I think because they were like, even when Leon. When Leon blows up Mendez, he's like, hasta luego, and he waits, and then he shoots the thing, and there's just, like, there's some dumb charm to it that Resident Evil 4 is aware of, and this game wants to be eaten. Like, so shit. How do you, how like, do you, no, uh, you're cursed. How do you go between, like, oh my god, what the hell, I have to get my daughter, to, you're the one who's cursed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, he completely <laughs> like, like forgets a, about his fucking daughter, it, like, through all of this. It's yeah, like if it's... if it always has to be out the daughter, he could have said, "This is what you get for taking Rose" or something. Right? Like that. Wait, would have been better. It's still it's shit. Like, oh, it's like a, like, oh, Rose, it's like a Rose. dad doing an '80s action oh. one-liner. Also, this like... is sitting here. Yep, That's this the is the funny part. Dude, the... <laughs> it's not like a locked box or something. This is this is. Oh, and common... then you take it, and then it closes. Yep. And it yeah, opens and it lets you door. out because that's yep. how that works. <laughs> it's insane. It's funny because the second he gets out of the castle, he goes, "Oh." Now to find Rose, and it's like what? <laughs> this, this, this what? by the way, this and the spooky area has the same thing where you chose to battle her. It takes you up onto the roof. Well, she took you there, and then when you kill her and crash through the whole thing, you literally land on the fucking uh, flask. Yep. You're just like, oh good. Yep. <laughs> the, spook, yeah, the spooky is. place. They do even worse. <laughs> they have you kill her in a cutscene, and then they teleport you to the flask because they're just like, I can't be asked to have you search for it. Just, just grab it. Just here <laughs> you it go. Is. Just fucking, just fucking take it. Yeah, no one was well. like, you know what? This is important. Maybe I should, like, put this in a safe, mm. and then <laughs> only I know the combination. No, I would mark. I would put the combination put in a note that was right yeah, on top of the on safe. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, was his, the audacity of my. You know, just, yeah, yeah, having that. Having also, that those enemies. That can... Go ahead. Those flying enemies are shit. I never got hit with one. Because you can like run around them as long up. as you're moving. I don't think they can hit yeah, you they were, they as long were, as you're just sprinting. Yeah. They were not as threatening as the Resident Evil Five flying boys. They're not threatening at all. You just if you just run. You kind of just dodge to the side and shoot them. Do you remember the flying? Yeah, I know something the about the way to deal with them is knife them. Like literally, if they pop up, you knife them. They fall down. It stuns them. Oh, so which is which is I will admit is a yeah. problem with some Resident Evil Four parts. It's not a perfect game. The dogs in Resident Evil Four, as long as you're like running from them they can't actually attack you they're they're right. the dogs in resident evil 4 are no oh no the, i think they're called los camillos or something but i forget but yeah if if you just run around them there's nothing they could really do about it they just can't quite track the player they weren't given the, mm -hmm. the, the, the you would think that a dog would be great at catching up to you and pouncing on you but nah. they're actually they just can't it's a very um, they're very easy to get around actually uh, so, a point I wanted to go ahead, Merlin. Oh uh, well, you can continue. I was just gonna say it will be about we're about that time now. We're probably gonna be talking about Spooky House next. So. Yeah, I have a lot of a lot of things to say about Spooky House. Uh, <laughs> it, it, primar primarily, like uh, halfway Why through Spooky House, 
spooky house confirmed to me that this game is supernatural there's actually there's literally no explanation like you you hear ghosts you hear there's all this other stuff like, i don't know from a yeah, yeah, she like secretes a thing she that makes people hallucinate. From a yeah. flower. It's I another guess. POW. So you honestly don't know that if you don't read all the notes. Well, but game. also, <laughs> once like again, I don't it. know that that counts because that's literally it is the way it is because it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if it's a hallucination, like, then how can you die? It? Exactly. And why, yeah, and why how can, can you she die? How can you how can you touch? Uh, there's how like does, a rocking how does the weight cradle. Of, well, yeah. how, does it, how does the weight of your guns go away? Like, that's why I love the how he's all just like all of a sudden. Oh, where'd my guns go? It would have been really cool. They're where you left them, Ethan. Well, it would have been really cool. <laughs> if they at least would have had like dolls run out and grab them off of you. You know what I mean? And laugh and run away. Like at least that would have been. Well, yeah, um, they take your guns from you, like, never, and the one time they do is when it made no sense at all. The lights went off, yep. and then they went yes. back on. It's like, yeah, oh. Yeah. It would have been cool if My the lights were off and, like, flashing, and, like, the little dolls came and grabbed your guns and took off. Like, that at least would have been cool. Yeah. Like, that would have been a funny imagery, funny. too, to see, like, like, uh, like the shotgun's big, so it would take, like, four yeah, dolls to carry, carry it, it off. And they have it yeah, over their shoulders, like a coffin, and they were just That'd bouncing away with a shotgun. <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. <laughs> But that would no, be creepy and amusing. They're just, they're oh, gone. can I? I want to highlight this as well. My first playthrough, you can watch. I I walk up to this door and it's like interact with the letterbox. I was like, I don't know, photo, and I was like, oh my god, it worked. I didn't even check the. Uh, I did the same thing. I did the same why thing. Why does I don't? Why does it open up because you put a photo in it? Well, it's imagine you didn't have the photo. Where does the what photo go? It's, does he it, not it, want uh, his photo back? It's, it's the, the it price. Just, it's rags. a slot in the door. It's the price. No, it's, just no. Open the door and get your photo back. That's a. No, like, it's why magic. Did, why it's did... hallucinations. Where'd the photo go? I want to know. Oh, wow, nitpicker. You get it back later, Ethan, too, Ethan, you're dumb. But yeah, it, it, uh, to me, the, I just feel like it was such an on-rails moment. It had nothing to do with Ethan or myself. We just see this, I click photo because fuck it, and it works. And I was like, okay, <laughs> what if you say, time, game? Like, I'm just, at I'm, the time, that was the only item I had to, to use for it. So I was just like, oh, I guess I'll try it. That's all I have. Like, so <laughs> and it worked. I, um, Anomaly Morgan. says you guys are just hating at this point. The game has been fantastic so far. Yeah, so this game shit. Kind it's, of. It's pretty bad. Um, I mean, the, yeah, the door really does say mechanic. give up your memories. I no, mean, my point is I didn't to... read that. I didn't read it. I was oh, just yeah. like, this will be funny if I just put a photo in a door for yeah. no reason. And then it's just like that worked. I was, like, I was okay. actually, I was actually memeing with that photo for my wife. I was like, oh, maybe that photo goes to this lock. Ha ha ha. And then I got to this press like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> So one more thing. Why does video game have video game logic? So excuse I we you could I I thought we did too, Fringy. I had a feeling that you might say something. Um <laughs> so the video game logic depends on what video game you're playing, and it makes less and less sense depending on what video game you're playing. And video game logic is kind of like genre as an argument. Not all video game logic is the same. Like video game logic is I carry an unlimited amount of fully loaded magazines so I can reload whenever I want without losing bullets. That's video game logic. Mm -hmm. But you see why that exists in video games, right? Or and it's consistent not usually. Stuff like, I pour Jesus juice on my hands and then I'm healed. You know, yeah, that's it's... Uh, can we just shortly talk about the Jesus well, juice? Because I don't understand oh, it mechanically. Well, wait, 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 wait. If Rags is finished, I wanted to interject yeah, yeah, after, on what he after, said after. as well. After. Is Rags, are you, are you are we done with the, the, I, the logic thing? Oh, I, was... I was just saying, not all not all video game logic, in quote, not all of it's the same. It exists on a very broad and vast spectrum. Video game, it's like, why, how come I can get shot with a bullet and I'm alive and just my health bar, like the whole point, health points, right? Yeah. That's video game logic. That's not how the world works, but it's a video game. I, I would argue okay, a key, fine. key element of this shit is that it's consistent, right? Like, yeah. that, that's got to remain. But the other, the other thing I wanted to criticize was that, um, I would just, like, it, it's a style of argumentation, I'm not sure what the, the word would be for it, but what they just use with, like, oh, video game logic. It's like, um, say, so, say we criticize something in Lord of the Rings, and then they go, it's a part, it's fantasy. It's like this appeal to, to a broad sense of something, a blurring of every detail to try and, prov like, protect the property. Or attack it, you could use this thing either way. It's like really fucking boring to me. If you don't even, you can't even get specific enough to understand what argument was made, you instead go, this thing is crazy. Why are you why are you doing this? It's like mm -hmm. that's not an argument. Get better. Does it appeal to fancy. And appeal to video game logic. Appeal. It's like get more specific or go away. Like there's just no point in addressing it otherwise because all you do is expand the conversation so much that we can't even like all the work we do to try and get down to specific uh, genres, games, franchises, IPs, mechanics, tropes. 
you just go, why is it's video games? Mm -hmm. Someone no, said it in thanks. chat before I was able to. It's a movie about space wizards intended for children. Yeah, don't do it. Um, <laughs> so, like, when we talk about, and I've seen it, it pops up every once in a while in the chat. It's Resident Evil. It's supposed to be duh, 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 duh. No. So here's the thing, right? If, do you think, would you want to, if the developers were here and we were chatting with them, do you think they would want to hear your defense of it's not supposed <laughs> to make sense? Do you think that they would like it when someone tried to defend their work with it's not supposed to make sense or it doesn't make sense when they clearly try in this game to have that attempt when there's a story with characters and there are events and all that like they, they have they attempt to do explanations with the bugs and the pheromones and all that I wish stuff they were here, like, i could tell them how shitty their fucking game is <laughs> yeah i would too i i think there's a lot of really good criticism that we have and i think that we have a lot of ideas that we've just made up in the moment on the, off the top of our heads then it's better than the crap that they had a long time to yeah, think of absolutely. and mm -hmm. get paid to do because that's their years job. years yeah. to make I it yeah the, i think the problem but, is that the game doesn't mm -hmm. set a a very carefree tone like it opens no, it up doesn't. with you cradling your baby you know yeah. and taking it up to sleep it's like okay you're going for more of like a last of us more of a serious you know we, we know there's going to be fighting we know there's going to be you know zombies or whatever but you're gonna, you're gonna you want us to take this pretty seriously and then you've got giant you know fish monsters and and things that make no sense like uh i i missed my opportunity to speak earlier but i was just gonna make a, a an analogy to uh the the lady d and having her like you know one weakness like in the castle and and the weaknesses for her daughters in the castle it's like imagine a james bond villain it's like you know mm -hmm, james bond hopefully you don't find like if a, if a james bond villain had like a a deathly peanut allergy it's like Hmm, James Bond, I hope you don't find my peanut room. You know, it's like having your, your one weakness <laughs> my in your own yeah. house. collection. No one <laughs> yeah, dare yeah. find. And, and, and besides, if, if your final defense was, it, I don't care if it makes no sense at all, I'd just be like, I don't even know why you're then, here. Yeah, then the can yeah, there, what, no. then it doesn't, nothing matters. Yeah, like, well, if, if you don't, because deep down, you do want it to make sense. Oh yeah, everyone. You really yeah. do. You want, to, you want to enjoy the story. Deep down, it needs some level of sense. Yeah. Well, any any um, point of praise is going to be a connection of two things that you like praise in in relation. If you're talking about the story, you, if someone said, yeah. "Oh, I love the scene where Ethan, you know, gives himself up to save the baby," like why? Well, because of the connection between him and the baby. Why? Well, I also, I I, 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 I find it appealing or, or endearing that a man would, would like give himself babies. up. To, you know, they would I have like to explain the connection, and then you can then bring in references for like how nonsensical it is, how we barely know them, how Ethan shouldn't even be dying, how Chris shouldn't be giving him the detonator or allowing him to have it, whatever. It's like, and then you'd be like, well, no, why are you highlighting things that don't make sense? I was just trying to highlight also, things that do. Right, and also, why is Ethan the mold's dad? The mold's dad. I was. Yeah, it, for... that's. That's why he stays, because he's connected to the mold. Like, why? how come when he kills Miranda, he, like, starts to die, too? Yep, that's what I'm saying. He's part of the mold, I don't get it. they don't, well, they I was don't gonna say, explain it. I thought it might have made sense if he was to die after the mutamycete was destroyed, as, like, the core of the mold or something, but no, he starts dying well before that, so I don't, yeah. I don't get it. But he's part of the mold, either. and they kind of, like, allude the be, to that. The best my chat could come up with was he's if he had a billion hit points of health, he literally just hit zero recently. <laughs> but like, the, like I said, oh, in no. the end credits, in the end credits, he's fucking there. So. We'll, well, we'll have to wait for Resident Evil 9, I guess. Yeah. There I can pull is up that section. clip if you want to see it. I, I wonder if it saved the screenshot. I hope it did. Sometimes it this gets tizz me with screenshots, but there's... Mm. There's little things to praise in this. It's a shame they're just little things, but I think there was a section. It's when you're going to the stronghold and you can go to the left instead of up the stairs and fight the mini hammer boss that is fucking tanky as shit. Yeah, um, cool. When you kill him, and this is this is uh, Heisenberg's area, when you kill him, and as you're leaving and you're picking up some of your goodies, there's that one of those little altar things that has Miranda in the portrait. And there's two other portraits, um, because this is Heisenberg's spot. He doesn't have a portrait for himself. He has one for, uh, he he doesn't. He, I think it's he doesn't have one for Lady Dimitres because he hates her. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have her portrait up with the rest of them. And I think and I think that's what they were trying to say there, which is a nice little nice touch. That's, that's one of those nice yeah. little little tiny little touches. It's like oh okay. That's a nice little touch that would sort of make sense, but it's the little things. So like, there, are, there's stuff to praise here. 
it's just tiny or just <clears throat> purely aesthetic. Someone there really isn't anything else left. Someone's corrected me like I've been corrected before, even though I said it already. They're like, Chris didn't give the detonator. It was taken from him. So that's literally what I said. I said either he gave it or you let it get taken. How can you even mm -hmm. actually say, it's cool, Chris just let the detonator get taken? Like, fuck off. It's Chris Redfield. Yeah, you have the detonator in your hand, and you feel some resistance of someone tugging it away, and you just let it go? It's absolutely absurd. I really... Let it, it, it go. Why it, would you want it? takes me out of it thinking about it like you give it to the crumbling rock person like what are you doing you need to and then not only that does he know when to detonate it like because you, <laughs> if you compare the cutscenes it makes no sense the amount of time Since that was needed wrong again he does have a picture then i'm a so i i might be because i'm going off memory and that's the thing i was looking for a screenshot he doesn't have all the portraits up so i'm wondering why maybe i just read it as something that it shouldn't have been if you can remind, maybe I'll look at the stream and see you walking by it. Cause I, there was, there, not all the portraits were up. So maybe I'm, I'm mis misremembering what the pictures were. But if that's the case, I was giving the game way too much credit, which is a shame. Cause I, I, in my mind, I thought, oh, that was actually a really nice detail. Huh. But if I was just fucking wrong about it, then, oh, well, I guess I was wrong. That's so, a shame, though. The escape room. So, and this part, uh, yeah. This, this part is the sucks. Time... This is the worst part of the game. This is the worst part of the game. Oh shit, Rags with the hot take, alright. No, I, is I this the hot take? Part of the game. I fucking hate it. Alright. This, this... Well, this it, well dude, we're, we're hot well, taking in you, general. You, you've seen how many people we've upset already with just saying this well, game's bad. Um, let me ask you, Mahler, what, what do you think the worst section I is then? I was asked this on um, either the fourth part or something, but my conclusion was, um, in some ways, this is the best and worst part of the game. Yeah. There was a Someone said Rags didn't play the game. I played this game for like 23 hours. I devoted a day of my life to this game. Only one? Pathetic. How fucking dare you say I didn't play this game? What were you saying, Mahler? I reasoned out that, the, I think with Metal actually, yeah, uh, the, yeah. this is possibly the best and worst part of the game. Um, I agree. There is, so, like, what I liked about it was the intensity of, like, the, the, the way they're trying to present something horrific. And this happened in Resident Evil 7, by the way. This is a sequence in, like, the little girl's room or something. I remember it, it oh, just yeah, like that I game. Remember, yeah. Where I was like, I like this, but it's very superficial. It's, uh, it was, there's at least some real tension. The thing that I yeah. think we're really missing um, is, like, it's pretty horrific to be chased by, like, this giant monster, you know, um, giant uh, baby. Well, it, it, that was obviously the it's supposed scariest to be... fucking thing I never expected to happen. Yeah, I, I like I like the idea. I think the monster's relatively original. Like in terms of you I see know. it, and you're like, oh my god, that is not. I'm, I wasn't expecting something like this. That sort of thing. Um, I think the build up's pretty good with the, with the well and like the the this house being so Mia. still and yet kind of homely, but then also everything's just not quite right. This all all of this only works the first time. Um, yes. And then you have to consider mechanically, right? Because all we just described is kind of more, like, that could have been a movie, and I think it would work pretty well, but mechanically, these fucking puzzle things, they're just annoying. Mm -hmm. Most of them are just really fucking annoying. <laughs> tedious. They're just tedious. Um, yeah. So it's a rag stop find line. the thing that Mahler's very clearly tells you what the solution the is, and then plug in the solution. Look. I don't, I don't know if this guy's fucking around, but like, I, here, and there's a screenshot of it. I've played this game for 23 hours. Like, yeah, Rags has played it. I don't, I don't care I've, if he believes I've you, you've played it. <laughs> I've been putting in clips of my playthrough with my commentary on them, and like in, in our Discord, and in, in my Discord, and even in the EFAP Discord, I've been putting clips of Rags, me just, just got, playing with my commentary. I've regularly been seeing him online playing just Resident no, Evil 8. You, you just got yeah, baited. I was prepping for this discussion. No, you just yeah. got baited. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I saw Rags. I have Rags on my friends list. I was playing Resident Evil. <gasps> and it's like pops up like Rags is playing Resident Evil. Okay. I think it's popped I had, like, up. Four it, people on my list playing it at once. Dude, it's popped up like, on yeah. the footage <laughs> that I've been All playing. You guys. You've yeah. come up <laughs> playing it on this footage. Uh, yeah. So I was gonna say, um, mechanically, also, you your guns arbitrarily disappear. Like that's uh, not helpful either. So, but before you before you go, I'm sorry, he says I stand corrected. Then, so here's the thing: when like when Mahler tells me I played this game. Especially before we have a discussion about the game, and I'm talking extensively about the game, and I and I say I've played the game, and you and you don't take me at my word for that. 
Why are you here? But, like, <laughs> Maybe they don't like you. a good why amount of yeah. chat. Like, if, there's a good amount of chats that are to... genuinely just good boys and girls, and then there's like that five percent of chat that are just insufferably fucking stupid, and I don't yeah, know I'm why like, they're here. If, you don't, not if just I to say complain I'm, about the if I'm in this big deep out discussion ass. talking about a game, saying I've played it and I have all my opinions on it, and you're like, I won't actually believe that Rags has played this game <laughs> until he presents. A screenshot of his yeah, just, fucking, even though you uh, of fucking his Steam about, like, that has his play count. Profoundly uncharitable. It's kind of but weird. You like, talked about wow. everything in the game. Like it's yeah, not like everything... you don't have a clue of what's going on. If you were just like, oh yeah, that one part, cool. Like, yeah, then, then yeah, you'd be like, like Rags, I, you yeah, but like you fucking. I didn't play like, The Last of Us too because fuck that. All I did was comment on story stuff with because I watched Smaller's playthrough. But which like, yeah, we, we will tell you guys that we're not gonna lie. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm not gonna sit and act like I fucking played it if I didn't. Why the what the fuck would be the point of that? <laughs> I don't understand how you conclude well, yeah, the rags like, when you watched the playthrough with all the times he said like when I did X, when I did Y. Exactly. But, exactly. But okay. The fuck, man? Yeah, but it just it, like it just just a little just a little side note. So someone said, like your look, your sweeping statements made it clear that you did not pay much attention. <laughs> That's why wow. I would Damn. I would love some sweeping statements that seem as if well. I, I got one attention. when you talked about the portraits, yes. you got it wrong. Therefore, you didn't play. The oh, game. that tiny detail. Yeah, I yeah, I could believe X I got is that a wrong. Liar! Oh my I, god! Shadow play. <laughs> Fix your fucking, fucking screenshot thing because it only seems to work like half the time. I should have used the Steam screenshot button. Cause I thought th I li I and why would I fuck up in favor of the game? <laughs> I legitimately <laughs> believe that the game had done something really nifty. Is that little well, detail? <laughs> what's really cool, by the way, is Rags did play it. I didn't. This is all someone else's let's play. I played. I was just commenting <laughs> on it. This is uh, this is Fringy. Yeah, <laughs> this is Fringy too. <laughs> so anyway, so right. Almost all of the the writing of the spookiness is like that's the portion I like. I don't like how they got us here. I don't like mm -hmm. that it doesn't make any sense at all. I don't like the the escape room is very shit. Like y these yes. things are supposed to rely on your like creative thinking, not right. Yeah, there's there's a doll with film in its uh, mouth. It's enough space you to put your fingers it. in there, but you can't. But you can't get it. No, you can't get it. You, you can't. So you can't, you can't I even. Under you can't even use the, the the winding key. I was like, that would do yeah. it. It's like, nope. You're like, oh, okay. So as Any, much, there's so much. Even though I hate the room, section, like something. in its entirety, I can see why you like it. I can see why. Well, yeah. I just said why I like it. it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I can, I can believe it. Yeah, I, 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 I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> mannequin, you can just smash it. Yeah. Fucking face. I liked a lot of say this. I, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I, wait, Rags. What did I like about it? Hmm. What did I like about it? You, you. You, you like the the horror section and that it was spooky, and you like the imagery of the baby and the the tone that it was trying to set after the section about the room. You didn't like how you got here, and it doesn't yeah, seem you, make any sense. How you, you would you would you not agree? That's pretty almost superficial in terms of like it's a game, well, and I'm basically like well, yeah, I hate everything. Yeah. Well, you're talking about what you liked. Yeah, and, I'm, and, and so I'm saying con a in, in a conclusion sense, like doesn't mean a whole lot right like that's kind of where i'm going with this i don't um yeah like i i i i don't like the mechanics of this section but i well, same i totally can see why people would really well, like and remember this segment viscerally yeah so if we split like this as content up into pieces like why we're here is dumb how it works is dumb the puzzle itself is so crap like this is a really it's bad not a escape room it's not, if it's you can not call a it puzzle. that it's then, go here go there it's a checklist. Um, how you yeah how you, how you succeed is really dumb how they let you win is dumb like yes the the they dolls basically in. like why does she say like if you find me then you can kill me but if you don't do it fast right? enough I'll kill you what she the fuck is that about if I if I was like, Donna I would have thrown that fucking doll out dude, the window she can like, fucking if you can fly find me, you can kill me. the doll can fly why doesn't it fly and just fucking slit his throat and to, be done with it to just it conclude is. then my the point I was making with the like dislike thing is like so what I do like is the, the atmosphere and then the, the choice of monster design and then obviously the set and stuff. When you play it for a second time, that shit wanes fast. It's like yes. I could I saw your playthrough again where you were fucking around with the monster at the elevator, trying to see <laughs> like how yeah. it how it waits for you and how it will purposefully not get you and how it just stops and 
And so this is, what, this yeah. is what I mean. When I first played it, I was like, you know what? I felt engaged relatively by figuring the things out. I thought mm -hmm. that thing was really spooky. I liked the atmosphere. This is probably my favorite part of the game. Second playthrough, it's like, man, this is fucking boring. Can we get to the end, please? <laughs> And then I, third, uh, third time playing through, I... I was actually starting to hate heading toward this place because it was just a delay. Oh, yep. Dude, when I, when before I, I'd when even I finished the game on my first playthrough, I knew that I would fucking hate my second playthrough because of this section mm. in particular. They don't change yep. the puzzle at all. No, they don't change I, anything. I, uh, it's not a puzzle. I, when I came I, you know this. what I mean, escape room, whatever. <laughs> I fucking, I, when I first saw the monster, right, the little fucking vagina penis baby, I literally started laughing because it was just a giant fucking vagina looking at me the way that the flashlight hit it. That's all I saw. I didn't see the rest of the baby thing. <laughs> so it just looked monster. like a giant fucking vagina coming at me, and I just lost it and I started think laughing. Visually, it looks very stupid, but auditorily, it's like. Oh, yeah, no. You, you yeah, hear the absolutely. baby getting close to you and like crying and like giggling happily and saying dad, dad. Like, it's fucking. Yeah. As someone who. Right. Thank right. God. Thank God my girlfriend and I are on the same page about not having kids because that's <laughs> oh, some never of the scariest children. existential never fucking shit children. in my life. Well, yeah. I will never be able to afford having a child, let, like, let alone probably keep it from dying on, on accident. So it's just every time yeah. I see any baby, like, what was the eraser head and shit <laughs> like that? This. I'm just like, oh, yeah. God. Somebody just said they didn't even play the game. Sigh. Yeah, I think okay, that, that well, was anyway. Anyway. Bit, think. <laughs> like a week worth of your time. There's like footage. I was going to say, there's like proof on all of our channels. Of so, no, like, they're they're baiting. Go find Come it. on. That's obvious. They're bait. baiting. Let's see then. Um, baiting. So Baited, you guys got baited. baited. I, mean, I never said it was good bait, it was just clearly baited. Yeah. Um, oh, I know, yeah, I just yeah, love Every time you get through this part on the replay, I mean, mind you, I, I played this five times now. I actually finished that playthrough while we were playing, uh, talking. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, gets the baby part, just walk in there. Da, da, da. All the combination on the fucking lock is, uh, yeah, you see it right there. Like, I just memorized it as 052911. Yeah, they don't. So this is the thing. You know, if you... It. you can just change the fucking things on on the on the arms and whatever like the the eyes yeah you just, flip just, them just, all you randomize them. them all so that, that you actually have to care when you go but they all they're all the same every single time and someone yeah, was asking in chat i think it was thunder ass um <clears throat> do the dolls change location now this is really interesting oh. first play through i actually was kind of like this was kind of neat i hope that obviously in a replay that they change the locations and i wish they'd done more that was like my reaction. Mm -hmm. Second playthrough, the exact same positions. I was like, that was lame. Third playthrough, exact same positions. I was like, yep, yeah. they never change. Fourth playthrough, oh, they I changed. Hated it. I, oh. Even my first playthrough, I hated it because you yeah. just go to the doll and press F. And they hated it. They she uh, changed locations on my fourth try, and I was like, "What the fuck?" They, so it does. Yeah, change why? Locations? Course, you have to, to get to the fourth playthrough. Really well, generous. I, to I, I don't know <laughs> if it's I don't know if it's literally just like it's a fifty fifty on locations, and I just rolled you know one instead of two three times. Yes, I, I don't know how it works yes, exactly, but so. the location <laughs> change didn't really matter. She's just in the open in a different area, like it's, and. Yeah. I, I just don't get it. I, I don't get why, as a developer, you wouldn't want to be like, right, so the concept here is a bunch of dolls, and they're all going to gradually freak out and giggle, and you've got to find the particular <laughs> one in the room. If we ignore why that makes no sense as a setup anyway, don't you see potential there for, like, loads of options for creativity, like where to put her or how you even hurt her? Just, as, but no. as far as I could tell, it seemed like they were trying to go for almost a Saw-esque route where it's like, oh, look at all this sharp blade thing is going to be stabbing into you, and, you know, you have to play this game with us where creepy dolls, and if you... Find it in a, in a you know, timely fashion, you won't die. Because if you take too long to find one, a bunch of the dolls just yeah. appear and start stabbing you and doing damage. So it's like, oh, okay. So this is just like a, a quote-unquote puzzle timer, you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's such a waste. And then, and, and then on subsequent boring. playthroughs, it actually destroys this whole sequence. Like, it's just no good the, the, if you play it more than once. But even the once, yeah. a lot of people don't enjoy it. <laughs> I, I think when know. I go through yeah. this, it, it takes me like seven minutes just because i walk to places well yeah and you, you know you know about the part where the baby's gonna yeah. appear again and so you run back you sit under the bed yeah. you wait for him to come he crosses over you run through and just like yeah 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 yeah. yeah. by on, the way on. i called it when you're at the bottom and you go up the stairs and it opens the door i was like yep it's coming through that door boom it <laughs> well so the thing about it was like this is just basic amnesia gameplay not to say amnesia invented it but like it's this all it made me as soon as he spawned i said this to metal um like I was like, oh, it's gonna be the location to get to to get to is gonna be behind him. It's like you can get to him through going through the other room as well. But I was just like, this is big fuck off table. This whole game has enemies that are unable to deal with tables. So I'll just yeah. fish him around the table and then just go through because that's that's that. 
And then, you know, you well, walk into I, a room and it's like, you can hide under this bed. It's like, I've not done that in this entire game. Like, why, <laughs> why would I do that? I guess, oh, that's going to be what I have to do. Um, but By you the can way, hide under a bed? I, yes. I never do that. I, I never encountered that. The bed. I never had to hide under the bed. Wait, so what did so you guys I used do? The, Wait, what did you guys uh, do? I used the, I used the cupboard. Yep. It was next to the I bed. Hide in the cupboard. What's uh, to hide okay, from okay. the the baby? Yep. I ran into the adjacent. See, I, I ran knew into the, the cupboard adjacent cupboard. room with the film reel, uh, and I hid behind the um, I hid behind the 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 table, the desk. And uh, in the process of crouching, my character Ethan automatically turned off his flashlight, and it seemed contextual. I was very intrigued because I didn't press a button to do it; just did it, which made yeah, it I, difficult yeah, to see the baby, and it made it kind of just like a hazy, almost silhouette. So I just had to sit there hoping that it didn't, that its AI didn't decide to start pathing and tracking me around the desk. And I did that like two or three times before I decided to just go for it because I was nervous. Every time you would start to approach the keypad, it would aggro him automatically because it was a scripted thing. Okay. Um, well, you know, at um, least there's that. You can hide I, in the I bed thought, or the closet. How's that? That's, see, that's I thought was, Yeah, I, there you I go. The, the, you, the game does have choice. You could either <laughs> uh, you could hide yeah. under the bed, or you could hide in the cupboard next to the bed. See, this is where <laughs> I gave the game way too much credit because I thought, oh, those cupboards are just fucking red herring. I was gonna go under the bed because there was cupboards everywhere that you can hide in. I was I like, you uh, yeah, no, because the baby teleports, you can just hide in the cupboard until the sounds go away and then oh, he's not okay. there anymore you can just run around yeah because i just uh, used the, the big table uh also known as the whole fucking circle this, this, oh yeah uh, tables are builds. the worst enemy of enemies in this game yeah they, just, yeah, um, they, they can't I, can't they I, can't deal with it yeah i just say big table because i only just walked in a circle through the basement like you could just walk in a circle grab the fuse go back around through a chimney and go here, and the baby just never even sees you, basically. Oh, someone in chat said, wait, it despawns? <laughs> My sweet summer child, everything is <laughs> on rails uh, in this uh, game. <clears throat> it's designed so, to despawn. Beowin uh, brought it up in the chat, so I should address it, because he is correct. I'd forgotten about it. Uh, to appease, he said, Rags, to appease chat, there is one puzzle. The statues in the blood room. Which is true. I, That's actually, well, there, well, it doesn't have a fail state, and you could guess, but... There's sort of a, a little poem that relates to how they should be arranged. So that's mm. kind of a puzzle. Yeah. I, like the, I like the bell one. I like, I like shoot, finding yeah, the, the bells. Yeah, the five bells. Oh, the hide-and-seek then... bells. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. That was kind of something. That made my brain, like, go, wait, I have to think for a moment. I where like they, the theme of a lot the of these. Yeah. I like, the, I like the theme of a lot of these puzzles, but uh, I, I think there's, like, two like main, if you want to go really, really broad, two main components of puzzles is, like, where uh, or like maybe three like where how and which so like if you're talking about like a real puzzle like a you know cut up a board into a billion pieces you're trying to find out which piece goes where um in in re8 i noticed that the where is is completely kind of omitted you know because usually the the solution is right next to the the actual puzzle in a lot of other other games like even like re2 remake you quite often find out like the passcode to or the the combination to a safe across the entire map and you and you'd have to you'd have to use your brain to figure out okay which which what am I, which place is this oh this is over there next to the so-and-so or you'd find like an object that goes into another room entirely like i remember uh in a lot of puzzles like where they'd have the solution right there next to the actual uh mechanism like in moro's place or in uh for example in a in a uh, uh what is it heisenberg's place you literally get uh, your first your first mold you get and you make this like uh, gear and it goes to the to the door directly to your right, like you didn't have to look for the door it goes into. It's like you literally turn ninety degrees and and that's the door that you just you're now able able to unlock and it's just like they kind of remove that layer of thinking and that layer of navigation by just having the solution. It could, it could genuinely be right that enough people complained at some point about different games being like I got lost and I didn't like that I got lost. I just want the sequences. I want the scary baby. Then I want to shoot some more zombies. Then I want the cutscene where the vampire lady sucks my blood. That's what I want. I don't want to have to walk around wondering where the key goes. Yeah, it, um, it, it, this that's is definitely sequence. an issue. Yeah, they cater too much to pre, uh, pre testers. Sorry, and I don't think I could 
I don't think I could call the Bills one a puzzle. I don't think I would either. It was just, I enjoyed like, it because I had to think, like, where would they hide Bells? And that was something. Yeah, it's like, it's just some some level of brain activity is necessary. Yeah, so, like cells yeah. were moving around, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you had to look for things in a room. So you're like, okay. Well, I would describe Someone said Rags the... loves... Yeah. Uh, so said Rags loves 4 but hates this one because 4 has a better story. No, 4 doesn't have a better story. 4 is just self-aware. Also, four is very, very tongue in cheek, and it dude, knows what it um, is. Four's balance and mechanic mechanics, like they're just glorious. I love thinking, like, like playing that game and appreciating, like, how much they must have cared about trying to balance everything out, at least in some degree, with with like things to try and account for it as well. It's not that like it's perfect. We will keep clarifying that, but like this game didn't even also, come close. And I said Four's story wasn't better. I I take it back. Four story is better. I was gonna say Four story is definitely have, better. Like, <laughs> it, yeah, it's basically non-existent what the story is, but it's still better than this. This is too many issues. Four's has issues too, but there's just not as many of them. Yeah, and this one. This fails like... at basically every level. Yeah. Uh, My argument's not making sense. It makes perfect fucking sense. Um. So yeah, what I was gonna say was like that. That was like the only value I could draw out of the escape room. I'm gonna keep saying puzzle, but you know what I mean. Um, the, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the fact that my brain had to go, I have a winding key, and I know that these things are in the room, what could it be for? And what would they want me to think it is? That brief moment of thinking, I was like, that's neat that I just did that, <laughs> I just thought about something. Brain activity, finally! And then of course, like well, I said, it's, sort of it's thing. all gone in the future playthroughs, because, you know, nothing changes. Yeah. That's the same yeah, sort of thing like with that designing... Bell's puzzle, though, right? Like, it's the only moment that you, you don't just go one, two, three, four, five. You can do one, three, five, two, four. It, same thing with, with uh, um, the blood thing, right? Like, you, you can play around with it a little bit. That's the only reason why it even feels like a puzzle in the first place. Well, it, it's almost like the developers extended the leash that the player was on slightly for a moment. It was like, <gasps> just a moment! Yeah, just, just a barest moment. For just a tiny, you did for a tiny pain. brief moment, they let the, gave you a little slack on the leash, and that was basically total freedom. Gave and you that's a little bit the, of taste just to piss you off because they took it yeah. away. There's nothing yeah. else in the game where you get that, even that little modicum of freedom. There's nothing else in the game. So that's how come, you know, yeah, those are the two puzzles. <laughs> In the uh, Hulk, those so are the two. Fucking <laughs> so fucking pathetic. <laughs> I think the, the, this this part was the first part where I noticed that they just uh, change your sprinting speed for no reason. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Arbitrarily, they Make change your spooky. sprinting yeah. speed. For I was waiting for like something to pop out purposes. at any second, but it just didn't happen. So I was like, yeah. okay, I guess. I, I was this I was glad because I hate that shit when it just the game's like boo and I go ah oh, I have uh, instincts because I'm a human being. All right, back to the game now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because you still have like a like a sprinting animation kinda, but it's way slower than before. Yeah, I yeah I I know when games do that. I know what you're talking about. In, in general, like I remember <laughs> it's the it's last upgrade purposes. I got. The last upgrade I got was the. Speed upgrade was oh yeah great I can move faster and then I get it and I start moving it's like am I faster I don't feel like I'm faster I think it's like a very very small boost you get from twenty percent probably it's just like oh it, yeah, yeah something I guess. I, I, I legit can't, uh, <clears throat> couldn't tell the difference I think this... the issue here with like these quote unquote puzzles or these rooms with problems to solve is that when they were designing it I guess nobody thought. If we were, at, if the actual player, if a person was trapped inside of this scenario, what would they do? What would an, what would a real person well, yeah, actually yeah. do to try and solve it? And maybe we can incorporate that into the game. And so they went around the office and maybe described the scenario to some of the people who were mindlessly coding the game or who were working on that one house in the village for three years of their life or whatever. And they said, okay, here's a scenario, what would you do? And then you tally up some of the most popular answers and the ones that make sense, and you try to see, oh, okay, we can do that. Those are things that people will think of. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can incorporate this into how you escape the actual room. Huh. How interesting. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that. Instead, they have you go down this well, and there's a doll at the bottom, and it's watery, and there, it has a key for the fuse box in it, because and they just threw you the go key down to the... Well. the yeah, it's just... I just it, None of this makes sense. I think no, and they threw the little baby symbol in the breaker box. 
for some reason because that's where. Oh I yeah, like the, the little thing you put into the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just that's just that's where it is, and that's what you gotta. It's some... and wouldn't you leave the scissors right there in a doll's hand because yeah, because it needs to be right next to where you need it. Well, that's what I mean, if it's yeah. all orchestrated by the bad guy, why are they giving you the sequence of events to a escape? Sequence? Why? Yeah. Why are they you, putting what's it right the point? next to what what's... you need to do? What's Donna supposed, trying it, to do? Is it a I metaphor? It. You're in a bind prison. He's suicidal. Do, is this his own? That... Is this his own prison that he's built for himself? Yeah, that cupboard in the back. That's where I hid. I guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do, do yeah. you think they were still trying to push the narrative that they're testing you, that Miranda's trying I... to get you to her her family, Sorry. quote unquote? But yeah, but I'm trying. also. I say trying but, because they just kind of try to kill you all the time, so it doesn't make any sense. I don't. I never yeah, I even don't thought understand. to look under the bed to hide. Like that never <laughs> I, I even occurred to me as something this game would let you do. Oh, well, you can tell yeah, from the I, way I move. I think that I see the the arrow, and I'm like, wait, what? Why is there an arrow? I, uh, yeah. Do I have I to pick I, up something down there? Oh no, it, I could hide there if I need to. So why? <sighs> I don't even. Just a lot of uh, really abandoned mechanics in this game. I noticed, yeah. like uh, like the. The bed, hiding under the bed and hiding in the closets, that's only well, relevant for literally one moment, this moment. Yes. And why and, does... And why they, is... they, they, they completely forget about uh, shelves in the first from the first act, like where you can move shelves and, and you know, block Barricade doors. I think there's, like, maybe stuff. a couple points later in the game, but, like, you think that adding ability to hide, adding the ability to, like, barricade, that would actually be a really interesting mechanic you could explore it could be tense. later yeah. in the game. It's coming, yeah. quick, get the boards on the window, or all oh, quick, you gotta oh. move that dresser in front of the, in front of the door, so, yeah. yeah. That yeah, ties so like, into how, how the game is totally opposite between the two different sides, right? So, like, the first half of the game, you've got this sort of an amnesia, run from the bad guy, run and hide, only engage in specific set pieces with the bosses. And then the last half of the game is just this, like, bombastic action shootout. Mm -hmm. So yep. the, it's not just that they're abandoning the... the um, the little me mechanics that you've got, they're actually abandoning the entire tone at yeah. one yeah. point in the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think. But that, I, what I don't understand, though, is why is Miranda, like, is this ever explained? I might have missed it. Like, so I'm just, this is just a question to you guys, because maybe you guys saw it and I didn't. Why does Miranda want you to kill the lords? They're, um, she says something, right? Like, they're, she, they weren't even, so, she considers them, like, shitty family members, not they're not really family. Enough. Yeah, yeah no, they're, no. like, not good enough, like, I mean, I read through the... her notes and all that, but I don't remember, like, a direct reason yeah, why that... she wants you to kill them. It's like, it's like a really, I mean, they're just bosses, it's like but, a like, shitty, you, just functional you, family. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I love? Re, Villains who are just evil because they're psychos and they're just yeah, pretty much. unstable. That's cool. Well, it, right, but like, I did think it was kind of cute that like the mer girl. the merman guy was like, "Oh, I'm not her favorite," and he was kind of grappling with his grief on that. Yeah, yeah that, that could have been interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been very but they just don't do anything with yeah, it. Yeah, I remember being surprised when I when I heard him speaking. I was like, "Oh my god, is this a character? What's happening? Oh, are we doing that? Are we doing that now?" But he's sentient and he can communicate with you. I thought that was a nice little change of pace from. Every other fucking... Well, see, yes. that's what you would do, right? You have... You, that would be... If, if they were all fleshed out, you'd have it be that you, we only ever see him vomit, growl, make horrible noises, but then at one point we catch him off guard and he's like, wait, 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 stop, please. And you're like, oh. And then you have a whole sequence where... You could even... Wouldn't it have been cool if, like, all of them could be turned against Miranda and it's, like, really hard to get all of those events to, like, yep. engage, but you can do it with all four of them depending on how you interact yep. with them or what items you yeah, pick up. Yeah, and the logic... And the logic would be different for each one because they're nope. all different and they want different things and they're just different people. Uh, so that could have been interesting. But the one yeah, thing you don't it. have a choice for, why the fuck don't you have a choice to team up with Heisenberg? Oh, we'll get there. Oh, you, we'll oh, get there. I know, <laughs> I know, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. what, what the fuck is wrong with your storytelling? Well, to it, sort of finish up Spooky House, I was just going to say, like, about, because Rags was saying about, like, asking people and then seeing what their answers would be. The one where she's just got bandages wrapped around her and it's like, how would you do that? It's like, oh, you just grab it off with your hand, like slide it down, slide it up, because, you know... Well, yeah, you just unwrap it, because if it's wrapped it, yeah. around, you can unwrap yeah. it. Plus, then, you'll get more bandages that way if you need them for whatever reason. Exactly, yeah, and, and it's just like, well, no, you have to go and find the scissors. You're just like, ugh, what? I swear, <laughs> it's just, there is a scissors, I guess. I was like, okay. Um, yeah, that's like adventure game moon logic, which a lot of adventure games you like. Oh, well, you have to combine the dog hair and the ice cream mm -hmm. and the you know so and so, and that'll make the tonic. And it's like, oh, that's not nobody then, thinks like that. <laughs> someone in chat points out, but after Ethan has taken out all of her kids, she changes her mind and does not want him. 
Well, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, the weird impression I got, and I've got nothing to base this on, really, is that by killing them, you proved yourself to be strong, and so she drinks your yeah. blood to gain power? <laughs> is that how it works? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, that's the Dimitrest only thing I get, got. That's the Dimitrest only thing got I your got blood. Did but, she get stronger because she drank your blood? Well, so this is... I don't know. What I was going to bring up is just, like, why not just drink his blood anyway? If, if it doesn't work out, it's like, whatever, spit it yeah. out. But if it does, then, yeah, be stronger. Either way, he's dead and out of the way. He destroys everything. It literally looks like that's the only thing that she does it for. And, and But, like, he still kills her with a gun. Like, it's... I, <laughs> dude, I don't get it. it. You can't make sense of it. You really can't. But it's not supposed to make sense. Yeah, the like, oh, well, motivation you know behind the, the four parts coming together and Miranda's whole plot, I really have no idea why they needed to break her into pieces, why they yeah. needed to separate them. Well, into they, they, she said yeah. she wanted to test yeah. her regenerative abilities for how strong she was. They did say that, but she it, can do that it's, herself, in a very, it's, it's in a very obscure note. Why she gave them to them, who the fuck knows? That's retarded. I don't. Wait, like, she wanted to test her regenerative capabilities? She wanted to test Rose's. Oh, roses. And that's why oh. she split her up and because she can heal and just go back together and she thought it was miraculous and that's why she thought she was the pure child. And but Rose is the special kid the because she Lord. is the daughter of Mia, Mia who's Ethan. the mold, who's got mold in her. And Boy, Ethan's so, got mold too. So. And, and mold Ethan has mold. So yeah. if two mold people make a baby, then the baby is the ultimate mold it's, person. Yeah, it's pure mold, I guess. That's what you are mold. <laughs> so if two it's the spiritual success right. to Evelyn, it's Evelyn's like yep. uh reincarnation basically. You get to meet so if my animal. mom So if my mom is half golden retriever and my dad is half mastiff and they made me, that doesn't make me the pure of any of those. Yes, it does. Shut up. Oh, I right. yeah. you, you, you haven't thought about it. It's it makes sense if you think about it. So I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why. I guess Rose Rick, is just being special. really obtuse. It's like really obvious. It's so you're obvious. Being yeah. Very ignorant. I, was, I'm, I just want it to. I just want to understand. I just want to understand. I'm like I'm like Anthony Hopkins. No, you are being None of this makes sense. And I'm breaking down. And I just want something to make no, sense in this universe. You, you just, you're just a contradictory piece of shit that just wants yeah, to you're you're yeah, yeah, you're contrarian. You're just You don't want to like it. You fucking yeah, yeah, I'm fucking you, straight. You, you weren't going to like it before you game. went into it. <laughs> You know what? Fuck life. video games. If you play video games, you're a man child who doesn't have friends. Go outside. Oh. Go touch grass. Oh shit, got him. <laughs> Don't touch yeah, grass. Got fucking got him. Hey, hey look at this. All right, the you scene right him. there where the dolls attack you if you don't take too long. Why didn't they do that to take your fucking guns? It would have been cool as shit. Well, why don't they kill if you? If you're not currently playing football, go just what are you doing? Why aren't they what killing you? Loser? Why won't they kill Sorry, you? That bothers I know it bothers because me. She wants that to play a game. So because work. she's you stabbed her already. She should be like, oh shit, I can die. That's bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, when I just saw you open that cu uh, that, that cupboard, it was like they don't even try doing that, like hide her no. in like actual places. Yeah, no, I, she's I, I, thought, open. I thought that was in what the... was happening because I couldn't see her. I was yeah, like, is she in same. a cupboard? She must be in a cupboard. I'm pretty sure I opened all the cupboards before I started looking just on the floor because there's floor. That's fucking boring. Yeah, I, I scanned I actually, past it twice with the hiding space she's currently in. There, but there's this one door that's like slightly also that's open. not hiding. You're sitting in plain sight. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. There's this one door that's like slightly open. It's like, oh, she's definitely gonna be in there at the end or something. Nothing. Why do they let you open that cupboard? I that's use a um, just for distraction. Just I guess. red herring, yeah. yeah all right. Well, fair enough. There were like a few cupboards in the very beginning when you're wandering through the dark uh, with a flashlight that you could open, and it's like, okay, why is that? Yeah, and there's you, nothing you there. The, yeah, there's. You could turn on the faucet someone, and does nothing. Yeah. Somebody has asked me, um, Rags, uh, were you questioning what sense Resident Evil One made back in the day? No, because I never played Resident <sighs> Evil One. Resident Evil Four was the first one I played on the GameCube. It was the first M-rated game that I purchased. Yay. Um. And no, I, I didn't play the ones before that. Uh, however, uh, if it has a dumb story, it's got a dumb story. And it, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make well, sense. The thing and with Resident bad, Evil 1 is it was then, very... Resident Evil 1 was very tongue-in-cheek with the kind of story and the voice acting being bad. And it didn't have the most flawless story. But it was 10 million times better than this soggy sack of shit. I can appreciate cheese. I love out. Resident Evil 4. I mean, there you go. It was just exactly. a lot more simple. And it was a lot more simple story too. It was. It was just like you just need to figure out how to get out of this mansion and what the hell's going on. And, and oh, oh my god, monster! Fucking, yeah. yeah, Umbrella had a test lab out here. Okay, we got to find it. And mm. like then it unfolds to like, oh, there's this huge plot, and it's like dun dun dun, and it at least like tries to build you up to something. This game, 
does nothing but like consistently <laughs> let you down because but you it, don't even know what the fuck is going on but it makes people feel like it did a lot it makes me feel like it's shit all over my fucking franchise that I like oh. a lot. Well, you know Just what? spewed diarrhea fucking Hershey squirts all I, over it. I'm pretty sure we'll be getting more of this with Resident Evil 9. Like, it'll be cranked up again. We'll probably have ten oh, family will. members. And well, be I already uh, imagine that Mia's coming back, right? Like, yeah. she has to. Everyone's so we're gonna character. get Mia's story... I never um, want to see Mia or Ethan again. Probably yeah, no, the yeah, the father story is done. We gotta get the daughter and the mother's story. Yeah. You're, but see, the thing is, I it, it does such a bad job because <laughs> because what? Because you can just all stop the reasons. There. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just trying. Like, I just have like forty things pop in my head. I'm trying to figure yeah. out which one I want it, to talk about. It and it's does like, such already, a bad job. Yeah, it's already <laughs> been their points already been surrendered. <laughs> We're just, it, anything after that is just an explanation for why it's yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's just which I can get. Like again, I like Resident Evil 4's cheesy, tongue in cheek kind of story. Well, that's because that all is Resident very... Evil one through three was all Resident Evils one through four. They were all there was always a little bit of tongue in cheek in them. Always, Resident Evil four kind of cranked it up a little bit more than one through three, but there was always that little bit of cheese in it. Always, but this is fucking ridiculous. This isn't it's trying cheese. like this and Dude, the seven, first game is ridiculous to be very too. serious. Oh, it was, but it wasn't. This game's like trying to be so serious that it's almost cringy. This game is Ethan is cringe. Yes, absolutely. Like, Ethan totally and, the, and Chris, they're both cringe. The whole house uh, Benevito thing was uh, it's frustrating because I love something very similar to this in a better game or or different game. Like the whole idea, you know, you can look at the themes like kind of like the horror of fatherhood, you know, like all oh, the kind of gross body stuff with, you know, birth and things like that. Like that could be reflecting on Ethan's, you know, fear as a father, you know, or something like that. Like it reminds me a little bit of some of the stuff that they did in Max Payne where mm, like, it seems Max more is, like a motherly. Is, horror, uh, though. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit motherly. Like it would have been probably pretty good than something like after. Yeah. Like if you uh, had a uh, section where you played as Mia, this would make yeah. more sense. The whole, yeah. the, the fetus that isn't quite well, right. The horrors of what well, happens. Like if they if would have had a miscarriage right. or something. Yeah. Remember yeah, the yeah, miscarriage. I think, or, yeah, I think the that's, baby that's you abandoned. Or well, I think that's what they're going for. If you remember Mia says like, I didn't want to tell you like, there's an implication that she may have tried to get an abortion or something. And this is what happened. You know, yeah, that... but they but they don't they do a, such a shitty job at it. They should have just fucking that should have been why they were arguing in the beginning of the game. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah which is completely. something is the that, problem. Yeah. We know nothing about their fucking relationship. We know yeah, but... we barely met Rose. Like why yep. why do they expect all of this to just work Rose without a, any effort? Rose isn't even a character. Just game, stop trying to He's make me McGovern. feel like I'm connected to babies that aren't mine in yeah, a know, video they're... game when I have ten minutes with them. Yeah, stop. They're... It doesn't work. <laughs> Fuck babies. I tried to I tried to eat the baby out the window when it let me. <laughs> uh, like it, it kind of reminds it's... me of uh what what max Payne did when like uh because the impetus of that game is that uh i think valkyrie drug or whatever made you uh, you think you you killed your wife and and your your child or your unborn child or whatever and that comes back to haunt him you know and so the those he has like dream sequences where he's running through like a maze or over platforms and things like that and he's like hearing his wife voice like no i didn't mean to what are you doing stop and things like that so it's like it's kind of like a reflection of his guilt or his remorse. And that would be really interesting to play up in this game. And like, if there was something like a, you know, like a miscarriage or whatever, if you kind of, yeah, no, you know, that would have been really rep interesting. Represent that. Or but this just feels like a, 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 an interesting sequence in a completely different game, not a game with, or if you know, that was a boss yeah. miscarriage and you had yeah. a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that'd have been interesting. I had to fight that demon. And, but so it was, was it rags. Why can't this baby have character? So, what an insanely bad faith interpretation of what I said. <laughs> yeah, um, so, a baby doesn't have character. Babies aren't even, like, people in that sense. They're just not <laughs> mentally a person, you know, in, in the sense that, a, that a, a, an adult or even a child has yeah. personality and character and stuff. So, having... You're, you're just playing off... You, you, I have more sympathy for the girl and her, you know, and her father. What was her name? Eliza? I'm not sure. Liza. In the village? Uh, the girl... Liza. Elena. Uh, who shoots her dad with a shotgun? Elena. 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 She was the person I cared more about than anyone else in this whole game. Because 
what she does is she's in a sympathetic position she talks to you she cares about her dad she has to kill her dad who's turning evil to save you and she does something for you god forbid which is the opposite of what babies are um and you feel for her and and then the game's just like no lol she's died in a fire they gave her horrific death (laughs) And the game really wants me to feel for Rose, yeah, this baby he, that I had four seconds with, fucking... who's annoying and doesn't even have a character and won't remember any of this and can't do anything for me and can't appreciate well, this. It's just. I would argue it's worse yeah. than that, too, because for me, it's like, you had a kid with Mia, you care about it, okay? I'm like, uh, okay, I guess I can give you like a basic sort of empathy with that. It's like, your baby is now in four containers. <laughs> yeah, like, someone said uh, like, rags okay. fawn over the personality of a puppy so yeah. dogs can have personalities i mean babies just mentally like can't not they, at rose's age you know they don't quite they, they can't communicate yet they don't have a sense of object permanence so they're yeah people, it's, but they don't but they don't have the person yeah they haven't yet been able to develop a personality or sense of yeah, communication or anything where dogs it's lazy can, in it's, a way yeah it's well, like yeah, we you, all know why they did it sympathize with the baby because it's a baby and it's yeah. just it's a baby you feel you feel good for babies right you, you wanted to you know you sympathetic for the baby right and that's all it is you don't have to work hard at trying to build a personality or a character or a sympathetic person it's just well, it's a baby you save it that's what you do and and, and perhaps oh, okay. if they actually like showed the baby, but now you're just like you feel bad for four bricks, right? The yellow bricks that you feel you you well, want to so get it, those bricks back, right? That's what I was getting at. <laughs> at this point in the game, I was like, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Is this was my kid yeah. real? Is this my kid? Does, is the kid really? You, you alive really have to take the their word thing? for it that they did a they did a magical fucking yeah. you know ritual to turn your baby and, into four cubes. Like you really, it's like oh yeah, I saw it. It's like okay, I guess that happened just fucking off screen. I, I guess we just trust this is the reality now. Someone said babies can learn and differentiate have... their parents' voices, but that like that's the most basic i recognize this pattern thing a brain can do that's not a personality no like that's just it... any animal like goldfish also none of this do that fucking applies we got to hang out with rose for four seconds like you said yeah well, i got to hang out with like, uh, why... a light what's her name louisa uh elena. fuck i keep elena and i i i wanted more of her i was like oh my goodness am yeah, i, I have a lot of character you you're like, you're like <laughs> oh man you know a light wait what was her name she's so memorable and i liked her what, what was her name again <laughs> whoa let's, let's put the brakes on the bad name. faith train you don't have to remember no, no, a character's I, I, name to care I, about them i'm no i'm i'm calm down i was taking the piss like i don't actually <laughs> oh, you know what you know what for you so calm down i was piss. taking the piss i don't okay? actually i don't disagree i don't disagree dick. with the point that rags is making i was it was a joke That's yeah, clearly what, what i said was to a joke me. too it's all good i was joking about okay joking about your all right joke. sure um but yeah rags um, is absolutely right on this one though it's just like yeah. the whole thing of like when it comes to a baby hasn't really gotten the chance to develop a personality yet because they don't really have a perspective on anything which is fine obviously because you'll yeah, get i don't it blame later, the baby for that i don't yeah, know it's just, just, <laughs> maybe it would have been better to have rose be like i don't know like five years old like a, yeah like five a or kid. ten yeah and then you could actually i don't know maybe like you start the game with maybe even an extended sequence of just hanging out with the family and she draws you a picture right and she draws you a picture with crayons and it's really nice and you're like oh wow this is like an insight into her little child mind that's developing and she loves you and she has a special name for her dad and you do fun things and you draw and you play games and Something. Well, the problem yeah. is, I mean, they, they would never that do that. That would be shit to do, though. <laughs> they would, yeah, they would never do that. Like a, an hour of opening of like getting to know the baby, the relationship between Mia and Ethan, by the way, which we have nothing of. <laughs> and <laughs> babies in real life, I'll obviously defend a baby in real life. It's, it's also not even life, Mia. It's it's just like in a game, it's just you're taking the cheap role of oh, it's a baby. You, you protect your baby. It's the amnesia yeah, rebirth Ethan thing. And Mia technically yeah. have zero seeds together. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you actually don't get to meet Mia. You meet kind of a weird bitch, oh, well, like uh, you know, fake Mia that doesn't uh, really like you. It's like okay. <laughs> it came up. Um, I noticed it like after the scene, but I definitely checked it on a replay. When Chris reveals that Mia was actually Miranda the whole time, Ethan does not ask about the real Mia at all. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like doesn't he doesn't ask about the real Mia where she is now? Doesn't ask, wait, when was that switch? Did I have sex with bold lady? What, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 <laughs> where, <laughs> at all. and where is the person that I care about in this world? Where the fuck is sex with bold? 
Just fuck the mold. Reality is a big pile of mold. <laughs> fucking <laughs> nasty exactly. mold slapping together. Dude, think about remember, it. That'd, remember, be, that'd probably remember. be more pleasant than putting your dick in whatever Miranda is. <laughs> <laughs> um, fucking crap. I've put well, my dick in things that were in mold once. I, you know. Dude, did you see what she looked like at the end of the game? <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, at the end of the game. But like when she's nice. I like your long chick, fingers. Yeah. I don't know what's going I mean, on that, inside there is what I mean, you know? Give a all kinds of yeah, stuff. sure, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know, so, mold? Like, so well, spider Miranda turned you on At least mold is an earthly concept. I'm just concerned oh, yeah. about what's inside here. It could be anything. What if your and dick that, comes out all spindly? A good personality, for hard. example. Imagine the opening scene where Chris shoots what you believe to be your wife, and instead of holding a baby that's just, like, in his hand, it's a ten-year-old young daughter of yours who is crying and she's upset and she's reaching for you and she wants her dad, dad to help her and save her. That, that yeah. is such a huge yeah. improvement that would be on making me care about Rose. Yeah, dude, and yeah. splitting, oh, would, splitting the ten-year-old daughter into four containers that list arms, yeah. legs, torso, head. You'd be like, Jesus yeah, that would be Christ. extra horrifying because yeah. this was like a, a ten-year-old. And it's screaming, Dad, don't let them take me. What are you doing? And she's yeah, like yeah, yeah. beating him on the chest and shit. Yeah, and the nightmare yeah, sequence that be could be about amazing. how you failed your daughter. It'd be, yeah, be what if you incredible. don't get her back? Yeah, what if something terrible happens? You see visions of her mutilated or, or, or suffering or something that would have really fucked her character up. Fucking ripping her arms off or something, you know, like fucking, it'd be, that'd be terrifying. I mean, if you, if you didn't want to go the whole grotesque route, you could you could occasionally see, like you said, with that example, and this is, we're just pulling it out of our hat, but you maybe could see occasionally a little crayon sketch, you know, a Save Me Daddy or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that'd yeah. That'd be really okay. impactful. Yeah. Okay, this is really funny. There's a comment that Someone says, say, and then in the next game, Rose is a lesbian who hates her dad. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you know, it's 2021. Um, if the game had done that 10-year-old kid thing, Rags would say it's so cliche. Well, maybe. I don't, I, I don't it would depend on execution, it, it? depends on execution. It, yeah. This is literally... So if something's cliche, but it's done really well, like, I'm fine. Like, I started to pray, you know what's cliche? Werewolves, vampires in castles, uh, creepy witch ladies in the woods. Those are like cliches. Those are tropes. But if they're done really well, I, I can't get enough of that if they're done well. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. awesome. This is, this is like really basic storytelling stuff. Like, uh, there, uh, some movie director, I think, <laughs> actually experimented on this. He took a rock, a literal rock, and, like, did a film... Not shit, a like, figurative he moved, rock? He, like a literal rock and moved it around <laughs> and it's like did did different actions and things of the rock and uh, measure the audience's response and they're like eh, you know not really invested in the story with the rock then they added two little rocks isn't this a joke to, to, like a like, like a, like a this... <laughs> no 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 sure they, 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 I think they literally did this where they took like a, a little baby rock and an, another rock and uh, like there are smaller rocks next to them and they're like the, the big rock would go down and they'd interact with little rocks and stuff it kind of Basically, and not even not even showing, but insinuating that this rock had a family. All of a sudden, <laughs> re the response to the story about the stupid little rocks went like the audiences were engaged. They were really afraid when the debt when when the big rock you know was in danger or whatever. And they were talking about literal rocks, but you know when you when you want to have some, you have to have something to be invested in the story. If well, you see, I don't know if that's you know, interesting or embarrassing. Or... Like, it's kind no, of I, I can, no, I, I can yeah. see why there's a part of human psyche that would respond more interesting. Yeah, that's to why I'm saying I'm not sure yeah, persona if it's or not. Yeah. Well, it's because um, it's like you're personifying a rock, you know. Well, like, that's, you know, that's the thing. I think that's what makes it interesting. If you give, if you imbue human characteristics onto a a literal rock. Our human brain, there's a part of our psyche that responds to that in a certain way. Yeah. No, I, again, think, I think that is interesting. Saying, yeah. Rags, it's, that's interesting, but on the one hand, it's like, it is interesting that you can sympathize for a rock, but like, yeah. it's a rock. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, that's Yeah, like, I you have to remind yourself, oh, wait, this is a, oh, it's just well, a rock. And a, it's what's interesting is, um, not alive. all they did, what they did for Rose is the base level. This is, what's, this is brought up in the first episode of Community, I think. It's, I really love it. I use it in one of my videos, but basically, um, they gave her a name, and that was basically it. And that's the baseline. Giving something a name elevates it from zero to like, you know, like one on the scale. And, uh, well, it's the it's joke that Joel, happens all the time. Uh, sorry, Jeff oh, Winger gave it a name. holds up um, a pencil, and he's like, you don't care about oh. it, but if I told you its name is Steve, and then he breaks it in half, and everyone goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, Steve. <laughs> he just broke Steve. <laughs> yeah, you like, bastards. so, you know, her name is Rose, and it's your daughter, Care, and you're like, 
You're gonna have to do no. more of that. <laughs> like, no. While we talk about Rose, why did she need to be cut into pieces? Of no, I didn't. Miranda wanted so to she could be reformed into. Okay, well, I. Okay, so Miranda lost her infant son or infant daughter a long time ago, but I mean. So yeah, babies are basically kind of... interchangeable, is what I'm trying to say here. At that <laughs> I mean, age, what, what, I mean, uh, so you goal. just get a new baby. No, I mean, the I mean, know what the goal of, of of her plan is. I saw she she, she divvied her up. To let, test me, her I, actually, let me power. elaborate. That there's more to this because she put she cuts her little pieces in four jars and then he gives each one of them to one of the lords. Yes. Yeah. So you collect them, put them in the thing, and then she uses that thing that you just leave there. And she, I guess she just grabs the whole fucking chalice and just goops over it and gets a baby out of it. It's, mm -hmm. I, I don't understand. I don't oh, understand. Yeah. No, no, it's clear. It's no, that obvious, made a lot of you know? sense, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I understood what they... It's, yeah. it's certainly, mm. hearing metal like recant it, it made more sense than it used yeah, to. Yeah, right? really, it did, yeah. I felt like I was there. That's um. That's another thing. Then. Okay. That kind of lines bad. up with how how I just don't believe Ethan's even a human fucking character anymore. <laughs> like the f first thing is with the jaws. Uh, Duke clearly seems to understand what's happening, and he asks him like basically zero questions about it. He's like, <laughs> so he's like, maybe you could save your daughter. And it's like, what does that mean? What what what, that, what exactly yeah, do you mean by that? This, her head's in a jar, Duke. What are you talking about? And you're like, no, he's just he's just angry at Duke. Duke. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Duke's like, you, know, you got to collect those four jars. He's like, well, I guess I will then. It's like, Tony, you want to ask him yeah, how? Like, how does this what, work? Where where what what are they? What do I fucking do with them? You piece of shit. How do I get my daughter back? And like, then, if you're lying to me, I'll kill you. It's like, oh. And okay. then because the the canister things, they're not anything other than keys and the, the big yep. altar thing is just the door, you activate it, it takes you down, and Ethan just leaves them. He just walks off. Yeah. It's like, aren't, isn't that your daughter, mate? And he's just like, no, nah, it's fine. It's part of the plot. I leave them there. You're like, yeah, okay. Don't worry about it. And Heisenberg even says, like, oh, hey, don't worry about her. She'll be fine. And it's like, what? It's not a trap. <laughs> Why is it? Yeah, yeah it's not a trap. And, and, Which and, it wasn't, to be again, fair. Again, because like no. all of it's bullshit, but like, why is it that you put the four canisters into the thing, activate it, it takes you to Heisenberg's lair. It's like, why? Yeah, no, you have yeah, to pick up that. Uh, you have to pick up and put in your inventory that massive oh, no, you, stone <laughs> pillar. Dude, it's all <laughs> that so far. That's, that's what that. I mean, though. That the the four canisters <laughs> give you that pillar that that goes onto the thing that gives you Heisenberg's lair. Why? Why would that be how that works? That's because how game. because um because game. so uh, that actually actually ties into when you're in Heisenberg's <laughs> factory. He says he's gonna go get Rose, and you're like, no, uh no, you're not, because Ethan forgets that Heisenberg can leave whenever he wants, and Rose is about a two-minute stroll down the bridge, <laughs> and he can grab Rose whenever he wants, but he just doesn't, because, because. Oh, and, that, and that further just frustrates when he says like, uh, we can save Rose and use her to kill Miranda, yep. and we can save Rose and use her to kill Miranda, and my, Ethan my is he not doesn't. A weapon. Ethan doesn't. Yeah, he's like my daughter's not a weapon. Uh, why do you like, just say Ethan, okay? Let's you're a bizarre a human. Way. You you're really bizarre. are. Bizarre. Yeah. He literally <laughs> said we. He doesn't even say use her at first. The first time he mentions no. it, he no, says he doesn't. we can go we save can Rose yeah. and kill Miranda, yeah. which is something that needs to happen if he saves Rose. Miranda needs to be dead because Miranda's going to keep coming back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and what yeah, I don't understand. It, it's like why don't you just say instead of saying no, fuck you, you could be like. We're not killing my daughter. We're not using my daughter, but I I will help you kill her. Yeah. And you then see, we'll Ethan, save my daughter. At the even same if time. you do get Rose back, what about Miranda? Do you think like, she's just gonna leave you alone, and you could go home and forget about this nightmare? No, it's a win-win for the both of us, Ethan. Yeah, and you work with him, and and you explore this idea. But Ethan's a fucking retard, and he's just like, no, my baby isn't a weapon. Well, see, you should, it, just, it's, you should at least have the like, choice. You're like, okay, I guess. You should at least have the choice. You can either say fuck it and fight him and go through all that shit, or he can join you and it changes the outcome of the story. I and saw maybe someone trade you afterwards. That's fine. Then you fight him. Then I saw but someone say been... like, um, you shouldn't complain because it's in character for Ethan to deny the offer, and I'm just like, what? I don't even what know. Character? I don't even know that that's true because I don't even get Ethan's character. How, like, well, that's my point. How is that if, out of his character? Where, where does they ever explain in his character he, that he yeah, wouldn't if, team up with him? It is Ethan's in character, character for him to be stupid. That's true. Well, <laughs> yeah, Ethan's that's true. character up to this point, all we know is that Ethan really wants to save Rose, and Heisenberg is telling him, We can save Rose. Yep. Uh, and in a sentence, Ethan's like, wait, 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 you want to help? We can, we can save Rose. You want to help me save Rose, the thing that I've been doing this whole game. 
And I don't like, have to kill you. Even... You will actually help me kill Miranda. It's right, literally yeah. like... It wouldn't even Two make... Against the, one. Whatever his character is, it would make sense for him to take the deal. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You see, Ethan, it's a win-win for the both of us. I fucking started screaming at the game during that. Me too. I'm like, you, I, you, and I wanted to know more as the player. Tell me more about Heisenberg and how he oh, thinks about the other lords and Miranda and why he feels how he feels. Her. Yeah, I want to know why he wants to kill her. Why he wants to get rid of them all? Like, why don't we learn these things? Like, he could have told us, and this is why we need oh, to team I, up and kill Miranda. Miranda, so, that evil bitch stole my life from me, and I'm gonna get it back. <laughs> you know, the, the more you start to do that impression, the more I get like a mixture of like Futurama's like Richard Nixon mixed with like fucking uh, what's the name of that John John Wayne, like the fucking old cowboy guy. John Wayne. Yeah. yeah. We're so gonna go save this. Rose Pilgrim. Someone... Yeah, just, <laughs> just a hint of that. Just a hint of that. I like it. I'm, oh, I'm digging God. it. Someone in chat said you were given really the choice enjoyed... of saving Mia or the the other fucking girl in Resident Evil Seven. Why couldn't they give you a choice in this? They didn't give you a choice. Oh, in Resident do you 7. remember? Do you remember the result of that choice in Seven? Yeah, at yeah, least at least they were honest this time. R8. You know, instead yeah, of like, like imagine they said work with Heisenberg. Yeah. Yes, you hit yes, and then you fall down into the thing. He goes, you fell down there anyway, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, what a precarious position for you to sit in. I can't. I can't believe you actually sat in that chair, Ethan. You fool. Yeah, someone in, someone in chat says your impression reminds them of Bernie Sanders. <laughs> a little bit. There's a little Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I, I can hear that. The yeah. thing with uh, Ethan that struck again, me is he, uh, his character reminds me a lot of um, Mark in the room. And it's like, oh, hi, Mark. Because that, uh, that guy, like every single situation what? Ethan finds him in, he's like, what's going on? <laughs> it's like, yeah. what's mm. happening? <laughs> like. Why is this happening? And especially considering he li he lived through a truly life changing, you know, uh, scenario in RE Seven. Like he might be a little bit more grizzled, a little bit more veteran. Like, I, you know, I can't believe this is happening again. I better load up and and well, open up my armory of guns in my in my closet because I I'm now sleep yeah, with a gun yeah. under my pillow now because I had this horrible nightmarish scenario where. I nearly died. My wife nearly turned into a monster. You know. Well, well you know when he sometimes falls... he does that. That's a that's a weird part. Yeah. Like when you first t the first time you uh, met meet one of those uh, those drilly boys, he's like, "Oh, can't fool me anymore." It's like, really though, like. Yeah, that's what I mean. They didn't okay. commit. Um, he's like four different characters depending on whatever the writer's deciding at the time. You know when you hmm. fall down in that initial attack and it's just a huge pile of bodies, and he sees a, yeah. a face. And he goes, oh, "A dead body." Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. Imagine, oh, in, imagine instead he scans around the room and he goes, God damn it. Or if he just <laughs> like, stood up and came again. out the hole that he fell in. Which I tried oh, to do yeah, on my second playthrough, because there's just, you just fall down through the floor. Oh yeah, it disappears. You stand up and go I, uh, back. That, that hole, if you go back I, to the I mean, room, the Outlast, hole's gone. I mean, in they let Miles Upshur say everything with just heavy labor, labored breathing, and then it told you, like, alright, well, <laughs> fuck it, this um, isn't a good situation to be in. He's the protagonist. Three. Was, with, 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 well, with, with what he just said about like Ethan, Ethan having gone through everything, it's just like you see all those bodies. You you kind of want him to just be like, really? Like, That's like, you uh, can't. Uh, <laughs> like, so really quickly, um, I'm gonna go. I need to go eat and stuff. Oh, I will miss okay. you, monk. Very well. Really you're, you you're the coolest person on. this podcast. Everyone else is dumb, I, including I me. Oh my goodness. Oh, well. I love mm. you. Mm. Mm. Well. Okay, go. Ew. Um, Ew. Um, <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Among oh, streams on Twitch, if you want to check He's out his really channel, very lovely. The very link is in the description. Man. He does. He plays video giant. games like Resident Evil Eight. <laughs> he reads I'm like every guy. fucking message in chat. Yeah, I do. <laughs> what a weirdo. I do. But oh, take care, guys. Freak. See you, See you later, later, man. Later. Good talking Bye -bye. to you. Bye. 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 Oh, did we just reach a dead end there? Oh my goodness, I happened? guess we had a weird weird sort of oh. thing. But yeah, what a... Um, what well, next the more up I think about um... Heisenberg, the more I'm just so disappointed. I, I, I loved his voice and his little... And it's just his... Him. He his was look. interesting to me. I wanted hey. to learn more about this character. He was so unlike the rest. He seemed so normal, almost. And relatable. Yeah, like he was one of the only um, people you could have like a rational fucking discussion with. Mm. Yeah. Which you could have, if Ethan would have done that. Yeah, because he also says, <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I didn't even want to be part of this family, but look, here I am. It's like, oh, shit, that's... Yeah, why Ethan's here? like, I don't want to be a part of your family. Well, neither did I, and look where we are. That's We're about to like, see oh, Ethan be a turnip right now. He's about to do it.
Uh, uh, the, I think so it, it, the absolute worst part of the whole game. Oh yeah, it just looks at him. It's like, <laughs> oh right, yeah. Um, stupid. It. It's so I, I, I do like his stupid. severe fucking underbite for his character design. <laughs> yeah, and not I do only like that, how the... fucking disgusting he. Like, I just when he was like just vomiting fucking green everywhere. My first thought was, what do his intestines look like? What would that look like on a on a chart? Like, how would we even make sense of it? How does he even like function? He's just this godless fucking creature. Godless? So you godless. need to have a god in order to not be an underbite. I mean, he's pretty thing. clear proof god isn't real. Uh, <laughs> well, that and the other proofs, but <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of pages not and <laughs> the, 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 the way goo. that Moreau tricks Ethan is is so like comically it's obvious. Like it, 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 yeah. the Moreau even Wait. literally says like Wait a second, just a bit more. You know, well, right, just like, one I, more second. You're I'm still lost, on. though. Like, yeah, and it's so, a shame because for the first ten seconds, I was like, "Oh my god, are they gonna do like a character?" I, no. I don't get it. Um, when he says like, "Haha, I've blocked the entrance," did he mean right in front of you that you escape immediately, or did he mean other places? I think he means but, like, but you escape the... those immediately too well the like elevator. you're not well, actually right? trapped. you just can't go back the way you came it depends like, because trapped. the game sometimes says ah you can't destroy this goo you can destroy this goo though like this yeah. is this is main goo you can't touch the main goo you can touch <laughs> I feel the like main i would have enjoyed that part more if he like if there was like a big fucking like running sequence where it was all just forming really quickly behind you and you had to well, get out but that running, was like that's what's what's happening but then yeah. I realized, no oh, i, I immediately knew thing. that's what they weren't gonna do and i didn't <laughs> treat it like that but it would you know if, like let's say there's like a really long tunnel you have to go to and it's very clearly marked to be interesting and have something there you get the thing and then you have to like run on the way out or, or else you'll get caught by like his fucking mucus and then that way, oh. there's actually like a real threat of what he can do rather than just the empty threat. He, and then it's like, oh, okay. He just like he no grabs Fawn's weird slime at places. Yeah. How does he do that? What? How? I don't. What? I don't. I don't know. I, I, that was gonna be my follow up question. How does he do a, a, the telekinetic slime generation? I don't understand. Watch. He grabs this flask and he just stares at him like, "Hey." Yeah, well, this is like, once again. It's just like, God, I wouldn't be you doing just this. But he's like, staring at him. I don't get why Ethan would do this. <laughs> Look, he's just like, hey, let's watch. Let's hang out, dude. How you doing? Look, I got the flask. It's over here. Look how long he's standing there. And yeah. then, oh, hey, there you are. And then he engages him and comes. See, literally, I have this. Oh, my God. <laughs> so also, frustrating. Also, Ethan doesn't pull out a gun and just shoot Moreau. No, right, he does spot. nothing. It's... He does nothing. This moment here, I was so mad. Like, I'm getting mad now. I was so <laughs> mad. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Please, please. Wait, 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 wait. Like, and he starts walking over to him. This is an unknown enemy. You have no idea what powers he is. Is he going to stab you through the fucking face like every other enemy that you've met I mean, in the game? does he really no, look not like this he's one. exactly sprinting over to you? Look at his fucking posture. Like, I don't really... <laughs> I could I could justify that being like, look at this fucking... Ba I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want to take the risk, but I could kind of justify him being like, this dude clearly isn't going to fucking marathon on bum rush me anytime soon. He's, he's like he's a fantasy creature. You have no idea what he's gonna do. But it's not he. But he doesn't like engage with Moreau in any way. He's talking with him, but it's not. It's not a conversation that's worth having. If you're not no, gonna exactly. kill him and you're not gonna run away, surely you must be talking about something that yeah. helps you out or is meaningful or something. Well, right. And the no, easy way is he not. takes it's the just... thing. Moreau sees him taking it and goes, "Wait, your daughter. I can help you." And you'd be like. Shit, what is he? Is he is no, he I have to go or? get Rose back. As much as we say Resident Evil 4 is like a superior game in every way, if this is the kind of stuff that, and not to say it's invalid, like I can I can see your point, but if this is the sort of stuff that's like really like a make or break deciding factor as to whether or not like this entire scene works or not. I really enjoyed Ramon Salazar from Resident Evil 4. And he has a lot of moments where he just runs ahead of them of like just where you are right now so that he can set up his chairs and bodyguards and throwing knives and be like, Mr. Leon Eskin. Like they have a lot of those moments. It makes no fucking sense, but it's just kind of like, oh, okay, he's here for like the spectacle or some shit. Like you could probably justify some way to make like the cheesy, stupid thing. Kind of. well, like, all the I criticism was on Ethan, so though. The, Leon this... doesn't do this shit. Yeah, Ethan, like Leon cuts short one of Salazar's <laughs> talks by throwing a knife through his hand. Awesome. Right. <laughs> that is fucking His amazing. reaction to it as well is <laughs> fucking so epic. Good. He's just screaming like, <laughs> what is. <laughs> Oh. Like how he's like, I'm done with your shit, you short fuck. That's what I mean. I just like replace Ethan with Leon. I feel like this game would improve significantly. It genuinely would. <laughs> yeah, and 
The only yeah. time I think the most of the conversations you have with with Salazar are through the radio that he hi, uh, that he hacks into. Mm -hmm. The first time you talk with him, there's a little bit of back and forth, but he's high up on a balcony and you can't get to him. Um, right. And there's the segment at the bottom of the tower where you throw the knife into his hand. And there's a segment where he's sitting on his throne and you fall into the trap. But that's a segment where he has uh, Ashley captured with this weird blade thingy against her. And it, like, I like threatening her or something. Um, but yeah, it's not, there's just, there's no sense of, there's always, there's no sense of urgency sort of there in a sense in the same way that exists in Resident Evil 8. Like when you take the, flask that from Moreau and you almost like shake it and you're like haha I'm taking this and Ethan's being yeah. playful and snarky for like okay yeah. that's a thing that you do now I that's guess it, yeah, yeah, just... like if this was Devil May Cry I could I could make a justification yeah. for that it's like, I mean, it's oh like... well every time they encounter a boss they fucking taunt them and make fun of them and you know, demasculate them to their face but yeah it doesn't quite Demasculate. work here logically con considering the stakes Ethan yeah. one is masculate the gen demasculate it, you know, emasculate, demasculate, de whatever. Demasculate. De this what? is very funny. You should definitely keep going on about this, Moriarty. Unmasculate. Wait, wait, now. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, you're like Mao. Anyway. Yeah, that was worth it. So, the, uh... <laughs> it was worth it to me. That was fun. <laughs> now it's even more worth it. Um, oh, I was gonna say something, but there's something else I'm, I guess I'll say instead, which is the, uh, the Moreau sequence is another sequence that's just lame on replay, because it's just like, press the buttons, run across the thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only time you end up dying are uh, the times that were really funny when Friggy died, where he got everything right, and then his character just went Phew! through the floor and it just died. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. times. <laughs> Fucking annoying. Wait, uh, went through the floor. What, yeah, he which he like he like set up the the correct platforms of running across them, and then his character would like just get stuck on nothing, and then flume through the floor before the platform's even gone yet. <laughs> like fall into the water. Yeah, and it would just kill him. And he was like, oh. Oh, just climb, just climb up. It's water. Well, no, no. Oh. Uh, no. Because mm -mm. you would think it would slow you down. So if so, in the Del Lago fight, which I'm gonna lie, I fucking hate the Del Lago fight in Resident Evil Four. So does literally everybody. And if they say otherwise, they're lying. Mm -hmm. um, but in the Del Lago fight, when you fall out of the boat, you have to swim back into the boat, or else you just flat out die. And every time you get knocked away out of the boat, you less go and further and further away. Yeah. So there's like a progression of yeah, you're in the water, and the monster's in the water too, but you're not dead because it has to actually get to you. So you better spam that QTE, which I think is an appropriate place to have a QTE. Um, I believe your distance from the boat is tied to the health, the amount of health that you have, and ah, not the amount might, yeah. of times you get knocked out of the boat. Ah, but like so, if you use a first aid spray, yeah, all of a sudden mm. you'll fall out. Ah, to the that's boat. interesting. I really it's like that. It's fantastic it's too, considering the fact I... that they let you see like the different angle from like a. a Del Lago or whatever that boss's name is like you really see the like the Jaws perspective where it's like underneath Leon and how oh, that whole fight is He's so good coming. so establishing tension uh you think Del Lago is a good fight um uh, I I, I hate that in, fight too I, well, I, I really my, my, my complete sentence was that fight is so good for establishing tension uh sure it's not um, hard, but I'm saying every time I come back and play through it, like I'm professional, that's particularly kind of a roadblock for yeah, me. Yeah, like I don't get bored. It doesn't bore me. And right. I, I, I that's do just feel the part tense, where I kind of sweat a little yeah. bit and I go, okay, here we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Someone said Ragnarok didn't heal. Exactly. Yeah, because when you when I would get hit, if I do get hit at the fight, right. then I don't think to heal yet. Uh, yeah. So that's probably why I think that the more you get knocked out, the further away it is. Because I, I generally don't get hit once and heal. So yeah, that's that's fair enough. But right. I actually I really like that the lower your health is, the further away from the boat. I, I, like yeah, I didn't that. even know that nifty. was true. Yeah, um, very nifty. But um, stuff new out about Resident Evil Four yeah, every nice. day because that game's awesome. So yeah, it's it's really nifty. That's anyway, really yeah. So oh, uh, quick. Well, I guess are you? I'm just gonna call I, I, with Moreau basically. So. If, uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'll write this down so I don't for so I don't forget. Okay. Um, the, it, you do a little bit of a, like. The, I thought there was going to be like a whole sequence in his caves, but it's really just like one little bit where you get the fish boat key thing, and it's like really easy. And then you do his sequence, which is just 
climbing over areas as you avoid you have to wait for him to come in and then you walk uh -huh. wait for him to come yeah. in then you walk and again these sequences man do they age horribly bad like playing them more than once because it's all meant for the spectacle you're supposed to play it and be like whoa yeah. that was that was yes. something that was that was the one quick note i was going to add was that as mechanically simplistic and repetitive as those boss sections were the first time the spectacle really is pretty extravagant like i i'm huge on fucking um audio shit i bought like expensive noise canceling bluetooth headphones and i i really care when like you know good sound design is implemented into a game and for like um uh for whatever his name fucking mermaid merman guy i always forget his name moreau uh moreau for moreau's boss moreau. fight and for um uh a number of other sections in the game where just anything was kind of chasing you that section where you know the the giant you were running from the giant fish and everything it there were moments where because of the sound design it felt like i just barely escaped like i just just turned the sharp corner and narrowly avoided my own death and so it's like for the for the very first playthrough it was really really impressive yeah, yeah, but i'm sure it does fall oh yeah apart this is on a game playthroughs this is a game that suffers horrifically for multiple playthroughs and it's, right, it's designed to make you feel like you're a special you're doing like a special play. Sorry, Fringy. I just um, you know what? I might turn my mic up a bit. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, ah, oh, too much. Hold on. No, you, no, it's not that your mic was too high. It was, you've got the disease, unfortunately. This, this, this uh, EFAP. You, you, you are blanked out when someone or someone else is talking. Okay. Um. Hopefully, I won't get the disease next time. All of, what I was going to say was, that I think, yeah, what Chase has just highlighted there is kind of like, it's kind of, it's, it's almost like. If you needed to summarize this game in in you know really quickly, it's that's mm -hmm. kind of what it was going for. I right. think, but really impressive well, first playthrough. I, I don't know if it's it's about being impressive. It's more like if you're if you're like working with the game, if you're going along with it. Yeah, exactly. Really hitting, but if but then when you want to go back or if you want to do it again, and I've talked about this with other people, but. It reminds me a lot of Modern Warfare, the new Modern Warfare that came out, you know, in 2019. When I played that the first time around, I was really enjoying it. I, I found it really gripping, but it was because yeah. I was really working with that game. Yeah, that, like yeah. with with, with Mahler, like hiding oh, no, the no, no, fucking no, no, baby no, 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 wait, vagina wait. face monster around wait. the coffee table. That's obviously <laughs> not really that's going to break it and it's going to trivialize and make it funny. But with you, if you are supposed to do that, I mean, you're supposed to hide somewhere. Oh, there's I thought like, the idea like, was it keeps like it's over there, so you have to lure it out and go around the table, and that's what. I you're mean, supposed yeah, to you, you could you well, could probably do it that way too, but I feel like most people's when you're when you're dealing with like an unknown Aww. force like that, your instinct is just to sort of uh, at least I can speak for myself. My instinct was to just immediately hide in a dark corner and hope he doesn't find me. So from that, it was just well, kind of the, it was it was the unknown. I didn't I know anything bored. about this creature. I didn't know how it was going to react. I didn't know how smart its AI was. You know? Yeah, I, I was bored and annoyed and I just wanted to hurry up <laughs> so I could go play the video game. So I just was yeah, like, fair. fuck it. I just going to I just got to use the ultimate weapon in this game, a table and just go around. Yeah, and leave. I mean, in a <laughs> horror game, if I'm if I'm scared to push forward and I don't know what's happening next, it's doing a pretty all right job at giving me my money's worth. I would say. Well, but like, couldn't uh, someone get sure. to that point in something as simple as even like any game? Like, if I just had a black dot in a white room with a chair and then a big black dot, and someone described their experience that way, just be like, yeah, I mean, anything can really achieve that. Surely we need to talk more about like. Uh, yeah, so. Sure. To, to summarize the point, I think um, there are a lot of games that do that, that go for the whole thing of when you play it the first time around, as long as you're really sort of letting the game guide you you're gonna have a lot of fun but then there's a question about whether or not we're really taking advantage of video games as a medium if um this the experience is significantly hampered on the second time around there are a lot of games that i like that are kind of had this problem max Payne 3 is is a pretty clear example of that first time around really good replaying that game is quite challenging because of how much it slows down and stops um, but then again even that game has less of the issue because when it's game it's game like when the game starts it's just combat and then it's broken up whereas this game is kind of yeah more of the modern warfare thing of the gameplay itself often gets tweaked you walk slower or you move faster or you can't move quite as much in this particular area because they're really trying to guide you down the path. And if you're, but but then anytime you try and break the game, it just uh, uh, it like implodes. It can't handle 
doing things differently. Yeah, so has like to the be first chance. Well, and look what I just did yeah, here. Exactly. I tried to chase him in my the... boat, and it didn't do anything. So I know he's not going to get me because I'm not. I'm invincible in this portion. Yeah, it's, like, it's just kind of lame. When you can see that happen, it's like, oh, illusion shattered, which is which is almost that's kind of the the game that you're playing as a developer when you do this is balancing the illusion so, of how much you can or can't control. You mentioned the boat thing. Remember in Resident Evil 4, especially on a subsequent playthrough, when you know Del Lago's in the water, and you're like, ha ha ha, Del Lago's in the water, and you start shooting it? Yes, and I know then, what you're talking about. Yeah, and then Del Lago will get pissed off that you're shooting gunshots into the water where he lives, and he comes out and he eats you. <laughs> That's like one of those things that, I mean, so I hate cool. to keep bringing up Resident Evil was, 4, but good, like, yeah. eh. Yeah, oh yeah. no, I think I might have developed a hot take right now as I've been thinking Ooh. about this oh, God. point. You know what? I actually kind of I wonder if seamless the ability to seamlessly transition into cutscenes from gameplay has caused more harm than good. Oh, definitely. I wonder. Completely agree. Uh, I don't know if that's a hot from, take. Well, I, I <laughs> it guess might be. The whole, well, the problem is that it used to be a point of praise, especially when the eighth gen rolled around. Like, oh my god! And like Metal Gear Solid Five, it like transitioned straight into gameplay and stuff. Um, yeah. It's I become wonder, a crutch because, now so that things well, they want to happen will just happen. I think mm -hmm. the problem is it's kind of like, it's almost like what happened to Red versus Blue once they started doing animation. It's like, oh, a limitation's uh, been removed. You've removed I, the limitation on yourself. And I think what you can see with video games is it used to be like, like a clear example would be in Ratchet and Clank. It's like, oh, we're on the level. Oh, cutscene time. Like, here's our introduction. Yeah. Okay, now we're in the game. And like, once we get to the end of the level, oh, cutscene. Whereas now it's like cutscenes in the middle of the level. Oh, you've triggered this new area. All right, cutscene. Let's slow down. Wait, we need you to slowly walk because we need to do something here. We're going to make it so that you slow down. It's like a gift that's been handed to you that's been abused. Well, if you think <laughs> about it, right? <laughs> think think about um, gameplay is in a box and this represents like 100 gameplay units and then cutscene is in yeah. a box with cutscene as 100 cutscene units. I think what we all thought when they started to design this shit was the tendrils of game got into cutscene and it changed it from yeah. like 100 to 90 and 10 gameplay units got into cutscene. It's like, that's so cool! When in reality, it was the other way around. The, way around. the, the cutscenes the way, are infecting the gameplay. Yeah, um, by the way, I'm, I'm glad I'm watching this with uh, subtitles on. Because when I first had this conversation with Moreau, I could not fucking understand him without oh, subtitles. Oh, oh, yeah, I had no yeah. subtitles on, so and I this was is just what vaguely made me, guessing what he was saying. Yeah, this is what made me turn on subtitles in my game, because I generally don't have them on, because I just like to listen and pay attention and that sort of thing. I, I just don't like them down there, but now I'm like, oh, I need to have cutscenes on so I can understand this character I'm talking to. Oh, um, in response to some people in the chat, to reiterate, like I said, it's it's kind of a gift that's been warped because it's not an intrinsically bad thing to have it to have the ability as a developer to have cutscenes blend into gameplay and yeah. seamlessly. That's a good thing. Well, I think the problem is that the mentality driving the decisions is is um is not so good because it's the whole thing of um i think that as a good general rule of thumb it's a good idea in general to have it be oh gameplay it's like 100 percent gameplay it's all consistent you know exactly what you can and can't do no slow walking no uh hindered like movement no taking away weapons or uh abilities or anything like that it's like oh this is gameplay block all right now i can play the game and i think I think the reason why it's really useful is because sometimes this game hasn't particularly the problem of poorly communicating to you. It's it, it's it's your misaligned because you're like, wait, if I walk through that door, am I going to lose my stuff? Wait, can I go in this area here? Like, what can I do? Is this yeah. like part of the scripted yeah. sequence or am I in the game part? Because this game clearly has that break at several points where like for the first two or three hours, it's like, oh, we're in block and then once you get to the big podium and it's like oh you can go to these different places it almost like oh this is like the game now like we're in the game we've passed the tutorial the opening now we're in the video game but you're not like i misread <laughs> that because that's not what happened you still have <laughs> to go certain ways you still don't have that much choice and uh it's funny as well because this game is touted, I've seen loads of reviews say like, you know, once again, one of the best elements of Resident Evil games like the replayability, and I'm like, nah, it kills this game to replay it. 
Yeah, especially. Yeah. Narratively, I, of, absolutely. I will if never play this game again, ever in if my you're life. Play, if you're planning on doing a new game plus or replayability on a game, you've got to make sure that the increased difficulty and uh, all of your gameplay elements have some sort of uh, difference or challenge when you upgrade it. Yeah, like, something it, it, to master, be, something to get better at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the entire uh, the house, uh, Bella, whatever it was, that's completely ben identical. Viento. Any, and Beneviento, um, ah. it's identical in every difficulty level. Which means it all, gets worse. All, yeah, all all uh, adventure game stuff, like picking up you know clues and keys and doors and stuff like that, that's all identical. So really, it's only the combat that changes. And you, unfortunately, this has a lot of it doesn't even... filler in between each each you know combat sequence. So you got you get a lot of the same, you know. Resident Evil Four. The combat in it, you have a lot of options, and the arenas are a lot better designed in terms of their openness, and the enemies behave a lot better, and there's more of them. You have a lot more, there's a lot more to practice with, and to work towards, and to master. Um, you are, it, Resident Evil 4 is so replayable because of how efficient you can eventually get with fighting enemies and learning where good spots are and just getting better at the gameplay. And, That's the um, important part, is it's not even about whether the game is linear or not. A game can be linear and still be highly replayable because of its mechanical depth. Like yeah. Devil May Cry is yeah. a really good example um, of that. Yeah. You have to do the same thing each time, but like when there's combat, it's like, oh, well now I understand the mechanics a little better, I know what my moves are, what my weapons can do, and I can try and push harder against the game to see how, how well I can do. But here, I don't know that that's possible. Yeah, the combat in Resident Evil 8 is it's just so it's, mediocre it's, it's so it's bare fine. bones that's it it's, yeah it's, yeah, it's like a it's five just, out of you, ten it just everything yeah, it works it's like, i guess well you you put the white dot on their head and you click six times and that guy's dead and there might <laughs> yeah, be there six might times be a little though oh, you might the, be... the hard part is when it's a first person shooter i think it becomes difficult to um to I think it can become difficult for people to assess like whether or not how how mechanically sound or not it is because like dysfunctional first person shooters are difficult to come by so it's yeah. usually okay but what is the di you know it's like what is the difference between doom and titanfall 2 and like resident evil 5 uh, resident evil 8 and it's like well pretty significant like you could actually talk about how those games have mechanics and depth that this game kind of doesn't have and I don't know that there's any reason why this game couldn't have had stronger gunplay mechanics. Well, I, yeah. I feel like I the only time it? I feel like the only time it experimented was in Heisenberg's place. The rest of it's the same. And it's, it's well, not yeah, that much of an experimentation. Very boring. Like, oh, there's a weak spot wonder... on their chest, but they hold up their arm. There's a weak spot on their back. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. There's a weak spot in that you have to blow them up first, and then they reveal their weak spots. Like, where the hell was this the whole game? That's yeah. the question, isn't it? Is the issue with the mechanics, is the issue with the weapon variety, or is the issue with the enemies? And I think it's all three together. It's all, yeah, I, it's all of them. Yeah. Because I don't think that this game has particularly great diversity in terms of, um, in terms it of doesn't. enemies. I think Heisenberg is like the furthest we get in terms of really trying to change it up, and it's kind of not that great. It's just shoot them in the weak spot rather than the head which is what uh, i think that video. indigo mentioned this earlier is that um it, it feels like there are four different game directors yeah, for this yeah. yeah i feel like <laughs> it's the same people just trying to do the obligatory different segment okay yeah uh, well, I, 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 I could Sorry, believe, no. honestly, that the people who made the spooky but house I could believe that. Were, were told to just make that while everyone was doing their own thing. They were just like, just make the yeah, spooky yeah, because, house stuff. Yeah, because uh, the reason I think it's just the same people doing four obligatory things is because if the people who wanted to do the spooky house, re that was what they decided their section would be, and they put all of their effort and creativity, and that's what they oh, came yeah. up with. Yeah, you might be right, like, actually. Like, ugh. Um, so that's... I, I see a little bit of pushback, I think, on the weapon variety. So there are different weapons functionally, but the distinctions are not significant between a lot of them. There's not much of a difference between each of the pistols. Well, no, There's and not... your your I, enemies I your enemies level up be... as your weapons level up. By the, mm -hmm. by the time you're in I Heisenberg, think... your powerful guns are up against more powerful enemies. You never really feel like you're growing. Hmm, that's that's a good point. Um, I think that's a good, I, I, all I was oh, going to say ahead, was for me. 
all I, the clarification for people in chat is I missed a lot of the weapons because of my playstyle. Oh, also, <laughs> so, had, someone said they're better than I the had, mold monsters from Resident Evil Seven. Don't bring that up. Just, just <laughs> we don't need to be like, oh, sure, it's better than yeah. dog shit. It's like, no, this come is on. Literally, what about is him? It's, it's, it. it's also just and like it's, it's terrible in Resident Evil Seven. Like, why even bother? <laughs> and by the way, Resident Evil Four's weapon variety. It's not one of the game's strengths. You have the pistol, a TMP, which is a fast pistol. You have all the shotguns, which behave identically, essentially. They have minute, they're not very big differences. They're all basically the same. You Correct. have the rifle, um, and it's kind of it. That's what you're going to be using for the vast majority. Now, it has the advantage of having three different, very distinct grenade types. Um, but it's and for not anyone who brings just, up the mine launcher, the mine launcher is shit, and you know it. It takes up a ton of space. It's not. It's yeah. not useful. So it's the it's how the enemies behave and what they do and what you know your guns can do to them. You know that enemies will do these things, and I could shoot them, and this will happen, and that means that I can do this. He's running, so I could shoot him in the leg, and if I hit him in the leg when he's sprinting, he goes prone, which leaves him down for a while, which means mm -hmm. I could focus on these guys over here, or I could spend the time knifing him while he's down if he's the only guy left. I know that the shotgun can do this. I know the rifle can do that. There's so much... It's more applicable. The, the weapons don't have a lot of variety, but there's so much more you could do with them. But in Resident mm. Evil 8, it's cool. just you kind of just you just shoot the bad guys. So sorry, uh -oh. yeah. that's that's oh, no. why the rush play style can be bad for you. There are some things you can't criticize when you rush through a game. So if I were making like a really thorough analysis without any other help, I would agree that I would need to play it again and try and find every weapon. Obviously, mm. because if you haven't experienced everything, you can't fully criticize it. However. There is absolutely legitimacy to a valid playstyle in a game, like very significantly diminishing um, the variety that's available. To also, you. he's in a call with a bunch of people who did extensive gameplay, mm. multiple yeah. playthroughs. Nobody has corrected him. So why do you think that is? I have played with like all of the guns in this game, um, and yeah, outside of a couple, they're all just like, yeah, they kill stuff. The, I, I was trying to figure out in my own head, was like, is this a problem with the weapons or is it the enemies? Because the enemies, it's, the enemies. it's cool that the enemies, you, you have like, oh, the weird guy with the hood and the sword in the medieval area, oh, the wolf man, oh, the, the ones with armor and chainsaw, it's like, oh, there's all these different types. It's like, yeah, but they kind of all get dispatched the exact same way, so I don't know that I care. I mean, really, like, most well, of the games could cool be mitigated by just always having shotgun shells yeah, and just constantly fucking... The moment anything gets even, like, vaguely inappropriately close to you, you just fucking let them have it. It's not a problem anymore. I think... I think uh, you said something about the enemy variety. It's like, I do think it kind of yeah. goes hand in hand. Again, to go back to Halo, it's like, the sandbox... The, the sandbox alone isn't what makes that gunplay so fundamentally sound. It's... The combination of you have a bunch of functionally very distinct weapons, like incredibly distinct weapons that each do different things, and are effective against like five or six, well, it's more than that, but like eight or nine really well-defined enemy types that have unique attributes. Whereas here, they all do the same thing, which is come towards you, swing at you, and then bite out some of your health except for mm -hmm. the bosses, and they also kind of do that. There, There is a bit of variety, like, there definitely is, but I don't know if bosses count as enemy variety. I almost feel like that's a given that the bosses should be different. Yeah. And yeah. even then, they're still kind of bullet sponges. Yeah, kind of, Like, yeah. an enemy... Like, in, in the enemy... I think it's more on the enemy side, because what an enemy... I it is too. yeah. What the enemy does, and what they can do, will impact you significantly even if it's as simple as oh you're in the village and you've got some ganados in front of you but there's one in the back with an axe and he can throw that axe and that means that as as minor as that seems that has a pretty big impact on where you need to position yourself and what you need to expect to happen and if you there's can a shoot guy them a out of the air too yeah you, and you can shoot them out of the air you can you can shoot them out of the air you can keep strafing so it Knife doesn't hit them out you of the air. Hold on, what is going on in this part of the game what happened what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Wait, every, every, oh, just the gameplay on screen. It's like every time you run forward, the thing jumps on you and brings you uh, down into the ocean. Oh, um, well, the first death, it was really wonky because I'm crossing into the safe zone and I think he just tags my back and so it just counts as a death. The second one, I think I was just right. annoyed and I was sprinting forward and 
partially curious if you know if he's actually here or not is it literally and i think that's how it works i think if you just touch his mouth you're dead like it that's doesn't... one of my favorite things to yeah. do in yeah. horror games is like as soon as i encounter a monster that is either seems to be an ai or it's scripted or like i just can't tell i need to just run all of the tests to see what it can and can't do this is a not that's like my favorite this... thing about oh. games is like this and game so wasn't that like way, it when, when, when a that. monster really surprises <laughs> the shit out of me and exceeds my expectations that i'm like wow this is a great game with great ai but most of the time it's just a disappointment Dude, AI so is some of the most disappointing sort of like meta discussion of gaming overall. It's just like it's AI fucking is, hard to do. AI I'm sure. In this game is shit. Yeah, but like, come oh, on. Uh, <laughs> this AI, yeah, remember, yeah, remember the, the fear? Be a little higher. Remember the fear AI? Everyone always praises the fear AI because it's like, oh yeah, that AI was much cooler yeah. than basically anything in any FPS. Had like 120 had. different contextual fucking callouts to communicate with its teammates. Yeah, no, they they fun. yell they yell Steven whenever you shoot one of their, their, their <laughs> buddies, and, and they all have that makes you feel very sad that you had to kill these get, people trying yes. to kill I, you. I I got to sorry, I got to push back against this to a thing on like the the weapon variety. So to be clear, one of the important, th I, that's my new thing that I keep repeating, to be clear, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> when you, I, I'm going to have to go with Halo again, there is the pistol and then there is the plasma pistol. They're both pistols, but they're very different weapons. Very different. But in this game, the two pistols are the same. And you might be like, well, it's, they're, they're both like human made projectile weapons. It's like, all right, Titanfall 2. There's like the regular pistols and then there's the smart pistol. Which is very different from the other ones. Yeah. And you can do it's... this over and over again when it comes to the difference between weapons. Like in Call of Duty, there's not as much variety, but it's like you got single shot rifles, three shot rifles, and automatic rifles with different recoil. And this and that that's meaningful. There is a meaningful difference between a lot of the guns in like Battlefield, even if the broad categories, there's not too much of a difference between what their effect is on the enemies. I think. If, go actually, go ahead. And if you don't have a lot of weapon variety, which neither four or this game have, really, let's be let's be clear, then you need to make up for that on the enemy side. Yeah. Yes. How do those weapons affect enemies? What can you do? Is is there a difference between shooting the head, shooting the arm? Where like, oh, that guy, he's got a weapon in his arm. I could shoot his arm and he'll drop the weapon. Or oh. If I shoot him in the knee when he's moving slow, he'll go down to his oh, knees. If I shoot him when he's sprinting, yeah. he'll prone if cool. I shoot him in the legs. Um, oh. how can I how can I take advantage of my iframes? Um, you know, how can I the, add that risk reward system to it? How are these weapons applicable? I like if how there's it's not going to be a lot of variety. All of the most basic shit they could Someone have said you're wrong about the the weapons. I'm really not though. There's not a lot of weapon variety in Resident Evil 4. There, well, the no, Rex, honestly, a lot of the... it might just be that yeah. they're not quite aware of how ver like how much variety there can be. And this is part oh, of the yeah. problem of modern like, games. It's like it's almost tricking people into how shit... Like, this is not yeah, the potential of games. Four, yeah, four different kinds of guns. It's not a lot of variety. It's like, RE4 just doesn't have a lot of variety in its weapons. Like, the, all the pistols are practically the well, same. <laughs> all the shotguns are practically the same. All no, of the two rifles are... Rifles are weapon variety. To be honest, and that's like a linear action game, but Uncharted has better weapon variety because, like, each gun is pretty noticeably different from the other ones. Yeah, the but RE4 makes up for it with the, the enemies and how you I still how think... you fight the enemies and the things that you could do. Well, with that's those that's weapons. exactly the trade-off, right? If you have human enemies, it's like, well, they're probably mostly gonna, aside from armored dudes, they're probably mostly gonna be the same. So you need to make up for it with yeah. weapons. Resident Evil has an advantage. Because it's monsters. Yeah, and they can do whatever it wants. Whatever in a way. Any kinds, run. yeah. Well, and it's funny you bring yeah. up all because you're reminding me of how much I fucking love playing Resident Evil 4. When I see like three <laughs> dudes coming at me and there's one guy in the background throwing axes, I'm trying to hit them all in the head, and I know as soon as they get close enough, I'm gonna shoot one of them in the ankle, and then if he goes down, I can do a melee move to knock three of them back. But you'll do cool shit like shoot head, shoot head, shoot. You see the axe getting thrown, you aim up, shoot the axe out of the, uh, the sky, then shoot head, shoot head, shoot. And it's just like it's all reliable. You know what's really reliable in this game? The unreliability. When you shoot fucking enemies, expecting them to flinch, but they're in an uh, ultra armor mode, and so they just charge into you and grab you, and then you have to watch them for 10 <laughs> seconds as they slobber all over your arm. And see, that's what makes Resident Evil 2 really cool, is that the, the, so it isn't <sighs> inconsistent. Rags, we, got, we need to have this conversation Sorry. at some so point. So it's a Rags, each RE4 gun has a special upgrade. I know! And he's a, he's they don't really do any big, meaningful things, though. <laughs> so, for instance, 
the the exclusive upgrade for the semi-automatic rifle, it means that you can shoot it faster. It doesn't change anything about it, except you can shoot it at, I think, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 or 0 0.82 times per second, or its firing rate is 0 0.8, so it shoots slightly faster than a second, one per second. That doesn't change anything really about it, it just makes it better. The exclusive for the Red 9 is it makes it do, it does more damage. The exclusive for the TMP is that it does more damage. I think the exclusive for the... It, it doesn't change what the gun is. It just makes it better. All right? Like, it's okay if weapons aren't... There's not a lot of variety. It's okay. Those, those, because those it's the made up for making. with the enemies. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I'm just trying to be... And by the way, they're not practically the same. No, all of the shotguns in Resident Evil 4 are practically the same. All the handguns are practically the same. They have different, they have slightly different numbers attached to them, but they're all pretty well, much the same. None of them really does anything that the others do. That's don't the thing. Do. Some people were like, referring was wrong about the pistols because um, some are like semi automatic and some can be like fully automatic uh -huh. if you just hold it. And it's like, the thing is, I remember deciding this in the campaign. I was like, am I going to stick with the Lemmy or am I going to go with the 1911? And it's like, the 1911 can like shoot faster. And I was like, I'm not, that's not really something I need. I'm not like, I struggled to... with that decision. Yeah, I'm, I had I'm to like, because I was confused by the numbers, like, because you have, by then you have the Lemmy recoil upgrade. Yeah. So it says like damage 150 plus 30. Is, is one, is that 150 with the plus 30 or is it 150 plus 30? I see what you it, mean. The yeah. game doesn't make that clear. And it's, and why the fuck is a 1911 stronger than a Scorpion? It doesn't make any sense, but that's okay, it's a gun thing. But at the same time, right, if someone said, uh, well, that's the difference, see, they're different. I was like, that's not much of a fucking difference. Like, I, it, it's making it hard for me to choose between them, because I'm like, are they kind of the same? It's like, if the power is basically the same, but one of them shoots slightly faster, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, I'm... And again, I didn't need that for my pistol, so I just did I wasn't sure what to choose between. But if there was, like, again, the differences between, like, stuff in the Halo games, or even, um... I want to say like Bioshock. I'm pretty sure that the weapon differences Bioshock, in that were much more significant. Yes, because you could change yeah. ammo types, which yes. in some cases is only a difference like numerically. Like with the machine gun, you can put anti-personnel or anti-armored rounds in them, mm -hmm. which only, it doesn't really change them. It just makes numbers better for different things, which is, you know, it helps definitely have that in. But well, yeah, well, in the yeah, second just... game, the harpoon gun, you could set traps with it. Oh, yeah. And like, like, trip wires and stuff. So that's a, like, I'd that imagine. is essentially a new gun. Just not in infinite, of course, not in infinite. Had, imagine if, uh, though, this there was environmental like if you had hey, this fires incendiary rounds, and there are areas where there's like not just an explosive thing, but like maybe oil spilt on the floor that you can. I think set Bioshock does do that. Bioshock totally so does could, that. Well, no, but what I mean yeah, is, there's... what if this game did it? That's, oh yeah, well, that's, that's yeah, what yeah, I mean. yeah, no, that's yeah. too complicated. <laughs> um, so. I, I gotta push back on this. Someone said TMP is trash, though. No one loves the RE4 SMG. That's so wrong. The TMP say, is what? amazing. On my, so on my current professional playthrough of Resident Evil 4, I don't have a pistol. Isn't the TMP amazing the, for causing the, staggers? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So, so the TMP is amazing for multiple reasons, and we're gonna have a chat about it. One, you get a <laughs> shit ton of ammo for it, and it takes one bullet to do a lot of things in the game, like blow up barrels, that only takes a hit with anything. And obviously you're not gonna use a rifle for that. Hitting oh enemies will stagger them with only one bullet, cheapest to do with the TMP. Whenever you upgrade the capacity of a firearm in Resident Evil 4, it refills the magazine. I literally saved a clip today, <laughs> fucking today, because I started playing Resident Evil 4 because of how disappointing 8 is, of me, I have a TMP <laughs> with one round in it, and I upgraded the capacity to 250 so I got 249 free TMP shots because I specifically never reloaded the TMP for ages so I could get that capacity upgrade and give me all of that ammo. Mm -hmm. but the TMP is very powerful. Its DPS is good. If Speaking you want to bring of, by the ammo. way, sorry to interrupt. I love that the, 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 I love that the Magnum in every Resident Evil, especially in 4, is like, oh, upgrade the ammo capacity. You get free Magnum bolts. And in this game, <laughs> yep. it's like, no. No, you yeah, can't upgrade it. You Which can't is do that. Shame. Yeah, that, that, I was that it was just me off. I was like, okay, last time we did it, this time, yeah, no, I get it. I, that's always been a fun thing for me in Resident Evil stuff. Like, like, like that you get the free because like it, it always felt like the a little like wink and a handshake from the developer. Like, yeah, okay, you can have some free bullets if you upgrade. Yeah, yeah okay. And so you it's know, it adds something to the out. gameplay. Yeah, they, they I been know approached, that like, when should I'm... we should we take this out? And they're like, no, it's in, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. 
it makes me know when I'm playing through Resident Evil 4 and I have a TMP or a shotgun or something that I try to use all of the rounds in the magazine, but I don't reload so that when I get to the merchant, I can get that capacity upgrade, which will refill the magazine of it. And that's um, just, it's one of those, it, that in a, that itself is just, someone said, it, the TMP is trash. It's just a worse version of the Chicago typewriter. So the Chicago typewriter Wait. is a special weapon that it's it's a weapon you unlock for beating the game. That's, that's obviously super crazy. <laughs> the TMP isn't trash. What? It's amazing. Did you, did you it, know the, the TMP knife is, is worse my than favorite lightsaber? weapon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you know this stick is worse than a lightsaber? Like, yeah, oh. of course the Chicago typewriter is better. It's a special weapon and it costs like a million and it's infinite ammo and it's it's a it's a special weapon you get. It's like the rocket launcher with infinite ammo. I was just um, game breaker, yeah. I was uh, uh, trying to get my head around <laughs> oh, why the enemy enemy variety uh, seems so mild and eight. And I'm looking at a wiki right now. Literally half of the base enemies are exclusive to Heisenberg's factory. There's literally there's like I can believe it. Yeah. There's large lichens. Yeah. There's uh, the the kind of slow zombie guys with the swords of Moriaka or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's the, the flyers, and apparently Baby is considered a basic enemy. That's a weird categorization. But uh, that's five. And then there's the haulers, which are the guys with the headgear you have to shoot once. There's the, the soldat, uh, soldat Eins, which have the drills. Uh, then there's the soldat Zwei, which have the uh, red core in the back, uh, on back is its weak spot. There's the soldat Jet, which are the guys who can fly and zoom around. And then the soldat Panzer, who are the really tanky armored guys. Mm -hmm. So literally half of the base enemies are exclusive to the to last the last segment of the game, which makes me think that uh, especially Moro and um, and the Stronghold are very undercooked compared to uh, Dichemisk and uh, the Heisenberg's factory. But it seems like Heisenberg's factory really is the one place that actually kind of really just was fully fleshed out and what? really felt like a real game. game. Yeah, a lot know? of people Personally. were saying like, oh, I didn't yeah. like the factory. And I was like, well, I, I have good memories I of the factory because I... it made me think about killing stuff instead of just blasting through everything. How would anybody go to yeah. the factory? That was like the best part of the game. I, I heard from a couple of people who were like, uh, well, a lot of people said, you know, Spooky Mansion, that was the best part of the game. And looking back, no. I'm like, God, it's so weak no. compared. Mm -hmm. I think I thought the Eisenberg's this. factory is where things actually, where it becomes like a video game. Oops. The rest of the game is nothing like that at all. Absolutely. Yeah, and because Moreau, Moreau's is spectacle almost exclusively. Like, yeah. just, like, he's a big fish. You don't want to get eaten by him. You have to turn cranks, yeah. press buttons, and then yeah, pile. Course. By the way, talking about in intuitive, I guess I'm like, I've got too much gamer brain. I thought he was only weak when he exposes his inner Moreau. In this fight, that's why yeah. I'm like waiting. See not? No, you just keep shooting nope. him all the time. Really? I thought that too. Yeah. I would only shoot him when the thing right. would come out. Yeah. So, that's okay. like, wow. That's like a little bit of a plus and a minus uh, for this game. I I do like that because I've I played some games where I just load into an enemy and it's like, oh, he's invincible right now, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of a waste, especially for a game that you know where you're scrounging for bullets. I did. Yeah, when there's appreciate... no clear indication that that was like the thing you should have done. Yeah, I did appreciate that that bosses had very, from what I could tell, very few invincibility frames, which you know could you could argue is bad because you know makes it so you can basically in what game your RE Village uh, well, RE8. Yeah, I, I I did like that I wasn't wasting bullets on on I bosses. I couldn't tell. Like, well, yeah. I couldn't tell. Generally, I yeah, I I assumed if they were doing something special animation wise that they were invincible and I shouldn't shoot them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's hard I to tell, but I don't know if there's like. I don't know if there's like a bonus for shooting his head. I'm guessing that it's like more damage. Probably. I but assume. You, yeah. But you, but you can damage him uh, the whole uh, time, like, yeah. all the way yeah. through I, the fight. I wouldn't be surprised, but going through the first time, I couldn't take that risk. Yeah. No. Same as yeah, me. I, I don't like. Yeah. I'm like I know that it's gonna hurt. It is so video gamey. You know what I mean? He's like he does a move and then he exposes his inner part. You're like ah, I understand. But it's like no, you can shoot him all the times. You're like. Oh, I guess uh, I'm sure. I, I'm sure someone's gonna be like, he takes more damage on that part. Even if that's true, I'm just saying it's counterintuitive for gamers. It's just, n yeah. it's a, it's almost a meme, right? They expose the weak spots. Like you know this about like your players. Why would you? Why are you doing this? Stop it. It wasn't I mean, as obvious as like RE5, around. where like every single big monster had like a big uh, red glowy like pus, uh, pus, yeah. you know, zit or whatever you had to pop. 
Like that made it very, very obvious what you're supposed to hit and when they're weak I mean, and everything like that. One way to do it is just to have if they're invulnerable, just gray out. If if the boss has a health meter on screen, just make it gray whenever. Yeah, they're... yeah. That's, that's or it makes a noise, a ricochet noise, or so give me some kind of feedback to make sure. Yeah, um, I would say ricochet because, do... like, are you talking about having like health bars in Resident Evil bosses or like Dark Souls bosses or just? Well, animal? it's just that a lot of games that have bosses with health bars, when they go invulnerable, there's usually you don't even need to shoot them to figure it out. It would just gray out. It's like right. I just I wasn't sure out. if you were proposing that Resident Evil would benefit from enemies having health bars. I was just clear. Well, no, I think I think it would benefit better from just communicating clearly to people that shooting yeah. them wherever is is gonna hurt them i'll be honest though when i played mercenaries i really liked seeing health bars i was like oh yes. i like yeah, i yeah. generally that was like nice for that purpose I, when it was like speed runny i like health bars and damage numbers because they're they give me a mechanic that i'm like i i'm getting more feedback from the game yeah. the game's telling me more stuff which means i can act differently according to what's happening and i can but, be more precise in what i upgrade and min max more efficiently it takes you I, away I from being cinematic a, a but the oh, thing is, is, though, is that you could achieve it without HUD elements. Again, True. suck off Halo. Halo has it where if you shoot elites, once their shields burst, it's like, oh, he's close to death now. And then you can see, yeah. like, how how floopy the shield is will tell you how much health you kind of whittled away. Yeah, they and, get um, brighter I mean, and brighter until game, they pop, yeah. And I guess in this game, your option would be to show the damage physically on them and then well, show um, that enough times that people could read how much damage this enemy's taken. I mean, it's that's it. what Monster Hunter World does, and it's a fucking amazing game. You just oh, yeah, Monster gauge Hunter, based like, on how fatigued well, the Monster Hunter is. Yeah, and, and the scratches and they start to the drag. Yeah, they start to like, the, and normally they'd like try to strike you with their right arm, but this time they do it and they kind of like buckle under their weight for a second, like they sprain their leg or something. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And Mordhau, uh, if... if an enemy, if an enemy is too close to see their health bar in Mordhau, the more bloody they are, is the the weaker they are. So you I was gonna say for so um, like you're an archer, and you're like, oh, that's a bloody guy over there, and I'm an archer, I can finish him off. You could do this for so Moreau, maybe try to apply it in other ways to other things. But like if Moreau had like a green tint, and the more you take down on him, he goes yellow, and then red, and then he's oh near well, death. It's, it'd be easy for Moreau. Those yeah, big things red. on his back, as you damage him, more and more of them Break get popped and yeah. start bleeding the green stuff. Mm, so the yeah. less of those red things he has left that are still un. You know, undestroyed is the more you know you've damaged the red at some point though like his eyes oh yeah go he goes he, red he's yeah. like he like rages out and that's when you know he's dying um so, I, I gotta push back on this on the chat though someone said rags you're wrong about the guns being the same in re4 which is not what i said i said they're a, each weapon of its own type is effectively the same as its uh, counterparts um the first pistol gets a time times five critical chance to headshots miniguns have a specific use that makes them unique they never said they weren't unique um I said, so for instance, the five time critical chance to headshots, that doesn't really change anything about how you use it. It just makes it better at what it already did. That, that doesn't change anything. It's still like all the other pistols. It's just better. It does more damage for headshot criticals. That, that's it. You need to understand the point that I'm making. I'm pretty clear about it. Yeah. Like the Punisher, if... when you upgrade it all the way, it goes through five enemies to help out. But right? like, okay. Oh, okay, that's nice. You know, but it doesn't change how I'm going to use it really. Um, why um, why would it change into like a different gun though like if yeah, you're leveling just, up that one gun you would expect it to roughly do the same thing just better yeah if right? if i have to mm -hmm. shoot through five people i'm not using a pistol to do it if there's five people in front of me i can use a shotgun to blast them all it knocks them back and it incapacitates them for a fairly lengthy amount of time i'm not gonna pour pistol rounds into body shots because their heads are almost certainly not going to line up but their bodies more likely will so why would i why would I use pistol shots for body damage when I could blast them all into the ground um, to with talk a shotgun about, like, in one piece? The more meaningful differences, like we were talking about earlier, so if you had all the weapons available to you when fighting a big daddy near some uh, oil patches, you'd be like, I can use my incendiary shotgun rounds, I could use the, that obviously not only start giving him burn damage, but also the damage that comes with it. And it's like, well, what about the electricity rounds that stun him? Like, should I move to that to stun him in the fire to then deal more damage over time, as well as just the shots damage that are doing in general? armor piercing pistol rounds like that's probably gonna you know uh it's more pen but it's, you know what i mean like there's loads so, of thoughts that go into well, i've got a way to describe this that's really great because this same guy says yeah all the guns are guns the go shoddy shot what kind of argument are you trying to make it's pretty clear what my argument was because i said it explicitly but i can elaborate even further um and someone else says i don't get what rags thinks would make the pistols more unique so um a, well yeah. here's the thing <laughs> Pistols are, you already mentioned the um, Titanfall thing with a smart pistol, but you know what? Apex Legends, 
love it or hate it. Let's go through here. There are currently four shotguns in Apex Legends, I think. You have the Mozambique, which is now a six-round shotgun, and it has good handling. Uh, it, it shoots a specific spread of three shots. It shoots one up top. It's like a triangle of three shots, right? And then you have the uh, you have the Mastiff, which shoots in a horizontal line, but if you ADS with it, it'll choke the spread to hit a more precise point. You have the Peacekeeper, which shoots in a, like a figure eight pattern, but you can charge it up and it tightens the spread for longer distances. And you have the Eva 8, which is a, a, a fully automatic, that you can use it semi, of course. And it does a different, its own kind of pattern and it's, it's kind of standard. But even then, all of them feel very different and they all impact enemy players very different. Um, the Mozambique used to have a hop up called Hammer Points, where if you had broken someone's shields, they would do extra damage to enemies health and it was very powerful for that reason um which doesn't really change much of anything about the gun itself but it changes its application so you're going to be using it in a much different way than you used to before so that just as an example shows how different shotguns can be radically different from one another and their usages can be from one another so that i hope that helps get the point so across he wants 500 games in resident evil game why I don't know what you mean, you mean by that. <laughs> you, 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 you're like, how did you get that from what I said? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, dude, I'm, I'm going to be honest. So I, said those I'm, are fantasy I feel guns. Like most, most of the EFAP audience is like fairly, you know, like good faith and like tries to understand what we say. And then there's some people in chat that just like want to fucking... We just want to just, just want to... Yeah, just want to assume that we're just sitting here with our mics going... Eh. Well, it was it was weird, right? Because Fringy, Fringy already referenced the pistol difference in like Halos. That's a great example of just how a pistol could do completely different things. And then well, someone's yeah, just like, I... "Wow, what is it you want the pistols to do?" It's like, yeah, you know, I'm different so things. Some pistols and evil. killing floor. Someone, someone also mentioned killing floor too. All of the pistols in that they feel very, very different. The guns in this don't they don't feel different, but the the way that they impact enemies and the shots it takes and how they handle. And it just, they all feel different and they all feel unique. And we've said, um, again, granted, that this know. is applicable to a lot of games, that a lot of the gunfire, like, you know, Bioshock Infinite would be an example of where the games are kind of <laughs> like in this game, where it's just like the guns are all kind of just, yeah, they're kind of just, and if someone went, well, no, they're not the same. One of them's like, shoots faster, one of them shoots slow, one of them shoots more damage, one of them shoots bigger shot. you're just like, yeah. It managed to achieve like, having guns. It's like, okay. You know, funnily <laughs> enough, because a lot of the defenses of the game so far have been, but it's Resident Evil, I'm going to pull one as well, but it's Resident Evil, this is science fiction, you can do things that aren't realistic. Oh, yeah. oh I was waiting for weapons. someone to pull that out. Like, don't reference Bioshock, they get to play with, like, fantasy elements. I'd be like, this is fucking Resident Evil, don't this even go Resident there. Resident Evil, yeah, you can have crazy weapons, and again, it's, it, because... To, to, it, it might help with the example. It's like, so what is the difference between the pistol and the plasma pistol? It's like, well, first of all, the plasma pistol doesn't reload. It has a finite amount of it like has an overheating round. mechanic. Yeah. yeah, it has an overheating mechanic instead of that. So that changes the way you want to use it. It has a charge function that you yep. can use to shields. That's another thing that you can it do also, for it. Yeah, and when you charge up, it also has a light homing in mechanic as well. Mm -hmm. And, Comes and in a little up, bit, yeah. You know, to not make the see like the pistol seem crap, you can scope in with the pistol so it's better at long range. That's and like, remember right, the differences you... between bullets and plasma. And yep, can I can I just highlight right, that's two guns, not five hundred. That's just two. Okay, that's just two. Yeah. <laughs> like if, and then if we could do that for each class of gun, that's probably what like twelve. It's like that would be great. How about twelve? <laughs> Someone yeah, said you I might think... want to use a different word than feel. So. I can I can certainly I can certainly elaborate more because someone seems to be very upset I used the word feel as if that's actually a forbidden word in this podcast or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I, I it's bizarre. We've talked so, about gun Rex, feel. We both feel the only so fucking feeling... cucklord SJW feminists use words about uh, emotions. Okay, clearly. Okay. So in a game, you can't actually feel anything other than your peripherals when it comes to the physicality of it. It's fooling the player's brain into thinking it feels a certain way. So a the way that a gun sounds, the way that its animations work, and most importantly, I'd say, the way that enemies react to being hit by it, or the way the environment reacts to being hit by that weapon, are going to constitute game feel, in quotations. Right. Um, 
obviously there's not going to be they like you're not actually holding it you know yeah you um, want to do as much as you can with your fucking digital medium to try to convey some sort of sense of like presence because you can feel feeling you i yeah i don't understand is the feel tactile oh no it's not tactile the only um, part of the game that is tactile and this adds absolutely nothing to your conversation rags let me be clear is yeah, the uh it. the element of the controller and whether or not it's well made or cheap and shitty like yeah, i know those absolutely. people yeah. those people who have played on those rock candy light up fucking Ugh. led controllers like they'll, that's you why know, it's that. a meme that we have it's an old one yeah not a lot of yeah, people yeah. use it but <laughs> someone was def uh, Someone, I think it was for Fallout 76, I think. Someone had described the game as tactile in some way, which doesn't make <laughs> any sense for a video means. game. Yeah, that, that requires elaboration. That's such a, that's such really a nothing word. Here, that's yeah. like when you try to refer to a song as being like having really good highs and you go, oh, it's really bright. It's like that doesn't inherently on its own mean anything. It just kind of yeah. sounds really it cool. feels like it so feels different guns like will feel, yes, so muddy. Basically, there are ways to simulate feeling in a video game. Audio, Absolutely. the effects it has on the environment mm -hmm. and enemies, the animation quality, the how sounds. it affects your ability to use it constantly. The weight of things. Uh, yeah, how slow it is to pull out or put away. Mm. Uh, it, it simulates the lightness of a gun. The animations so I, help as well. Mm -hmm. yeah oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. is is it a big chonky gun that has very deep sounds that you shoot slowly yeah if a big gun um, is a punch it's like oh shit that's chonky that's got that's a nice gun and again yeah, it's, it's hard to quantify how how well something's doing it it's like why is there a reason why for instance the reload animations in like the new modern warfare just feel better than the ones in the old one it's like i don't know i feel like it's it's hard to say it's just a combination of a lot of things animation sound design everything yeah the animations are more they're a lot more realistic. They're a lot well. well I mean, realistic yeah, sums it's, it's it up in a way. Really. Yeah. When when you put in the magazine, you put it in the way that it would actually go. You hear the sound of the outside of the magazine rubbing against the inside of the magwell. The release. You hear the sound of. Mm -hmm. I love this. The the different sounds about yeah. when you shoot the last gun in the magazine, your gun will make a different sound because it's not loading another bullet into the chamber. Is that or it just the sound? No, a lot of it was a lot of stuff. No, yeah. not really. That's just how guns work. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then there's the and then there's the 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 sound of the slide locking open if it's on an applicable firearm. And we uh, should we should say that this things. does affect how the gun plays too. There's yes. a uh, a famous um, story about people make when they did the Wolfenstein enemy territory game. Did I say the last right? gun in the magazine? I meant the last round in the magazine. I didn't mean to say the last gun. <laughs> I, gun. I do what you the meant. Yeah, yeah, the gun. The gun gun. It fires guns at people. Hey, I was, I was talking about the enter the gungeon where there's a gun that shoots, there's a bullet that shoots guns that shoot bullets. That's awesome. <laughs> also, sorry, M, really quickly, I'll let you speak after this, but uh, Rags, have you ever played uh like the time crisis games in the arcades where they actually have yes. like a physical mechanism on it where you shoot and it goes, hush -hung, hush -hung. Oh, like it yeah. moves like so, a counterweight. Oh, yeah. That so, shit was so, so the cool. Guns, yeah, and those arcade games with the, the yes. little light plastic guns, some of mm -hmm. them do have that little weight in there that goes every time you shoot. But just the, the different construction of the guns and how they fit in your hands is different. So the Time Crisis one will be different from the House of the Dead gun and that yes. will be different from the this gun and that gun. And, yeah, and it yeah, that uh, really was yeah. like tactile. That genuinely did give a, a different yeah, sense some were of like shit. presence in the game. And you can yeah, feel oh, that they were just shit. Yeah. Some of the, some of the some dinosaur of the best, shooting uh, ones. <laughs> some of the best uh, gun porn I've been able to experience was uh, uh you were playing any VR games, Rags, like uh, uh Hot no, I, hand grenades. I haven't played um, any VR I, games. I if you if you can get that set up, I'd recommend it. Um in Pavlov, every single gun gun has its own feel and unique reloading mechanics. Yeah. So like if if you have a uh I, I don't want to make, embarrass myself, but like it may be an MP4 or like a TMP. You have to like pull back the, the slide lock after loading up, you know, and you have to like, you know, press the eject button, pull up the, you know, uh, put in a new clip, eject you know. Yeah, my favorite is it. with the revolver. So, you press and, a button and, on the controller to open up the chamber and then you tilt it upside down to empty the empty shells. You feed in each yeah. individual bolt from your hip and then you and then you fucking uh, slap so, it to one side to close it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can thing. do all sorts of cool tactics. Like, uh, for example, you can you know, pull out a, a knife with your left hand yeah. and rest it on your, 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 your gun hand on your left hand and then like use it to stab people if they're close, or you could even pull out a clip on your left hand. So when you're out, when you're, you're out of rounds, you can eject your clip and you have a clip right there. You just smack it in. And so it's a quicker reload. It's actually really, really interesting. 
and that's probably like it's you like know, the most advanced actual... kind of shooter mechanics um, ever yeah yeah really really I feel cool like stuff. if i'm getting to that point I might as I I just go shoot my real guns. Oh no 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 no! I because knew you, you were going to say you that. You can have all kinds of environments <laughs> and enemies in VR, so of course it would still be different. Yeah, you can't really shoot people in real yeah. life without problems. They're, and you can have stories. You can have literal stories yeah, going on. Really rich. I guess I just I can do that with normal games. Also, though. yeah, chat. He said clip. It's okay. It's okay. We know. He, he no no. Guns, the but... way the, the way he used clip could be appropriate. He could be talking about man liquor clips like the Grand has or the the, the standard rail clips that anything did else. I, did used. I say clip? Or I'm so say happy clip? that everybody's gone mad mention. about clips because it's you just said funny how many. No no. How many, how many, he said yeah. clip. He was he wasn't referring to a specific firearm, so he no, was yeah, like, it, incorrect no, I, because you eject clips and you replace them with other clips. I'm saying uh. I'm saying that I'm glad that just the discourse surrounding, you know, guns and media that we're finally, you know, it's, it, we've been talking about it for a while, but See, like I the th fact that people are now just saying, like, clip and magazine are not interchangeable. Please, movie, stop calling magazines clips. I, I think Rags has done a good job of pushing it. forward it's gun discourse through EFAP. I think it's been... I feel like you could describe good. living in, like, the current time by just saying, somebody got mad at me the other day. You could just end the sentence there. <laughs> That's most of that. my online experiences these days. I but, assume uh, yeah, I know I, I, so I had like a five hour podcast about something. I didn't remember what it was, but somebody was like, wow, you use clip instead of the word magazine. Did you know that, you know, clips are only relevant to so-and-so and so. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, no okay. problem, I, really, I just assumed the whatever deal. the correct one was for the situation with your gun that you meant that one. It didn't matter if you were using it right or not in that moment. I forgave it, you, but chat did not. It, it, it's a, it's a third of the it. syllables. Yeah, everyone I, I know the names. proper fucking usage of clip has never fired a gun in their entire fucking lives outside of Call of Duty. It's wow. such a pedantic thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've <laughs> actually fired so guns. Silly. I've fired revolvers. I've fired, uh, I actually have a Glock in my house. Like, you know, I, I, I know some about guns. I know it's magazines, but clip is a third oh, of the yeah. symbols, or a third, a third of syllables, I should say. It's you said symbols sure because it has less syllables than syllables. <laughs> Uh, exactly it's got less it's, so it's le less letters less syllables a lot easier to say so it it, it creeps out sometimes um, i know it's magazine as somebody magazine. asked in chat what it is so magazine is what you mostly see in most modern guns it's the it's where all of the bullets are in some kind of like metal contain you know they're in a container and yeah. you can't generally can't see the bullets whereas a clip well the is like when all of the bullets are attached to like a metal um like kind of a metal um bar well bar is not the right word so like an m1 garand that's a clip but a yes, magazine a like what clip, you would yes. find in like an ar-15 or a or like a, a glock that's yeah so different. almost all guns now use magazines because magazines are yeah. much cheaper and easier to manufacture now and they're generally better um a, a gun can have both a magazine a lot of guns especially in the early days so the um the SMLEs, that everyone's probably familiar with, those have magazines, but they are fed with clips. Um, generally, well, it's, you're just talking about guns at this point, but yeah, generally, um, it will all, always be magazines. Older guns are more likely to use clips. Um, and, and I just looked it up on Merriam-Webster. They now have, uh, as definition to a device to hold cartridges for charging the magazines of some rifles. Also, a magazine from which ammunition is fed into the chamber of a firearm. So now... Because people have gotten it wrong for so many years, it's literally just synonymous oh, no. with magazines. I don't accept that. <laughs> no, no, it's no, almost yeah, like no, words do change. Not gonna yeah. We can push back on that. We push it's back on like words wrong. do change, right? I think, yeah. It's yeah, really they have to, because that's how language works. But we can still <laughs> oh, but push back. I thought back. words don't change, remember? with the. Um, I think we need to have standards the, uh, with that. I feel like we need to have standards with that. There needs to be some I don't sort disagree. Of oh, wait, no. Democracy is not what we need when it comes to the definitions <laughs> of words. <laughs> I was about to say oh, well, yeah, because you see it in action with, like, literally, it's like, well, democracy we, would dictate. Yeah. Everyone's using it wrong. It's this like, is, everyone's using it wrong. Yeah, let's keep it that way. Right? Let's yeah, keep it as everyone's using it wrong. Yeah, not that I'm, everyone's To be clear, I'm not arguing right. that's how it should be. I'm just arguing that's how it seems to be. No, it, that's mean, how it frustratingly is. And we just simply push back. Yeah. I think yeah. it was Oxford, yeah. or uh, it was Oxford, or one of the other major uh, dictionaries now have an accepted definition of literally to also mean figuratively. I, so, yeah, yeah. 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 Words I, that mean I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't accept that a thing can unironically also mean its opposite. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. No, yeah. fuck off. I'm not doing that. Yeah. That's, so Rex so means that clip is literally the same as fucking... magazine. No, they're different. I promise you. Met, li, How yeah, could it different. be an antonym and a synonym at the same time? That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it's it's like if they were to put. 
Yeah, it's like if they were to put a idiom into the dictionary for uh, could care less. You know, you ever heard of somebody well, say it's, that? Oh, I could, I could well, care less. It's, you know? it's only a matter of time because <laughs> and the so fuck many up is like say, I could care less. If yeah. if someone like yeah, people get that one wrong. If someone was like, "Hey, Muller, are you alive?" and I go, "No," and then someone in the dictionary goes, <laughs> "No," can also mean yes. I'd be like, no, 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 I meant no. Just tell people what sarcasm is. No, no, you don't no, need no, to do no, the no, rest. No, no. <laughs> I, it... I would like to campaign, though, that Merriam-Webster and, like, Oxford put no with the U-G-H yes. there. Kind of like yeah. the doll. Doll, like where Homer had it. And then just have <laughs> doll, a yeah. picture of a plague doctor next to the word no. Um, I saw Jay Long going asking us to talk about it, so I'm going to mention it. Why are there so many random stacks of flour throughout the entire world? <laughs> That's another beta I... mechanic. Yeah, what's did that any... about? Did, did any of you guys actually use the flour? Um, I saw a mauler use oh, it. Never, well, well, at the I beginning, never, and then whenever I saw them, I tried to use them just for the fun of having flowers spit around everywhere. I was like, I want to. Yeah, I never it. used it in my actual game. I, did, didn't I never them. did either. I didn't. I used it precisely once uh, in in the the basement during the first big lichen attack <laughs> on my second playthrough, mm -hmm. uh, Village of Shadows. I went down there and I'm like, okay, this is pretty much rich. And then I noticed there was an armored like large lichen down there, and there isn't normally like on the lo lower skill levels. And I'm like. Oh shit! So I used that one flower bag there to shoot it, and he's like, "Oh no, flower, my one weakness!" And so I was able to run by him. That's like werewolves are infamously <laughs> weak to flower. Did you, did you did you play a new game plus Village of Shadows or? Yeah, I did new game plus. I I I don't know how it's gonna be possible to play that yeah. uh, without any of the upgrades. You like, run this guy away from me. everyone. I actually, would like to to move into that because man, I I don't know how you do it. With with a clean slate, I, it seems impossible to me. It's yeah, run, it's it's run everywhere. Seems intense. Yeah, because they don't give you enough bullets. Like I, I, I was measuring how much. Unless they have some sort of sneaky algorithm where they detect how many bullets you have and give you more if you need more or less. I don't know. Maybe that that's as a possibility. I don't think the game's that smart enough to do that. But, uh, I I I was using a lot of bullets on guys. Like uh, on standard, yeah, I use about yeah, I was just good like, five it headshots. Chest. Five headshots or whatever would probably kill like a normal, a normal lichen or whatever in standard, but I was putting a good, a good full magazine of my, uh, my uh, like twelve or fifteen shot uh, pistol into them to kill them on I, Village I, of Shadows. I, so. I, I had the assault rifle. Hey metal, shut the fuck up! Shut up, metal! Hey, metal, metal, shut up! Hold on. Oh, uh, hey guys, sorry, what? I gotta go. I'm really, I'm Dude, really tired. I was really interested now. in what metal had to say, actually. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying I gotta go. Uh thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna like pass out spontaneously. Uh, okay, bye. Oh, oh, I love you. I'm sorry I had to do that to you. Uh, this does uh, get to this does mean I get to see what metal was gonna say. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, so it's it's a net positive, yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. All right goodbye, guys. Bye. Right, bye, Chad. Bye. 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 See you. Good talking to you, man. Bye. Have a good night. Yeah. All right, metal. Go uh, metal. Yeah, so I, I had the WCX on my Village of Shadows playthrough. And that is like four terrible name. For the uh, for the difficulty, you mean? No, I mean for the calling the gun the WCX. Oh, Why? Okay. I I don't know. <laughs> it's called the WCXY. Like, Jeez. I just like, why would you? You could have called it anything. You could have called it. You called it the WCX. Five syllables of letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so uh, that, that that bad boy dude's four hundred damage. So I think it was like sixteen rounds per normal enemy. And it's like, fuck. like, how the fuck are you supposed to do this where you only have the Lenny in the beginning? So, yeah. This, so, is the game, are you supposed to play the game coming back with upgraded guns and infinite ammo and shit? Because what's the, what it feels like? Why? Because you, you can can't start you a can professional totally... game in Resident Evil 4 as a new game plus. You have hmm. to play it from the beginning as normal. In, in yeah. RE8, you can totally start a new game plus, um, and it keeps, I believe it keeps all your up, your weapon upgrades and all of yeah. your weapons and all of yeah. your ammo. So well, yeah, with that, I'm, it's, it's perfectly possible. I didn't play through the whole thing, but without yeah, any but infinite just... ammo or any, any cheats whatsoever, I was able to fairly, you know, a little challenge, but get through yeah. um, about half of uh, Ditchamask's castle. I, I didn't fight her specifically, but I think I'd had enough ammo to do, to do that. It just, it was tough. You know, and, and every enemy was much tankier, but I don't know how you'd be able but to do still, it as little ammo yeah. as you could with an unupgraded pistol. That'd be, be yeah. Pretty... If someone said I beat Resident Evil Four on professional, I was like, oh, that you know, good. That, you know, it's a tough game. And then they said, oh yeah, but I just I used my infinite ammo Chicago typewriter from my other playthrough. I'd be like, oh, that's not impressive at all, now is it? 
Yeah, because it, yeah. it wasn't that much harder when I got the infinite assault rifle because that thing still yeah. melts through the enemies basically because it has like a super high fire rate in eighty fucking rounds. Oh yeah, that, that's insane. I was I was watching how fast that melted through guys. Then you can eventually get like an infinite ammo magnum or whatever. And I mean, at that point, yeah, at that point, it's probably easier than the starting playthrough. Yeah. It's just, so. uh, I, I have no idea how it was supposed to work. I'm pretty sure there's already speed runs out there on the highest difficulty on a clean slate. I, I mean, when you have, when you have people who can beat Ranks, Dark Souls with a banana, I, I, I can believe that anything's possible. Anything but, is possible. Uh, I, there, there's an achievement for no health runs. There's an achievement for mm -hmm. uh, knife runs. I don't know if there's yeah. a... Uh, maybe they expect people to do that on casual, but so, I so, do not know if you could actually finish a knife run, for for example, to, on you can unlock the laser, the uh, the, the light, uh, lightsaber. Yeah, I get what oh, to clear yeah, this. I can see that. Maybe. Let's clear yeah, this up in chat because it's already popping up. The Chicago Tripod requires a new game plus to use. I know you can't do that, which is why I said if someone said they did that, using it as an example. If you start on professional and Resident Evil Four, it has to be a new game. Not a new game plus. Yeah, and so. theoretically, so if I went over someone's house to play it, and then I, I do a first playthrough on professional, and Rags is like, "Wait, that was your first? That's that's wow! Like, good job." And then I go, "Yeah, I had like an infinite weapon." Be like, <laughs> exactly. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would not be impressed by that. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. And this is why I said if um, that you can't actually do that. Yes. Plus, you can't even start the game on professional. You have to unlock that after beating the game. Regularly. And I saw someone like so. being like, "Oh, why are you complaining so much about the grab? Grabs are in all Resident Evil games. Like, guys, that's not, not even like a good. This. It's not even a good counter. Like, stop doing these shit counters. Yeah. Like, I it's feel bad. Bad thing is in all these other games. Yeah, it's, but yeah, they're like, not even like that. Like in well, Resident Evil the Four, thing. there's that's... a meaningful difference when you get grabbed between when you get grabbed in Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil 4, if you get grabbed and you kick an enemy away, it will make certain enemies stumble back if the guy you kicked away comes into contact with them. And if someone grabs you from behind, you could elbow them and it might take their head off. And I will take tapping uh, A and D back and forth, back and forth to, to quickly get out of the cutscene and possibly get myself a benefit of it hitting other people around me. So like if they added that in, that'd be fucking way more engaging. Than me being like, well, time to go to sleep for ten seconds. I'll be back. Yeah. So, you, know, see you, so guys. you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, we're gonna talk about how Resident Evil Village, at least off of memory, I don't think it has any quick time events. It doesn't. No. no Wait. Well, what, what, what was um? What was Fringy gonna say though? It was about that subject. It has. Uh, it has press. Huh? Press What's left that, to gas. You you have the press the key to gas. That's kind of. Oh a quick yeah. Time event. That's basically. A, that's a slow time event. On the uh, grabbing <laughs> thing. That's a take your time event. Right? No, I was going to say that I know that Resident Evil 2 kind of has a mix of that thing because if you don't, if you have a knife, you can use that to uh to like counter somebody if they grab you, like if it's Mr. X or a zombie. Kind but of, if you yeah. Don't, it's the same thing as here, except it actually takes a lot longer. Um, the uh, animation. So, uh, I was saying there's there's no no quick time events in Resident Evil Village, which I'm fine with. I generally don't like quick time events. But I think they can be used well. Um, this sort I'm of gets like into because I know that in yeah. Resident Evil Four, there's like that knife fight where yeah, <laughs> fuck you that. Only have yeah, to fuck like the knife. Yeah. seconds to react, and you have to press two buttons at the same time. <laughs> so I hate that. So Resident Evil Four does them well, and it does them poorly. <laughs> so the boss fight, that's quick time events. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. If I was going to remake that game, that wouldn't be in it. I'd find some different way to do that. Um, but the bold, let's say you're running away from a boulder, right? If you're running away from a boulder, and this sort of gets back into the whole quote-unquote feel of a game uh -huh. and peripherals and stuff like that. So what you can use, if you're telling the player, this is mash this button as fast as you possibly can. Go, 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 go. Mash it, mash it, mash it, mash it. Survival is at stake. That can be used to, in a way, mirror the, the, str the pure stress and exertion that a character on screen is doing. Mm, Leon yeah, yeah. has a boulder behind him and it's chasing him and you have to run. Just run. Go, 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 go. Run as fast as you can. And you as the player, you are sharing in Leon's uh, Man, you know, his stress. I don't know if by... I agree with this. Uh, it's fair enough. But I, I like the idea <laughs> of if there is an no, event just like that to mash that button as fast as you can so that you can get out of that situation. But I, I mean, hate it I when it's used as a substitute for like an actual fight, like the Krauser fight. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> yeah, what's the what's the counter for you go? 
so the problem that I often have with button mashing is that it can sometimes be like actually physically painful, depending on how much or how, how yes. fast oh, you need it's, to be I can pressing understand. Like, it's pretty chill in it. in what Rag is talking about. It's not. It's I can. Not that long. I can definitely understand that. Um, I know in Resident Evil Five, if you're playing as Sheva, I believe you have to. I, or wait, it was Chris. I think it was. I think it's Sheva where you are at the final fight in the volcano, uh, fighting against Wesker, and you're holding onto a ledge, and you have to fucking mash that shit hard. And if you fail, you have to do it again, and now you're fucking tired. Yeah. So I totally understand that, and I think that's a matter of execution. Well, I also wish that the arrow that points to the button would match the speed you required to at least, if you know what I mean. Instead of you know if they go boop, like animation, you're like, oh my god, how fast do I have to press this button? It's like, oh, you have to go boop, 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 and he's like, oh, uh, I think the yeah. translation errors can happen there. I guess it's so, just that yeah, I've I, I had bad mean. experiences with button mashing to Me where too. like yeah. I can't play a video game for a little while because it was that bad. Um, I un I understand, yeah. Um, I th it I th I think it's Mario definitely an execution Party, issue. Like, holy crap! <laughs> How many Mario Party things had to use like the pressing the same button over and over and over again? Yeah, if you're a developer, so like here's the thing: I am totally fine as I opened up with. I am totally fine with Resident Evil Village not having quick time events. I will mm -hmm. if I never see another one again in my life. I will not a single tear shed. <laughs> but. I do think if you're going to have them in your game, there is definitely a right way, quote unquote, and a wrong way to do them. And Resident Evil 4 is a good example of both of them existing within the same game. <laughs> um, but I'm, I, I but uh, yeah, I, I totally understand how they can, you know, be bad. Totally and yeah, um, I wouldn't want it yeah. to be like ridiculous. Like if something grabs you in this game, I think it would be a benefit to the game if it, out of W A S and D, just tapping them in any way, shape, or form will get cut the animation shorter and maybe give you some form of a bonus compared to not doing it at all. At least I have something to interact with. Yeah, I, I kind of like uh, what Fringy was getting at. I, I don't remember how it works in the original RE2, but in RE2 Remake, there was actually a whole kind of metagame with uh, being grabbed because uh, you could get grabbed by a zombie and if you didn't have a knife at all, you'd just get grabbed, he'd, he'd munch you, then push you away or whatever, right? Or you'd, you'd push him away. But if you had a knife, knives actually had durability, and you could opt while being uh, about to be bitten to stab him with a knife. Yeah. And that would not only knock him off you, but it would also lower the durability of your knife by a good chunk. But that would be, it would, it would not only knock him off you, save some health, and also damage him a bit. And uh, so, but it was also, it was a, it, you know, risk you, lost the, you lost, yeah, risk reward because you'd basically... Uh, lose some of your knife durability for future times you got bitten and or times you just need to use your knife because the knife would eventually break. So that was a nice a nice little meta game where you were kind of like, okay, I I don't want him to bite me because I'm actually really low on health. So I'll, I'll use some up uh, my knife up to be able to knock him away. And that, that gave me a lot more. I felt a lot less helpless, you know, a lot less uh, annoyingly helpless. Like the game is still very punishing, especially at higher skill levels. But I didn't feel like I oh this is a cutscene I'm being bitten for ten seconds I'll just you know grin and bear it think of England kind of thing you know I actually <laughs> felt like I had some control over it. Well, yeah, that's so... the thing is, unfortunately, in this game, the substitute for that knife system is the blocking system, which is yeah. so fucking stupid. Like as a mechanic, I think I think it can I think it's so hit and miss um, the blocking mechanic, but. Um... Like it, and well, before I move on to that, I just want to say about what we were talking about QTEs. So it seems like there's, and I'm surprised I didn't think of this earlier. There's like two different kinds of QTEs. There are two categories. One is attrition, or like just just sheer brute brute force, and the other is timing and accuracy. So a a, a an on screen prompt occurs, and it's this particular button, and you need to hit that button or that combination of buttons quickly before the window's done. And the other one is mash that button as much as you can so that something can happen. And it's like two pretty distinct categories um, in their application. So something to consider, maybe. But, you know, it is yeah, what it like, is. Like if you had some well, sort of prompt where like if a zombie was mid-strike, there might be like a, a quick prompt or whatever, and there was like a dedicated knife button where you could like stab his arm or whatever and block an attack. I mean, I guess that's kind of like the block. Well, yeah, like, like the mechanic. Leon kicks and punches are all QTEs, aren't they? They're pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're, every, they're technically every QTEs. Single, yeah. 
That might be the Every best QT in the game, to be honest with you, because I didn't even think of it as a QT. That's how much I like that almost, mechanic. It's it's a QTE in the sense that like it's it's just a use button. It's a, it's a very generously timed use button, essentially. And you know, like yeah. you know it ahead of time, and you're specifically going up to an enemy that you know you can press that button with to do the thing you know will happen. So I guess it's technically a quick time event, but it's probably the reason why you don't even consider it a quick time event or think about it as one. Yeah, the the grab system in this in RE8 really drove me up the wall, especially actually in this in this exact sequence in the uh, the stronghold because I actually fell down to the bottom floor and I was fighting the zombie uh, the lichens there, and I noticed some really annoying things like if I was on uh, under a lichen and he fell down on top of me, he could immediately initiate a uh, like a grapple attack without me ever having a, an opportunity to block. And so you, they'd fall on top of me and basically instantly initiate an attack uh, animation slash cutscene or whatever. And that was really driving me crazy. I mean, regardless if that's realistic or not, you could argue about that. But it, it really kind of just come out, out of nowhere. Somebody uh, like in from above would just immediately start that a really annoying bite attack. And yeah, yes, I would way prefer um, if they just hit me. Like they just scram. Yeah, yeah. just swipe and hurt me, and I go ah, and then it takes like half a second, and I'm back to playing a game. And it can take I don't the same need, amount of health. I don't need tiny movies to play whenever I'm getting attacked. That just goes on and on and on. Oh, it's so boring and frustrating. I, I yeah. kept being shocked. I kept so like expecting that I would be able to press space to get out of it, and it never happened. You know, yeah. like yeah. It felt like you would have that moment there where you'd bite into it and be okay, break the attack. It's so long. He's so much more engaging, I swear. If as he goes to bite in every kind of animation, you get like a, even a one and a half second window of pressing spacebar to bring up the pistol and shoot him in the head or something. Mm hmm. Anything. Literally anything. Just something for us to interact um, with, I swear. Yeah, so someone is saying, someone's saying Rags has some ridiculous takes. I'd love to hear what you refer to, because I think I can defend them all pretty well. Hmm. Um, and someone else said, or, you know, keep your distance away from the monsters instead of being in point blank range. <laughs> you really, so, you can't do that. So, yeah, first off, this is basically saying we'll just never miss. Um, two, th this game doesn't give you a choice. This game is very claustrophobic in a lot of sections and a lot of sections. It almost uh, annoyingly so how small the areas are to fight in. Uh, and this game definitely wants to give the feel of these enemies are in your face and wow, isn't that tense and spooky and scary, which it's in a way it lends to that partially. Um, so you can't just, especially on your first playthrough, not have enemies close to you as if that's just a choice you make. And it's a switch that you can just flick on and off. Right. Um, it's like, well, this gun is bad. It was like, oh, we'll just never miss with it. Or just a lot only, of this only spawns, get all headshots with it is essentially a lot yeah. of this spawns try to flank you without you necessarily realizing too. Like it's it's part of what they do with how they get enemies going around. Fucking mercenaries is an asshole design for that with some of the spawns. Um, but I mean, um, in the campaign, there's plenty of it where they they'll come through a window or they'll come through the floor. You know, the, the, literally like this game tries to create scenarios where they'll be right next to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, even I'm, the base enemies take quite a bit of uh, pistol shots without flinching, so it's actually quite a yeah. Quite difficult the flinching to keep them seems in. to be really, mm -hmm. really inconsistent. Resident Evil Four is pretty good at this. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good at consistency in what happens when you hit people. Um, but in Resident Evil Eight, there are times when a lichen will be in your face because I chose to let him get close to me, of course. And I'll shoot him four times in the chest with a pistol, and he won't even stagger, won't even flinch. Yeah, no, they and just walk straight up. Sometimes, to you. and sometimes I'll hit him in the head, and they'll stagger and flinch and, and go back. Sometimes I'll hit him four times in the head, and an enemy won't react to that in any way. Sometimes I hit him a couple times, and they'll flinch and stagger back. I felt like the but, block didn't consistently block grabs as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then you get access to Chris later on, and it's just such a, a like night and day difference to have guns yeah. that work. Like the guns get, just work instead of these airsoft pistols you're using throughout the rest of the game. And yeah. then again, that brings up the point: where the fuck is Chris? <laughs> the entire game, because he, yeah. he's able to mow down an entire you know horde of of lichens and like nothing. And what was he doing the entire time? If, if got a lot of boulders to punch. Oh, <laughs> but that that, that boulder punching bastard. <laughs> Oh, yeah, did any one of you guys figure out how to do the counter thingy at all? Uh, so, so there's a challenge in the game for doing that, for executing yeah. a counter push. Uh, when I beat the game, 
And I think to this day, I have not done that. I have never counter pushed. I've I've, I think I saw the prompt a couple times, but it, it never occurred to me as a thing to do. I it just didn't. I never never done it. Never did, I did it. Did it by accident a couple like once I think, and I got that. Yeah, I can see it happening by accident. Never never figured out how to do it, but that seems to be like a key thing you can do because there's sometimes we're just you've got so many so many lichen lichens coming at you and you can't literally can't push them back quick enough. So it seems like that's a, a key mechanic you have to master if you're gonna even attempt to do the higher skill levels without a ton of ammo yeah. or infinite ammo or whatever. But uh, that was something I couldn't quite figure out, and the game didn't tell you at all. There's like, oh, press the press the block button sometimes, I guess. I think I only did it by accident. Yeah, um, we haven't really talked about the blocking mechanic much. I'm fine with I consider the idea. It, yeah, it's pretty but... consistent mechanically, but it's super counterintuitive. Again. Yeah. Um. I I think uh, depending I'm not sure because you might have to remind me. So uh, if you block with a bigger gun like a rifle or a grenade launcher or something, it blocks more damage. Is that correct? I or is that is that a stat that. tied to each? I don't know. I, so I couldn't. Well, I couldn't all I know is you. it I makes know. more sense. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's it. That yeah, make more um, sense. But I think that it might just be a standard uh, percentage uh, difference because it doesn't block the entire attack uh, unless you do the counter. Um, the, the standard block. Wait, so doing a, a certain... counter get, what do you mean? Giving, uh, doing uh, the uh, counter. I think the counter attack blocks the entire attack completely. So, uh, but the... you have to do that after the attacks already hit. So you, do you gain health back after it hits you? I, I think that I thought that the counter to stop the attack. Am I wrong on that? I could be wrong on that. I, I thought that the, it's almost like a, um, block counter where you, you press the space bar right at the right time. And you you stop the the attack and then knock the the person back. You there's actually achievement for it. Um, otherwise, I think if you just hold hold block, you'll deflect part of the damage, but not all. And I think that uh, there's a, a few like two meals you can you can get which increase that block damage uh, difference. Um, but uh, you still do take damage even when blocking. So it's not a not a cure. So I googled just to find out. Just like R R E eight block whatever it is a counter attack this brainlet liam ferguson don't know who the fuck that is uh, he, pur he purchased he, he purchased an article he he wrote an article called resident evil 8 how guarding changes the franchise formula oh, so God. so like wow. so that's so that's so fucking stupid i have no idea why you thought that and then thought it was a good idea to put that into text and publish it and then a site thought that it was worthy of paying you for it what an incredibly stupid thing to say how dare you write about video games but it doesn't change. I I barely use it at all, because instinctively you're like, oh, don't get hit. Not if you're gonna get hit, put your arms up. Yeah, you. Uh, well, and that's the thing. When you get used to using it, it's great. Like it 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 deflects so much damage that you would normally get hit by. But it's just like I don't know, man. When a giant hammer or axe or mace is coming to me and I put my arms in the way, I'm not expecting to um, <laughs> do well, if you will. Yeah, I I'm fine with the mechanic existing of if you're going to get hit, you can instead of trying an all or nothing to evade the attack, you just accept a little bit of damage, but you do take the damage. I'm I'm fine with that as a mechanic. It just it's seems like, really unintuitive when you block with your hands and yeah, you're getting yeah. hit by axes and scythes and swords and stuff. It just doesn't that doesn't seem like it worked to me. Um so according to IGN, which is, you know, the paragon of truth, um Apparently, if you block, you can immediately tap, press space after that to deflect and like push that him back. It was not communicated clearly in this yeah, game. It was not. Yeah, so, I, I don't remember. I never a prompt did it for once. That. Yeah, I no. think it was F. Was it? It's F, right? I only ever got a prompt that said space to kick back or something, uh, but I never, I never understood oh. what that meant because when I hit space, I just put my arms up because that's the same. Yeah, yeah dude. As I someone, know, just, someone said, like no, it's not RGN. It was. It was Game Rant who had the article. It wasn't IGN, though you'd be forgiven right. for assuming IGN. Game Rant's the culprit. That on it's interchangeable. What's the difference between? Yeah. All and, and, <laughs> and one one thing I thought was I don't know if that was, that was intentional or if it was just you know part of the part of the thing. But the the boss fight with Heisenberg later on, where you're in that weird like you know tank thing where you've got the machine guns and the rockets mm -hmm. and, the, and the chainsaw blocker, <laughs> you can actually hold up the chainsaw as a block while you're shooting. Yeah, so, it makes you slower though. I guess, yeah. 
just kind of um, why not? I just find it funny that you like actually it. have a, a locked blade fight with him at some point. So he'll he'll hit you and you'll lock it into the. It's like what? Yeah. How, could he not have just avoided <laughs> that? It's in a very specific place. Um, also, also and, Heisenberg uh, supposedly built a a uh, uh, an alloy or like a polymer metal al uh, composite tank. Somehow, oh, we'll, 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 we're getting there. We're close okay. to that part, I think. Okay. Um, <laughs> someone, there's some people mentioning in chat. It's like, how is it the blocking will reduce the damage that Moreau's acid does to you? And it's like, yeah, it doesn't make any fucking <laughs> sense. But at the same time, blocking didn't stop me from dying to the stupid flies. It's like, I just don't know. I, it's, it's what I mean about playing this game or games like this. It's just frustrating because like you just kind of have to go with it. Don't think. And like, we should never be in that position with gaming. We have enough of it in movies. Please. So the I I was I did a bad game rant. I was I was on the game rant tab that I had open about that stupid one about guarding. And there was the the next article that it suggested for me was why Resident Evil Village's Ethan can't die explained. Resident Evil Village's protagonist Ethan Winters survives through a lot during the course of the game and here's why he can't die. Sweet. Except he can and it's called losing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the fail state of the game, is when y you, you die. die. <laughs> and, wow, two banger articles in a row. Fucking brilliant game rant. You really, you really are not scraping the bottom of the journalism barrel to pump out these articles about popular game. Oh, this was made seven hours ago? Jeez. Yeah, well, they got it, they got it, by Mode they? And, you said. Jeez. And I'm guessing, Rags, their actual explanation literally amounts to he's made of bold stuff. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Yeah. That's what we got from the game. So there's so many articles, so many articles on uh, just any topic where basically, like, they have a very simple question, which you could literally explain the answer in one sentence. But you'll have to read through, yeah, half literally the article half the page is about yeah. previous games and who the it's character like, is and it's like, what this happens. Is a really interesting the, question. Yeah. Resident Evil Eight is a 2012 game uh, developed by Capcom. Yeah. So this so shit. This, why would you do this? Like, I see this more and more happening when I play like a grindy game. It's like, why? Oh, I wonder where I can farm this item. Why did then... you? Why did they just say that? Why? The Look at that. Fucking doesn't stop the flies. <laughs> What? I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna read a super chat out ahead of time. Blocking doesn't stop the flies because you wouldn't block an that wouldn't block an AOE. You wouldn't block fire. You'd run away. But if an axe is coming at you, it's better when it hits your hand rather than your head. So here's the thing. Oh. If, so if it hits, but if it hits the hand, the hand's gone. Also, I referenced but, the fucking acid. How are you getting around but, that one? But Ethan's hands are invincible. You can't defeat us. Yeah, hands. As we, yeah I guess he he's invincible when we don't need a fast state. Yeah. Why would you even bad. like? All you had to do was say, "Yeah, it's pretty dumb." You didn't have to try to defend it, dude. Don't just stop, okay? Some stuff is just retarded. We can just say that, and then we move on to the next topic. You do not need to defend the block mechanic in this game as something that makes sense. Please don't. Blocking swords with your with your arms is a solid idea. Just. Don't. I, I love the idea that he's I, like, if you see fire, you run away, but if it's an axe, you put your arms up. It's like, fucking no, I'm running away from the axe, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, me, like, an, an axe hitting my arm, that's a fail state. And I'm gonna <laughs> that is a that fail at state. All costs. <laughs> wow. You make right? fringy, holy shit. <laughs> and this is like, and if it, <laughs> he's just done. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm actually kind of running away. What? Like, <laughs> running away is the suboptimal choice. <laughs> if, if you are running... choice is losing your fucking hands. So, like, I guess the only way this sort of works is if you have a long gun, if you have a rifle or a shot, you know, some kind of a, a metal or wooden gun that you're using to block this blow. He's like, yeah, I can see that making sense. Sure. But a lot of the times you have your pistol out and... You can't parry a sword with a pistol. You know, it's just yeah. And as as someone just pointed out, you can't open the doors. As someone just pointed out, by the way, anymore. the first time you were grabbed in this game, they bite half of your hand off, and for the rest of the game, you block those attacks with your hands. Oh yeah, and, oh, and right after how you, fucking right after stupid you, is that? I one thing that really stood out to me was uh, <laughs> right after you fail to save the uh, the daughter of the the guy who turns into a lichen. He's like, uh, what's what's the line? He's like, 
why do people keep dying on me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever. And then, and then he smacks his left hand against the, a brick wall yeah. or brick window. <laughs> and I'm like, ow. <laughs> 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 It was like, oh, that's, that's my floompy hand. Don't do that. Because <laughs> hey, he uses his floompy hand for like st stuff you need like power for, like strength. Like when you yeah. get the, the little grappling thing where you slide on yeah, thing. You're right. Uh, he's like, I'll just go use my left hand. I have like three fingers left. It's going to be enough. <laughs> <laughs> They're really strong fingers. Where? <laughs> they were strong hands. <laughs> <laughs> so bit of me for that. Um, yeah, good. Good. <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, we... wait, wait, wait. Same guy has something else to say. It's still better if it's your hand is gone rather than your head. But you so make what do you it think sound is... like the only option is your hands or your yeah. head. You can fucking See, run away. How did you create that yeah, scenario, what happens... but not for the fire scenario? The fire scenario, you can <laughs> run away, but the axe one, you can't. Like, what? How did this happen? And and plus, like, what do you think his neck swing with the axe will mean? Now that you're, yeah, hand, you know you're armless like... and <laughs> writhing in pain and stunned and in shock. Like, like what? What happens sorry. now? And you didn't account for the acid. Yeah, this is what I mean. Like you shouldn't have done this. <laughs> you just you, Urias is going to go axe. through your hands into your head. This is not a good. You, no. Yeah, a lot of these. Yeah, like a sword. Like, well, yeah. Feel, if you're gonna, yeah. These things are enormous weapons most of the time. It's like huge. <sighs> Oh my god, imagine how painful that would be too. <laughs> Blocking the axe hands too arm. strong. <laughs> um, one, of, one of the things I wanted to mention about Moreau's place as well, because we're kind of past yeah. it now, but uh, just just one last thing. You remember when you guys collect the crank? Um, when yes. you when uh, the metal was the one that pointed this out, and then I did it myself in my own playthrough, and I was like, ugh. Oh yeah, so, I completely forgot about that. Did you bring it up? The crank is there now. If you guys remember, you have to crank it to move the thing across, and then you can jump across, sort of thing. Uh, yep. Um, mm -hmm. so you walk up to it, and you might think like, use the crank, and it's like you you pick up the crank, you're like. I pick. Uh, okay, oh, yeah. okay. Put the crank back in. It's like you can't. It won't let you until you walk over to the ladder and click it. And then Ethan's right. like, "Hmm." And then you go back to the crank and you can put the crank in. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was really dumb. <sighs> I thought it was broken. I was like, "Okay, so now what?" It's so stupid because your 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 goal here is to move these things so you get power to so, the uh, to the water release station. Yeah. I Damn. noticed this guy, you shot him twice and he staggered, and then it had to take three more shots to stagger him a second time. Mm -hmm. Just. Yeah, well, yeah like, I mean, I... the game feels like it's full of that. Like, I just don't rely on anything. It's more so just, well, you just go with the flow, like I said. Yeah, yeah, because I remember that earlier RE games were very methodical. Like, you know, you knew that a certain specific amount of shots would take down a zombie. You know, you knew the animation where zombie beasts will be alive. A lot of games are the same way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're, it's, like it's, they're aware it's... of the enemies, their health, and the bullets you have. They know what those yeah. numbers are. In this game, they didn't care. <laughs> that's just... that's See, this uh, that's one of the key parts, I would say, when you start to, like, learning a game and getting better at a game, is when you start to know, all right, I know that this gun will kill the enemy in this amount of shots. And so that's something that you learn and you can use. That's how you, like, progress and get better at a game. Um, like Killing Floor 2 is a great example. I have this gun. I know it takes this many shots to shoot this enemy. You know, bang, 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 move on to the next enemy. Bang, bang, bang. I, you know, you, you learn that. It's one of the things that differentiates a new player and an experienced player is learning the game's mechanics and then improving the effect that you have on the game because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, especially in a game where every bullet counts. Like survival horror games are all about scarcity, where, you know, I've got uh, three sh shotgun shells left. Uh, 10 bullets and one, you know, uh, grenade launcher round. I got to make sure that I use the bullets for the, the weak zombies and run past them, uh, save the shotgun shells for tougher ones. And then, you know, if I, if I, if I see a, a liquor or whatever, I have to, I'll use the, the grenade launcher. Cause that's like, you know, the, the, the big bat. Everything. So like, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of like resource management and stuff like that that goes into there. And it just doesn't seem like most of the enemies really, you know, maybe I'm just terrible at playing the game, but it doesn't seem like most enemies had a really rhyme or reason, like how how quickly they died, how fast their head popped, just oh. seemed to be fairly random. So. To, to, the perfect example, what's on screen right now. So this was me, and I, I think, Mel, you didn't even meet this guy in your first playthrough, right? Uh, Yes, I completely missed that guy. So uh, after after the you, alpha, the alpha? Yeah, yeah, you can meet the alpha after you've gotten, I think, the four <laughs> flasks, and... I didn't realize that what was happening. I just thought he was a different skin for the wolf thing. So I got really confused. I, I was like, why is he I taking so long to die? This guy. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if I fought this guy. Or oh, look oh, at that as well. Invisible uh, wall. He yeah, won't follow you. I've uh -oh. maxed out okay. his distance. Yeah. But look, he so, doesn't really want to kill you that much. Um, I die here because I'm constantly convinced that my next shot will kill it. I'm like, it's gotta be on like no health left because this is lasting yeah. way longer than anything else. So, like, some mistake has happened. I must have missed a shot, and I die because I get too close to it. because I'm just like confused, and I think someone in chat was like, "Oh, that's like the alpha. He has way more health." And I was like, "He's the alpha," but there was no, there was no. <laughs> Dare I say fanfare? There was no arena. It was no. he's just in this field. It's like he's the yeah. he's the and king he looks, one. He's really I easy mean, to, to of... avoid, and he's really he's really uh, like you can just take a right instead of taking a left, and you don't have to ever fight him. Yeah, yeah I know I this. Remember, I don't remember fighting this guy. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think uh, 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 Mel no missed him too, and I was That's confused. No I was like, why is he not dying? Like, I... is he like the boss uh, when you go to get the Beneviento treasure at the tomb? You put the the placard on the thing and it opens the treasure and there's that no, big he, hammer guy that you just optional. shouldn't yeah that you just i i so what i did was i saved and then i went to go kill him which is easy because he has another invisible wall shocker yeah. and you can just yeah. exploit that to kill him easily and he can't do anything about it and he is insanely tanky with yeah. how much how many bullets he can take and then i got his treasure and went to go sell it and i was like Oh, this isn't worth it. I'd rather have the ammo. And so I just reloaded the one where I didn't fight him and carried on with the game. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me, Rags, uh, with the alpha. I, I turn, took a left and I'm like, ooh, this looks like a, this isn't. Oh, that, that and turnaround I, and I attack. Up, oof. And, and then I, uh, I, I eventually killed him, but I used like probably two thirds of my ammo to, to kill the alpha. And nice. then he, he drops a, he drops like a, a trophy. And I'm like, oh, cool. Go back to uh, Duke, sell the oh, trophy. And and I'm up to 450,000 gold, and there's nothing worth buying. Yeah, so um, I was, was yeah. very, By the I way, was like, okay, I'd rather have the ammo than, than the money at this um, point. At this, at this point, I felt betrayed. I was like, I'm not losing all my shit because you randomly drop this thing on me that's completely different than what I understand it to be. Like, fuck you. Yes. Man. Yeah, I, I hate that. If shit. you hadn't, have, if you hadn't have told me that was a boss, I wouldn't. I would just would have thought he was one of the four-legged guys. Yeah, and you saw how much I packed yep. into him. I was just like, I was. I don't yeah, know what's happening. I just thought, why is he dying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a, a weird how they spoon feed you the uh, the restocks were very odd because, like I said, I had four hundred fifty k, and then I just decided to skip this guy because I, I didn't figure the bullets were worth how much money I got. And then as soon as the next uh, time you see Duke, while you're in the um, uh, Heisenberg place. He's got a bunch of new stock, and I couldn't buy everything. So it was just like, okay, I don't know. Money means nothing to me. I just sometimes I have enough, sometimes I don't. So it was just, it was just kind of weird. I think they could have spoon fit it a little bit more consistently. So you always had something to kind of yeah uh, if these, save up for. Because these enemies, they're just they're just ammo checks. Is all they are. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just ammo checks. Do you have enough ammo? All right. Well, I, you can kill the boss. They're just ammo checks. It's like if an enemy is like an MMO, if an enemy is a, a DPS check, essentially, where you just got to do it's just there. You can only beat them if you just do enough DPS in the phase or something like that. It's very, very not fun. It's, it's just in all games. It's just I don't sound like broken record, but just fuck the insanely tanky enemies. I fucking hate it. It's so bad. It makes your weapons feel anemic and it's not fun. And it's often used to create difficulty when difficulty can cre be created in much more intuitive and interesting and engaging ways. <laughs> yeah, I'm, but I hate these, just, yeah. I'm just annoyed fighting this thing, you can tell. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just annoyed he's not dead. I, I just, I feel betrayed, like I said. The game has been lying to me. That's the first enemy I encountered where I noticed the, like, the areas of the enemies where they have, like, invincible, uh, invisible... Oh, yeah. really? This is the first one? It's, yeah. it's very well, pronounced with this guy. At some point, so I just killed everything so quickly that I, I had no chance to to notice that that's a thing. But with with this one, I just went into the hut. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna hide in here, and he's probably gonna smash the windows and shit. And it's like just runs away. It's like, huh? Yeah, they have a real, really Shoot big problem. Door. He comes sprinting back. Like, oh shit! This time, and then he goes away again. It's like, oh, well, yeah, what we're doing okay. I they, see. they have a lot of problems with large large enemies, like large enemies can yes. go through doors. Um, Actually, one of the big werewolves, not the alpha, but another another werewolf, like one of the first werewolves you fight, like when you go to the through the uh, the four the amount four of key or spent. something like that. Um, I, I actually got him on the roof. He actually followed me, jumped up on the roof, but then he got stuck on the chimney and <laughs> just literally couldn't get down. So I was able to just you know shoot him until he died. But yeah, they they really There's needed some... to kind of streamline how the the large creatures moved because they'd get stuck often. They wouldn't be able to go through doors. 
And that really kind of defeats how I scary can, they are. I mm -hmm. can do one more to add to that, where there are there's a segment, I forget which one it is, uh, the game's starting to blend together, where you have one of the four-legged guys, the quadruped lichens, yeah. and they have the animation where if you're in a building, he will, like, reach through, he'll put a hand on the wall and, like, reach through in there, and he is clearly small enough to fit through the to gap. To go through the door, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he just won't go in. He, yep. he just won't. They They did all the work to give him a special animation for showing... Like he's trying to reach in the building when he obviously can fit in the gap to the point where it's absurd and funny. But yeah. doors seem to stymie a huge amount of enemies in this. Like yeah. they just didn't even bother. Now, enemies in Resident Evil 4, they will climb up ladders. They will jump out of windows. They will go through windows. They will go over waist high gaps. They will, um, they will clamber over obstacles to try and get you. Um, pretty much anywhere you can go, the enemies will follow you. Yeah. But in this game, I don't think the flying lichens, they can't go indoors. Um, on the way to get Louise's treasure, uh, in kind of in this section where Mahler is now on the screen, mm -hmm. there's a lot of the flying lichens uh, around the burned down house. You just you can just go inside of the little the, the little shed where you meet the two at the beginning, and they can't get in. They they just they they have legs, oh, wow. they have we wings. Just, they they just can't get in. They they won't get in. You can just use that as a checkpoint and then run away. Um, yeah, I, that's I, the wolf thing. Give you a bonus damage on that guy. Yeah, it's wolf's bane, right? But the thing is, I it's because like, some people are like that's what you're supposed to do, and I'm just like, what if I don't want to use the ammo in the wolf's bane gun? It's fucking my best gun. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What I if I want to use bosses? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, the one thing that really kind of threw me for loop is the first time you see Arias and the first, like an attack where he, he comes up to the house. If you go inside the house, he'll like bang against the house and the whole house will shake. And I'm like, Oh no, I better get out of here. But no matter how many times he hits it, I don't think the house ever falls down. Yeah. So it's I, just uh, more just, the, just I had the same thing happen. Spooky. And I was like, I bet you he won't break in. Like I was sure of it. Cause this game can't take that. And which is <laughs> funny by the way, because uh, some people point out in resident evil seven, uh, near the beginning, when you fight Jack for the first time, you can try and circle him around the main dinner table, but he will eventually smash the dinner table. It's like, hey, yeah, that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool, but Resident Evil Seven's opening like a couple of hours. That's that's where the good content is. The rest of it sort of peters off. Yeah, a bit, but um, it's, it is definitely. But like, imagine they're that. definitely front loaded for quality. Imagine that you you have these little obstacles you use against the enemies, and the enemies like actually react as though they're doing it in real life we're like fuck you stop using this yeah. to avoid me yeah enemies in re4 did it legitimately better but it's it's so much older and it was the first like the experiment kind of in the first time experiment that was done with that technology level back then it does it better than modern games like this do and this this like you just saw in this gameplay that staircase is that's the invisible wall what are we going to do if, if the player runs into the safe church that's right here? Oh, well, the enemy, they just turn around and they won't follow the player. And that's it. Boom. Wash your hands. Toss that problem away. Wrap that up in a neat little bow. Just, it's problem solved. The, the enemy just won't go there. Boom. Problem solved. And that'd be a great opportunity. Uh, one of the most uh, surprising moments of, I'd say, like Dead Space was uh in in a safe point where you're like okay i'm good now i can look at my inventory i can pull up my map and everything everything's in real time so it's like okay i'm safe now and then at one point in one of the safe points uh a vent or something pops open and monsters come in it's like the one time where a safe area gets invaded and you feel really really violated because it kind of like broke an unspoken rule where oh this is a safe point you can't you can't hurt me here uh, i think that's it, the it, only time it happens in all of Dead space, because yeah, that's in Dead Space Two. That's after you go through the zero gravity area where you have was to pull it, out the fires. Two? I thought it was. I think one. it was it been two. because the enemy that comes through the vent, it's one of those puking guys. Okay. I think it only happens the once. I might be misremembering. I haven't played these games in ages. I could um, swear I had it when I when I streamed one, but I, maybe I'm mistaken. What? Um, but uh, it was a really good maybe. moment because it kind of it kind of violated your safety there, and kind of like you know it it, it gave it. It gave you a little bit of a of a, a scare because no longer you didn't have that reliable information that oh you know this safe points are always safe like Dead you always have that. Dead space it's a weapons table. I I think I, I think uh, I think uh, huh, alien alien isolation did that a couple times where like you could look around while you're at the save point to make sure you're safe before you put your tape in 
you know, there's always that you you want to play, you want to play with people's expectations. You shouldn't make them feel too safe in these kind of games. So I think if, that would be actually a great idea. Like, oh, I close the gate, you know, nobody can get around, and then and then the, the wolf just jumps over it. Something yeah, like that. Could really, that that's cool. an, yeah. So could someone say that that's an inconsistent gameplay mechanic? Uh, what specifically? Sorry. Um, a one particular safe zone having not actually being safe for enemies can attack you there or um i it, think do you think that would fall under the same thing if, if when we, people say that's it's inconsistent gameplay mechanics if we're looking at like a game like this and one of the times you're right next to um you know the duke something can just like attack you i'd be like oh that's weird in the rest of the game that can't happen so i feel like we're getting mixed signals here but i suppose someone could argue that like nah you're not safe in any area with the duke ultimately you may think you are but you're not actually like hmm um i think it's be... unless there's like a really good story reason like i think in uh, alan wake or whatever you always i think you save under a big bright lamp so you're always in the light so you're safe mm -hmm. from the darkness yeah, yeah. The, the creature of the darkness like in that case if somebody just attacked you then i'd be like okay well what's the point you know you well i'd say this countering what we understand be the mechanics right or even the yeah because yeah because i'm fine with it if you if there's no actual reason why enemies can't follow you into quote unquote safe zones yeah. and you've just never seen them do it for whatever yeah. reason just probably coincidentally and so you assume that these safe zones are safe zones when there's no actual reason why um i think i'm fine with it then but if you were playing like this game and you're in a duke room and an enemy comes inside of it all of a sudden and it, it it would seem like it almost seemed like a glitch well i would actually like, wonder if it's part violates... of the story i'd be like are we about to get a cutscene? uh it might be the case yeah um that's what i would assume hmm. i mean yeah the one time in dead space was 100 percent intentional it's supposed to scare oh yeah you. it's supposed absolutely. to, it's supposed yeah, to keep, supposed keep you to. off guard so like in those cases where it's like hey we're gonna play with your expectations we're gonna like could it ever happen think, again you, you think you're safe but now you're gonna be wondering Every time you're in a safe hey, game, are you truly safe? Well, you know, it kind of puts that it, fear in you a little bit. Really do it once, defy their expectations once, and then yeah. the effect lasts so, throughout the whole game. Well, if if it happens only the one time and never again it happens, um, is that... I don't know how I feel about that. Um, well, it can achieve an effect hmm. in the player Definitely, without yeah. actually compromising. I know what you mean, right? Because it's almost yeah. like, well... But it's like now i'm just on edge because i know you could do this but you're just that was only a one-time thing just to make me question my safe zones forever for the rest of the game because i know now it's possible yeah i don't know i, mean, I guess yeah i don't know how i feel about that i think it's a it can, it can be very effective like uh one of my favorite games is uh, i think it can be very uh, super oh yeah i super think it Metroid, can totally be effective i almost think that Metroid might be the, the problem with it the SNES, like uh, you'd always go to the the Chozo statues and have something in their hands, and it's like, ooh, oh, cool, like yeah, this yeah, power yeah, and everything like that. At one point, <laughs> you grab you grab one item and you the door shuts closed. And you're like, what? And then the, all of a sudden, like some things start like you know kind of popping off and cracking, and the Chozo statue becomes alive and starts attacking you. And you're like, what the hell? Like this never happens before and never happens again. But it kind of just shakes your your reality a little bit. Like, oh wow, mm. that's that's different. And it, it, it if, again, it's like it effective never... when it's once, but it, if you did it like 50% of the time or whatever, it'd be annoying. But once, just well, that one time it's effective, I guess. I'd almost feel like it's just annoying to me where all you did was try and spook me for something that would never happen for the rest of the game. And that was the only reason why you did it that one time. It was. I, I think the reverse reaction could easily happen though, right? Where they go, wow, that's really cool that they made it happen that yeah. way that time. That's why I'm, I'm really kind of, I don't know where I stand on it. Um, because so, like I can't I'm talking about Resident Evil 4 again um the the first time <laughs> yeah. so you go to uh, <laughs> after you get to the church you go to the little wooden bridges that lead you toward the Elegante arena the, for the first time because you go through there twice uh the first snake is in a wooden box inside one of the shacks along the cliffside but from that point out you and consistently snakes will be in certain pots that you've been breaking open and barrels that you've been breaking open. So it doesn't just do it once to make you constantly second guess for the rest of the game. That will not impact you mechanically ever. It, there actually will potentially be a snake that's in there that you have to swing a second time for. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I feel it's, Hmm. I, I don't know. 
I, I, I think, think it would just annoy it, me. It, it shakes your, it, 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 you have an assumption that you're safe and it shakes it, but it, as long as there's no like real reason, no, no like in game or in lore reason why that couldn't be, I think it's okay. It, it loses, it obviously loses a lot of its um, surprise factor if it were to happen again. So usually games only do it once. Well, like, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Someone said I got here, or someone said Rags the entire point skits you to question the safety of your save point. I know. Right, Rags clearly <laughs> knows I, that. I, like, I, 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 I clearly uh, get it. Um, dude, thank, what thank is you, the deal? thank you for letting me know that. I know. Chat, can we hit you with wow. a music tape all day? <laughs> yeah. Uh, another example that I, I thought was effective. It um, again, there's no reason why you think you'd be completely safe, but um anybody ever played um uh, eternal darkness for the gamecube i did i love that I game it's great I heard about the game. i've never seen this i've heard great, about it i've heard game. it's good but i've never played it i don't really want to spoil it, the game but uh the, i'll just say that there's a certain scene where you interact interact with a mundane object that you do not expect to be anything but mm, oh that's empty or there's some some markings here or whatever and all of a sudden i don't i don't know where there's like a a pretty effective jump scare and you see something pretty grotesque and it's just a flash and you're like oh wow that was unexpected and that, that usually gets people because it's very unexpected and it only happens i think once in the entire game and but it, i think it kind of fits because the the game is all about you know like a lovecraftian loss of sanity so the idea that all this you know researching all this stuff about some otherworldly you know entities and and their uh you know millennia long conquest of the earth uh starting to get into your head and so you're starting to see things that aren't there and that game does a really good job of like slowly kind of um, making you a question it, it really makes it, it kind of like uh taps into people's like uh what is that the mandela effect where you're not sure if that was always that way or you know you, you don't remember things being that way before like oh, that's over just time not having a good memory well, well, yeah, but like, uh, um, the how over time, like the house that you're in will actually change, and you don't realize it. It's very subtle. You don't always realize that it has changed, but it has. So, like, uh, it's really good about that, and and some of the the scares and some of the things that it, it the tricks it pulls, it, they're definitely tricks, and they're they're meant to create a reaction. But I think you were trying to create a, a horror atmosphere, and uh, you know, do, pulling a couple of tricks like that to to get you into the the zone, kind of keep you on your toes, I think is effective. As long as you're not like violating something, you know, really, really important with the story. Someone, someone mentioned in chat, and I want to forget. To be honest, I think safe rooms are generally a poor solution. So I think safe rooms are a very good idea to have in horror games. Yep. And they give you a moment of, to breathe. Yeah. So part of the reason is that a if you have a safe place, what it's doing is it is it's letting the player down from their fear, so that you can build it back up again. If you can't, you can only maintain a person so long at that scared position where it either wears off and it loses its, it loses its effect, or players just won't deal with it anymore. A safe quit. point, yeah, yeah a, a <clears throat> safe spot allows you to okay, you got past that scary part that we were getting. Now you're back in your safe zone. Take a breather. Get back to you know normalish because now we can build that scary back up for you. Um, um, it's, it's like a mini it's like a mini reset that you kind of need because you can't maintain super scares for really that long on a person it's, uh, you, it's you get like, i mean they become desensitized and on top yeah, of that the, yeah. the developers themselves probably can't keep it that scary that long right like yeah in an average horror then, game you get what an hour maybe of true scares maybe yeah there has to be a down point and uh, it's funny because the way you we're explaining it at first. I was like, I think I disagree, but now I'm like, well, actually, it's just how I um, how I describe things. So you know, in Amnesia, like some of the most significant like scary parts. I think one of the prison is one of like the most significant ones. When you complete it, you end up in quite the a blue sewer that's got like watery sounds, and you're safe there, and yes. peaceful music plays. That if you were like evoking that with safe room, I'm like, oh yeah, 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 hundred percent. It's so good. But like you know, yeah, like, his oh. the the stupid Duke safe room in Dimitrescu oh, Castle yes. is like. Mm. I'm almost Important thinking mechanically now, and I'm like, oh god, what a Absolutely, bad idea that yeah. safe room was, you know? You so God forbid, but yeah, we give players a sense of accomplishment, you, you which you kind of want to do. You get through the dungeon, which is very intense, super fucking scary. Then you get to the sewer; it's a little bit more light, like you were saying. You hear the sound of running water, and you can just go. Oh. 
Yeah. Okay. And then you have to work up your your courage, your 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 player courage mechanic to progress into the next area uh, so that you can become super scared again. Mm -hmm. um, I, but that I isn't love. to be confused with the awfulness in Resident Evil 8 where the Duke safe room next to the patrolling Dimitres and her daughters <laughs> and you could always run yeah, there. It's completely and exploitable. It no yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they could have yeah. totally solved that by just having a place where you had to crawl, you know, something so that she well, could physically I feel like not even get get into or something like just something really simple like was that. Was it I can't remember who suggested it, but just the idea that they're actually vampires, they can't deal with sunlight, you put the safe room in the sun area. Outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah outside. Now. Yeah. I mean, where you first meet Duke is outside the fucking exactly. but you know, it's, fine. it's whatever. I mean, there oh, dude, are universe thing. reasons why you could have a safe area from the vampires, but yes. they just they just say, fuck it, there's a room right here, and it's protected by a door, and the door is made of wood, and it has a handle. <laughs> and you don't even have to use the handle, just run into it, really. Yeah. Well, those um, onions and garlic in the in the village, you know, maybe they had some sort of ward or something, I don't know. I'm pretty sure, yeah, by the way, I, when I first Because now spoke... all I think is that that was just a superstition, and they all had garlic yeah. everywhere, but it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah. Um, Shame. When I first met Duke and talked to him and did my stuff, I was like, that was neat. And I think as I was walking into the castle, I was like, oh, there's something else I wanted to do, or... I can't remember if it was or not, but I, I turned around, the castle door was already shut, and it was just completely locked off. I was like, oh. mm. uh, okay, yeah, that's just how it works. We can't, we have to deal load the outside world now. Yeah, there's so many of those gates that really just kind of catch you, it makes you paranoid, you know, it just catches you off guard like that. Probably the worst was that one where, you know, you, you jump over those planks of wood and you can't go back, but I was constantly finding myself, uh, like I did the same thing I one of you did where, I took a right instead of a left, and I missed that save point, and I and I missed whatever was in that room, and got into the uh, Lady D cutscene and stuff yep. like that. So it's just like, yeah, it's it's unfortunate, and you know, I don't know how to solve that exactly. Oh, um, there's so many ways. There's so many ways. Yeah, yeah. There's overt yeah, ways. Yeah. There's simplistic ways. So yeah, somebody I mean, in the in the chat says that the Duke owns the room and vampires can't enter rooms without being invited. And I just really like yeah. the idea of them thinking that's the only piece of lore that they stick behind. They don't that do the, the mirrors. Yeah, you just, they you don't just don't do right sunlight. Yeah. Why would you just her house? Invitation. He owns her a room house. in her house? Like that? Okay. <laughs> And that's the only part of vampire lore they actually stick really that's not closely even, to. That's not even typical vampire. Like, what I mean by, like, like there's, like, owning a room inside a house that is owned by her. That is, that, right? that's interesting. If he's renting yeah, it, she does, he, just, he doesn't own it. Yeah, she owns it. He just pays to use it. So if you really want to and, be pedantic about uh, those rules. But, like, I love that, because there's no reference to that in the game at all. But, you know, viewers might try to help this yeah. game. And, <laughs> right? and they specifically say it's like a vir it's like a, a, a mold infection, not, not there's no, quote-unquote, no superstitious, you know, no paranormal stuff. Yeah, the garlic is just to so throw I, you off, honestly. Yeah, again, that, you know, that's kind of cool world-building, I guess. People think that maybe, maybe that'll keep them safe or whatever, but... Yeah, it, it, yeah, that that's just ghostwriting for the the game writers at that point. It's like, oh, that's why. It's like, no, they don't yeah, actually. Yeah, hell of a lot of ghostwriting for this game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sorry, you were saying something about the um, uh, possibilities for dealing with like right. going down the wrong way. Yeah, I chased you. I'm sorry. Indigo. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I I noticed that. Uh, you ever notice that there's yellow tape on things that lead you yeah. to uh things like that? Like that's a pretty pretty common tactic I notice nowadays in game design. Where, like, I think probably the game that did it the most obviously and probably the best was probably Mirror's Edge, where they would they would use color to guide the player. Um, I don't know about notice best. That, it certainly did. Yeah. It. It's very very obvious at least. Yeah. I, it's it's a little bit too obvious at times, but. Um, maybe something like that. You could lead with color. You could lead with, you know. See, this, there's well, a lot, a lot of ways. You could also do like just completely fourth wall breaking, where it's like, you know, this area looks very dangerous. I should prepare myself or whatever. That's why I um I suck Dead Space Dick a little bit because it's like, oh, you need to go to the, the engine room, and so your suit programs in like wherever the engine yeah. room is, and a line will go from where you. I think that's a really cool thing that would exist potentially in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A heads up um, display all... that shows you where you need to go. And so, yeah, and it just it simultaneously solves problems for the player. And Bioshock did it. With, if you uh, put on the quest arrow, the arrow is like, this is where the plot is. And it's like, thank you. I'm going to go everywhere else first. <laughs> and, and it's all yeah. it's all within the universe. Like the, the actual inventory screen and, and yeah. the UI and the map is all with, it's like projection. Dude, from Dead Space suit. is fucking awesome. So, 
Yeah, I, I love that space a lot, especially yeah. one. Two is fine. Three is kind of funky, but still fun, I guess. But uh, I, I do like, I, I, I initially kind of, because it reminds me a lot of the, the breadcrumbs and Fable, the whole like, you can find out exactly where you need to go. But just being able to tap that and to see a little line, it's like, okay, good. That's the way it's supposed to go. I'll go the other way and <laughs> just kind of see what else I'm missing. That was a really, I do agree. That's a great way of just kind of, uh, clearing up which is the which is the campaign way which is the optional way you know if you're if you're at all confused that was a kind of nice subtle way to fix that problem um i mean i was just having the a, way, a quick sorry, afterthought by the way you know the whole like you wouldn't lift up your arms when there's a fire i was like <laughs> well you typically yeah you might cover your eyes with your hands and then you know if there's an explosion which they specifically said aoe stuff you totally lift your arms up in your front of your face yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, random subconscious thought reaching the surface. You've just been, yeah. you just been working that for a while about why no, like, you it came really out, hate like, this guy relatively take. recently. It's just, it annoyed me so much. Read, reading that annoyed me so much. <laughs> all you have to do, I, I can all you have to do is change your change the animation. Is if you're attacked by bugs, when you hold spacebar, instead of you just holding your arms up, you just frantically swat away at all yeah. of them in front of you. Yeah. That would have mm. been like something better. That would have um, been something, like, I could see myself doing that. It's also a mention as well, like, you're fighting a big wolf, why else would you use the Wolfsbane gun? So, just FYI, because I know a lot of people haven't played this game, they're only looking at labels, that gun's just really good in general. It's not it's just super good wolves. Good. So, yeah, super I want to save my six bullets for the bosses, not for the random wolf. Alright? I'm glad we saw yeah, that Yeah, so... It being called Wolfsbane, I have no idea if that's a mechanical thing in the game, <laughs> or that's just something that the gun would be named, because that's just a name, well, so, yeah. that's something you'd call a weapon. As people were highlighted as well, it's like, kind of sucks that the Wolfsbane gun, does, it's not like it has silver bullets, it's like, we've been over this, but like, it's just like, yeah, that would be neat if the description said, like, bullets laced with silver or something, I don't know. But you're like, oh, I want to use these against the Wolfy boys, that seems like, you know, that makes sense. All right, mechanically and thematically, I love the silver bullet idea because not only would it add another layer, like multiple types of animation, maybe some bullets are good against vampires, maybe some bullets are good against lichens, you know, add a little bit more depth and a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, variety bullets. in terms of how, yeah, yeah, things like that. But uh, <laughs> silver actually uh, historically has played a big part in, in folklore because silver is antibiotic. It, it kills bacteria. Uh, that's why silverware was made of silver. That's why pitchers were made of silver because it would actually naturally uh, kill bad things in food. Neat. So that actually, uh, it's probably the basis of that folklore. Is well, yeah, that, um, uh, yeah, silver. A lot of people think there's usually only for walls, but like there's a lot of silver stakes and uh, silver is yeah. dependent on the IP. It's uh, good against vampires as well. Could have been a whole silver thing in this game. Like all the ammo I types agree. have a silver modulator, but they cost more to buy, and they you know they do more damage. Like that's really simple, but it's something. Yeah, garlic mm -hmm. bombs, or you know, some. I would you could love to use some garlic bombs. Yes. I think it comes from. Um, so silver is for long, long, long time been associated with purity and also the moon. Uh, silver is like a metal of the moon, and because werewolves are strongest when there's a full moon and the moon has some level of control over them. The idea was this metal that is sort of symbolically tied to the moon also has more power over them. And I think that generally silver has a sort of purity to it. Oh my God. And that kind of purity nice. that silver has, what? Someone in chat just said, but guys, they're not actually werewolves or vampires. Thank you. So Thank anyway, you so, much. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the purity of supposedly the purity of the metal silver is symbolically counter to the non-pure monstrous nature of these kinds of beasts they're they're warped versions of actual things so pure metals affect them better kind of like yeah. how only virgins can see um like unicorns for instance the, that aspect of purity is a special aspect of the materials and people and and that was I my think second that's part where i think it comes from yeah yeah, that's why my, my second part is because, uh, yeah, I, I can show you references about how uh, silver is antimicrobial. Um, that actually fits in with the Resident Evil stuff. If this is just a, a mold or virus or whatever, silver could also kill those potentially. So, like, it, it's not just a supernatural thing. It's what if, you know, this is actually killing the mold virus or, or, or they, they call it yeah, mold yeah. here. They use virus in other games. But 
it, it makes sense both from a scientific point, but also makes sense from, you know, uh, supernatural as well. And then it makes super sense mechanically because it lets us do something. <laughs> like there's something yeah, different. Something. Um, and, uh, this is relevant as well because obviously that wolf fight, uh, I saw someone in chat say, like, wouldn't it have been cool if, like, it wasn't just a bullet sponge and that there were things you could do? For example, set the, the field on fire and that fucks with the wolf completely, yeah, obviously. Cool. Or shoot the scarecrows and, like, maybe they wiggle, they spin, they make noises and it distracts him, he jumps onto them and maybe even gets hit by like the wood, like some of it sticks into him or whatever, it's just like, oh my god, ideas? No, stop. You're thinking like a real <laughs> game designer. <laughs> we can't be doing that. <laughs> Needed more flower bags on the field, I feel like. But Mola, Jesus juice isn't juice. It's like, chat, you're just on point today. Thumbs up. Mm. We need Did anybody find all the fish? Did mm. anyone find all the fish? I, I was missing yeah. one fish to do all the meat. I think Mel did. Okay. I hear, I uh, and I've, I've looked up some stuff, and it, it's popped up already multiple times. But supposedly there was an old, an old story of a, or I think this might have been real, the the beast of Gevodan, <laughs> and supposedly this was a a big fucking, like a, a big ass wolf that killed apparently like a hundred and sixty eight people, like a Jeez, like like insane, a like it's an insanely actual deadly beast. Yeah, like like a monstrously sized wolf. But I think the person who actually killed it, the hunter who actually killed it, he used silver because they thought it was a... Well, then that would come <laughs> after the fact that it already... But maybe it propagated the idea of this guy who killed what they thought was a real real werewolf back then, he used a silver bullet to do it, which probably even further created in the mythos the idea of the guy who finally did it he used silver that must have been the deciding factor not like the skill of the hunter or actually getting the shot or anything like that it was the silver that's um one. but there's there's probably some some really interesting reasons why and a, a lot of it's probably symbolic and it gets caught up in things and it it goes and then it becomes a cool legend and a piece of lore that's um, what like uh, yeah. holy water uh kind of probably came from is that uh people were told that vampires couldn't enter churches so that was a way of getting people into churches and getting them, you know, to constantly come to uh, masses and things like that is because, oh, you're safe from the vampires. <laughs> so it's so, kind of a neat little way of doing that, I guess. I just now, saw on, on Mewfly's playthrough another stupid mechanical thing just because it's relevant to what was on screen. So you, you saw him pick up a... Oh, right. I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, like an extension for, for a weapon. Uh, so the game doesn't care if you actually have the weapon where you put the equipment on. It just cares if there's a free slot in your inventory. So what you end up doing is you free up your inventory. It's like, oh, I guess I'll just put this over here. And as soon as you want to put it into your inventory, the game is like, oh, you want to equip it immediately? It's like, why didn't you ask me that when I had... Oh, that's weird. Space? Yeah, like, you, you can't put it in unless like, this space... Just... Yeah, it's really dumb. It's really, like, really so... stupid. But attaching it to the yeah, weapon doesn't make you take up any more space, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I um, love this sequence because uh, as soon as you grab that and do that whole thing with the, Chris's equipment, uh, the the beast gets like all, you know, angry and a bunch of zombies spawn. I just ran. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just ran past them all. I was like, there's oh, no I was super curious. Them. I'll just run past them. I was like, what is this tree demon? Like, what, is this a mini boss? Yeah, that was, was weird, like, right? Well, this yeah. room was interesting. Yeah, this is a cool little room that doesn't mean anything. Oh, well. Yeah, I, I, I knew this. Is... That... Yeah. yeah go ahead. Sorry, I was, just, I was just saying, I knew that that, for some reason, I knew that that tree wasn't going to be anything. I just didn't want to have to fight a bunch of zombies in a small <laughs> dark space, so. <laughs> I think I actually, rem I remember stopping in this room and going, huh, that's creepy, out loud. Which was, it's just, just that, just the fact I had some reaction to this room was like, oh, how about that? But I yeah, guess that's just creepy. metamycete down there that you're yeah, yeah, so yeah. looking at, so. It, so it's just yeah, it's a little it's just some because we've been we've been really really hard on this game. I want to do shout out the lighting in this game is fantastic. One of the best oh, yeah, games. Great. I I, uh, sure. I yeah. I really have to admire the fact that it doesn't like a lot of uh, Bethesda games. For example, it really drives me nut nuts. They have a lot of ambient lighting where like shadows aren't very strong and and just lighting seems to kind of come out of nowhere. Whereas this game, like there's like hard shadows, there's dark places. Everything seems to have a a source and a, and a, and a reason for being lit the way it is, and uh, I, it, it's a, it's a, it's something you just kind of assume that's in a game. But I, I just had to point mm -hmm. out that this game is really it's like top tier lighting, you know, and especially you know in some some areas where you just have you know like uh, I really like, for example, in the in the Lady D's castle at the at the uh, basement where you got a, all that 
blood and like candlelit blood that just had a really kind of great uh great like red glow and yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you're walking you through know, it to, yeah. i actually have, argued yeah. on behalf of this game against my chat uh for its looks at certain points in in um heisenberg's factory there was you know where all the guys are lined up in their little mm -hmm. pods or whatever down a hallway and there's like i think a red glow as well as just a general blue darkish i was just like this looks really fucking cool as well as yeah. just like the aesthetic it makes me think it like that was one of the things that really took me a, a, a few seconds to get accustomed to i was like heisenberg's factory is really cool like it just feels like this completely different thing like a, yeah i'm just like a part of this new world in this new game it's like oh look at this horror the horrors of combining flesh with technology that's what it felt like it, like a horrible dystopia and yeah, it's yeah, like, there's, there's... do you remember what game you're playing? And I was like, no, what is it again? What do we do? <laughs> a baby is split into four th I don't know. It, it feels it feels so out of place again, but like a lot of the things about Heisenberg's place is great. Like if you look, if you go further down and you look uh, across the factory, you see like just countless uh, soldats being like, yeah. uh, you know, pulled across these like, you know, rails and things like that. You get like money for shooting line. Them. Oh, you do? That's well, you get bonus, uh, what are they called? Content points or something? They're oh, called I, CPs. Yeah. <laughs> Good choice of Complete, acronym. Completely uh, on point thing to name uh, points. But uh, one thing I really, really thought was, it was like a, such a minor thing, but a great level of sh uh, foreshadowing. You know the room where there's like a row of soldats uh, with drills that are inactive? Yeah. Um, yes. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that hallway. Yeah, every I single one going to come to life at least. Yeah. Every single one of those come off of the wall. By the end, they're all gone. Huh. Oh, nifty! Really? Yeah, really That's cool, cool little detail. Yeah, really cool little detail. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, we're at the possibly the most frustrating cutscene in the whole game. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, I love this. This is my favorite cutscene, but also the most frustrating because yeah, I really I mean. like Heisenberg and him zooming the knife around is just cool. Yeah, it was cool. And his telekinesis um, doesn't really go anywhere at all. It, he does two or three yeah. cool things with it. That's about it. So yeah, he like doesn't do anything that you couldn't have not done is with this it. The, really, the cutscene where uh, Ethan lets go because this is going to be real awkward. I kind of like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you sure you like it because it probably it. evokes a sense of sticking to your own principle or something. But it makes no fucking sense for him to make this decision. Yeah, this is yeah, super I'm, frustrating. I'm pretty sure that's true. It's just I I don't know. I just liked it in the moment. I'm like, wow, Ethan, like you made a choice. You're a character. Listen, for Ethan, a you're moment. being played. Like, I don't know that I don't know that I th I don't think of it that way. I'm like Ethan, what the fuck are you doing? Nobody in this situation would make the choice you're making, but so, they're trying to sell it as though it's yeah, like an integrity thing. Yeah. So that's you, you're correct. I I remember it was just for me. It was at that moment I was like, wow, this character who isn't a character at all finally made a decision. Well, he makes decisions. He, he moves metal, right? It's yeah. not telekinesis it's over everything. It's magnetic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, magnetic. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, he's Magneto, yeah. And, and so he's I like actually, Magneto, basically. I really love like his hand watching... motions and his yeah. just everything about him. He's so fun to watch. I just, uh, yeah. it makes yeah. me so upset that they just wasted well, him. Well, so this is the thing. I wanted to make sure I, I put this out there in case it was like misunderstood. It's like Heisenberg's a complete waste, but like I feel like they all were. All of these characters. Mm. They, you could have yeah, done so much with so many of them. Two in particular, but yeah. Heisenberg, I think the reason why it feels like so, some of the most wasted is because they almost did the most with him. So we could see the wasted potential yeah. so much clearer. Well, you have the most, like, this scene and him on the... You get, like, insight into a lot of what he wants and why. And he's actually kind of talking with Ethan, yep. attempting to be an ally with him, practically begging him to work with him. Yeah. And you, you see a little into Moreau, but they don't do anything with that either. Um, really a shame. He, like, he kicks him and gives him even another chance. Ugh. I wish Ethan would be like, what's your plan? Like, at least tell me that yeah. before I decide to fuck you over. Oh, it's so... I, I, just I wanted this... I, I, I wanted him this. to be a scary guy. Like, because we're getting to the end of the game now. Like... There's nothing scary about him. I look at him and I think Van Helsing, who's like a well, good guy, but he's associated with that monster universe in kind of a visual way because he resembles Van Helsing. I don't like but... him being scary because well, I, I like think his relatability. We're, we're highlighting the problem. They decided to give him villain role, but not villain personality, meaning a bunch of us like him and want to work with him, while other people are like, why isn't he more evil? I'm trying to kill him. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the worst of both worlds. You've you've mixed and matched, right. like, what he's supposed to be operating as. Because, yeah, he's yeah. he's basically the final boss before Miranda now. 
Yeah, but like he's, he's it, it feels like the game is fighting itself to make him the bad guy now because it also wanted to he have feels him... like he had two right yeah like two people were directing this care like this game or this character and they wanted two different things he's yeah. both charming and also like has done completely unforgivable things that makes and him really it, interesting and he's got yeah. good reason from what we yeah. can tell and ethan's got no reason like you know what i mean it's just everything's working against all the decisions yeah. that are happening like a this, you know backseat designer again but i would actually if you were giving me this as like a design document or whatever i'd be like okay cool it doesn't look like it looks like a moreau and you know wolf beast or whatever but pretty thin you know maybe it could be mini bosses or whatever but i would actually be more interested in uh miranda losing surviving. control to to or, or you know fighting for control over her two offspring uh heisenberg and lady d maybe they both have really good points maybe you can ally with one and fight the other maybe there's some sort of like you, you could know, even make it so that alternate endings there you could side with one side with the other or neither you know, the other well, two be interesting could have been like like heisenberg's pet is moreau and lady d's pet is the creepy puppet lady or something yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you could do that or yeah. you could set up the game where you think you're gonna have to kill all four of them but maybe one of maybe moreau or maybe heisenberg in particular Maybe you don't kill him in the end, and you were wrong. Just because, just because it starts off with the idea of you have to kill them all, that doesn't mean you you have to. Like plans can yeah. change, and there yeah, can be yeah. reasons for that. And then they open up. May, have Heisenberg survive. You have your encounter with Miranda, and maybe he gets away and he escapes, and he goes some. He he's free now, and he goes off to do stuff. And maybe you see him again in another Resident Evil. Who knows? There could be uh, stuff that they do with that. I don't Please know. I don't know if there's necessarily a word for it, but like we've talked about before, the you know very you know pretentious word, the ludo narrative dissonance, where the player's actions uh, directly conflict with the story. Uh, well, there's almost like an opposite thing going here, where the story is directly uh, contradicting what the player would like to do as actions. Like you know, oh, sit down argue, and fall down. Yeah, so it's, I would it's argue like, it's also contradicting what the character would want to do. Yeah. But then again, uh, Ethan's like Ethan's an idiot. <laughs> he's, he's an idiot. He's, really he's such great. a moron. Ethan is an idiot. He's an he will always idiot. choose the stupidest option because he's a fucking. Wait, moron. is this the first time? Is this the first time in the story? I think Ethan is seeing this, and he says, "I've yeah. got to get upstairs." Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm like Ethan. Yeah. Like, look, like, are you? This I is, know. I as a player was like, "What the fuck is going on yeah, here?" This is crazy. Jesus. All this is under a little shack. Like, this is an insane. You know what I mean? This, I like this sequence. Like, I thought cool, it was neat. Get upstairs. Yeah. I this like, is the only time in the entire yeah, yeah, game yeah. that it's a game. For He's got garlic. The, well, the, this is where I feel like this is the peak of the fucking FPS portion of this game. Yeah. Yeah, this starts to feel like a... Like, I... I, I, I the, the old school Resident Evil in me kind of wants the, the whole game to be like Lady D's castle with like your unlocking things. With yeah, yeah, I can... And, and stuff like that. But I would this value feels any like of the situations if they fucking made them detailed. The only reason I'm valuing Heisenbergs over everyone else is because the enemies actually have to be treated differently. Yeah, like I said, I, I could I could show you the link where literally half the base enemies are yeah. from Heisenberg's factory on, only. Like, they're all I believe different. You. And they, yeah, I, I believe have, you. I believe you. Yeah, yeah and, and you read about, like, they do the kind of traditional uh, art Resident Evil thing where you read about them, and you're like, in this particular model, so-and-so has, like, you know, one fault, but it also can do this. And it's like, oh, that's really interesting. I, I, I really kind of anticipating slash cringing when I actually get to fight them because they seem really formidable. And so it kind of hypes you up about a monster uh, before you fight them. Like, and then you um, see it. Yeah. I, 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 I have to, I have to go, go down on uh, RE2 remake a little bit. But each enemy in RE2 uh, remake, at least, was very different. At like, you know, your basic zombies were slow, um, but could be dangerous in crowds. And if you weren't, you know, if you took them for granted, they could actually hit you pretty hard. You got the faster dogs. You got, um, and then you've got the lickers, which are extremely tough, but were blind. So if you, if you uh heard them you could creep really quietly and walk around them trying not to disturb them and hoping that they don't hear you so like that's an interesting mechanic like uh, quite often you just avoid yeah. them because they're so difficult to fight then you had like mr x who would roam around autonomously through doors through walkways and chase you down uh then you had you know the kind of weird swamp creatures that had or took like a lot of damage and you had to shoot their their mouth to open them up or whatever then you had uh the um plant creatures who were zombie-like, but if you uh, if you killed them, they'd fall down, but then they'd regrow and come back up alive, unless you burned them. So you had to like burn them to to finish them off. So like every 
every monster had its own kind of like set of interesting mechanics and and do's and don'ts about them and unfortunately a lot of these are just are just gunfighter gunfighter they don't really have anything particularly different about them like yeah the only even, ones that do have any changes whatsoever are here in the factory yeah. because the rest of them are you just shoot you just shoot them until they die um, yeah, I think, like, literally having it be that it's like you need to hit him with a grenade launcher or a mine or a pipe bomb before you can shoot his weak spot. I was like, oh my god, it's like a, it's like an idea. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. So there's somebody who said something in chat that I have not considered, um, which makes this even sadder, is that don't forget that Moreau is upset because Miranda wants Ethan to be at the end and not him, lending even more credence to Heisenberg telling the truth that Ethan is being played. It, it like, doesn't even... I believe Heisenberg 100%. The funny thing is that he says absolutely. stuff that should make Ethan question so much. First of all, yeah. you can help me save my daughter, and you will? Like, question mark, question yeah. mark, and question you mark? Also in, and the only thing I have to do for you is to do the thing I was going to have to do anyway? And this oh, yeah. also means I don't have to fight you. Yeah. yeah. Per person who can move metal with his mind. <laughs> yeah, the person Literally. who could just, like, strip my guns from me on command and just instantaneously make a knife fly into my face. Oh, I yeah, I don't want to fight that person. I've been using guns this whole time to kill everybody, mm -hmm. and you can control metal. I don't want to fight yeah. you. This is what I mean. Literally, it's, it's so hard to engage with because you're just like god damn i hate you so much ethan please let me make the decisions he heisenberg is like the, probably the one of the most honest people to Lee ethan he tells him the truth he's being played chris is playing him miranda's playing him he's like saying hey help me out sets... and i'll use your daughter and we'll kill miranda how's that well sound? you and gotta like, do more than that you gotta keep <laughs> you gotta go further back um he sets up he he con he's the one who contacts you sets up says hey go through the stronghold and come and get here yeah. And he doesn't try and trick you or anything. Like he's yeah. been totally legit. And then you find you do that and you get there and he shows up when he could have killed you, clearly many times, and yeah. he doesn't kill you. He explains his motivations and he gives you multiple chances, practically begging you to join him. And then he doesn't even kill you there. He drops you down a hole. <laughs> uh, and you know, after, and, after telling you that you you don't want to find out what's down there. <laughs> yeah, and, and so he's like, uh, yeah. like I just think it'd be really cool to fight with him, and then at the end of the game, you can choose if you want to execute him. It'll be based on what the player really believes is, you know, should happen to him. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, and I I think I would I would honor our agreement and say yeah you you you'd honor to get you, well, you said you'd do this and you did it so. This is the thing for no. me. I would want to add loads more into the game, but as it stands, like yeah, I don't think I'd kill him if he did that for me. If he helped me save my daughter and said that he's not here in his own will and that he wants a normal life again, I'd be like. All right, buddy. Let's do this. Yeah, right. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. If if he was gonna like let me go, which I think he absolutely would. He clearly doesn't need Rose apart from killing Miranda, and he doesn't even say that he's going. He he has to use Rose. There's no, no reason why Rose even has to be used. Because remember the first time he mentions her in that scene, he's like, "We can go save Rose and kill Miranda." And um, so by the way, this entire this factory is enormous, and he's making a bazillion people. Miranda doesn't know about this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe she, uh, yeah. Uh, well. Or, or, you're making it. A, you're fucking with all of my villages and demon people, and you're making robots. Like, what are you doing? What do you say? Like, oh, you know, I'm just. So oh. someone mentioned him. Um, uh, he doesn't. He want to dominate the world with Rose. So I think that's what the Metal Army seems to be for. The only time he mentions Rose is to kill Miranda. He wants to use Rose. It's, it all comes back to killing Miranda. I thought, His yeah. dying words are, damn, I wish I could have killed Miranda. I thought the Metal Army was for Miranda. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, oh, yeah, well, maybe even then. Yeah, I, I remember um, saying, like, don't worry, dude, you're still a giant machine that you'll be able to hit Miranda that, that way, not just the Metal Army. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. That even further kind of cements the whole this thing. Is the, but, this is the thing. That was yeah. news to me. I didn't know he wanted to take over the world, but even still, this, this is why it's not an interesting fucking thing that Ethan does. It's, it's like, just a pragmatically correct choice to make. Even if he's actually evil, he's still going to help you in the short term. And if you want to betray him later, you still have that on the table and, to do later. And we know that Ethan was wrong, because the second he kills Heisenberg, he loses to Miranda. <laughs> it's like, good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, anyway, well, I mean, yeah. this is my friend, and that could be a really interesting thing. Like, at the end, maybe he betrays you, maybe maybe you forgive him, maybe you're like, okay, you're a really bad man, but 
he also helped me save yeah, my you, daughter and kill the the big bad. So maybe Ethan he hasn't shown those ways. Ethan you, hasn't shown any interest in being moral, though. He's only no. oh, save Rose. So, well, but like, that's pragmatism even, should come in then, shouldn't it? Like, yeah, it's know. even less. It makes even less sense because he really is just yeah. exclusively about getting his daughter back. He doesn't seem to care if the world burns around him. And you know, you could yeah, even so yeah. if you wanted to lock it out of a choice as well, you could literally have it so you beat Miranda together, and you're both like sort of happy about it. But then, like the smiles turn down, and Ethan's like, "I can't let you leave." Yeah, and, and then, then we Heisenberg yell at like, Ethan again at our screen. Of course, we would yell at him. But if yeah. Capcom wanted to do this, I guess, and you know, Heisenberg could probably say something funny, and then we could be like, "Well, it's time for a fight because Ethan's a it's prick." Like, he would probably be like really surprised and super disappointed in Ethan, someone that he clearly actually does admire. He, the one of the first things he says about you, maybe the first thing, is that, "Wow, like you're really tough." Like he 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 constantly is talking about how he admires your toughness and your survive your your survivability, and how it's impressive to him. That's kind of why he contacts you. He's like, "Oh, I can use Ethan to kill Miranda. Like yeah. Ethan can help me, and I can help him too. Like this is clearly a win win." There's no way it's gonna turn me down. That would be insane. Yeah, <laughs> you'll never guess what he turned me down. <laughs> it's it's like that uh that uh trade meme it's like you get your daughter and freedom <laughs> i'll get... be honest i'm not even sure like I, I don't know if i like the fact that heisenberg shoved you down here as well because you basically destroy everything and kill all this stuff when he could have just telekinetic you to death i guess he really yeah, doesn't want to just... kill you but he also wants i guess because because on the you. on the radio he says like he he even says, oh, it's really too bad you didn't accept my deal, Ethan. We really could have worked together as a team. And, and talking and, about uh, stripping you of weapons, this is the one time where thematically that would have actually worked. He could have just yeah. pulled all of your guns right off you. Yeah, he just, and, yeah. and that could have been something that changes based on how many guns you have. You would see those guns hover behind him. He uses his hands and all your guns fly away. And he like yeah. bends them all in half or chucks them into the back of the room. And you're like, oh, I got to get back to this room somehow after he drops you down the <laughs> hole. Imagine he does but, more uh, damage to you based on how well you were doing at that point in the campaign for weaponry. That would be kind of funny. It's like backlash. You also made me think as well, you could have a horror moment. He, as you're falling, you're like staggered in your fall, but you can see all of your guns being removed and mm -hmm. flowing up to him. Then you fall into a room, like you just fall pretty far, but it's pitch black, and then just a red light in the corner, and you maybe walk toward it, but then it starts getting closer to you, and you're like, "By the way, I'm what the fuck?" Yeah, that'd be that'd be really horrifying. And and imagine if you had a boss fight with him uh, outside of his big monster, you know, form, big floopy monster form. Imagine if in real time, not a cutscene, in real time, you point your gun at him and he moves your your cursor away with his mat with his magnetism. Like that'd be really, I'd really kind of fuck with your head because well, you'd be like, you know, he'd he eventually take your gun away from you. But imagine if he like he just like bounced your your weapon away with his power. That'd be like wow. Or you you just saw formidable. your bullets hover in midair when you shot the bullets. Yeah. Like he they like they just stopped because it's metal. And what could yeah. you possibly do to defeat him? Yeah, and, and, and um, that you're just. But also, I'm you. noticing. In your playthrough here, I'm noticing you're stopping these things. I didn't. I never stopped any of them. I used them to kill all the enemies in the room without a single bullet. I just ran past. What's, what's funny is I actually done. just game game brain. I was like, oh, they're not gonna let me past unless I shoot them. And then it was my second playthrough. I was like, do yeah. they though? And then I was like, oh, you can get past them. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I cleared this room without a single bullet. I just let them walk yeah. into the pistons and they died. Yeah, yep. it takes a couple hits, but they all died. I didn't even I, start walking through because I didn't trust the game to let me actually do that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can I, understand. Yeah, I walk. I walked through. Then after I got to the end, I'm like, I should probably take these out in case it's important. And it wasn't. So, <laughs> but, but you are correct about the gear. Like essentially, like the no gear section. The the part where we get it in doesn't make any sense. And the parts no. where we don't get it, which is many times, it should you should be stripped of your guns. It doesn't happen. Heisenberg just making your gun. He just snaps his fingers and your guns fly away. Yeah. Or. Yeah, that would be impressive. Or you can shoot them if you want, but it just doesn't do anything because it's it's metal guns. Yeah, it, it, it could more, be really cool. You can even get more. He tinkers with machinery. If he if he took out a gun and maybe they could use the 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 the, the Luma. What's the first one again? Lemmy. The Lemmy yeah. as the model of what happens because he's that in cutscenes where it just <laughs> flies out of your hand and it disassembles itself down to the spring and screws. Yeah. That would be really cool imagery that they could use. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, see, you can't you can't fight me, Ethan. 
yeah, that would that'd make it very, very, uh, really, really daunting and formidable to be able to face yeah. him in combat. And I'd make you really good, give you a really good incentive not to get on his bad side because in, in essence, like if he was actually to fight with his full power, Ethan could do, could do nothing. None of his well, guns are. That's another thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wait, why didn't Heisenberg just like use his power of a metal to crush the vehicle? I well, am it's... glad you asked, Fringy. Yeah. Let me explain to you what the answer is. So it just so happens that the vehicle that Heisenberg created that you used to kill him, it just so happens, the boy, how lucky is this, that it's actually made out of like a, yep. a metal polymer that he can't control. <laughs> Wow, how insanely fortunate is that? It, it, it doesn't make that sense. would have been why really would he, awkward. Why yeah. would he build his own vehicle to be immune to him? Wouldn't he nice want it to be something that he would ma manipulate? Well, he would assemble it with his powers. He wouldn't use, like, a screwdriver and a hammer. No, of course, but you, you get what I mean, right? Like, he would want it to be something that he could manipulate. Because it's his. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, why would he build like, it to... Obviously. <laughs> So that you could use it at the end, and they can hand wave away the explanation. But they still like, well, this is what, like a... it still flings it around though. Like you get at the end because don't think about it. It was the All wind. Right. It was a big gust of wind. Um, yeah. I, I find it funny though because there's there's pieces of that, and it, I always go back to the TLJ example where they have the people go the smaller ship. It can move faster because it's smaller. These creators that are like, oh, we better put in an explanation for this. It's like, what about all the other stuff? And it's like, no, nah, that doesn't matter. The space yeah, wizards, they, the children. They <laughs> Chris, I think Chris says this to you, but also the thing next to Chris, the note next to Chris at that section, it also explains this. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna, so like they want it to make sense. So the whole it's not supposed to make sense thing, <laughs> it all falls apart because just, they're trying to have it make sense. This idea that we're supposed to believe, like, no, Resident Evil stories, they're designed to be stupid. That's the whole point. Then they shouldn't explain they're everything just, if they don't want to make sense. How do you have emotional, <laughs> dramatic payoffs if nothing is supposed to make sense? I like, like the idea that they sit around a writer's room like, this makes too much sense. Let's yeah, we gotta stop this. this. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta fuck this up. <laughs> so why 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 did we give one of the baddies the ability to telekinetically control metal when metal is Wait, what you use Hector to kill all the enemies? Heisenberg had the materials and Chris built it. I thought Chris said it was one of Heisenberg's machines. Is this yeah, toy? I thought I it's one of Heisenberg's. Toy. Yeah, I thought it was Chris who built it. Cr but, no, it's Heisenberg. Chris was I'm sorry. We're supposed to believe that Chris built that? You kidding me? In his yeah, basement. So. What I the fuck? He's, <laughs> Chris no, is, but he's just <laughs> hanging out in Heisenberg's basement. It. I was gonna say, that's, that's on, even stupider. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm pretty sure, just for the sake of being correct... Well, yeah, yeah, sure fair enough, correct. but I thought Chris said it was one of Heisenberg's machines, not that he built it himself. I'm 90% sure he said it was one of Heisenberg's toys. I'm trying oh, to find a reference for it. Like, yeah. Like, he, he, like, he was a project that he was working on in the basement, and Chris and was also, just, like, finishing it up or fixing it. I just it. love the idea that Chris... This is a problem like, either way. Yeah. So Chris apparently yeah. is smart enough to create a vehicle... Like a combustion from engine from pieces with tire treads and weapons that are strapped to it with controls and everything. Did he expect like, Ethan to drop off, down I don't there believe... so that he could give yeah, it like, to him? <laughs> I, didn't, I don't believe that, but also, too, how would Chris know that those materials aren't metal when they're probably indistinguishable from metal if you don't actually know what they are? And yeah. he made it down there expecting that... How was he supposed to get it up? I guess that, that one elevator so and he made it only out of parts that were in that room and or? people keep highlighting it's like but he still picks it up it's like yeah we i know it, it doesn't make sense. none of it makes sense they they it want it to make sense but it doesn't they they just they're the writers are shit yes mm. and uh the writers are shit i found it infinitely lazy that you work your way all the way to the top of the facility you meet up with heisenberg heisenberg decides not to kill you even though you could have died several times over in his facility he instead You're pushes you all. Propeller head guy. Oh, we'll talk about that in a sec. And then he <laughs> pushes you all the way to the bottom of the facility, and then you get to fight him two minutes later because you happen to bump into Chris, who has a direct line <laughs> to the boss room and a boss weapon. What the hell? Wow. Like, that's so yeah. lazy. It's incredible. It's like you happen to fall through um, after a an attempted kill and then just completely fall into exactly what you need to defeat him that happened to be built by himself it's like again it's, and it, it's uh, it makes yeah it makes all of your progression mean nothing because that yeah. whole time you're working to get yourself out of the factory and get back to the top and then you're finally at the top 
cutscene happens. Ethan's an idiot again, and he gets pushed down to the very bottom. But it's okay because Chris is there with the vehicle that you need to kill Heisenberg, who just transformed. And there's a working elevator that you can use to go to the top. Oh. And, and All like, right. Like, like, you know when you're walking around and you go to open a door and it starts to disassemble because Heisenberg's fucking with it? It's such a moment of like, oh yeah, you're going to beat me still because you have telekinesis, right? <laughs> like you did before, like you always do. Like I don't even know what I thought I would. I don't know what Ethan was thinking. <laughs> we were working our way toward Heisenberg, and I almost want to sit down and be like, "What's our plan? Like, what are we? What's the?" And Heisenberg, like even in the fight with him, I feel like based on you nimbly moving around that knife onto the portraits, which is really kind of cool, honestly. Um, you think that he would use his telekinesis? to kill you in the vehicle maybe he would try to use it or he would say oh you've he doesn't even i don't even think he mentions that you're using the thing he built no I don't um, think so. no and and he doesn't use metal to just hit you with like he doesn't take one of those big pylons or a piece of metal just like tip you over or just throw it at you he just slides he doesn't you with his yeah arms like burr, 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 burr. he slides towards you with his saws to cut you when he has telekinetic metal powers and he doesn't mm -hmm. does he have any ranged attacks Mm. Uh, no, no, the closest you get know. is he makes like a big arm, but then he doesn't really use it to like slam down or anything. Uh, the, the first, really the first shit. time you meet him, he throws a, a rebar through your gut. Yep, like the, literally, like he, he can. Yeah, to incapacitate he can be so you. So much, so much more effective than he is. He's he covers you in metal. And... This is the thing: the Heisenberg fight. Like I remember when it finished, I was just like, "Okay, that was just insane." Well, that like, happened. Lol. Yeah. Yeah. But like once you get time to really just consider, it's like God, what utter nonsense! <laughs> like what? <laughs> well, mechanically, shit doesn't represent the characters at all. The choice to be made, I mean, like also just for the story, like how do we even get here? Why is this happening? It's like suddenly Miranda's here too, and it's like, wait a minute, are we having a Resident Evil Seven moment just later? Resident Evil Seven was like finished forty percent of the way through, and then they just rushed the rest. This was finished probably like eighty-five percent of the way through, and they rushed the rest. That's how it feels to me anyway, because if you remember, you just jump from cutscene to cutscene, and Ethan goes from fighting Heisenberg, well, meeting Chris after getting tossed down, to the Heisenberg fight, to getting killed by Miranda, to waking up to Evelyn, to waking up to Duke, to going to the Miranda fight. Like, it's all just sort of like, yeah, that's how it's happening. And you're like, oh, okay. I feel like these things were a little disconnected. Like, you get to her before the ritual completes. Like, yeah, that's damn, that was lucky, yeah. Was Duke just hoping you'd wake back up? I I does, does so he know you're I guess a slime so Duke, monster? <laughs> Duke went to you after you died, put you in the carriage. Don't even try and picture that happening. <laughs> um, and then he takes you in his cart, drives you back to the village. Which again, don't think of how that's possible because of what the map design is. Yeah, you just you just sort of show up, and then he opens his cart up, and he's there. I, okay. I picture him hmm. in the back with you, rubbing chicken on your lips to try and wake you up. <laughs> like, come on now, come, come on. on. Sharing what you can wake up. I, I, I saw that you well, have like... eight unused pieces of poultry in your inventory. <laughs> mm. You just wake up half eaten. He's like, "Oh, you're alive. <laughs> That's wonderful." <laughs> oh, oh, I was going to eat you because I'm very fat. But That's I what suppose. Fat people do. Uh, oh well. Customer service, I suppose. Have you guys heard that Propeller Man is very likely a ripoff mm. of something yeah, from I heard about that. I didn't believe really? it. I have not I, heard I, about that. I read that. it and I was like, "Oh, come on! It's a creature with a propeller. It's probably..." And then I checked out what they th what the person said it was ripping off, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's like one to one! Damn." Hmm. What, what, what was it from? It could be a. It's um. Someone in chat I'm might know. I'm on an article right now. I'm taking it's... a look. It's a movie. It's Frankenstein's uh, Army from 2013. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, and I watched the scene with the Propeller Man in that, and it's like one to one. It, they could be created separately, theoretically, but it really does look like kind of like the same thing. Hmm. Interesting. It does seem a little bit because yeah. I know a lot of people have been wanting me to mention it. And I'm just like, yeah, I I can't know. I wouldn't want to accuse Capcom of having stolen an idea. I don't know, but uh, could get them in trouble. I guess maybe. Other uh, just to go back, uh, it's funny that Heisenberg's like, "Oh, that propeller is gonna kill him for sure." Like, <laughs> <laughs> he killed all my other Lord mates, but he that, that propeller guy, he's he's the man. He's he he he's gonna get him. Yeah, sure I like how 
I like how all the propeller head guy had it. I think his name is Sturm or something. You just had to walk t into Ethan. But he does these weird charging fiery things. No, just, just walk into him. Yeah, he overheats mm -hmm. and he does like the fire. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess he's not that bright, so. Yeah, he's so, just a storm, but which is storm in German. Uh, just to clear up a uh, a point before, yeah. I I have the um the clip open right now through the walk full walkthrough. Uh, this might turn into a fight with Heisenberg, but I think I found something useful. He left one of his little toys laying around, and it's even made from metal polymer composite. Which you can't control. Time to turn the tables. Why? Talk about a well, thank God <laughs> moment for a story. Yeah. So it was it was created by Heisenberg. He's just like fixing it up. Or Dude, that, like that. that's no better than him going. This uh, this is made of metal. He'll control it. No, Chris. No, 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 Ethan. When he's big and monstery, he can't do telekinesis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like it's the same kind of writing. We're just like okay. Yeah. What yeah. Have you say? Okay. It is because we say it is. It'd be like Professor X, who can control minds and stuff, making the helmet that blocks his ability. Like, why would you do that? There's no, literally no reason why you do that. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> well, I don't know what so, the um, yeah. comic origin for the helmet is, but in first class, uh, Shaw makes it, right? Yeah, he's Shaw to makes it for evade yeah. Professor X. Yeah, that makes, makes perfect sense because he's arch enemies. And then, and then, uh, Magneto takes uh, Eric, it. Eric, yeah, Eric takes it when he wants to be wants to block it too. But yeah, your enemy would create the defenses against your weapon, not yourself usually. And he's so close to it when you play through. <laughs> or you'd have to come, or maybe you're like, oh, he can use metal. We have to come up with some kind of inventive solution, or I gotta find a way to sneak. Like that'd be good for a stealth section. Or I have to stab him with a wooden stake. Oh, but then you should have used that for vampires. Um. <laughs> Oh fuck! Um, it's something the rags, they they're not vampires; they're bugs, idiot. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just like, it would have been nice if they did something just like even mildly clever. No, find a big magnet or something like that, and but it's literally that, that like reverses his ability or nates his ability or something. Yeah, know, something. Yeah, that's like... yeah. You have to. Yeah, like you have to power up magnets from his. You have a whole factory, and you could power up magnets and create. Some something, or you have to, or, or or if you have to meet, if you fucking have to meet Chris, he can help you because Chris is allegedly a smart boy, and he could say something along the lines of, "Well, we gotta, we gotta catch him while he's off guard," or maybe we should do nothing and allow him to go kill Miranda or something. Just I don't know. This game's shit. Um. Yeah, I want to rehighlight it because it's actually one of my like, biggest character issues ever. The the whole. Mia wasn't your wife, but he just never asks about Mia. Mia, um, yeah. she asks about Ethan though when you meet her, so she clearly cares about him more than he cares about her. Yeah, she she has. <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, Chris being like a belligerent asshole when, like, again, I hate Ethan too, Chris, but like you have no reason to be angry at him, you know? Yeah. So no. you you're, you you're sent the, them there. You facilitated the majority of this because you're an idiot. Like there's no way around it. <laughs> I think I think we talked about it, but just the hilarity of being like, "Yep, Miranda's definitely dead. I shot her like 16 times." You're like, oh yeah, yeah. The, the man well, who didn't he have to blow up Wesker with like two <laughs> RPGs at the same time? Drop him into a well, volcano. Like, this plane was. Plus his crane. Uh, this is crash. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, might as well be that. Uh, uh, Chris's plan was perfect. He he gave uh, Rosemary, <laughs> Ethan, and the supposed corpse of uh, Mia to Steve, the very very formidable unarmed dri uh, <laughs> truck driver <laughs> who had his uh, phone battery at three percent. Mm -hmm. that was only enough battery to receive one call before it died and became useless immediately. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's basically foolproof. There's no way that could go wrong. <laughs> uh, Who do you think it would kill me? Uh? <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying this fantastic yeah. meme that somebody made. Once <laughs> 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 again, ask your help killing Miranda. Help killing I am Miranda. once again asking for your help killing Miranda. You actually have his, oh, his uh, way of speaking really down, yeah. Mm. I'm glad. Rags, like um, voice, voice, someone make Resident Evil 8 alternative. Rags can voice your Heisenberg. Okay? An alternative. <laughs> I will gladly, be, I, because he's just so great. Heisenberg's great to listen to, and oh his, this, the way that he, the way that his, he gesticulates, and he's very animated when he talks, and I like theatrical, 
and his voice is so interesting to listen to. I just want more of him. I want more Heisenberg. I, I want, want more none of, of him. Them. He's cringe. I want more oh of all goodness. of them. I want more of Moreau because they don't do anything with the whole. They don't do anything with any of them, really. Yeah, that's but yeah. Heisenberg I mean, was. I boss. want more Long Lady. I want to give her a whole bunch of personality shit going on. She was lame. Yeah, I was actually yeah. shocked at how uh, overhyped uh, Lady. Dr yeah, it's just like really, like yeah, she's. she's oh, I'm, I'm no. It's I'm better that, than you. I'm a noble. That's it. And yeah. then, and then, oh my god, you killed my daughter. So I'm gonna be slightly angry at you. I'm gonna walk around. Yeah, the, pace around the house hot. for a bit. She has big boobs and thick. I. What if he swiped left and it was like a dick pic or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but, but uh, you, you see, you don't look see, at that one. You see Chris like rush towards it, like stop, 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 stop. Composite. Heisenberg can control it. <laughs> also, will that not stop the elevator from maybe working, Chris, if you shoot a massive rocket at it? I don't yeah. even... I... Chris is a smart lad. Just, um, it just takes yeah. you to a big on their own. Did know. any of you guys feel like you were even bothering thinking how this works logistically? You're just like, I'm in a field now, fine, whatever. Yeah. 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 That's, uh... You mean enough? Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say something. I wish I kind of remember. Oh yeah, I told the people in my server and some others. I was saying, man, all the people who were really, really, really wanting to see this lady Dimitres chick, this big old vampire, man, they're gonna be disappointed. <laughs> That's the thing. Wow. I never bought I mean, into the crazy hype for it, so I was just like, oh well. Just... She's just hot. That's it. <laughs> well, everyone, ex <laughs> everyone expects you to have. Wanted. There were reviews I've watched where they're like, she was like. She was given off as like the main villain. It's like if you watch the trailer, she's barely in there. You guys just went nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, it's they. You, you guys mm -hmm. got crazy about it, so they pushed that. They, it's yeah, basic, they, and they encourage know, marketing. marketing. Oh, people are responding to this. Yeah, like I said, you know, ex I was... expect to see in the next game. I mean, don't be surprised if there's a if there's something that's trying to get that thing back. But now they know to make well, her dude, a big yeah. part of the game. I was half know, expecting them to have commissioned a fucking after the credits cutscene where it just pans back to a castle and out of the rubble appears like a she crawls out of it. She's like, I'm not dead yet. I'll be back in the next one. <laughs> It's literally the chicken fight. It's just like... <laughs> the little hand comes up, yeah. walking away, yeah. Just because, like, I think Capcom must have noticed, it's like, oh my god, we needed to keep her alive. Like, if they had known what the reaction would have been, they probably would have made it so that she was the last one we kill. Mm. Just trade her out for Heisenberg. It probably would have made the game even worse, but whatever. Mm. Yeah. Uh... Um, I'll skip ahead to this one. It said, To play as Devil's Advocate, isn't it possible that one would make prototype weapons to counter your own powers so you can form tactics to countermeasures to protect yourself, like predicting what your enemies might do? Why would you build uh, them and keep them nearby, though? So, like... Yeah, so, we have a couple issues with that. Yeah, I was gonna um, say. So, the first one that... Though they, it probably came to bring in my mind first, is if you know you have it, and it's laying around, and I guess the keys are in the ignition... And you know that somebody is in the factory running around who wants to kill you. Maybe you should go like take the spark plugs out or just destroy it or something so it can't be used against you. Because uh, Heisenberg has plenty of time to oh, do that. Oh, definitely all of that. Yeah, but I think they're um, kind of uh, miscategorizing this. So you know how we study diseases that are harmful to us because we want to create vaccines or whatever. Like, yeah, that's not the same as me storing a. I was about to say guns, like, no, I have to change it. So I'm Superman, I store a kryptonite gun in my safe, and I guess I hope nobody gets it, because... As what well, this, like, well, it's yeah, worse like, than storing it in Heisenberg... your safe. You leave it on the table, Yeah, yeah and what... have kryptonite gun written on it. Was Heisenberg thinking, I wonder how much a tank would hurt me if it shot me? Yeah, like, like this was, is not... Like, what, what, what exactly are you testing with this? Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't need to. He could literally test it with his own metals. He could just throw it into himself. It wouldn't need to be that he can't control it. Like, why would you? E and then, of course, the question of just why would you ever risk this? It's like I'm going to create the perfect weapon to beat me, so I can test myself against it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. You know what they could have done? I remember how in uh, one of the X Men movies, Magneto had. Like some, some, didn't he have like some like big ball bearings or something that he always just kind of had with him that he could do anything Ooh. with him that he wanted? No, um, he pulled the like, iron out of the guy's blood and he made ball bearings out of him. Oh, yeah, I could have swore he carried person. some around because if I was, if I was a metal kinetic or whatever that's called, I would always in my pockets or something, I would have just like a ball of metal. 
yeah, that, that I sense. could use for anything. It, it, it's anything. I it could be a spear. It could be its own projectile. It could be a shield. It could be a, a something for me to stand on and hover me around. It could be an impromptu ladder. It it could be anything. It's it's multi purpose, and mm -hmm. it would be cool if they use that. Where the first time you meet him, he says, "Let me show you this." cool trick I learned. And he pulls out this, the, a couple, like they, maybe you think they're stress balls or something from his pocket and he kind of fiddles around with them in his hand for a second and then they start changing shape and they could be all sorts of crazy things. But yeah. that's just I mean, cool stuff I wish was in the thing. Even, uh, been fun. even Katara, the waterbender from Avatar Last Airbender, she keeps like a satchel of water. So if she needs to have some water and there's no water on hand, she has a weapon. So like, seems pretty obvious to have something like that. I mean, can see he like has knives and stuff he never actually uses a knife against you <clears throat> but uh uh telekinetically being able to con telekinetically being able to control knives or guns that could be really useful <laughs> he could like just... potentially point at point a gun at you remotely and shoot you pull the trigger i'm just imagining a different game all the time and i'm like imagine a miranda's about to like deliver a death blow and then she gets stuck with a knife and she's like what the fuck she looks over the right and then loads of knives just come into her and heiserberg's just fucking launching <laughs> all of them be like oh that's so cool but no. someone said the iron in your blood isn't metal actually the iron in your blood and its molecular structure it's the exact same chemical as in the metal too it much iron in your blood it's actually iron in food yeah, it's it's too. part of it's part of the hemoglobin that you need to carry oxygen. That's in your a gloom word. So <laughs> it is. I bet they made that word up. But that yeah, it kind of is of the a, same. Yeah. Did you ever uh, see a ultralight with, uh, or sorry, ultraviolet with, um, uh, what's her name? Charlize Theron? No, no. Mila uh, Jovovich. Yeah, Jovovich. Well, like, um, Jovovich. About vampires well, so, and stuff like that. It's, so, well, I guess uh, the blood, the blood being real iron, I guess it depends on what you're talking about. Like, what, what are you actually controlling? Because depending on what you're actually controlling, you couldn't pull it out of blood because it's not, it, it's it, it, like it's not the same iron atoms. But like, what molecules are you controlling? Because the iron in your blood combines with like hemoglobin and stuff, but it doesn't combine with hemoglobin in order to make the iron that we make in metals and stuff. So I guess it depends. It could it could but sort like, of be both in a weird way. But that's like, that's thinking about it, which we don't do. Like I, I guess you'd have to ask it if you put a really high powered magnet next to your uh on your body would it actually start like messing with your blood a little bit you know would, would, um, that, would that well, actually if, work like is that a, is enough iron in there to actually be magnetic well um there is if you have an abnormally high enough iron count in your blood you can set off metal detectors mm. oh wow that's interesting yeah um so that would be technically feasible if if really impractical like you'd probably have some health problems let me look at that much called. iron maybe it is but, called hemochromatosis it's, it causes your body to absorb too much iron from the foods you eat and that excess Dude. iron is stored in your organs that's a cool name hemochromatosis sounds terrifying hemochromatosis, hemochromatosis yeah you know what else is a cool name heisenberg <laughs> yeah that explains why walt picked it yeah <clears throat> um I think uh, the, I, we kind of didn't mention them, but there's a reason for that. It, whenever I miss anything to talk about in this game, it's probably because it's super forgettable. You know the ball puzzles? Like, yeah. Um, what a missed opportunity. Uh, I thought that they... I say that all the time about this game. Uh, the first, like, three I completed, I was just like, well, they were incredibly easy and simple. Um, yes. The fourth one the wasn't third, working for me properly, because, were... like, the physics were all strange. The ball was, like, phasing through walls and trying to make it through. And the, um, I found the camera on the first one, the Dimitrescu one, was fucking useless. Like, you yep. move it around and you can't see because of the yep. walls. Like... <laughs> I don't yeah. get it. Why do they half-ass those things so hard? Like, it... <laughs> yeah, the first three were shit, so easy to the point of like, why are these here? And the last one was so fucking annoying. I'm like, jeez, yeah. fuck this. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Like, other than just like, oh, what a cool little idea. I'm a little ball and a little puzzle, and I move it around. But it's just like, well, that was like, you know, the one that was just a hill. Like, oh, that was. That was fun. If you try and cheat that one, by the way, and drop down through the front, it just fail states you. It's like, oh, yes. thanks. Lame. Yeah, Railroaded. Um, Boo. Um, yeah, uh, There's actually a puzzle uh, in uh, one of the puzzles in Zelda Breath of the Wild, uh, which had the same thing where you could, con you could control, basically, you had to navigate a ball through, like, a, a maze, and uh, you could actually flip the thing completely on its back so you could actually 
flip the ball onto its back, roll it onto the other side and flip it again and get to the other side of the maze if you're really, really, really careful. So it was completely, uh, completely like free form and no limitations. It was actually a pretty neat little puzzle because uh, it was just so uh, completely, there's no boundaries or no limits. You know, just you need to get the, the ball from one side to the other. All right. So. I, I might, I might need some help with this one. We have, so someone said, so asking rags do do a come up prison between res <laughs> and eight band eight B and D high fave game resi for is span <laughs> lol whatever. Uh, I, I I can't help okay. you. On this. I'm sorry. So asking rags to do a comparison between our resi resi eight and his favorite game resi four is spam, is spam? Well, anything... is, oh is spam is spam, is spam. Well, what, did he get did he spam that question i was, I was about to say why would it surprise you anything can be spam so yeah like why would it why would it specifically yeah. asking rags to do a comparison or something it's like that can't be spam it's like yeah it can <laughs> it also, so many times take a little it. bit of Maybe they take, got a, a warning that they're uh, posting a spam comment or something. Maybe, uh, yeah. Also, just take a little bit of extra time and make your comment readable. Mm -hmm, Overrated. Mm -hmm. That's that's cool. I wanted to mention, that. by the way, when you he flings you around, you happen to fall into your little tank and fucking blow <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't believe it. Wow, it's like how insanely <laughs> lucky it is that we. Ugh. It's Resident Evil. They always have silly It's Resident things. Evil. It's supposed to be fucking dumb. Right. Um, to be... Please kill me. Remembering, of course, that the whole reason this tank exists is because he can't do anything with it. He is currently throwing it in the air. <laughs> Spinning it around in the air, yeah. So stupid. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense if you don't think about it. He There's doesn't a... even ask where Mia is here in this scene, either. Uh, it's worth highlighting as well, because we, I think everyone finds it funny, but... Uh, or at least, I think Mel may be aware of it, but, like, Chris calls because he's like ethan i heard explosions it's like you blew up the whole factory dude <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the first comment I made what yep yeah. <laughs> what did you send him out in that explosive tank to do then well he, he asked you to oh. wait right he was like wait for me That's even funny. though it... he sends you out in an explosive tank and says make sure you lay low yeah i was going to say that like, <laughs> oh yeah I'm gonna take the tank fully loaded with ammunition i'm gonna stay low as fuck no problem all right he also gives you a phone right yeah, which he calls you on here, and then he's like, "I heard Miranda's voice." Uh, but but that's it. Like you get uh, so Chris's yeah. well, Chris's so you know, involvement in this game. You know what you know? Miranda does here? Why didn't she do this in the final boss fight? Because does she has to just try different organs? Like she well, rips out your spleen the and only, your liver. The only th well, yeah, but the only I already know someone's gonna try and do the defensive. <laughs> Feel like powers are reduced after the r ritual. It's like, well, she still has the power to stab you. So I. Well, <laughs> she has. She clearly has the power to transform into like a big spider in this flying thing, and she could. She has enough power to do all that. She can't reach in and pull your heart out. It's, it's fascinating as well because we're in cutscene world, so you can't. But like, if Ethan just fucking shot at her, even like, do, do you remember what he? She pulls up feathers, and he's like, ah, ah, shoot, shoot, shoot. It's like deflect. It's like they're feathers. Like what? <laughs> What's happening? I don't <laughs> understand. They're bulletproof feathers. Because Dude, Resident Evil, uh... the feathers block bullets. Bullets are... I One of the reasons I don't like Resident Evil kind of as a whole is how... Just how weak and anemic guns are made to feel. Where... Just like... that, Like a gun's a big... That's a piece of metal that is... That is moving at a very, very high speed through soft, fleshy tissue. And it just doesn't seem to do stuff when it's not just allowed to for ar completely arbitrary reasons. Well, there's zombies, Rags. They can tank a few shots, okay? So I'm like, I'm playing Resident Evil 2 Remake, and I fucking hate that game, and I shoot a zombie, like, a thousand times in the head, and it's still not dead, and I'm like, what's this for? Like, what's this gun for? Awesome. Look at hot you take. hot taking I, I really, your RE2 really, remake stuff again. I really like RE2 remake. <laughs> I fucking Appreciate hate it on there. I'm not even gonna finish it. Don't worry, Rags, Why do you is, hate it? Rags is on an Why island on that it? one. Why do you hate it? I explained it. I hate. I fucking hate the combat a whole lot, and I'm not a fan of Metroidvania games. So not a fan. Okay. Um, 
I don't really. I'm, I don't, I'm not that invested in this position. I don't really care that much to really? discuss it. We really, though, we can't. If, you're so can't aggressive want, about but it, like, but you're not I, invested. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like it was just like I'm really. If I don't, I just don't really care about talking about Resident Evil Two. I don't. I don't, I don't fucking like it. It's boring and dull, and I don't like it. I do like that part though. I don't want to talk about it. It's boring and shit and crap, but I don't want to. Yeah, talk I think about it's boring. It. I, I think it's boring and shit, and I don't like it. I'm not going to finish it. Well, that's that's all. You know that's, that's, that's you're all right, and I'm sorry all of us brought it up. You know that was the mistake we made there. <laughs> I mean, if we yeah. wanted, to, we can discuss <laughs> it if we want to about how I don't like it, but it's fine. Like I did, I just that's fine. Do you want to talk about Resident Evil Two Remake? We can if you want. Resident Evil Two Remake isn't even really much of a Metroidvania at all. Unless this counts as a Metroidvania game, it's it's got um, some of the same elements, like, a little loop, bit looping, yeah, a little uh, bit. Map, map and I don't really like it in either game. I, I I much prefer Resident Evil 4's more. You keep making progress and keep making progress, and you don't constantly go to the same in the same wait, place wait, over wait, and over. But so why? But is that just a preference, or would you actually? Yeah, it's a, yeah. I said I didn't like it. Okay, as long as you just don't like it, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think there's anything objectively it. wrong with it. I can't think of any reasons. I don't think there. I don't. I probably don't think there are any. But so you yeah, just I don't, don't like, like going through places you've been. <laughs> uh, over and over and over without any real change, except yeah, like but now I can go back change. to this. That's the reason why you would go back to places in like Metroidvania. Is it changes all the time. That's why you go back. So to places. like the village, the village only changes <laughs> in very tiny ways oh, but, I'm um, not talking about but now no one sucks i'm talking about like just metroidvania in general or even Resident i'm sure i'm well Things yeah I'm, I'm sure that i'm i'm sure in metroidvania games obviously there is a spectrum on which it exists where yeah. like in resident evil 4 you go to the village three times total and every time the first two times are pretty similar uh this the third time is totally different uh mm -hmm. so it's not that big of a deal. It's a very, it's a relatively tiny portion of the game, and the combat is fun enough either way to where you don't really care that much. But if I'm constantly having to go back to the same area just to get through, well, now I can go to this. Now I can go and unlock that one door with this thing. I just, I don't find that very fun and engaging. And I wish that I was instead sort of making more progress through the world. Um, but that's that's definitely a preference of mine. Okay, that's fine. I won't kill you then. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now cuz if we have if we have a game like I'm not too familiar with Metroids. I I played Res I or not Resident. I played Metroid Prime 2 Echoes a long time ago and yeah. I remember liking it. Um but that was a long time ago. So if Metroid every time Prime you come back to an rap. area uh if every time you come back to an area it's different in some meaningful way um or if there's some like the village in Resident Evil 4, the third time you go there, it is it's now it's dark and raining. Enemies can now turn into Plagueis that can come out of their heads. Now there's bear traps where there weren't any before. So if you just rush through it without paying attention, you'll step on them and you're not even there that long. Like that's fine with me because there's a change that's actually happening. It feels different. I mean, just changing the lighting to that level is enough to make it really not only feel different, but limits your ability to reach out and touch people. That's one thing, but I don't feel like... I, I, I don't too, Mr. X shows up when she go back through the police station. Yeah, I don't feel like it really changes anything other than wasting my time. Nah, come on. I don't think no, you can say that in all of this. I can. This, no, I, I, I really can. it doesn't change much to be pursued by Mr. X. No, I, I really don't. No, I don't, I don't feel like it does. How does it not no. change anything? It just kind of slows me down and annoys me a bit. It's like how Dimitres just kind of shows up and then it annoys yeah, you, Mr. X and you run away. Take down. I think that's a no. I never. Distinction. Well, I I didn't even know. I thought you weren't allowed to kill him yet. You I, well, I didn't want to just pump him. ammo into him if he. Oh yeah, but that's okay. Well, that, that's better. That's better. I just chose to run away. Yeah. Okay. But so there is a difference then, because before that you weren't running away from things. But now I sort of I'm running away from a thing, which is very easy and is just annoying. And then I just go and do what I would have done. It's easy to run away, but you can make yeah. different choices about annoying. what you want to do if you need. What do you mean it's annoying? You can't it's just say it's to just... easy. To... So easy things can be annoying. Like it's easy to run away from Lady Dimitres and yeah, the... but your reasoning was yeah. it's easy, therefore it's annoying. Not it could be easy. And no, it annoying. was e it was easy and annoying. Things aren't annoying because they're easy. Things, easy. 
if that's not if that's because not a I criticism, I, I figure it's like I figure it's worthy of mention because we're talking about it. Okay, um, I I I would say that it's not easy. Uh, that's fair enough. Especially if there's certain places that you need to get to or that you want to get to quicker. Sure, that's fair enough. Yeah, but so what is your actual complaint then? Well, the other, the other, all the other parts. Like, I find it really annoying and to just just walk away uh, sorry, from, or to, run away from recap, a guy who wasn't. To recap: the original claim was there is no difference, there is no meaningful difference in the change in the location. To which I said there is one, and then you said it was easy, therefore, and it's annoying. It's easy and annoying, and, and it didn't it didn't impact me in any way other than it just took me a little bit more time to go where I wanted to go because I was just avoiding him. Which was really, it just was really, it wasn't like a challenge, and it wasn't that, it, did, it wasn't really engaging to me. I just didn't. I would didn't, say it's absolutely a challenge if if there's I mean, certain that's, places. That's fair enough. Because of course, because remember, it's it, unlike in the the Demetresque whatever castle, is mm -hmm. um, there's not often that you need to go back and forth, back and forth. Like it doesn't, it's not often that you need to do that once she starts pursuing you. Whereas when you're in the police station. You constantly have to be jumping between different places, which means that you always need to be figuring out ways to get around Mr. X to get to where you need to go if you don't want to waste ammo. I I never shot him anyway. I, I just I just never I just it just was never difficult for me and it never really did anything but annoying me. I just that's um I, that's kinda how I that's kinda how it was for me. I am unsatisfied with you with uh well. With, with I'm a, I'm afraid it. you'll have to remain unsatisfied because that's just all that it was for me. What else did you it like about Resident Evil 2 remake? <laughs> um, I didn't like uh, like I was saying about fighting zombies. I didn't like just the fighting of zombies and the spaces it gave you Why? to work with. I didn't like shooting zombies many, many, many times in the head. You don't have then... to shoot them many oh. times. The main strategy is to shoot them once in the head and then run past them while they're staggered. Sometimes when you can do that, yeah. But I, a I lot don't of the like time when you can do that. Yeah, I just really didn't like that but you said that the problem was you need to shoot them several times in the head but you just shoot them as i in as i discovered and and what i often did when i could like as i played through the game yeah. in particular but i think there were some sections where trying to get around them was really really difficult and i, yes, I don't like it when the challenge and then i don't like when i just i shoot things so many times in the head with the gun and it just doesn't seem to care and then it gets back up again i just really don't like i just don't the like reason it. why it gets it back really up is because with the me. only way that they get kept down permanently is when their head explodes and you need to shoot them many many times for that to happen Alt otherwise the whole strategy is not to take down zombies it's to get through the error as efficiently as you can all right well i just i guess i find oh, it interesting. Well, like so now i so i guess i had fun with it the whole time or like i i'm, well, just, I'm no, telling you why no, no, i didn't no, no. like it yeah, no, and I know. I, I guess it's the, the weird thing is I, that it feels I, like you're almost trying to make arguments that are um subjective that are, that are like rooted in in uh in things that you can quantify, but but no, they I, all lead to well, I just don't like it. Yeah, I just I don't like it. I didn't like the game. I'm not. Why are you even it. bringing up any arguments then, though? If you just don't like, I'm it, explaining why, why I didn't like it. Say? I'm explaining why you so, asked why. When you, Generally, when people explain why they do or don't like things, there's usually a reason behind that, and the reason itself can be criticized. I know that you don't like it. That's fine. I guess. Yeah, I'm and just I'm explaining why I didn't like it. I like. I like okay. watching. If uh... people, if people like it and they enjoy it, then like play it to your heart's content. Play it until the game breaks. Go for it. I. It's not my thing. I didn't like it, and I'm not going to go back to it. I love playing. I love watching your uh, playthrough, Muller, because I could tell. Like at first, you're like, "Oh, I better conserve ammo." Like headshot, headshot. You know, single shots, and eventually, you're like, I've got seven hundred bullets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I if, can... if you don't find Mister X scary at all, I can see it just being a nuisance. Where it's just, oh, God, I can't go down yeah, that way because Mister X is there. I'll go down like... this way. Yeah, that's just that's what he felt like to me. I never felt like I was being I actually like threatened. I. I just... Yeah. I enjoyed the horror aspect of it, like wearing it with sure. headphones yeah. and yeah, the, des had the design atmosphere. of the police station, because there's three oh. floors and there's a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere to the thing. And there's actually, yeah. I think, some interesting ways that each of the floors are connected with each other. 
So if you know the map well, you can be like, oh, well, if, if I go through the first floor and then I can come up through the second floor and maneuver them around that way, like you can you can come up with some it interesting map, routes. I wish I remembered I like more of it. The... I just can't call it. I can't remember the yeah, game. I, <laughs> I really right. like the atmosphere. It looks great. The sound design is wonderful. It gives its great vibes. I get it. I, I get it. I do like I really how everything like that is... part of and it. And yeah. the sound yeah. design too is another key point because you're listening for his footsteps either above yeah. or below you on both sides of the police station. So, yeah, well, I, love, I, I love like the latter half of that that game where like the like you said the whole everything is interconnected and it's like big, labyrinthian kind of you know mm -hmm. multiple floors and multiple ways. Some places are blocked, some places are not. And like the second half of the game basically becomes like avoiding your ex-girlfriend where you're just like, you know, oh, he's, I can hear him over here. Let me take the, this back way and this other, you know, hallway and hopefully there's no zombies or, or liquors there and maybe I can avoid him. And then, OK, good. I don't hear him. And you can like come out the other no. way. And it's like uh, all, that, that you're just constantly trying to find paths that you don't have to face him head on because he is just really, yes. really intimidating. And the best you can do is just like stun him and run past if you if you can. But that requires like ammo and resources. So. You said, yeah, they're just good game design, which I guess brings me to my question, Rags. Do you think the game is actually well made? Do you think it's good and you just don't like it? I I don't know enough about the game to say whether it's objectively good or not. I haven't given it that much okay. thought. That, that's all. That's all I needed. That's all. Um, it's it's like a different style game. Like, like someone like... said, Rags. What is the correct arbitrary number of headshots that should require to kill a zombie? Like I don't know. What's the correct arbitrary amount of snarky, stupid comments to make? <laughs> <laughs> we can we can ask I, each look, other comments all the time. Like, I I completely agree really with Rags on the on the headshot thing. Number of I, we went over it earlier. That, like I would way prefer way less bullets and way more impact. I way prefer yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah. I like like I like the whole. But it, how many times have I, um, I guess I'm asking this even though only I would know and I don't even know the answer, so <laughs> forget that being an interrogative. Wait, 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 just as, you, um, as you're explaining this, I just wanted to note, there's a zombie that appears in front of me, uh, the cutscene's activated, so he just has to disappear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's an extra, oh. he can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like, in me, for me, I like the idea of... Have like I've I've played a lot of Daisy and oh, wow he does just sort of not <laughs> exist anymore. It's you look like back down and too. he's yeah. just gone. That's actually kind of fucking <laughs> hilarious. Um, but I I was um like like when I play I, I'll play Daisy sometimes. Uh, definitely not the game for everybody, and I'm not trying to say it's a great game. Uh, but it does some things really excellently, and yeah, it's a world where you can die in one bullet and maybe you'll find like three rounds for a gun. And so killing someone with a bullet when you only have a couple, like that's insanely satisfying. That's the sort of thing I would prefer more than There's what always... I see in seven in the RE2 remake and Resident Evil eight. I, I really just it's typically I really why I love like that. Um, magnums in zombie games because most of the time it'll be like very little ammo, but each shot is like worth a truck. It'll go <laughs> and just be like, yes, killed yeah. the thing I was aiming at. Yeah, and, and I like shoot 'em ups too. It just depends on what kind of like what what vibe is the game giving me and how does my brain connect like the efficacy of ammo and its supplies with what the enemies are supposed to be. Yeah, um, a lot of it is subjective. Yeah, there's, um, there's not going to be a, a numbered so it answer, but where it is. if we were given a pistol at the beginning of this game that had a magazine that stores a thousand bullets and it takes a hundred to kill a zombie, we would all be like, what the fuck is this? Like, what? Uh, Who yeah, made I this? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that, that's terrible, but I, I, what... Oh, what, do, uh, do you see ahead. that? Sorry. Go ahead. I was shot right as I activated the thing, and it, I think it misses because it moved my laser. Uh, really? That's oh, because I was watching yeah. that, and I was... <laughs> oh, I hope not. I couldn't tell. I'm going to replay it, but it, like, Jesus yeah, Christ, I'm yeah. Watching this. Yeah, it all I was going to ask is what? It happens happen when I fight um, the... Urias guy at the, at the next part as well. He he just moves out of the way. But like, the luck on my fucking playthrough sometimes. Just, yeah. Oh, it doesn't yeah. hit right next to you? It, it hits the fence right next to you. Yep. Oh, jeez. Wow. That sucks. And it didn't even kill the That's fucking weird hog next to me. God damn. That's bizarre. <laughs> Where hog? <laughs> I, I think the the what RE2 especially tries to do, and a couple of the games do this more or less. Um, the idea, okay, you see this this very strange human. There's something wrong with them. Uh, you try to reason with it. You can't reason with it. It's trying to attack you. Maybe it bites you. Maybe it bites somebody else. You shoot it several times. Well, in a, 
plenty of times uh, that would totally take down a normal human. He doesn't, he stops, he continues coming after you. You shoot him to a point where he falls down. You're like, oh, whew, you know, thank God I'm, it's done over with. And he gets back up. And it's just that, that kind of increasing level of tension and terror where you're like, oh my God, this thing is not dying. This thing will not stop. And so I think that's, that, that's a great effect early on in the game, but eventually yeah, that'll get, re that, that'll get really old. So the idea is that, yeah, you, you, you have you then to start, balance then... the, the drama with like, you, you want to, you kind of want to have both. And so trying yeah. to find a way to have both can be very difficult. That's why game design yeah. is often difficult and why a lot of games often fail at it. It's How do I tell yeah. the player that this enemy is extremely difficult and unstoppable, but also like not waste the player's time or feel like the player was cheated or trying to uh, subconsciously tell the player that they just made a mistake by doing something that was kind of intuitive to do. It, yeah, it's a difficult thing. And that that's why you like want to have a your your pacing of of like a progression and your increase of power is important because eventually you want to give the player something better, like a better weapon so that they can take down those very formidable like used to be formidable zombies much quicker. And you're like, "Okay, good. I'm I now have a more power. I feel powerful. These guys used to take me, you know, 10 shots to the head. Now I can do it much quicker." And then all of a sudden you run into some new new enemy and that you're your now really powerful gun now just bounces off of them. Like, oh man, this thing's really powerful. Then, so you always have like a new, a new metric to measure each new memory, uh, each new enemy against. So I think that's like an effective way of showing that, like scaling up danger and and how formidable this enemy is. But I agree, like if all you get is that little tiny pistol, and it, every every single enemy is going to be a bullet sponge that can get old. But um, like Frankie was saying, there are you know in RE2, there's ways you can avoid enemies. There's uh, obviously better weapons um y y there's yeah it, it, it's it's definitely like more uh, I, I i think the original games had pretty uh tanky enemies if i remember right you had to shoot them quite a few times um, well yeah there was there was a bit of helps, a focus it helps on when the enemies there, there was an it, idea it, of you it you might not want to kill them instead you avoid yeah. them that idea was much more in older re games than certainly not this yeah. one for example like this is the thing if someone was like well on village of shadows you should avoid the bullets it's like they're not built this way they grab that's you that's almost out like, of necessity though that, that, well, that's yeah and they're all in like, corridors yeah that's almost like and, the differentiation and, between a survival horror game and, and an action game like it, it's not the technical definition but should you well, it's run a big, sometimes it's run a big broad genre that could encompass yeah, all yeah. kinds of things but but like um, the, the different like for most for most fights in like RE5 and RE6 you're basically expected to kill everybody but in uh, yeah. uh more true I'd like to say more true RE it's games that kind four. of embrace the uh yeah yeah uh and, and four is definitely kind of set that trend but like it, there's definitely cases where the earlier games like oh I don't have any ammo I'm I'm hurt I'm going to run and so that aspect kind of differentiates a, a more uh, action adventure game in my in my book than a, a survival horror game. Like sometimes you just gotta run, sometimes you gotta avoid, sometimes you gotta you know be careful. You gotta you gotta conserve rather than yeah. Just it's, shoot, I think shoot, the reason shoot. why you it's get so that impression is because there's more of a sense of permanence to the world. At least yeah. that's how it felt in two compared to Village, like the remake. It felt like it didn't feel like I was ever sort of leaving the world behind to go to some sectioned off part of the level or like just progressing in a linear way. Uh, you know even though there is a set way that you're meant to go forward, it feels like the zombies that you leave behind will still be there when you get back. Um, it really feels like that. And I'm I'm pretty sure this game does that too, but it doesn't feel quite like that. They like despawn and I respawn, I think. They, it it yeah. depends on where you go. Yeah, sometimes they'll just walk back to where they used to be. Other times they will flat out despawn and they'll have to re-enter the game essentially in whatever animation or lore appropriate way that exists and then the music starts and then they're back in combat again um yeah. so like it, it yeah it depends on the section i know in the in the den section when you're on your way to the stronghold there's the room that there's the room with you, you do a big fight and there's like three levels and you go up to the top and you have to fight your way into the door this is before the urias fight yeah and the enemies at the bottom will not follow you up to the top of the room. They'll run away and they'll despawn completely. So for me, what I did was, I, I, and I've got a clip of this, I think I put it in one of the discords, but you, I, I, I thought I'd cleared the room completely, so I went back down to the bottom floor to check for goodies, and then enemies started spawning and, like, attacking me, 
And then I was like, oh shit, where'd these guys come from? And then when I ran back up to get a better position, they had ran away, despawned, and the combat music stopped. And I was just like, wow, this is, we haven't left the room. Yeah. And this is happening. Well, the, the, the castle archway or the, the stronghold archway, it's literally just like yes. a big wall for them, but they don't even detect you exist once you go past it. It's terrible. Um, I, yeah, I, it is. I, there's, they're bizarre. And they don't make any sense. Like, I can, I understand if you have invisible walls, but they sort of make sense in the world to some degree. But when we're talking about, like, I've been, I've posted some of the Discord where the zombie won't just, or the Murawaka, he just won't follow you down the stairs to the bottom floor for for just whatever reason. So his actual play area is is tiny. It doesn't make any sense. And when you're running away from enemies in this game, what you just will do a lot of the time, either because you're bored of the combat or you just don't want to deal with fighting enemies, you'll just notice they don't follow you and they go away. You're like, oh. Yeah, and uh, and I honestly think that aside from all the mechanical failings that that involves, it's really bad for immersion. Oh, it's horrible for immersion. I think the the worst one was one of the first ones you find, where you meet the girl and her grandfather, and em the enemies they're hiding from that are right yeah. there will not follow you into that room because the game doesn't want to deal with the consequences. And because because we're it all game of, game boys, all right? We we like our little games. It's like, oh my god, your brain starts going, wait, if I drag them in here, will it kill them? And those NPCs are now dead where they would be alive? Is that something that Rezi was like, what? I can't do that. <laughs> no, we don't want that to happen because <laughs> we don't want that to happen. They have to live for five minutes longer. So you just can't. The enemies will just run away. They They won't do it. I still can't. I still can't get over that damn uh, fire in the room and everybody dying right in the same room they're introduced. <laughs> it's it's insane. So, so weird. So insane. Uh, that was another thing. Like, like, sorry, I'll be really quick. It's just like realizing sure. what they were gonna do with characters. It's like it, I was like more than halfway through the game and I hadn't even like seen Moreau or Heisenberg again yet, and I was like, oh my god, the characters are gonna be nothing, aren't they? Like. How yeah. did this happen? I thought because we got off to a start, it was like, oh, like, this could work, maybe. If they, yeah, come on. But the effort, guys. Yeah, the whole Mad Max run, and it's like, okay, this could be kind of fun. This could be kind of quirky. And it's yeah, it's very, very thin, uh, especially for uh, pretty much anybody but Heisenberg. But uh, I was gonna tap into something that Fringy brought up is that uh, the the permanence is a, a really, really good point about um, uh, survival horror games, in that uh, you're when you fire that bullet, you're not getting it back. Like you're, mm -hmm. you, you've now removed one bullet from the world, and and you're gonna have to scrounge that much harder to hopefully get enough ammo and resources together to to survive the rest of the game. Which is, you know, it, it gives you kind of a panic. It gives you kind of a little bit of a you know sense of horror, like oh no, I'm I'm actually running out of resources, or oh no, I missed that shot. But also one of the things that's really uh, I don't know if it's fun, but it's very definitely immersive and compelling. Um, are the idea that it remembers all of where all of your the monsters and zombies are so like um yeah like you said like there's some weird spawns despawns it kind of treats in re8 it kind of treats lycans as like expendable so like i don't know if it actually remembers where any of them are it just kind of like they spawn and then maybe come back and they're not there any, anymore but in the old re games it would remember exactly where every single monster was and where you left it so i remember specifically um running away from mr x on uh, re2 uh, remake and going back through this hallway and then realizing to my terror that i had left two zombies there so not only was i running away from somebody but also navigating through like two other zombies that were mm -hmm. wandering through a pretty narrow hallway and I, and I just i respected the game to call me out on my my uh being lazy earlier is now is now giving me a payoff later is because now what, i now i have to uh, is that what worry about killing zombies things. is it's laziness well, uh, laziness or trying to conserve ammo or kind of trying to conserve resources. Like I, I could have killed those zombies, but I would have been lower on ammo because of that. Or maybe I would have gotten hurt or something like that. Or so it literally I, could be that you're like, I, I could kill them, was... but I'd rather continue. Like, yeah, yeah. And that they, they have like a semi underdeveloped uh, mechanic where you can board up the windows. And if you don't board up the windows, zombies get through. But uh, you have very limited inventory space. So you may not necessarily spend the time to you know find and grab the right boards to put on all the windows but if you don't board up the windows then maybe a zombie will pop through so there's a lot of different like you know being uh quickie or being uh, less you know uh completionist or being you know lazy or wanting to conserve resources can bite you can bite you later so it definitely like 
So it, it, the actions have consequences. That's basically what I. What so I let me let me ask it. this: If the game, so when Mister X shows up, and you couldn't have foreseen that that he would show up and chase you around the whole place, yeah, is it good that the game punishes you because that happened when you couldn't have foreseen it because you didn't kill those two zombies earlier, which at the time was totally this the correct decision to make. I mean, it's not necessarily the correct decision. It's just the decision you got to live with. Like if you, you could but have if the been. the consequences aren't in any way related to the scenario in which it arose, like is that, is that good game design? I mean, you to could argue gonna... that. Sorry, sorry. I don't mean to like uh, be disagreement with you, but it's just, uh, um, you no, could argue fine that. That's disagree with me. Yeah, yeah. No, just uh, saying like you could argue that every new encounter is, 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 uh, is something you couldn't have foreseen. Like every new room, you don't know what's in there. You don't know what what monsters are in there so yeah obviously mr x definitely kind of throws you a curveball you don't expect to have a big basically invincible uh zombie that will follow you through zones you know up here that's also kind of I, a, I think it'd be fair to mention like being like oh mr x dropped on me here i couldn't have known that was gonna happen it's like well he's gonna he's gonna turn up possibly anywhere at any time you're always gonna well, be aware of mr x no no, yeah. no I'm, what i'm saying is so before mr x shows up you don't know that he's going to show up. He has to make his entrance into the game, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, but you know, so you're never, you're never going to be safe in any particular place. So any zombies you leave could be potential mine, uh, mines in future landmines. There you go. Yeah. So if you if you're in a position where you you couldn't if like if the room is complete, there's no reason for you to go to the room anymore. If uh, and and at this point, I might be because I don't remember enough about the game. So. This could be purely hypothetical, but just work with a hypothetical. If you are, if you've got a room or a floor that's completely done, you found all the items, gotten all the keys, you don't, there is no possible way that you could foresee or any intuition you could use for why you'd want to come back to that floor. But in the main room of the, in, in one of the hallways, there's two zombies that you didn't kill because there's no reason to. Um, and then let's say Mr. X shows up and chases you through that hallway and now the zombies are blocking your path well when you say there's no would reason that be to, an issue wouldn't that be reason to well well here well, that's what i'm saying if you don't have any reason to believe that a figure like mr x will show up later in the game and chase you through that hallway then should you be punished for not have killing those two zombies but that's the risk versus the reward right he Wait, could he I, might i thought um i thought that in uh at the beginning of the game, or earlier in the game, you look at some camera footage and see Mr. X walk around before you first encounter him. I, I, th I think he, you, his I introduction is he punches through a wall and rips the guy through the stone wall. I think, so, I think, I uh, think, I think his introduction, I'm pretty sure the order, because that scene does happen, I remember that, I'm th pretty sure the order is, you look at a camera, he's walking down there, and then he punches the camera out, and you're like, oh, geez, he looks scary. Then a helicopter okay. crashes into the police station, and when you turn on the sprinklers to suppress that fire, Mr. X lifts up the helicopter and it's like, now he's the threat moving forward. Like, at that okay. point, he can kill you. Someone says, Rags is trying to objectively prove RE2 is bad, so he can just be right. I literally said that he I said might just opinion. be thinking about a hypothetical, because I think this is an interesting little oh, game thing to talk about in terms of how, like, what level should you, or should you not punish or give consequences oh, to players based train. on actions yeah i was gonna yeah, say that yeah, that wasn't I'm, that wasn't rags's bias that was the chatter's bias yeah though. i'm <laughs> yeah i'm i'm just that's a legit question because that's why i said i think this probably hypothetical because i can't remember a lot of stuff about it because i think yeah. that's interesting if you have a game where the resources are very limited so you want to avoid enemies when you can when it's super advantageous to do that and then all of a sudden that wrench gets thrown in where all the decisions that you previously made that made total sense and it was just obvious like clearly seemed to be the right decision now those are punishing the player and creating extra challenges for the player just kind of out of nowhere i think that's a i think that's an interesting hypothetical to talk about i thought the scenario was you could kill them but it's going to take you time and resources but that means that they're gone forever versus staying there and potentially getting in your way in future and so that's a risk you were taking that's what so I thought. It's like, a, maybe. It's like a, it's that's like a shortcut. Slowly it's a trickle in. Yeah, that was that was kind of, which yeah, was yeah. kind of like the hypothetical of like the, you have no reason to ever think you're going to go through that area again, 
And then the game says, oh no, you have to go through this area because we've introduced an element that now sort of makes all of the smart decisions you used to make work against you when you couldn't have possibly known it. But is that, like, is that strictly a bad thing if the game I, throws a wrench into your plans, you know? I Well, that's that's the discussion, I guess. Is, and it kind I think of ties this back to the safe room discussion. Sort of. Yeah. like I, I like the idea of the game throwing a curveball, but I think it's all... Because it, then again, the curveballs are on a spectrum, like many things are, and how punishing it starts to feel or how it actually is. Because if you're like, oh, you didn't do that thing earlier, well... Now it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit more difficult just to kind of test you in a way, versus oh you didn't do that thing earlier. Well now you're really gonna be fucked because of it. Well, it's, yeah. it kinda, it, it, every... My brain has gone to a Mando's gun jabbing. I'm just like, wait, <laughs> that could happen. It's like yeah, that could happen. Guns can jab. It's like it wasn't jabbed in all Star Wars content up to now. <laughs> what the so, fuck? Yeah. So let's see, Rags, it's interactive. You always talk about wanting games to be less cinematic and more interactive, and now you're going against that idea. What a worthless comment. Oh, you're God. Um, Maybe we have new viewers tonight because it's Resident Evil. We I don't know what's happening. We must. Like, that's not... It, has, it doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about. So, um, so I, why I think would... that... Go ahead. Yeah? No, no I was just going to say that I think that uh, we might have mischaracterized uh, avoiding the zombies as a purely 100% correct decision. It's more of a... A well, that's compromise why or 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 a shortcut out of desperation you're like okay i don't have well, that, that many bullets i don't have that much med kits this, this zombie might bite me let me try to stun him and run by as a band-aid and come back to this well, problem as, later as... and then and then when you come back to it later you know like for example i told you about the liquors liquors are extremely formidable uh but they're blind so it's like okay well maybe in this hallway I'll need to get to this room, so maybe I'll just walk around him very quietly okay, yeah, and I get hope it. for That's... the best. And then, and then yeah, when you come I, back, I you're it. like, "Oh no!" That's why I, I said this left was a hypothetical. Okay, we're we're not even. I didn't even use like Resident Evil terminology discussing the hypothetical. We've kind of moved. I, at least I certainly moved away to that to talk about the, okay. the concepts. Well, I get it. I promise. Um, and someone says, "Why would you assume anything, Rags?" So you have to. You you can't live without doing that either in video games or in like life, you have to assume things. And what a player assumes is going to be, of course, on the player to a degree, but there's reasonable assumptions players can often make. Well, yeah. And um, it depends on how information is presented to the player. A major bulk of our criticisms today have been how your assumptions, your intuition, is completely subverted in this game. And Yeah, absolutely. Like, that you, you can't even have subversion of expectations if you don't have players expecting anything. And I think it's totally safe to expect things. Um, yeah, like in, there's in a games, door. Like... Can it be opened? Well, we know that can even be locked or not. And if someone went, well, no, it's it's a horse. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah, we <laughs> have to we have to work off of base assumptions. And if you don't have if if everything is like nonsense and you can't expect anything to be anything, then like, how do you even have a game function at that point? Uh, and, and one solution I thought of of the problem we're talking about the safe rooms, maybe safe rooms aren't there. Maybe you have to create them. So like maybe you walk into a room, you barricade the windows, you bar the door, you set up a trap or two, maybe a mine next to the door or something like that. And then you've now created your safe room. Uh, safe rooms aren't safe by default. You've now, you've, you've seen mechanics, how they work. You've seen the, the shelf pushing mechanic. You've seen the, you can, you, you know, bar windows, you know, pulling a mechanic from a say RE2 remake. Uh, and you you know how to place mines and how they work. So you now know that you're in relative safety. If something breaks through, you're gonna have warning. And if they or if you it comes something comes knocking, you'll have warning. And if it breaks through, they're gonna step on a mine. So you have like a relative level of safety. So I think yeah. that would actually be probably preferable to oh, this room is magically safe and nothing can enter. I think that would be preferable. That way you're not just handed safety on a on a plate. You've actually made your own safety. I mean, that'd be a little bit more tricky to Put together but i think it would it would kind of feel more earned and it would, it would also it, it would it would give you a sense of security without completely removing any threat of danger um i saw someone say like oh so if someone disagrees with rags it must be a new viewer so i think that must be a new viewer because that's a really be, really bad cause... argument i know they're not yeah. a new viewer <laughs> for reference the funny thing to me is like what a bad argument to make when you just had like half an hour fringy and rags disagreeing potentially over, over different subjects and then yeah i'm, a, like, I'm it's, 
we yeah. all disagree with each other on loads of things. It's the quality of the arguments. If you say, and this happened with the boys, this is why I start to think that this is what's happening, because it was, it was a new topic. You say, why are you guys only looking at what's consistent in the story? Like, oh, you must be a new viewer. Like, I don't understand what else could explain that. In the same way that, say it's something like, oh, why, why do you care about Resident Evil making sense? It's like, you must be a new viewer. I don't understand what's happening. It's like, stop making these yeah. arguments. If you're, a, if you're an old viewer, what the hell? <laughs> What's going yeah, on? Yeah, when when we have when we have this conversation about like the 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 price of you know the decisions you make and consequences and how do you throw wrenches into that and unforeseen potential you know aspects of the game in terms of mechanics that happen and retroactively punishing you when you couldn't have known better all this stuff like that and discussions about that and you and you say why is Rags saying this? I, I thought he wanted more interactivity. Herder. Why yeah. is he complaining? Like, that's such a stupid thing to say that I, I can't even... Who well, listens to the conversation we just had and walk away with that? Yeah, it, it would be like if I said it takes a thousand bullets to kill a zombie. That sucks. And then someone says, like, you don't want more gunplay? <laughs> yeah, why, why it's, it's essentially you, what it is, yeah. Why would you Why yeah. would you make that argument? Why are you doing this to me? Like, stop it. You wouldn't lift up your arms against fire, but you would when against an axe. It's like... Yeah, what, like what I, I like, can't what? say anything without people taking the worst possible insane interpretation of what's being said and jumping to some crazy conclusion about oh yeah, clearly I it. went less interactivity well, hey, in not, video games. Not all of them, just Look, a they, but they oh, just not, did not it again. Everything must be predictable, otherwise it's bad game design. Rags. I think they might have been joking on the joke. Let's hope they're joking. Do you think that's a joke? I can't I'm, tell I'm hope, anymore. I'm hoping, I, I'm hoping so. I, I, I can't imagine, tell anymore. I'm imagining uh, Chad is like a living organism who's like built up a, a long-term <laughs> cool. Rags hot Can take uh, immune system. So like whenever Rags Maybe. says anything, it's like, but no. <laughs> well, if, if Rags said he liked water, they'd be like, oh, okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> like, yep. oh, so you like drowning. Okay, wow. Well. <laughs> And yeah, I, like this. I, I legitimately like this though. Maybe people would like Rags more if he was to stop denying the Armenian genocide. <laughs> uh, okay. Semi regularly doing that on the Well, What we have to remember about chat is that it's all one person yes. with it multiple is, personality it is, it is the disorder. Need my seat is what we have in our chat. Well, I mean, Chase, so we should feel sorry now. for for chat really. I think Chase for having like to deal with that condition. Two different times in the past eight hours chase was like you're all great five percent of you though hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, uh... Uh... which by the way uh we're pretty much at the end of the game we've covered loads of topics yeah I, your I, playthrough I, I don't know if you guys lining up with our uh yeah our that zombie here, there sort of what that, the like end. single zombie there like they oh, they, they, oh, I ran through, yeah, they, they, they drop a couple of them item. and even i remember <laughs> I at this point through. i was just like why are you doing this game stop it yes, like, why I yeah stop. so i can click on their heads six times like fuck off i go away um, i want to finish this game i want to go home i don't i don't know uh, what else to say to the main boss fight other than just like yeah just shoot it until it's dead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Miranda is, is very meh. Um, yeah. What do you think a, about a weak her way design, to end? The like how game. she looks, because I hate it. I, I think I might have it liked it if I sense. if I knew more about her and her history, because otherwise she's just kind of like, look, it's a cultish bird person. <laughs> okay. But why is she? Yeah. Is she supposed to be this weird scientist with a like, lab and everything? I don't get. What's this weird halo behind her head with the eyeball in it? What's with the six wings? What evil seraphim nonsense is this? What's with the robes? Like, like, is this? What's going on? Like aesthetically here? What is? What's? I, I, I'm confused as to what they're trying to get imagery wise. Well, here. Right. Do you see? Let me pull up all the notes I have on her character. All right. Here we go. All right. Uh, yeah, hmm. late. Don't but spare she, any details. She's evil. She wants her daughter back because she lost her. She'll turn Rose into hers by separating her into parts and then putting her back together. That's it. That's all I got. She made. She made a virus oh, out of goo. I don't know. She's, she's, oh. she's been alive. Thanks for that one shot, Chris. Been been alive for a hundred years or something. Huh? So. Oh yeah, I was actually in this playthrough. I was like, Chris, where are you, buddy? I need you, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> help me out. I buddy. was asking the same thing. Like, what? Yeah. You helped with one bullet, and then I. I know you've got seven hundred like, bullets. Broke. I was just you a second ago. <laughs> I was you. I know what your inventory is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you got any more? Got any more of those laser blasts there, Chris? Yeah, those would be useful. <laughs> if we had a couple of those right now. 
Uh, they almost, thanks for that one bullet. That's something, I guess. The way this structurally goes, it's like you kill Heisenberg, and it's like it's time for the final boss. And you might, I would forgive you for being like, who? It's like yeah. Mar Miranda. You're like, oh, right. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> if someone thought Heisenberg was the final boss and forgot about the Miranda fight, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be like, yeah, I can see why you thought that. And his was well, much more her, spectacular like, than his point. was, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a, a letdown a little bit. Um, I was gonna make a point about uh, oh yeah that I never even thought about using the uh, flash flashbang for Miranda, which apparently is ridiculously useful. But I did find it incredibly useful for the uh, big wolf guy last fight you do with Chris. Uh, one flashbang will stun him, and you can just like do the laser on him right after that. So, oh okay. Right. Yeah, we it's have actually, an answer to the uh, here. Here's a here's a it's a funny tidbit. Most of the times when you just start the laser, point at him and do the thing, he just stops doing anything and just yells at you until you True. shoot the laser. True. Metal is uh, right about that, yeah. I I oh, tried it out. It was surprising. Yeah. I guess he doesn't like lasers. He's like, stop it! <laughs> no! I hate rock... Ah! <laughs> Someone... I, I, I have an answer to my, my garb question. Spoiler alert, it's not a good answer. But someone tried. That's a good thing. Uh, she started a religion... And adopts the garb rags. You did play this game, right? Oh my god. So, okay, so there's a few reasons why that's dumb. Bravo for trying. The, the, the bit at the end wasn't necessary. So, I'll explain to you why you're wrong. So, the whole, the whole concept of a village religion that worships Miranda, and you see the other portraits of these people... It's weird thinking that they worship or pray to Moreau or Heisenberg or the creepy doll lady. Like, that's kind of bizarre. Not sure I believe that. But okay, mm -hmm. Mother Miranda is this religious figure, I suppose. They don't do anything with that, ever. All the villagers die in, like, the first hour. So that all gets... that. No one cares about that. Miranda knows that it's bullshit. She's not actually magical. She just thinks she's powerful. And by this point in the game... All the villagers are dead, and it was like her design to kill them all. Yeah. So what's the point of the the get up? What, what's with the weird outfit and the imagery well, of the outfit? That, that'd be a they, great they, payoff. They did for... the kick the can down the road, but for the game, they were like, she wears robes because religion. <laughs> like, yeah, but oh. but like Sadler, like Sad, you could see Sadler runs the village. There's the church. He's got all of the cultists that follow what he does. There's like sort of a reason why he has the robes. He hides a fucking massive tentacle thing in his robe, the one mm -hmm. he kills um, Louis with. But there's more of a reason for Sadler to wear the robes than there is for her. I mean, and she can shape shift. So at any time she could be in whatever she wants to be in. And I'm just I'm curious what they're trying to evoke here with this this outfit. And if it's the idea of she's a religious leader they dumped that the first hour into this game yeah, when they it? barely even developed it to begin with. You know that you yeah. said you nearly went stealth mode and you found the the, uh, the lichens couldn't see you? It's like, imagine you actually do sneak around the village and you manage to catch one of his sermons and, like, you know, there's a whole group of people and then they eventually move out of the church or whatever, but, like, five people stay and then they do some kind of blood sacrifice thing and then she converts them or infects them or whatever with through ritual sacrifice and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like... You know, you could... I almost want to see the village in its active days instead of... Because I, I yeah, find it like, so hard to understand what the hell was happening here. It could have yeah. been so interesting to see, like, we're praying to Mother Miranda. Who is this person? Is she, like, like is this an offshoot of Christianity or some weird pseudo-religion or some... Like, what's going on here with this? But Remember they, they never do anything with it. We already complained about the, how they killed off all of the human characters the second they introduced them. But in, when I was playing it, I was like, I'm kind of liking this selection already. But then they started to yeah. do their creepy chant toward, like, Miranda, their prayer. And I was like, oh, is it going to be yeah, like, this is these people are all, like, like normal, but at the same time, they all worship Miranda. She's like a demon god or some shit. I was like, this could be interesting. Yeah. They all die. Yeah, you have yeah. the, they're yeah. normal, so you can relate to them. But there's that weirdness of they pray. And I think, in, and you could just say in, well, in good faith. They could pray to this thing that they think protects them, but and something's happening in the village. They don't know why. Why they're wondering why Mother Brand is doing stuff or allowing it to happen. It just none of it. They don't do anything with it. It's like they ask the question, 
but they don't a, do they say please acknowledge the footage oh we t we, we did at the beginning of the stream this is we, we, if you we weren't we, here then but yeah. yeah this is a hilarious glitch that Malfer got for, for anyone is, yeah, who's new to this scroll <laughs> just all you have to do is scroll back eight and a half hours or eight and, eight and forty actually and you'll probably see us reacting to this don't worry this is not new to us anymore yeah, but it is that's wild. utterly hilarious uh huh. Uh, yeah, they had a great setup there because, like, uh, Louisa was very. You could see she was very faithful. She was like, but there's wisdom in her in her piety or faith or whatever. And so, like, it, like we said, if we we made the imaginary version of this game where some characters live beyond the scene that they're introduced in, mm -hmm. uh, that that would be interesting. Like, what if she actually uh, that she lives to the end and she sees uh, Miranda turn into like a giant spider monster and her faith is shaken. You know, mm -hmm. that could be an interesting payoff. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Maybe at that at that moment she like you know you know I can't believe I've believed in a false god this entire time. Miranda is no god; she's a devil, and maybe wow, gives you something. Wow, that could be interesting. Yeah. What? Hey, hold hey, on, right? that sounds interesting. You better <laughs> stop calm right down there. there. Hold your horses. Stop right there, criminal scum. Exactly. What a shame. But it could have been. Like, so, it could have been really interesting. Yeah, with no characters to experience this world, it, it's just you and and Ethan doesn't respond to it properly either. He's just like you know what are you doing you know uh, yeah he joins them he, he holds and... their hands in the circle and they yeah. pray and but there's no questions no uh, like he never like what if he said mother miranda who's that and then they say oh i'm so glad you asked we can't fucking wait to tell you about mother miranda she's the fucking tits let me tell you all about mother miranda she's great no then there'd and be then a they fire explain and an it. explosion and something would stop it because they can't have conversations in this game oh <laughs> uh, not allowed uh, yeah it yeah, it, it could have. There could have been something there. Um, but oh, dude, it, the potential. We went over there. this. It's through the roof. They yeah. walked it into the goal. That's why this is more goal. disappointing than yep. seven. This and and it's like movies where we cover them. We're like, you had all the money. You had all of the potential. That you didn't do fuck all. Resident Evil Once Upon a Time would set the trends and tell people, hey, this shit, this is cool. Do what we do. Now it's trying to catch up. It's like. What's everyone doing now? Cinematic stuff, cool. Oh, everyone like PT. Remember PT? We'll do a whole house of PT. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. uh, can you guys do something, you know, either new or perfected? Try a little bit harder, and you know that Resident Evil 9 is probably going to be even thinner. It'll be and some of the even more sexy characters, even more <laughs> spectacular roller coaster boss fights because fuck, and then there's going to be like two guns. <laughs> <laughs> with how well this one is selling, I can guarantee that they're going to try and replicate the uh, the yeah. Lady D thing, you know? Yeah, you're going to have uh, the character, yeah. They're gonna again, like, it, I bet. If people have listened to us for nine hours about this, maybe we have possibly changed a mind or two about, like, why we, we are so disappointed with it. But, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm um, very worried yeah. that Resident Evil's just dead at this point, because this is all we're going to get. Yeah. yeah. Just, it, I... I started playing Resident Evil 4 again the last couple days because I played this and it was so disappointing. And I went back to play Resident Evil 4 and I was like, wow, this is fun. I'm having fun playing this. Oh, oh, here's something. So I asked a couple people. I don't know if anyone ever got back to me, but I don't blame them. I did ask a bit late. I can, I guess I can check and see. So I asked some people on my friends list on Steam if they could, um, when you beat the game your first time through, tell me how many enemies you killed. Because I was curious, um, there's a you could check at the very end in your challenges, and it says like out of how many, and you could see your kill count essentially. Um, my kill count at the end of my first playthrough was 319. I think Chase said it was like 350. So already 49. That's a pretty big difference considering how few enemies there are to kill in this game. That's like percentage wise, that's a fair amount. That's a that's about a 50 or sorry, that's about a it's about a 30, it's like a 10-ish percent, 10, 9-ish percent difference. That's that's kind of a big deal stretched over a big game. Um, and I was thinking, well, gosh, you don't actually fight much in this game. This game is a lot of cutscenes and walking around and backtracking. There's not a lot of actual, like, fighting enemies in this game. Mm -hmm. And I was no. comparing that to Resident Evil 4 in my head, and I was like, man, you kill a lot of enemies in Resident Evil 4. You're constantly playing the game and shooting and engaging in combat. And you can absolutely kill over a thousand enemies in a Resident Evil 4 playthrough, and you get like a third of that in this game. 
And I was like, well, that's, yeah, I, I can absolutely believe that. There's so much more gameplay and fighting in 4 yeah, than there is in this. It's there's not so much more cutscene in this. There's so much more yeah. look at the stuff in this. And I know that someone's going to be like, what's wrong with that? And it's like, well, listen to the whole stream. You have all the context for why we thought it was bad, okay? okay there's no point going over it again. And uh, I saw... I saw someone say, like, well, you know, it's a bit late, people have already bought this now, like, in terms of criticizing it, I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> We're gonna criticize, there's gonna be a Resident Evil, reason. like, 20 one day, like, you know. <laughs> but it's, it's just, some, it's something to think about, and someone said 300 plus sounds like a lot, it isn't really, when you stretch it over, like, a, <laughs> like, the amount of time you spend in the game, and all the... That it's not actually that high at all, really. What's the yeah. um, what's the completion I think the time average is, on average? For the Resident average completion. It, it, oh well, for this it's like ten hours. I don't yeah, know I was curious if Resident Evil Four was like twenty or something. Like I honestly, I'm, I have no idea right now. That's funny. Um, it can, twenty hours. Yeah, that's the average. Oh, okay. With a game, but considering how small this village is, I don't know what is what these guys all come from. Oh well, yeah, yeah that's another like, thing. Yeah. yeah. There's four <laughs> houses in the village. I can yeah. Well, I can explain. All of them are the undead from the graveyard. They all climb out of the little graves. It's like thousands uh -huh. of dead over centuries. They're all climbing out slowly. That makes no Ooh. sense. Yeah. Oh, Someone it makes said, no I sense. I it sounds like a lot for this game. <laughs> I can see what you mean. You might think that it's... Yeah, it's it's still well, not a lot for the game. But I can see why it would... When you watch someone play the game because of how much not fighting there is, that it might surprise you. But... Yeah. It's about... It's, uh, if you run the math, it's about an enemy every two minutes. So it's yeah, but you got to remember that you're getting bad. like 10 enemies at a time, so yeah. really it's like 45 minutes of nothing. Yeah, no, I was mentioning that's like yeah, the, every, yeah. yeah, one kill every two minutes isn't isn't that much when you average no. it out, especially when you find that like that stronghold alone, you probably kill like 50. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, it really backloads a lot of the combat and enemy variety in this game. Yeah, it really does yeah, feel that way. Like the stronghold forward is just combat, 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 combat. <laughs> and cutscenes and cutscenes. Hey. Oh yes. I'm not gonna Can't do forget those. It was funny when when we met up with Chris at the bottom of Heisenberg's place. I like got the vibe of like finally they're gonna tell us what the plot is. <laughs> it's like here <laughs> we go. And then fade to black. Oh yes. Uh yeah. The even thinking of like the pacing of Resident Evil Four is so good. Um, yeah. There's not these long drawn out sequences where you're not doing anything. And before people say, well, what about the Ashley part? The Ashley part is almost definitely way shorter than you remember it being. I also don't hate the time. Ashley part, okay? I don't yeah, hate the it. Ashley part was quite short. You can get through that really quickly. It, it, it really isn't long at all. Um, and then you're, you're back to it. Uh, it was like a nifty little change of pace. Uh, but, man, there are big stretches of this game, not just counting the Beneviento Manor, which is misery to get through. Uh, where you just don't feel like you're playing the game, and it's really kind of a shame. Big I will, I will agree with you on replay. On the first playthrough, I can seriously see that shit working really I, well for the I average person, agree. and then relatively yeah, well for there. people who are like big on games. Yeah, I, I can see why people would really, really like it. I didn't like it. I fucking hated it in the um the subsequent playthroughs, but I agree. I can see why people would really enjoy it on the first playthrough. You know, um, if this was like an amnesia game or whatever or that had something, some theme about or, a mother or whatever. It is an amnesia like, game. Like lost, <laughs> who lost a child or whatever. Like that'd be a perfect fit for this game, for that sequence. But in this game, it seems game. like a, seems like a weird, weird tangent. I, I enjoyed it, but it's just, yeah, it did not fit. And they, it was just way too convenient. It's like, okay, we're switching it. We're in an amnesia game for a little bit. We're going to take all your weapons magically <laughs> when we turn off the lights for three, three yeah, seconds. Yeah, I know you mean, yeah. It, yeah, honestly, like, it could have been a DLC. Like, that's how strange yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and by the really way, I've seen people say, fitting. like, wait for the DLCs before you fully judge the game. It's like, the DLCs for Resident Evil 7 no. were garbage. So, good no luck game with that. gets that. Yeah, no game gets that afforded to them. If you sell me something, then I certainly have a right to criticize it. Um, well, yeah. And, but if you can't, if, if you can't give me a good product without DLC, like, oof. Yeah, yeah, obviously, but I, I would just yeah. go as far as saying it's like, fine, I'll just be specific. It's like, I'm talking about it before it had its DLC. You can talk about it when yeah. it has its DLC. <laughs> go yeah. nuts. A, um, a theoretical DLC that, that uh, details Chris's uh, <laughs> fixes events everything. And, 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 and like somehow develops all the characters better and did all the, Chris did all these amazing, important things and 
the background and there was some great reason why he didn't tell anybody anything like maybe that that could potentially improve the base game but uh, you know treat the base game as its own thing also people DLC saying going to change that the joe baker's dlc was pretty good so i remember there being one really bad one if i reviewed some of the dlcs in my video it's not those ones it was the one that came after it it was like i think you play as chris or something but is the baby inside of her yes sure well you were well. shooting her with bullets though <laughs> yep right yeah, yeah, yeah. she's a goo baby it doesn't matter It'll go right through right. exactly <clears throat> and she never opens her eyes throughout the entire game he's a baby you start and to then, fall apart but you don't really fall apart i don't get it huh? why is he and falling then you apart because yeah, they needed him to die it. now it was time so for Rags, him to this die. This is the same person who says, never played The Last of Us 2. I watched it, therefore I can criticize. So, um, if you recall, which clearly you don't, that's okay. Um, but I'll, I'll help you out there. You need it. So, we, uh, I criticize the story and the characters and the themes of it and some of the gameplay design decisions. But the gameplay itself, in terms of things that I would actually get from playing it, I, I, I couldn't speak to. And I was pretty darn specific about this, of how I had only watched it. I hadn't played it. In Same. fact, I think I even said, and this shouldn't be controversial, but I, I still said it, and I think I stand by it, it's probably more likely that someone who just watches and isn't playing might be able to gather more from the story because they can focus all of their attention on the story yep. and the dialogue and not get distracted by any of the gameplay. They might so, even like it more <laughs> because they don't have to suffer through the mechanics. Uh, uh, Franks is a pretentious twit who loves to suck off RE4 because, quote-unquote, it's perfect. What it follows the logic, <laughs> even though gameplay makes no sense. So, criticize. There's a lot to criticize RE4 for. I bet I could criticize Resident Evil 4 more than most people because I've played it more than most people, and I've played it recently. There are absolutely things to criticize about Resident Evil 4. I did that during this stream. Yep. And if I was going to remake Resident Evil 4, there are big parts of it that I would completely change. I so, told you a twit, Rags. How are you gonna recover? Too. <laughs> oh, I well, recovery implies that I've been damaged before this, but so I, I'm not going to recover from that. I'm impervious to such weakness. But uh, yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do a little bit better. Someone said, "Sure, you have rags." I'll give two examples because that should suffice. Um, I said that I hated the Krauser fight. I would completely change it. The QTEs in that are shit, and they were bad then, and they're bad now. And I hate it then, and I hate it now, and I would completely change that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I then also criticized how shockingly and surprisingly easy it was to not get hit by the cameos. I think they're called the, the dogs in the game yeah. because they have a really bad time tracking player movement, pouncing on you. You so also those are two things. You I also criticized Delago, and you also said that the the guns aren't significantly different or meaningfully yeah, different enough. Yeah, um, I would I would say that. The, I, I would change the Del Lago fight, parts of it. I think you could absolutely take that fight, keep its idea present and strong while changing a lot of the details about it in terms of controls and things of that nature um, and, like, movement pattern of the enemy. Um, but, yeah, there's definitely things about RE4 to criticize, and there's a lot to change. And I hope that if they do a remake of it or a remaster of it, it would probably only count to a remake. Because if they change substantial portions of it, it wouldn't be a remaster, it'd be a remake. But yeah, Someone just said, the guns aren't significantly change. different. If you want to scroll back four hours, you can go listen yeah, to that you, discussion, okay? Yeah, <laughs> if you, not doing it again. Yeah, if, it's enough. I understand, enough. Yeah, I, I understand if that might off on the face of it sound yeah. crazy. But I but I actually actually really think about it. But we had a full discussion what, on the, it. It's just yeah, hard. We really know, did. Yeah. Summaries can sound very different really from it. the content, you know? Yeah, so... It's something to think about, but there are definitely things about RE4 that I'd change. I love it. I adore it. I will. It's a game that's just, it. it's good forever. It's timeless. It's a classic. It's like the go, it might be just the go-to classic game, uh, but it certainly is for me. Uh, I own it on four systems. I've beaten it many, many times. Played it a lot. It's good I would stuff, like to see Fringy stream Resident systems. Evil 4. Do it. Yeah. I would be interested I, to I see that too, to see it. the differences. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he can sprint through as much as it, as he could with this game. I don't know. I'll see what I, happens. Um <laughs> I think when you learn it, so you, you probably can't like the speed runs of RE4 are really amazing to watch. They're they're, yeah. they're really cool. But you can you could speed run that game in like an hour and a half. Oh well I don't think oh, I don't God. think Freeny thinks of it as speed running. I think he, Oh yeah, but <laughs> I I just using it as an example of saying yeah. you could there's once once you know about it, you can, you know, get past a lot of stuff, but 
it's one of those games where fighting enemies is fun and I really enjoy it. So I don't want to skip them. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I replay segments all the time uh, so that I can just play again and see how good I can get and see how efficiently I can do it or try new, try different ways of clearing areas, going here, going there, taking out these enemies first. There's a, there's a lot to I'm not going to stream it. Soma. I want to play that on my own. Yes, yes. I, uh, I disagree. You should stream Soma. It's really interesting to watch people oh. play Soma. Really? I... Um, Dude, I fucking value the shit out of watching people play Soma and think out loud yeah, about everything. I think Me I too? would personally value playing it on my own more, I think. Well, that's not... I wasn't presenting you a, like some kind of dichotomy you have to choose between. <laughs> I'm just saying that there's reason to do it. There's also reason not to do it. Yeah. Choose now, Fringy. Um, Rax, <laughs> never played end. RE4 because I hate tank controls. Guessing I should try push through anyway. Mm -hmm. I would... I understand why people you would... I understand why you wouldn't like tank controls. Mm -hmm. I would say... Get used to them. Once you're used to them, which I don't think will take too long, you will. I won't say appreciate them, but you'll definitely. They won't feel like a constraint once you're used to them. It'll, it'll just be a part of the game and how the game. Re4 works. doesn't have tank controls though. Re4 is a behind the behind the shoulder shooter. Are they talking about? Well, you can't that's move a when you aim. That's not a. That's, no, that's, no, that's so tank controls are. You can't strafe. It's like a tank. That's why I call that because the treads of a tank. Yeah. A tank can't strafe while it's you know. Because yeah, Leon is a tank the game, yeah. I, I thought I thought the tank controls were like the originals one, two, three, where you were uh, navigating left and right and forward like a tank would. So I believe both, that's what the so so you can have both can be tank can, tank controls are irrelevant of camera perspective. Yeah. yeah. So you can have the originals which have those locked fixed cameras and have tank controls, and you can also have over the shoulder views. And also have identical tank controls. Yeah, if you think of it, the tank can move on us like a pivot on its own, like like it in a circle on its own. But then you can go forward and back. And Leon can only do that when you control him. Yeah, really? it's basically. I, I, would, cannot, I would never call RE4 stay. tank controls. That's so weird. Oh, it I definitely is. It, yeah, it very yeah. clearly is. It's kind of the go-to example for it because of its yeah, I think it is my go-to example yeah. actually. Because uh, left and right are turn left and right like a tank would, okay. right? So, so the regardless the of the camera perspective, like uh, Rags was saying. But yeah. with the early games, the tank controls were done out of necessity because they wanted to do the, the, um, the static camera angles so they could have the pre-rendered backgrounds so they could have realistic environments back then because 3D environments in PlayStation 1 looked like ass, if you remember. Um, um, yeah, it's, yeah it, and, it, and it makes you play it a lot differently. It, the limitations that it places on you are, are it, it really does affect your gameplay, not just because like, if it affects your gameplay in the sense of you literally cannot strafe, but you, when you have to, you have to either move or shoot, you can't do both. That alone is, it, it really gets into your head and you kind of embrace that as part of the game. And if you were going to remake that game, like if you were to take the game exactly as it was, but now you can move and shoot and you can strafe, the game would get insanely easier. It's way easier. Yeah. Some of the encounters would be laughably easy. Yeah, and I would yeah, say the, the era not designed around that. Resident Evil 4 was released in, that was like where tank controls were, were being phased out. It's like we're, we're yeah. not really in anything anymore. You had uh, you know, some early some early games with strafing and things like that, and you know, Halo had become pretty standard by that point. Um, yeah, but it, it, it was probably... Are you for... Go ahead. So it was probably a creative decision as to why the controls were the way they were in Resident yeah, Evil yeah. 4. Uh, because yeah. you clearly could do it. Like, games existed where you could. But I think they said these. this was a... This almost gave the game its own kind of characteristic, and it set it apart from other games. And we can use this limitation to build the game around and design yeah. things around. The game uh, is built was... knowing that you're not going to be as able to... Uh move and shoot as typically would be in a lot of action games yeah yes. the, the sluggishness kind of added to the horror element because you weren't as mobile you couldn't just dance around enemies you couldn't you know just you know strafe around them and shoot them in circles oh yeah being able uh, to just being yeah. able to shoot and move backwards simultaneously that is like we take it for granted but think about how much more time you get to shoot at enemies because they can't get to you as fast I and are you go ahead it's just, it's such a big deal. Um, and when you play a game where you're like, oh shit, do I shoot at them or do I run away? Like that uh, makes it interesting. Yeah, I remember RE5 may, uh, basically broke that up. I think you could still, 
you could still move around with the left stick and kind of strafe around but as, as soon as you held up your weapon you, you could were strafe, stuck yes you, yes but you, you were stuck as soon as you held up your weapon which if I, at that point i felt that was kind of just uh, kind of just a holdover from the original games it didn't really seem like there was any reason why you couldn't walk but i remember that kind of sticking out because that's at, that's well after like gears of war and i know oh, the yeah. game started um, introducing you know all those mechanics and kind of kind of made you expect that and in third person over the shoulder shooters so it was a, it was a weird it was a weird holdover but it, like, imagine imagine there's... this game where you couldn't backpedal while shooting like yeah holy fuck that would that that's a big change yeah that'd be a very big change yeah it completely yeah. changes the, the way you control a game and the, how fast you are completely changes your uh your attitude and play style like the original doom oh, games yeah. were super fast you could you could sprint yeah. at like well well beyond uh, a, a human's running speed you're meant to run through shoot you know strafe dodge dodge missiles dodge you know yeah gunfire, movement speed like is, is huge yeah. on game design um people don't think about how movement speed ties in with things like time to kill and the ar size of arenas or size of maps and things of yeah. that nature it, when, it it really is a big impact on things when the halo games introduced like sprinting that was like a huge game changer and and i don't think they quite caught up to that that how big of a change that was and the, i think some of the maps and especially the multiplayer definitely changed because all of a sudden you could close the distance much faster so um, yeah it's it, yeah it was a big it was a big change it's an issue the, the big issue was that um sprinting wasn't not everyone could sprint you had to choose it as your ability so you had to simultaneously you had to design maps with four people who didn't choose sprint but sprinting is such a huge advantage to have that it created a pretty big imbalance. Most people choose sprint because it's just so insanely good. Yeah. Um, it, it also devalued really vehicles deal. too. It it made vehicles less important because you could just sprint about as fast as some of them. So it was kind um, of a, it was it was a weird it was a weird of, yeah. change. Like mongoose, like the mongoose was like your go to. Or was it was little the little like one or two seater mongoose? Yeah. The, yeah. The four wheeler was the mongoose. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was talking about like yeah the mongoose too, but like the little two wheeler that could actually get you to places, but didn't have any combat ca uh, capabilities. Yeah, there was like a two wheeler, or like, it was not a two wheeler. Sorry, a two seater, two seater. It was, uh, it was like basically a bike, uh, a <laughs> two wheeler. It, you get, a four wheeler uh, is that like an? The it mongoose? was like it was it was not the big mongoose. It was a smaller vehicle. The mongooses where, are big. Well, the the mongoose you could have like three year. You could have like two. Uh, couldn't you have one driving one in the back there was a smaller there's definitely a smaller vehicle that didn't have a, a gun on the back that's the it mongoose was, the, the warhawks mongoose the one with the gun. gun on the back yeah yeah okay maybe that maybe that's what you're talking about yeah the okay the mongoose i was the, not the warthog the mongoose okay, okay yeah this you're is right. yes. yeah 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 the uh, that's the mongoose there the little two there you go yeah that's the one yes. i'm talking about like you could you could drive somewhere without any you know ability to do, to do damage maybe somebody in the back had like a, a gun but that was a great a great way to like essentially get to and from you know a flag or something like that if you're capturing it but well i don't uh, i don't think sprint really devalued the mongoose because any because sprinting it didn't it certainly was no replacement for the mongoose the mongoose was fast and it could carry someone and an objective um it yeah. was i think the impact of sprinting's impact matters more on it probably mattered more on like 4v4 tdms and stuff like that because of just the insane advantage you get over other players who don't have it when you can choose when you want to move fast and be faster than them in a in a game with that kind of time to kill and that kind of weapon design yeah it, it just it kind of made certain tactics a lot less are you are a lot less uh, effective or a lot more effective, like you know, running up somebody, shotgunning them, or running up and doing a sword or something like that? Like it. Definitely oh yeah, the sword in, in particular was just <laughs> the sprinting with the sword was insanely powerful. Um, yeah. But yeah, that but that was that wasn't so much. But if ever like if everyone could sprint, I'm fine with sprinting in Halo. If everyone could sprint and the maps were designed with that in mind, and that was something everyone could do, I'd be totally fine with it. It's just that if you're going to like okay jumping puzzles in guild wars 2 um all the jumping puzzles in guild wars 2 have to be completable for a base character who does not have any movement abilities who doesn't have swiftness which increases your movement by 33 percent so 
that means the players who can give themselves or other swiftness are at a huge advantage, and they can do that much easier because they are doing a jumping puzzle, which is platforming, designed to be completable moving at the base speed, and they're moving 33% faster than that. So yeah. just one of those things to consider about movement speed. It's big. It's important. Yeah, it's definitely important. Yeah. Uh, I was Absolutely. gonna actually comment on the uh, the intro outro cinematic. I, I think it's gorgeous. I don't know. Uh, like to hear yeah. thoughts on it, but yeah. um, uh, thematically <clears throat> confusing because like there's some obvious parallels. Like she drinks the the bat the bat's blood and she takes like a a, a, a dress scale from, from the fish. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the horse's uh, gear. Yeah, but the like, horse is Heisenberg, yeah. right? Like that's the idea. yeah, clearly, yeah. I guess, but like the so the girl is that Miranda or is that Eve or what? Like it, it, it it's such a, it's like it seems deep, but I think it's just somebody liked the animation. Somebody I'm liked sure the there's someone's written up something that probably matches everything. You know, like I guess I haven't looked into it, but yeah, I think the animation is sweet. It's nice to look at. I don't so, mind it, yeah, but I think the book reading thing is dumb. Because Ethan is like freaking out because, like, oh, the baby's too young to hear a story like this. It's the like the, the baby doesn't fucking sentient. know. Yeah. This character, <laughs> yeah, the baby's so young, it just doesn't even understand things about this book being read to I it. Guess it's also weird to be like, it's a spooky story after everything that's happened. Don't read it. It's like, that's also a strange thing to say, really. Like, mm. And then, well, and then it gets stranger remember. because they're like, I don't want to talk about it. And then you see like, oh, Mia, you're such an ass. I remember why I don't like you. And then she's not Mia and you're just like, oh, God, what is, ah, my brain. You just have to remember that Ethan is really dumb. That's why he does that. It's Genuinely, so he's easy like, to explain. He'd be one of my like most hated protagonists. He only ever got in my way. <sighs> oh, the opening line and the ending line is about picking berries so I, I joke that the theme of the story of resident evil 8 is about don't pick, go go out in the forest and pick berries <laughs> yeah, yeah i think yeah it i who knows maybe the story was something oh, do that, you go did ahead. you have the uh the end credit in here oh yeah i do um there we go yeah i have a feeling we're gonna get like a super op oh. mega mega powered uh, She'll have goo powers when we take control of her in the next game. Yeah, goo powers, and uh, there's something like potential here. Like maybe it's Rosemary, but she's been slightly infected by Evelyn, uh, Evelyn or whatever. And there's like some sort of internal struggle, but I don't really see that working as a protagonist. That had to be a well. A what a, what a potentially great idea! I'm sure they won't squander it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they could make Prototype 3, right? Like, yeah. turning into that kind of a character. <laughs> oh, man, I, I love Prototype. Prototype was great. I, sequel, kind of boring, but I like the original a lot. Well, there you go. So we just play, you know, Resident Evil Prototype. And there you go. And there you go. Open, open world, check off all the boxes. You can chop mm -hmm. things okay. with well, your hands. Yeah. It's all gonna be shit. Checklists, man. That's what we gotta do with this. No. Oh. Like, there's... Like, I feel... We talk about storytelling and stuff. I don't feel like there are any stakes in this series anymore. No. Like, nothing I see matters. I said to you, when I got my heart pulled out, I was like, oh, does, is that significant? <laughs> <laughs> Literally having my heart pulled out, I'm not even sure if it hit me. Yeah, um, like, it's, it's real. I can't, the, the whole fact that we had a discussion on did Ethan survive, and it was a real discussion, because you would think, well, if, of course he's dead. He got exploded by that massive, insane After crumbling to thing pieces of stone or whatever. It was yeah. strong enough to destroy the Mega My Seat and take care of that. But we were, we still weren't like convinced that Ethan was actually dead because oh, in this series you just never know. Well, you see him here at the end. Like you again, see again him. though. It's Capcom. That could be for any reason. We don't it's... know. <laughs> Maybe it was just like a, as someone wait, just suggested. So that was supposed to be. That was supposed to be him. No, 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 no. Watch. You can see it's him. You can see it's clearly him well, right someone, here. As soon as the car it, comes down his... under the hill, you'll see him start walking over the hill. Yeah, right? he, it's apparently his model, like regardless. But yeah. Um, and then but the, the truck oh, stops so... right next to him, and somebody has taken a camera mod right and pulled it up, and it is his model. Right, Again, well, like yeah. that but could mean so I didn't many have things. The though mod when I played it, I didn't know who that was, but I I assumed because I just watched, or at least I thought I watched Ethan get like nuked that this wasn't him. Yeah, and the, it could be Chris, could be anybody. Like it just yeah. Um, 
And like, I, I want Heisenberg back. It's like, yeah, I know, I know. Who knows what they'll do? Um, I was gonna say something else, and now I've forgotten what it was. Well, clearly, what happened is uh, after the uh, bomb took out the Metamai seat, uh, it created a hole through the ground, and Ethan fell into the bath of where they make the Jesus juice. You got a note. Oh my up. god! Uh, yes, oh my god! Good. That actually yeah. sounds like something they would do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like can't you see them doing that <laughs> oh well you know the nuke when it exploded he was covered by the body and uh, the juices seeped into him and rejuvenated him yeah they can do anything and say I think I was even reading the wiki or something on the mold and it was like well Ethan was different is essentially what it said well when what happened to Ethan's different his body reacted differently to the mold than everyone else and I'm like well okay then that, that, that takes care of it into perpetuity this can happen unlike anything else because, oh, their body just reacted to it different. It's fine. It's all good. Anything anything goes. It's all fine. It's all just... Eh. And I was trying to figure out that whole, the mechanics of that whole last fight. Like, you What's see that... What's all these Chinese names? Uh, what? Was that a localized thing? No, these no these are not Chinese names. These are Japanese names. But there was a bunch of Chinese names, and I was thinking, like, wait a sec. Was, is that a Chinese localization thing? So that they're oppressive communist government was approving the game or what was i was wondering what, what what that was scrolling through i just noticed a whole bunch of chinese names sony pictures weird yeah. uh i was <sighs> gonna i was gonna say i think this is a kind of fan theory you know territory but what i think happened with the last battle is that all the metamice is everywhere everything's uh, going to hell and then um miranda is pulling the baby out of the out of the uh, black goo right and then she starts like crying black tears or whatever and she's like i'm growing weaker or whatever right that's right yeah. when when ethan shows up mm -hmm. my theory and this is again not backed up by any direct you know obvious writing or anything i've read in the game my theory is that because they're both mold people they gain the power from the metamite seat and now she's sharing it with ethan so she got so, weaker ethan got more powerful and then when she he blows he everything to hell uh, he loses that power. That's my theory, but I, honestly, I have no, I have no why, idea what that's all supposed to mean. Yeah, why would any of that work that way? Yeah, when... I don't, I don't know because like the metamycete is still powerful at the end. So like, that's it, my, it, it's, I'm guessing because her dying weakens Ethan. So I'm just trying well, to. Well, Ethan gets up on his own right before the rituals even happened. Like he... Uh, he gets up on his own, but but like as you as Ethan gets closer to her, she says, "I'm growing weaker." I got yeah, but my he doesn't get any more powerful. We're still pretty weak in the gameplay, you know, like as weak as usual. Yeah, right. yeah, it doesn't. Hold on, it doesn't I... emphasize that. I've just and seen you, someone you... on Twitter that somebody sent me. Hold on, look, wait a minute. Apparently, mm -hmm. I was meant to be Ada Wong initially in this game. <laughs> yes. Uh, apparently they couldn't include it fully though because they couldn't make it make sense. There was contradictions, which is hilarious. <laughs> oh, no. They couldn't make it make sense. That was an excuse for the. To what talk. a shame. Yeah, I'm glad the story wouldn't have made any sense. It would have been real bad if she turned up at certain <laughs> random points, wouldn't it? That would make sense. Yeah, it can't uh, be so silly. Really, too. Really I silly. don't know how to feel about this <laughs> unless I interpret it as the waifu of the you know plague doctor waifu. In which case, that's totally fine. Ada is, it's it's fine. Wow, Ada is so, fine. Okay. Yeah, I mean but that... I'm saying fine very positively. <laughs> like it doesn't sound that way because I'm fucking exhausted. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, the the, the re elements just seem to be kind of stitched into some other story. Like uh, it, the idea that Chris uh, set this all up. Like he set up, he specifically moved him very near <laughs> nearby to essentially the source of all all this uh, bioweapon stuff just seems a bit crazy to me and like did, did he did he try to set ethan up with I, with I, miranda i don't know or, I, mean, I don't know yeah. what the hell any of that was why did any and you know the answer is like we want to do our village stuff You're like okay it's okay yeah it just makes chris More look like a, a gigantic asshole or incre incredibly incompetent but we know he's also like ridiculously capable so it, he has to be an asshole, right? Because, like, at any point in time, you just come happen. in, yeah. come in, and and use his super powerful seven hundred bullet, you know, mm -hmm. automatic rifle and just mow down these guys. You know, with his weaponry, they're not too hard. Well, he so. was he was sleeping for most of the game. See, so. <laughs> oh yeah, they ran with like sleeping. a BSA agent, 
was a zombie, and they need to go to see them now, because they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, what the a PSAA, thing. apparently are sending in bioweapons. He's a bioweapon. So we, we gotta go to them, because someone's gotta pay. What if, what if someone's got to pay? I thought Miranda was the that person who did well, all this. The you, see, right? was, was, was you see, right? We may have discovered it? a new origin for all the tier fire shenanigans and destroyed it. Oh. But there's even now more. we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out where Miranda got it from. Because yeah. now we know where Spencer got it from. We're gonna find out where Miranda got it from, and then That's... RE nine or ten or twelve is gonna find out where they got it from. And actually, it was in Antarctica. But that's only because. Earlier on, in 1956, in Argentina, there was a cave that had the thing, and There's that's where it was. There's eventually, like, a mission to the moon, and you unlock an ancient moon <laughs> cave, and you open these doors, and on a throne, Wesker is sitting there, and he's like, So you found me. <laughs> it's like... Yes! <gasps> yeah, this ending was so much a, a franchise, like, extended, you know, like, uh, you know... you cinematic universe kind of building uh stuff that i half expected at the end it's like so chris we're building a team <laughs> yeah well they Watch literally did the basically the x will return meme but they're just doing it you know for in, in reverse kind Rose. of like the, the father is yeah. done the story dot, is dot, done dot, you know yeah. like what does that mean it's like well other people well, are not i mean she's obvious i would say it's pretty safe to conclude that rose is going to be like the protagonist of the next one or antagonist uh, I no, I don't I, I don't know anything about what they'll do next. Yeah, come I, on, oh, who knows? Is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it, I don't know what the story will like, be about, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she was, I guess, but I wouldn't even bet money that she's more than likely going to be. Yeah, I would I say all like bets are off, and they probably don't even know yet. Powers? I don't know. I feel, I feel like them teasing. Oh, I got crazy powers. Even Chris doesn't know about them. I feel like it's gonna be. She's gonna have like crazy abilities that'll be. Uh, maybe there'll be a gameplay mechanic. That'd be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, or she I gets kidnapped thinking... again. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, how, do horrifying... you... Go ahead. how do you simultaneously say she's insanely powerful, but also limit that for gameplay so that you can't just blow through the game with no problem? That's the thing. I, I had a horrifying thought. You know how they've been uh, fitting in. Uh, the Roman numerals into every title now, or the village, or the V I I I, you know, everything like that. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the I, my, the, the net, the, okay, so nine the Roman numeral for nine is I X, so yep. Phoenix. She's gonna be Dark Phoenix. No, oh my goodness uh, gracious, that's, that's uh, yeah, I put Phoenix. money on that. Oh my god, like yeah, I actually think that's likely. Right. What if it will be. if they're going, or maybe it could just be Resident Evil. Fix this shit, please. Fix I can't take shit. anymore. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> 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 fucking rags imagine you were commissioned for that they like we need you to repair all the stories and reconnect them you'd be like uh and then leon woke up it was only a dream um, this was like resident I... 4 was a dream you're like no no no, that was real <laughs> that, that was real happened. now he when he when he passed out after fighting del lago that's the crazy plague infused dream that he had about all yeah. of this nonsense but he woke up and it was all good <laughs> And you know, I if they're gonna go with the the naming uh, system using the Roman numerals, Resident Evil Fifty is gonna be lame. <laughs> I mean, I, oh no, I we might not like... be around by the time they get to fifty. Oh yes, we will. We're gonna be old. Uh, that's fine. I'll be. I'll. I'll be here. I'll be. I'm tired of these salty totally mechanics. Years, in my day, you could shoot a <laughs> zombie and he'd die. <laughs> Back in my day, zombies walk slowly. So, by the way, the joke for everyone who didn't get it is that the Roman numeral for 50 is L. L. I get it. <laughs> but, for instance, like the Super Bowl, when they had Super Bowl, the Super Bowl naming convention was always to use Roman numerals. It wasn't Super Bowl L, it was Super Bowl 50. Yeah, because mm. so, mm -hmm. pretty obvious reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not good. So it's not that look they good on a have, ring to have a big L on your picture. <laughs> ring. They should have had it be the Super Bowl and highlighted the L. They could have done the alien thing and just say this is the Super Bowls. After, after yeah, 10, nobody knows the new Roman numerals. So like, mm -hmm. at, you know, you see them at the end of like movies where they have the MMC, XCC, whatever. But it does get to a point where it's it. Most people just find it a bit much. A bit lame. Yeah. They're like, what is this? I mean, craziness? isn't that where the Olympics is up to right now, where it's in this like the forties or the thirties? I was lucky that, like that I graduated high school and I got to be class MMX. That's nice and simple to remember. That's fun. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's better than like all the I's and the V's, and it's it's just so clutter, really. It's just yeah, number clutter. Yeah. Thank the Romans God didn't think about that, that, did they? Uh, that, yeah. The clutter. The Ro The what now? The Romans who made the Roman numerals didn't think about the clutter. I think they just yeah, I think they just got used to it. Like it works. You could use it. It does work. It's just annoying and you have to Well, that's just Latin though. Latin's just annoying as shit. What? But, I mean, you what do you mean what? Latin's Latin annoying. Uh, I cool took it for language. 2 years. No, no, I agree. Learn it. La I took Latin for 2 years in high school. Like fucking hell, all of the grammatical rules and the declensions and the genders what, like and the cases. No, no, it ain't like English at all. No, okay. like specifically. Isn't English like no, famously one of the hardest languages to learn? All right. I thought Latin's that English complicated. Was just notoriously complicated. I can see. Yeah, absolutely. Like with apostrophes uh, and all that, and and commas and and uh, loads well, of, and like, like you know, read I and read. But a lot of to see all of the tenses and everything that it is however a lot of um a lot of the stuff in english a word will stay the same it's just how it's understood in the context is what changes and in latin depending on if it's a subject object indirect object if it's possessive it the word will change the ending of the word will change like uh like insula, insulae, insularum, insulis, and stuff like that. And that will depend for each word on what the gender is. So you have ah, I, I, am, ah, I, arum, is, as, is, which are the declensions for the feminine. And then you have the same right. one, but then you have different declensions for masculine, and you have different ones for neuter words, which are neither. And so there's a lot of stuff that you have to uh, just don't a lot of uh, the learn. romance languages have retained those elements though, and I still some always of them. a lot of our yeah, but the most thing of is our words come from Latin here. Yeah, no, I know that, but but what I mean is like I consistently hear that English is very difficult. Like that, yeah, just seems I'd say to be so. Yeah. Common. Well, it's funny. Uh, a lot of people were like, like, "No, this. it's not." No, so I was like, "No, seriously, like, that's, there's not." We're not saying this for no reason. I get told like by many people who learn languages, English is an asshole of a language because there's so many confusing, con contradictive rules. I hear, yeah, English Mandarin. I hear is really difficult as well. Uh, plus the fact that you have to learn symbols and stuff too. Um, yeah, but yeah, just the grammar. A lot of this Latin grammar is just really. It's just the pain in the ass. Confuddling. Yes, English isn't a romance difficult. language, that's why it's difficult. Well, I, I'm pretty sure it's the reason why German is, like, easier to learn as an English speaker than French, I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I remember when I was learning German, it made a lot more sense to me. Because it's like, das ist gut. I can already see how it's the, you know, the same connection. But uh, with French, there's, like, other things like formal and informal. I don't I don't know shit about French actually. I probably it's not worth even talking about. about yeah, that. The, the, there's sort of like a melodic uh, tone to speaking French and a lot of the letters at the end you don't pronounce which makes it kind of confusing, but uh Yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty tough a friend of mine's learning it. It's it's pretty tough je but like suis, it's, it's doable, exhausté. but um when it comes to like complication, I got to say that probably some of the East Asian languages at least written are got to be some of the most complicated. Like I I didn't realize this, but I I posted in the chat this is what a Japanese typewriter looks like. <laughs> it's a big roll. Yeah, so many characters. Symbols. Yeah, so it's crazy. Another, I guess another thing about Latin I didn't think about earlier is one of the reasons that it's a lot more difficult to learn than a lot of other languages might be is because nobody speaks Latin, so you can't immerse yourself in Latin speakers yeah and learn like power through it that way you can't mm -hmm. you can't just move to Paris so that I learn Arabic and I can't just move to China so I learn Chinese and stuff like that. You're with Latin. You just kind of you got to learn it, the the book way. Um, well, you, you I have I have, have heard that uh, people who speak Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish can hear somebody speak Latin and understand it fairly well. I so, bet a lot of Latin family. phrases you could hear as an English speaker and get some of the for for instance, uh, insula magna est. If you like, if you see that sentence, you're like insula. Magna. I like S. that stupidos like, is huh. Latin. That's <laughs> helpful. <laughs> I know that, uh, so, yeah, like gratus means like welcome or thanks, kind of like just good in a certain way. And it's like, oh, bo well, gratitude. Uh, bonus, bonus good. Bona good. Bonus good. 
gratis i think is free it means free or no that's like right. no gratis is oh right. uh, i think it might be thanks because free is Liber, not to be confused with libre which is book which is why we get library from and liberty Ooh, so yeah yeah La there you go. latin's a really interesting like a uh, basis like it's more interesting to learn it as like a basis of other languages like if you learned all the latin or most of the latin words you'd be able to kind of th use it as sort of like a, a codex to figure out other languages like you know gratis gracias right. you know things like that like gracias. gratis is free okay so gratis is free but I don't think it's free in the same way. I think it means free in terms of like price or cost, whereas freedom as a concept is a different word. Let me double check. Liber libertas, that's freedom in Latin. Yeah. So X yeah, so free and freedom to infinity, are different. Things, right? yeah. Like infinite freedom or something along odd. those lines. Yeah, so odd means two or towards. So you know, odd infinitum would be like to infinity um or uh, oh, like we're talking about vampires and stuff transylvania where that uh, the transylvania trans is a cross and silwa is like forest in latin so across the forest mm. is what transylvania is neato right, mm. across forest yeah this is like all, all, so, all this is so efeb like we just 10 hours <laughs> of fucking resident evil 8 i just want to fucking kill myself and now i'm hearing word salad in latin like, what is happening <laughs> well when you're when you're learning latin what they start you off with a lot of the times is words that you clearly connect to english insula is island that's why we spell you know i you know, is land insula it's you know that way um magna <laughs> is great because it's you know I, like magnum it's, it's it, yes magna it, is great. magna right this from small beginnings or something along those lines i learned that from uncharted mm -hmm. i i do like how metal tried to open that escape hatch of hey can we finish and then rag and literally then rag slammed it shut out. it's like no we're still talking about latin because yeah because parwa means little yeah <laughs> yeah, slam that you put a padlock on that slam again. shut. Yeah, he's yeah. well to get there. Metal, <laughs> metal's like tears pooling around the hatch. It. It's fucking six a.m. It's bright outside again. I just want to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's it for our topics on Resident Evil Eight, Nine, Eight. It is eight. It's not nine yet. Yeah, it will be though. <laughs> One it day. will be. Um. Out of curiosity, metal and Latin is metallum, so that's where we get that. What about Commander? Commander, I actually don't know. I bet, I bet when I look it, I don't know Commander. Um, I bet when I look it up, it will not surprise me at all. Yeah, yeah, Preceptorum. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you, you gotta admit, everything sounds badass in Latin, though, for the most part. It's like, a very except... cool sounding language. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always in movies because it sounds cool and TV shows, and it's always like used for spells as well. A lot of the time, anyway. Sounds cool. Um, that was a curiosity, right? I don't know, a lot I of us joke during your boss fight, but it, that's fine. It's all good. Huh? Yugum, like when you were there was a section where someone takes. <laughs> <damn> um... just... <laughs> wow, rags. I was okay with you talking about whatever it was, in but Latin, apparently. We have... The heckless. So the la there's the Latin phrase sub yugum, which means under the yoke, uh, like y o l k, which is the th you know what you'd put on a, a a a beast of burden around their shoulders that they would pull. <laughs> that's the that's the yoke, like the yoke of an ox or something like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if someone was sub yugum under the yoke, you would put an animal's yoke on like a captured prisoner or general or something, and it was a way of like demeaning and humiliating them. So you would never want to be sub yugum. Don't do that. And and I'm gonna keep going on. We, I should I should stop. Just keep keep going. Really, I'll just keep going and going because I was thinking so. about the root. Like the Jeep has the Rubicon, and the Rubicon was the river, is the the, the river in Italy, and that's where you you have the phrase you never cross the Rubicon. Don't cross the Rubicon because that's the point of no return. Because Roman generals were not supposed to bring their armies when they returned towards Rome. They're supposed to leave them on the far side of the Rubicon River. Because you didn't want your generals coming back with their massive armies, with armies that were often loyal to generals in to like cities and stuff. And it's fine. It's all good. I'll actually stop this time. Fair enough. So like, go ahead. I was just, see, I was just thinking. Latin's great. So from mm -hmm. what I gathered from our selection here, it would seem 
that Fringy, Indigo, myself, Metal, Moriarty, and Rags are pretty much on the same team, almost the same wavelength for what we think of this game. I was curious, because, mm. John, you seemed a lot more positive about it when we when we opened up. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, how are you... What, what's, what's going through your brain? Are you like, oh my god, I had to listen for nine hours about how this game is shit when it's actually, like, pretty okay? No, no. There's a lot of valid criticism. Um, I mean, I, I had a... I really had a blast playing this game. I couldn't wait to like start a new game. Um the the um the speed running issues. Like what if something I've always really appreciated about Resident Evil is its post game formula. It's like it's fun to like go back and play through the the campaigns again for, like with new weapons and stuff. Uh -huh. Um the speed running this one definitely is a problem with the because I like I love the Beneviento sequence, but when you're speed running that game, it really stands out. And then and then you have to do right after that, you have to do the the Moreau, the Moreau sequence, yeah. which is basically another like you're not really fighting anything; you're just like running th across the bridges. yeah. You just got to go to the right places at the right times. That's it's both of the sequences in a way. Yeah, so it's like it feels combat heavy in the beginning, and then it's like there's this lull around the middle where you're not really doing much with your guns, and then you're using the guns quite a bit in the factory. Well, like, um, um, what I find interesting, right, is that this game is clearly giving people a shit ton of fun on a wide scale to a wide audience. And it's like, so what, is, what does this mean then? And it's just like, I think we know why. I think we've gone over exactly why. And I think that as much as I'm like, I'm glad people are having fun, I'm also like, man, games can be so mm. much better than this. Yes. Yeah. So maybe, should we say our, should we all say our favorite, what our favorite section was? Can we go down the list and each give our favorite section? I don't, I don't know if I have one. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sure, if you guys want to. Or a, a section you liked. A section that maybe you liked for some particular reason or something. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I like the Heisenberg, uh, section. I, uh, I, I probably enjoyed the formula of the, uh, Castle, uh, Ditchermesque, or however you say that. Uh, it kind of felt, like, a little bit like more old school, uh, Resident Evil, mansion, locked doors, you know, statues, hidden objects and stuff. It was definitely more shallow than those, because it's only a small portion of the game, but... I, I liked what the direction of it. If you know Lady D was super overhyped, she, I don't know about you guys, but I had no problem avoiding her uh, at all. She was extremely easy to avoid. Like she was very slow, made loud footsteps. I found her annoying. Like I just wanted to go away after a while. Yes, I was, I was looking Especially at stuff. Yeah, and subsequent playthroughs. Yeah, like if you're in a room and you're like, "There's a secret item in here," and I'm looking around like, "Hmm, hmm," and then she's like man thing it's like oh, no. i want to look around like i'm gonna have to avoid you and then come back here and it's just, can you go away like i just and that's, i worry that's a mechanic we haven't discussed we haven't discussed how the map will the rooms and houses it will be red until you found everything and then it turns blue so you know you found everything in that room or the oh, area yeah. i ended up appreciating yeah. how do you feel it. about that i think i kind of i kind of nice. did that. too I, I i like that um I did have one problem with the map. I don't know if you guys ever had this problem, but you ever notice that, that sometimes doors would say they're blue, but there's no way to get through them. Like uh, there's a one house mm, in particular yeah. in the village where it was completely uh, covered with debris and stuff you couldn't get through, but yet the doors said it was blue. And I kept on going down there like, oh, I haven't checked that place out yet. I can't get there. Why is it telling me it's blue? <laughs> I spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get into the house and I couldn't. Mm. Sometimes... Uh, they would show a clear path in an alleyway that wasn't clear. Like, the I didn't understand that. This I, enemy, Jesus. I know, right? I, 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 I didn't. Don't expect the map to be perfect. Like, if you got this map from somewhere and it's not perfect, but I, I would kind of assume that if I was making a map and I, and there was something there, I would like just mark down something. Oh, that's actually debris there. X, X right there. You know, I can't get through there. Like, kind of update mm -hmm. it as it went along. And and as helpful as the map was, I, I, I. I was opening up that map every like 10 seconds and looking, you know, different Oh areas. yeah, like, oh, I rebound you know. that mouse to, I, I rebound <laughs> the map to a button on my mouse so I could just constantly open that shit up. And yeah. as much as part of me liked knowing I didn't miss anything, if I didn't know it was there to miss, then I wouldn't have even known. 
Yeah, and a lot of those uh, little gems were so hard to find. I still could not 100% the courtyard. That courtyard was still, there was something in there that I couldn't oh, find. Oh, yeah, the court. I, I, I missed a herb in there the for ages. They are, yes, there's, there's, an herb like a, is in the flower yeah. bed, and there's a, there's a cage, I think, or there's something. Yeah, yeah there's, that took me a while to find. But, I mean, a part of me likes the fact that I know I didn't miss anything. And a yeah, part of yeah. me is like, how could Ethan possibly know this? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense for Ethan and his yeah. magic fucking Harry Potter ass map to, just, uh, to oh, you can hit those yeah. with a knife and they don't do anything. Interesting. Dude, I like the idea that the um, devs in this call are they like, but, come on, after everything else, can you just let us have it? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> thing, I, so like, it makes my character better because I know when I can search things completely fully and not miss anything. But I feel like that's an aspect of min maxing that I don't like because it seems almost artificial. It's not like I'm actually, it's not like I min max combat in Resident Evil 4 because I'm getting better as a player and I'm doing really good and it is a sign of like internal progression for me. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not going to complain about it, but I, I don't know. I find it very useful, know. but it probably caused me uh, probably Force multiple useful, hours. Yeah. Probably a couple of hours of back, just back and forth, like searching and looking for things. And usually it ended up in like a little gem somewhere that I didn't see, but it was definitely useful, but it can also be kind of distracting, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's there fine. I, that, I, yeah. You could have that compromise because, because the map will show you rooms you haven't been to yet, which sort of makes yeah. sense. Ian would yeah. know where he hadn't been if on the map that's showing like oh yeah there's rooms over there and you haven't gone there so they're in you know they're grayed out right yeah, i thought, like, I, thought of, that, I thought of a way that it makes sense i got it oh my goodness tell me so you pick up the maps Mold. right and then the duke tells you where all the chests are so the duke also tells you in a really like he gives you a real quick speech between scenes of every single crystal and tiny unlockable in every single room and okay. ethan remembers every single one sure down to the I'll accept shirts. that. Why not? It's and, better and, than and the Duke knows because the Duke placed them all it. because he likes treasure hunts. Yeah, sure. sure. Why Nailed not? Nailed it. You could you could turn it into like a, a little mechanic, a like lore maybe dump about the area. Why couldn't we? That could have been his instead of nonsense dialogue that no one cares about. You could literally have had that be a thing, and then Ethan talks to him about it, and then Ethan could be like, "You, you see the Duke outside the the house. You walk all the way, and then he's just in that safe room. You're like." How the hell did you get here? And he's like, hello, ah, Ethan. The old, the old smelting factory uh, over to the west. Yes, investors yeah. came here a decade ago <laughs> and set up the operations. That da, da, da. So while you're like just cycling through inventory, he's just sort of telling you this yeah. is where you're going. It's like, it's, that could be useful. And I'd like, like when it more. One of his last like positions is so absurd. He's just like, this was create. Just buy things. <laughs> like, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, this was Jesus Christ's high school football jersey. He is an excellent quarterback. Uh, uh, I just I kept on hearing it's like the hunger is to be alive. It's just like that <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> you think that you'd give him a lot of lines for how much you know players are going to be hearing those lines? No, no, he's going to get five. Uh -huh. it, there's a. There's I a... thought he had enough variety there. Oh god! I wish I can't remember anything he said times. outside of the the one thing about the merchant. I can't remember any of it. I, this it, is an investment, Ethan. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that a lot. Oh, what well, doesn't he say like that was a good deal? The only reason I remember him saying that now is because I watched Fringy uh, hear that and say, "Yeah, well, you would think that." <laughs> like as you said, <laughs> the prices. Honest and fair exchange. I'm sure. Yeah, like uh, I don't know, it's really bland. I, I, we, we, that was like our Era first bland, topic yeah. was that Duke wasn't used well, but nothing was used well as far as I'm concerned, except yeah, the look. I... It looks nice. It really <laughs> does. You know, the textures, especially on like the character models, are really very good. They look great. This is a very pretty game. I'm tired of oh, saying okay. that. Right? Like, I'm tired I don't of saying the, it. the art and the lighting and everything is like top notch. Yeah, absolutely it's a gorgeous game. Gorgeous game. Uh, one of these days, it'll be in a good game. So that'll be cool. <laughs> Um, I can't wait I for the think day. I Fringy was around for our discussion on it, but we were I, wait, we were talking because so Mahler, you and I, we were talking. I I had mentioned how, like, is it an objective flaw or is it something? Because in this game, you the second gun you get is the 1911, 
And then the next gun after that is the Scorpion, which does more damage, which doesn't make any fucking sense at all. But it just does. And so we were discussing, like, is that either... Like, is it a, either an objective flaw or is that unintuitive and therefore it's it's a flaw with the game or something like that? I would probably appeal um, to it being consistent as long as it's consistent. That's something to fall back on, but it is weird. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. It is it uh, it's something I hate about this game. Um, you have the chance to put all kinds of guns into this game and you just say, Fuck it. The 1911 is just weaker than the Scorpion that fires a that just is just weaker. And yeah, there's like no reason to keep your older guns because the newer guns are objectively better. Like if the 1911 got more punch for each bullet, but the Scorpion could, had a much higher rate of fire. So you're basically pumping more bullets into them, uh, weaker bullets into them, but faster. Like you'd be like, okay, yeah, there's, you can a, there's a it really well. There's a reason to use the 1911 because you get more bang for your buck, but at the same time, you know, Seven the Scorpion can that magazine, so you better yeah. you better hit. You know, but that <laughs> yeah. Scorpion, it's got a 20 round magazine as they as they do, but it doesn't it, it doesn't shoot very fast and they're not very powerful. So, Each bullet are not as powerful, but yeah, you you get a lot of shots and that sort of thing. Hey Rags, that yeah. death right there. Can you see what happened to me? I basically had the mindset of he can't come through here. He can't come through the door. This game yeah. is shit. And then he came through and I was like, nah. <laughs> like, what, what do I do now? This is supposed now, to happen. Oh, so sometimes what happens is that if an enemy is at their invisible wall, which happens all the time, but you're close enough sometimes, they might attack you. And that attack will carry them over the line, and then it's, they have to go back and go it's back nuts. to where they need to like, go to. What a, like, what a, an incredible circumstance. I'm so ready for the game to be broken that when it works better, it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. It's kind of like, a. I think that feel, uh, that's why the game seems so linear, because it teases you with open-endedness. It teases you with, like, oh, this is a, this is a place you're going to come back to. You know, the village is kind of like a hub. Kind of like uh, an RE2 remake, you're going to be revisiting this, unlocking more as you go along. But because the game is so linear, the 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 tease or the suggestion that it's not going to be or it makes it feel worse. You know, makes it feel even more restrictive. Whereas if it was a very uh, straightforward, you know, point A, point B, point C, point D, like you know, RE5 is like that. You'll never revisit anything again in RE5. You go from mission A to mission B to mission C to yeah. mission D. But because you're, it's like that, you, it doesn't feel as restrictive because you uh, you know you're not going to come back here. You know it, it doesn't it, it doesn't even give you the it doesn't give you the pretense that it's going to be an open world game. But this game does. You know it teases you like, oh yeah, you build it. You know do this and then you know, think oh, actually you need to do this in exact sequence. And it's just it, it's it's a, a bit frustrating because it kind of advertises itself as one thing but doesn't really deliver. I mean, yeah, I'll, I was, I'll be honest, like, what I got was all this, looking back. There, it it kind of reminds me of TFA. This game only delivered until I thought on lots of it. And then I was like, wait a minute. I've been given a, a hollow pie. There's nothing in this. Yeah, if you just yeah. accept everything at face value, this game's like really, really entertaining. Because Yeah, if, if you're very non-critical of games and you're just there to have fun, I could absolutely see why you'd think that this game is like really good. Like I said, dude, the easy way to say it is if you liked Resident Evil 7, buy this. You'll love it. Yeah, yeah. if Resident Evil 7 did it for you, this game is better than Resident Evil 7. I would much rather play through this again than 7. Well, I've seen Not people say, books. like, this is their favorite Resident Evil game. Some people say, like, this is one of their favorite games of all time. I'm just like, wow, it, it it's, it's working. Like, it's doing its thing, you know? It's just so much yeah, more appealing than, than 7. 7 was like, uh, oh, there's mold and, and country people and... And it's it's ugly and everybody's like unhappy and you're dark. Right. Like, where this is like we've got werewolves and vampires. Yeah, this and, sort of and... has things going on. It <laughs> it sort of has like locations and it sort of has characters. Like from a superficial viewpoint, I can see why this would be a lot more appealing to people than Seven was. Yeah, it's just it's yeah, I like it better. Um, but I will. I'm probably not going to ever play this after. Ever? After today, I I, yeah. I think I've got my fill. The... I have no interest in going back and playing any more of it. I, I still in... play Resident Evil Four. I played it earlier. I I took a screen. I took a screenshot or a couple on Resident Evil Four. I took a little video of it. 
because I was thinking, you know what? One of the things I love about Resident Evil 4 is that, here, I'll show you this, this screenshot here, up to, but I'm starting to run, my tank is starting to run pretty empty here. I'm getting pretty tired and pretty hungry, so. But I was, play, I was playing through, and I'm, I'm professional here, and that's my inventory, and I'm getting towards, you know, I just I got to just got to the island and I was looking at this and I was like, you know what? This excess that I have, I earned that. Oh yeah. Through trying sections mm -hmm. over and over again, really learning the game and its mechanics, trying until I could, you know, really and I, and I could do better than this it, with even more practice. So, I don't feel like I earn my excess in Resident Evil Village. I feel like the game just gives you stuff. And you don't really, you can't look at your, in, like, I, I looked at my inventory at the end of Village, and I was thinking, that's all right, I guess. You know, I, like, I don't have any space for anything. I'm full of stuff, but I, it didn't feel satisfying, you know? I started a game on Standard. That was my first playthrough, and I, I avoided Hardcore because I had seen, like, the demo, and it seemed, uh, that first like an encounter seemed kind of overwhelming on hardcore with like mm -hmm. the base weapon and stuff and, yeah. and then like the hammer guy comes in so i thought oh, i'll just play it on standard i'll probably be fine and i wish i had bumped it up because yeah like, same man i would always have at least like four first aids and i remember i had a shitload of ammo and i'm like oh my god this is losing a lot of tension for me but then i i bought the first vampire boss like one of the daughters and like the the window breaks in like a cutscene or something i can't yeah. remember but uh yeah. i remember being really confused as to what was causing her damage i'm like <laughs> is it the light is it because it's is it the wind I like i didn't even clue into the fact that it was cold and that they had a vulnerability to temperature and I'm shooting at her, and I'm like, is this even doing anything? Like, I couldn't <laughs> tell if the bullets were actually causing damage. But and then eventually she does that uh, calcifying thing. It's like, okay, yeah. she's dead. And I'm like, did I just piss away all that ammo? Like, could I mm. have just given her the runaround in the room and the cold would have killed her? And I was like, I was tempted to just, like, restart my save, my last save. But then I was like, okay, well, is does the game... Is the game going to revert to my last manual save or the last checkpoint? I wasn't sure. And I was like, oh, whatever. I'll just keep going. Like, well, well, my point was that I felt that I had all this ammo and then I spent it all on this uh, first boss. And I'm just like, oh, this is kind of getting tense again because, like, I just blew all my ammo on this one boss. I hope I get more ammo again. And I did. And I never felt that tension again after that like i just like, kept piling yeah. on the health and the ammo and uh, mm -hmm. yeah one yeah that sucks still <laughs> one i thought of i thought about it before and i forgot and now i've remembered it so i don't want to use it i think this would be a cool mechanic in the game if they wanted to implement it um one of the items that you find and accumulate slowly but surely over the course of your game is silver dust and silver dust can at traders or at specific places in the game be used to depending on what it is you could it's almost like a secondary currency that you can use to create special ammunition so maybe you have compiled 16 units of silver dust and it takes like four units to make a silver bullet for a handgun and maybe it takes eight silver dust units to make a silver shotgun shell or what have you and you can spend those how you please on your weapons so that they do like much higher increased damage on boss enemies and or big enemies uh, so that you don't have to worry so much about bosses being just huge ammo dumps where they just expend all this ammunition. But you could sort of be like, okay, like I, the silver ammunition is what I use for the special enemies because silver bullets, you don't use them against people. That's a waste. You use them against monsters. And so the bosses are like monsters that you'd use your your silver reserves for. I think that'd be kind of interesting, mm, right? Kind of. Yeah. Oh hey, kind of nifty. Uh, the lightsaber was lame as fuck. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> it it took ages to unlock it because mercenaries mode was kind of a bitch, and getting double S ranks on all of those missions was not not strictly fun. 
Um, and it's like, you unlock the lightsaber, which, by the way, it's like the hardest one to unlock out of all the special weapons. It's not even close to the best. Yeah. In fact, it might be one of the worst. It, that it sounds takes... like a terrible grind that you did. Yes, yeah, so, well, I enjoyed portions of uh, thingy, and at least it gave me the information so I can actually criticize it. You know, I, I didn't, like, ignore Mercenaries mode. I can actually comment on it with, like, relative confidence that it's not very good but at least like it, it, like it's very very restrictive i found um you have to be very specific yes. in how you do everything and it's just like eh, i don't know however um unlocking it i was like oh can't wait to try it out like the first basic enemy it takes three strikes to kill it on damage mode i was like fuck this oh, like why would you make this this <laughs> way there was me thinking oh won't it be cool one slash for, for pretty much everything except like really high health bosses and when you kill them maybe they'll have a custom animation where they actually like get shredded into two pieces and then you know blood like splatters like that'd be really oh, you cool sweet summer child i know it was crap it's literally like a spark effect and it's a baseball bat it's crap I I, did, I didn't like the mercenaries much. Um, I I played each of the map once or twice, and I just felt like I was done with it after that. It was it feels very linear, and that there's like mathematically the correct way to beat it. It doesn't have a sense of freedom and strategy to it really. Um, I felt like there's no map in it, and I felt like I really wanted a map, especially for the factory section. Um, I, I went back immediately to Resident Evil 4's Mercenaries and enjoyed that much, much more. Um, there's some good ideas in there, like you get a certain amount of money at the beginning that you could spend on whatever loadout you kind of yeah, want. Yeah, I like that. I, dude, I even like the I whole challenges like, give you money to unlock bonuses across the game. Like, I think that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, sure, that's good. Um, but I almost feel, I, I didn't really like the maps that they, they didn't create any specific new maps i don't think they just recycled ones from yeah, the they campaign locked off resident evil 4 yeah. created mm -hmm. they, they created areas um and you had multiple characters to choose from each with very different like you had krauser who had the bow and krauser's arm was the big sword arm and you could use that in mercenaries when it charged up and that you know that sort of thing but i feel like the it was like a nice little distraction for an hour if i even played it that long but after that i was like well I'm done. That was neat. That was a neat little distraction. We're done now. Yeah. I quite like the mercenaries mode. I like that Eastern arcade style uh, in video games where you've yeah, got like, the, the um... timer at the top and you've got that kind of unique music. I don't know what you call that drum and bass or something where it's like fast percussion. Like it was definitely, and... I definitely had fun. I just, um, when it got to like seriously trying to get high scores, it became very frustrating because you knew there was only one way you can do it and you have to learn it through trial and error exactly what they want you to do. Yeah, um, well, it's stringing together combos is tricky because the, the enemy spawning is weird. You have to learn like... where everything spawns in what order so that you know where to run and when, which to me just... Ex that's not that engaging to me. I'm like, okay, I mean, could you just give me, like, you, for every round, can I just watch a video of a developer doing it so that I can get a taste of what you want from me instead of me having to walk everywhere first to figure it out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, just, playing it again, the, the second time, like, the village, the first one, the first time I played it, I didn't do that good because I was still, like, figuring it out. But, man, the second time I played through that shit, ooh, the score was just insanely different. Yeah. Um, but I, I just don't feel like going back and trying to get better at it. Doesn't feel that rewarding to oh, do. Oh, well, see, um, if the lightsaber were good, I might have said like, yeah, no, it's a fun, it's a really fun and rewarding sort of thing to to get through them and then get that. But that was so shit that it kind of soured the whole thing for me. You guys have any uh, interest in revisiting it when the multiplayer comes out? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think reverse looks pretty stupid. To be honest, <laughs> I wanted I wanted to be excited about it. I I wasn't a fan of Resistance either. Um, it was too, it was like too arcadey. I don't know. I, I I tried Resistance. Uh, that was the the RE three remake uh, mode, right? That it had a great idea. I just it was very unbalanced. I felt it well, didn't really have that uh, asymmetric multiplayer thing going on. Or you know, I, I love like four v one games, but that one was just felt extremely punishing, but maybe I just wasn't good enough for it. I just, it, it good idea, just weird execution. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm watching you fight these enemies and I was almost about to say, is this the replacement of the, um, 
Garadors from Resident Evil 4, but then I was like, no, the Garadors are far more interesting. These are just tanky enemies that walk towards you and kill you with brief moments of quasi yeah, again, vulnerability because you can't hit their weak spot. I yeah. wouldn't even compliment the Heisenberg sequence as much as I normally would. It's because in reference to the rest of the game, it's actually, like, different. Like, in a normal world, we would be talking about these particular enemies and how you dispatch them and how interesting are they and whatever, but... I'm just like willing to settle on, oh god, at least you can do something with them instead of just shoot the head. Mm -hmm. so this is more like the regenerators. Yeah, sort of. It's kind of. Yeah, because the regenerators will just walk towards you and you they only have weak spots. Um uh and these guys I, I just don't really I like the enemies in RE4 are more interesting. Yeah, the guard so the guarders were blind, and they would hear you, so if you ran or shot, they would come towards you. They had two different sort of styles of attacks, and one of them was a lunge, and the lunge wind-up was different than, and it, different, and it sounded different than their other attack, and you knew you could get them stuck in walls, so you could prepare for that. And if they went at you and just started swinging wildly, you knew that for brief moments, their, the plagus on their back, which was their weak spot, would show itself. So you, you could... It's so much more interesting. And even the armaduras... You just you shot the helmet off, the Plagus in the suit of armor, you shot the helmet off, and then the Plagus would come out yeah. of the helmet, and then you'd kill the Plagus, like it was a two-stage thing. Um, the Ganados were far more varied and interesting than the enemies in this are. Um, the the Vistadors, you know, were invisible, they had their own attacks, and it was very interesting. I was When I went through on my professional run, I was wondering, can you kill an Avistador with just your knife? And once you kind of learn the their attacks and the stuff and the things you can get away with, like yeah, you could you could kill an Avistador with just your knife if you just sort of kind of recognize what they can do and know what you can and can't get away with. And that was kind of fun to figure out, you know, some trial and error stuff there. But there's just some interesting enemies. Hmm. So that Rags, what I do is talk about RE4 every chance you get. It's annoying. Well, you'll be all right. I mean, you'll be all right. Yeah, you'll, you'll be, be fine. okay. I mean, so. I've seen that a lot in the chat, right? And like RE8 is RE4 plus RE7. So when you bring up RE4 and RE7, that that's pretty fucking valid. Which we yeah, have many times. This game is times. definitely trying to be. It's trying to be the spiritual success for, successor. Certainly not the gameplay successor, but to but to Resident Evil 4. Um, While being a sequel to RE7, this... yeah. And, like, and every not, every other person in chat's like, oh blah blah blah. You talk about RE4 so much. Well, yeah, that's because this is this is yeah. related to that. What also, what is? You wouldn't have this game <laughs> if Resident Evil Four existed. This game this game wouldn't exist. And mm -hmm. besides, if if they're all valid examples, who cares? Yeah, it's such a stupid. It's just every other person. God, your chat sucks tonight. So one of the one of the one of the things that. <laughs> One of the things that I don't like about some of the people we cover is that they'll just make statements and they won't have any reference for if it's good or bad. Or so the 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 um, who's the Mark guy? Game Developers Toolkit, Mark Brown. He doesn't give, he doesn't explain why things are good or bad, right? Which can be tough. You want to have references for what's good and you want to have references for what's bad to kind of explain to people why things are the way they are. And does Ari have a good way to do verbs. That. I'm Sorry. sure it is very versatile verbs. Um, cry, um, moan, uh, <laughs> disappoint. That's a verb. Cur curl up, trying to cry, cry a lot. Uh, cry. I, I kind of feel like um, Resident Evil 4 is uh, the Terminator 2 of the series, where it was so successful and everybody loved it. And it's been on literally like 14 consoles or something like that, platforms. Uh, that every single uh, entry after it tries to be it, but kind of misunderstands what made it so great. Yeah, uh, Resident uh, Evil 5 was the closest that they got to try and make another, but they didn't do a good job in a lot of ways. They made some improvements. They made some legit improvements, but a lot of it was not improvements. Um, gonna they just kind of copied a lot of stuff from 4, but they kind of it kind of gets undermined by the fact that it it kind of downplays the horror, adds like guys who shoot, you know, yeah, uh, there's, there's, definitely, there's, yeah, definitely made it more like that. It was like if you take RE4 and like, you know, three parts RE4 and one part Gears of War or something like that. It just kind of dumbed it down a little bit, made it more like an action game. Yeah. Uh, RE4 is the high point of the series. RE4 is where is the pinnacle of the series. And it's everything else is worse in different stages than RE4. 
and I don't have any particular emotional connection to the series, just to, I suppose, just the one game. But I want the series to be really good, and I want more games like Resident Evil 4. And but if the further we move away from it and try to cheaply make these knockoffs of it, and for then those out just, there the more we're never going to get it again. think, you know, what, Rags is saying that about Resident Evil 5, that it's not as good? We've got a whole playthrough. Go check it out. Myself and Rags play all of yeah. Resident Evil 5. I don't right think a lot Japan. of people will be surprised no, by I that. <laughs> but I think people will be surprised when I say that there are legit things that Resident Evil 5 does way better than 4 and improves upon. And there's discussions to be had about those mechanics. But that's clearly for another time because mm. my voice, my, the strength of my voice is waning. Well, I was, uh, yeah, I was going to say, becoming weary. is there anything anyone would like to say before we begin to wind this monster down? I never want to look at this game again. <laughs> yeah, I already uninstalled I'm, it. I'm I uninstalled done. it before yeah. I came on here. I, I intended to never play this game again. And I understand done, why people yeah. enjoyed it, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I had I honestly didn't hate it. I, I enjoyed my time with it. I, I probably wouldn't have gotten it this early or played through it all had it not been for getting ready for this podcast, um, <gasps> which, uh, you I mean, know, I appreciate being... I had fun, too. I think... Yeah. It's the kind of game where if I saw it on the street, I I would almost smile at it. Be like, yeah. I you are. I beat it in like three sit downs. Um, I was never miserable when playing this game, but I was constantly very disappointed. Um, yeah, I think. But I just, I, I just feel like it could have been I, so much more. That's all. Yeah, it's, I think disappointment a, is the way to describe it, this game. There's not one thing that makes it just completely miserable to play. It's just like a death by a thousand cuts for me. Like just yeah. like if you're yeah. critical about it, like this this story part doesn't work. This this thing's kind of funky. The AI does, doesn't work here. You know, it's it's not completely game breaking. But when you have like a hundred of these problems, it just kind of makes you really kind of oh, when you really look at the game under critical eye, you just kind of realize how much how much is wrong with it. Just sometimes yeah. with pretty basic stuff. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot to discuss. There's stuff we haven't gotten into. I'm sure there are things that I can reference with clips. There's and it, it, then they might pop up in videos. Maybe I don't know. They might pop up in Discord. So someone but... labeled all the other Resident Evil games and said you could have compared it to any of these. Yeah, Rise could also compare it to every game that ever existed. This doesn't change so, anything. <laughs> he chose Resident Evil I Four. Compare it, I compare it to Four for two reasons. One is I just said it's this game is trying to evoke for spirit yeah but i've only i'm very familiar with resident evil 4 i love that game it's great i'm i i feel like i'm qualified to talk about it i haven't played one or two or three or six or i've i've, I've i don't care about the re2 remake i don't care Last i played seven and beat it but i didn't care for that much either um so four is like the obvious point of reference that I'll be using, because um, I know it both gameplay wise and story wise and thematically. So I've, I've heard that RE one remake choice. is fantastic. If you like the yes. old school tank tank games, I've heard it's like the truest, the truest of the remakes in terms of just getting everything right, improving where things can be improved, but staying true to the original formula. I haven't I gotten around I'd to play like it. Them. I don't think they're, I don't, they're just not for me. Um, I would like to say something about Resident Evil broadly. Do it. Um, I've, I've been a fan of the series for a long time. And um, the, I think Resident Evil, it's, it's so problematic Confused? that uh, it's kind of, it's part of its identity is how inconsistent it is. Um, and there's a bizarreness that um is people like me i think become attached to the series for that reason because it's kind of unpredictable and it's inconsistency it's like what are they going to come up with next like watching resident evil is kind of like watching a drunk pilot at an air show you keep thinking he's gonna crash and burn it's like okay he's <laughs> definitely dead and then he pulls up he's like oh my god he's still alive like they really dug themselves out of a grave i think with resident evil 7 it's just like where did that come from because resident evil mm. 6 was such a fucking train wreck very critically panned i never yeah. played it but i heard that it, yeah, was, it was very it made them the most money though it's crazy yeah. <laughs> it's weird yeah the most successful oh, Resident Evil, at least maybe this one will overtake it. I don't know. Maybe. Um, 
when when people say that they're a fan of Resident Evil, I have to like, I have to ask, <laughs> what like what does that even sort of mean at this point? Is well, it just you happen to like a lot of the games in it, or is it like what kind of is it that would that would make you say I'm a fan of the Resident Evil series? So, and well, you really have. On the on the note of the whole like the craziness of Resident Evil, you appreciate like the 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 craziness happening the, and the inconsistencies though. I would want to just posit like say for example we were criticizing a story point and someone said like oh I really love that it's just absolute craziness like the Heisenberg stuff or whatever else. I would just be sitting there like I feel like you'd still love it and even more so potentially if we were to just fix all this stuff up. Like I I appreciate right. the uh the, like the idea was like no I love the goofiness. It's like yeah but if it were. Because Resident Evil Seven surprised everybody with like, oh god, are we going? Are we doing serious? Are we are we being serious? Are we now, doing Resident yeah, Evil? a small right. scale, more serious, more and, intimate? Yeah, and it really felt that way. Of... And then you had Jack evolve into the giant monster and say goofy lines. I remember, I think it was uh, Movie Bob actually, who was like, oh, it was so nice to see like the cr the goofiness of Resident Evil coming back. And I remember being like, it felt so fucking out of place. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, it really does. Resident Evil is just such a what a tonal roller coaster the series seems to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's also it's like a worse. Like as somebody pointed out, <clears throat> it's really not one franchise anymore. There's like basically, I can kind of identify four eras of Resident Evil. There's the original three, which play very similarly. Were all released for the PS One. Um, you could probably uh, put the Dreamcast game in there as well. I'm I haven't played it, but I'm guessing it plays similarly to uh code veronica and 123 and then there's the uh the four four five six which are the behind the shoulder more movement uh no longer a fixed camera you know more action oriented but you know solid entries except for six but uh you know uh, honestly leon's campaign and six kind of feels pretty solid the rest of them are kind of kind of really goofy and then you've got the remakes you've got the uh, the re2 and re3 remake which is kind of like you take the, the original games and then you insert re4 into them basically that was the idea that you take the the perspective and controls of re4 minus the uh the tankiness i suppose and then uh insert that into them and then you've got the reboots uh you know series the seven and the, and the eight which is the first person you know borrowing from more modern horror games amnesia things like that uh, you know pt but uh, maintaining kind of like a glaze of, of Resident Evil. And, and, you know, each one of those you could love or hate. It's just, it it's, it's, doesn't really mean anything that you love RE because they're all, they're all so different. Like, it's a lot more successful series. There's been a lot more entries. But honestly, the uh, much more consistent series, uh, even though there's been some titles that people didn't like, a much more consistent series in terms of tone was uh, Silent Hill games, where they, they, uh, try to maintain a pretty serious and somber tone throughout the game. They don't go into crazy, you know, uh, uh, gigantic monsters that fill the sky or, you know, uh, superhumans who throw sunglasses at you and do, you know, super <laughs> slow motion fights and things like that. It, it, it's more of a psychological horror and it kind of keeps the tone a little bit better, at least the entries that I've played. But, uh, I mean, I think that the... The Resident Evil games kind of have that sort of uh, Metal Gear Solid like charm, where you have this super serious it. espionage uh, combined with super goofy Japanese weirdness. You Turns know, on a it, dime, yeah, yeah. It's 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 very it's a very tonally inconsistent, but it has the the kind of goofy fun surprises that people like, I guess. But it, it's definitely yeah. never never been very consistent in, in that. Not nearly. As yeah, much that's as that's why been. it's because. Because someone in chat asked, Jesus Christ, Rags, he likes the games. So like, but that's the thing. If if the games were like, if you said I like the Mass Effect games, like they're all pretty similar in their tone and what you do in them and what happens. So I could pretty reasonably conclude as to what they like about them. But the incredible inconsistency of the RE series from game to game, that's why when someone says that, I'm just like, what what do you mean by that? Because I'm well, curious. Yeah. It's not I, hard I, to I grasp. I can't come to a real conclusion as to what you what you mean by that when you say that. If someone said I love it, Star Wars movies, you'd be like, hmm. 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 Yeah, which like, ones? What, what yeah, do, you do you mean? What does that mean like, exactly? Yeah, do you just like space stuff? Or do you like the originals and the prequels? Or you just, what? Well, yeah, just, what, what exactly do you mean? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mean it to be, like, I don't want to interrogate people. But it's just I'm because a, a, a lot of times this might be really crazy for a lot of people to believe. 
but I people ask questions because they actually want to understand the other person's thoughts better. So that could happen every once in a while. I, I really Resident Evil I think is one of the most fascinating franchises in gaming history. I I'll think I agree with that. Yeah, because uh, and I don't mean just for good reasons, like for for just as many bad reasons as there are good reasons. Um, but it's you. It if you ask anybody what what a Resident Evil game is, like what makes a Resident Evil game, I think a lot of people will give you a different answer. Yeah. Like pe yeah. people yeah. attribute different things as to what the key ingredients are. Some some people get hung up on like the fixed camera angles and stuff or the tank controls, um, the the resource management. Um, to me, it's not really about the the fixed camera stuff. I think that was a technological necessity back in the day with the original three games. I think it's it's about horror, like atmosphere and resource management. And I think if you ask different people what like the key entry point into the series is, uh, I agree with you, Rags, that most people would say four. Um, for me, I would still say Resident Evil 1 on the GameCube is the game that really nailed... It nails what I think that series is, is about most at its core. Um, the graphics, are it still holds up. It's terrific. The, the, um, the decisions about whether or not to, to leave zombies alive or not, we were talking about that earlier... That game takes it a step further by introducing Crimson Head zombies, which are a really fucking cool idea. So if you kill a zombie and their corpse falls down, their corpse will stay there. And after about like maybe 20 minutes or so, or if you enter a new phase of the game, if you come back into that room, the zombie will get back up and it's got like red skin and it's super pissed off and it runs at you. So like... um you can either leave the zombies cool. alive and not let them turn that way, or you can burn them with kerosene and a lighter, which takes which take up inventory space. So the the managing Where? your inven inventory spaces in the Resident Evil One remake on GameCube can really frustrate people, especially people who are used to the gameplay style of say Resident Evil Four. But I I personally just love the way that first remake on the GameCube plays and at the atmosphere is terrific. I can't think of a, it's one of the best examples of like a horror atmosphere in a video game. Where, where are you from? Me? <laughs> or yeah. my Scotland. Okay. Cause you don't sound Scottish, but no. the way you said it, you said inventory instead of inventory. Invent yeah. Is so that I was a... just curious where, where are you from that you say inventory instead of inventory, you know, it, <laughs> it, cause it doesn't seem to met, me, it does. It just sort of kind of stood out. Yeah. You know? So I was curious. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, and I think some people would even like to, for, to bring up the key resident evil game. I'll think a bunch of people would say resident evil two for PlayStation one. I think was uh, another key defining moment. Um, and that, that was the first one I played, but I would still say the, the GameCube remake of the first one is, is superior. Um, Resident Evil as a, a series really isn't... That remake. Yeah. Someone yeah, recommended it's... it to me. I just, I just don't think that... I just gotta be honest, guys. I just don't think that's the game for me. I'm not gonna... If a game doesn't seem like it's for me and that I wouldn't like it, I, I'm not gonna play it and then say that i hated it because of course i did it you know it just didn't for me so don't expect mm -hmm. if i if i stream a resident evil game to the people who've been asking it'll be four i will i always enjoy replaying that over and over and explaining why i do what i do but if i do start streaming which i i will eventually um it will be do it probably a resident evil four stream and i talk about what i love about it that, that'll be fun to do but yeah it'll happen I did it once and, and I enjoyed it. So yeah, be I cool. I love Resident Evil Four as well. That is that's one of my favorite games too. Yeah, it's always, always it, been a favorite of mine. It. I really do have to play it. Everybody loves it. Yeah, you that can play game. it after Soma. Yeah, streaming both. Streaming back to back. No, I'm not streaming Soma. Back to I back. Play on my own, Why? What's 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 the dealio? What's going on there? I 
I think that from what I have heard from you guys and in general about that game, that that feels like a very personal thing that I would like to play on my own. Uh, I support your decision, to... Fringy. That's, yeah, that's just how I feel. Um, lame. Here's a good compromise. It's, it's not you, lame. You can, uh... it's, it's not at all lame because I want to just pay full attention. You can do that, that on a stream. You can, but it's a lot harder. It's not you turn the chat off if you find them distracting. People just want to see your reaction. Uh, but just knowing that people are watching, it changes you. It's like I think it does Heisen, change you. Yeah. It's the Heisenberg principle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Heisenberg principle. <laughs> well, okay, okay. So the two people who have never streamed Soma before are saying no. Metal, you've streamed Soma. I have streamed Soma. Is it a good yes. choice? Yes. 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 It's a very yeah. good choice. Did you guys stream it when you played it for the first time? Yeah. I, not only that, I streamed it all the know, way the in one go. I don't know if you're convincing me. Like, I still feel like, based on what I've been told... It's 7 a.m., I'm not convincing I... anyone of anything. At the <laughs> no, I, I, know. Just, I know. You know, whether you know. stream it or not, I'm just glad that I was able to use Heisenberg's <laughs> uncertainty principle for a joke, and it actually was topical and I thought you were just referencing Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, no, Heisenberg's uh, uncertainty principle. Well, no, yeah, but that's, not only is that a um, character in Resident Evil that we're discussing, but it's also relevant to Fringy wanting to play a game and not streaming it or not. It's like a joke on multiple levels. It's yeah. fucking amazing. So you're saying we should li leave it to a chat vote. I agree. <laughs> uh, Maybe. It doesn't matter because I'm I going to disregard whatever that vote is. Yeah, wow. I'm just going to do whatever I feel like. Muller at least suggest yep. offline recording. I don't think he's going to do that either. I, yeah, I was, was going to suggest you could, you could do offline recording and then uh, premiere it. That way people could see it live. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, that's an option, but again, if I'm recording it, I feel like that's gonna, like, most, when I play games, I don't fucking talk most of the time, like, I just sit there well, here, silently. Fringy, let, how, I think there is a, a good compromise, so, do you have Shadow Play? Uh, I, well, I should, I have an NVIDIA card. Okay, so, if you use Shadow Play, just set the, set the timer for, like, 20 minutes or, like, a long time, and when you get to some of the parts that you'll know are interesting, just whenever you're done with what you do, just Alt F10 and it saves the last 20 minutes I, or whatever. I'm, I'm so lost. Like the whole fucking point is you think out loud. I don't know why that would be so... It's like you're suggesting... So, so let me... I'll, I'll tell you. Those are all the points that you me. would want to be private, would you not? But now you're suggesting those are the ones that go public. No, no, no. No, so the idea yeah. of... I think that your behavior will change when you know that a lot of people are watching you. So yep. this will allow this will allow Fringy to play when no one's watching at the time, and he still has his privacy, and he could change his mind if he wants to tell people or not. But at the end of that decision that he made totally alone, he can choose to retroactively I'm save confused. all of that. How is that better or worse though? Like if you because everyone gets everyone potentially gets what they want. I, I also I'm not even sure I agree with that. When you're making principled decisions, it, I'm gonna. It's it, like if someone's watching you make the decision, does that not mean you have less integrity? Uh, in a case like this, I'm not sure. I I know I would probably play a game. I I in fact I'm certain that I play games differently if I have a crowd watching me. Absolutely. Um, and games are I, games yeah. are like me time, and I could go at my pace, and I could do everything, and I don't feel the pressure to satisfy a crowd and things of that nature. And that's how I am. That's just. Um, oh well, I mean, if you can't stream any other way, then I guess yeah, you can't so, do it. So the shadow play well, thing means that at the he he was able to have his way, and if he decides that, well, I made all that and did all that. But also, I can retroactively save all that stuff that I did while alone, and it was just me. Um, I can do that if uh, I ever want to show people or not. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's, all that's I'm appealing important. to is that it, you get one chance, right? You're you're counter appealing with that one chance to do it the first time, and I actually do think that streaming it will often improve it like significantly. But again, I guess that's just down to we have individuals. Well, I'm gonna tell you that is definitely down to individual perspective because, like, I agree with Rags. There's a lot of time where it's like games and me alone time, like it's me time. It depends on what yeah. game I'm playing. You're welcome to have me time like, whenever oh, you want. Happily... I I can, but it's it is my what what I'm getting at is that like for for instance with Resident Evil Four, it's like yeah, that seems like something that would be fun to play on stream for people to see, uh, for the first time around. But like Soma sounds like it's a really personal sort of like actually really, um, especially when it 
I think it has to do with story as well, like what I'm getting at it. I stream Crash 4 for a bit because it's like, well, it's not, story's not that important in that. But like, if it's story focused, I don't know. I feel like I want to fully concentrate. I, I genuinely feel like an alien hard. right now. I'm like, yeah, you consume the story that you comment on it as you, as you progress. I don't understand. It's, it's, it's definitely I... different to play a game on your own because on your own, you, you're, you're the audience. You're the one uh, receiving the entertainment. You're the one, uh, uh, getting the experience but when you're streaming you can't help but try to perform and not be like you know yeah a dead dead i, mic I don't know why you silent. i don't know why you feel like an alien this is i would say that this is a very uncontroversial perspective that like most yeah, people I'm... would probably well no the comment with. of me being an alien is me reacting to the fact that i'm apparently the odd one out that seems strange yeah no i know i'm just saying it's like I, I feel like you'll be an alien in every situation where we're talking about this topic i feel like a lot of people would, would express oh yeah, I don't, I don't like, care that that's they're something they would choose. I'm trying to argue that it, it's not as rested in logic. Like, the idea that, like, I have to experience this story on my own, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, you could still react to the story, and there's loads of value in it. I don't, I don't know why it's such a definitive choice, it's strange to me. I'm not really saying it's a definitive choice, I'm just saying that on sub-subconscious level, I think, I think anybody can appreciate that, like, if you're streaming or you're trying to perform, that's gonna influence the way that you approach that. Yeah, it could be like, for the better, who I would knows? Have it could be for the better, but I feel like... Yeah, that's, that's, so that's the core. Well, I, don't, I don't get why one is chosen over the other so easily when it's just, like, two different experiences. Um, I... I think that when it comes to the idea of, like, streaming something, usually I think the, the experience that you get out of streaming is, like, fun. I don't know if I'm playing Soma for fun, you know what I mean? This, I this genuinely like, might just be that, you, like, you and Rags have never streamed in that format or something? Because, like, there is no game that I've, can't be streamed, streamed as games. far as I can tell. In that yeah, format. I've, I've streamed games games before, be but I... I'd rather not stream games, I think, for the most part. I'd rather just... They're me, and uh, this is my... This is my thing, and I'm enjoying it in my way without anybody watching me or without any performance aspect of it, where I just get to uh, go I would at say it that myself. I would say some games are way more fun to, to stream than to play on your own. Yeah, like, yeah, if, sure. If, if, I, if I a, well, like, village, I would say Resident Evil 8 is one of those Resident games. Evil. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> if someone's, like, but if someone said I would say, yeah. that story. That's the thing, I didn't give a shit about the story. Oh, well, if I, I love it. reacting to the story, and if it were a good story, I'd still feel the same way. Sure, I guess my problem is I don't trust myself enough to not lose focus uh, on, huh. on a story that I really want to take seriously. Like, if I was playing Spec Ops The Line or, like, some other game like that, I don't know if I'd want to stream that, because I really want to, like, pay oh, I did. as much attention <laughs> as possible. My first time yeah, no, it's okay, okay, sure. It. That's, yeah, that's, that's fine. I wouldn't want to stream that game. I'd want to play that one on my well, own too. Because, like, uh, I already know, because I would be like, oh, it's going to be so interesting to spill out my initial reaction and thoughts to the chat about the content at hand, you know, instead of, like, because I'm, like, excited at the prospect of if Amazon ever get it sorted out, because I think they tooled with it, right? But, like, being able to watch stuff live with an audience, like, I, I find that interesting too. Like, if we're watching that, The Boys Season 3, Episode 1, I could find that very entertaining that a lot of us are laughing at how stupid things are, and then the, the chat are, well, you know, along for the ride. I guess, yeah, I could see doing that for something that I think is really stupid, but like... Oh, I, 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 so like, Ava Avengers Ryan Endgame. Like, if Avengers Endgame was yeah. good, that would be another thing I'd be totally on board with, like, enjoying with everybody and chat, you know? And as somebody has said, I don't trust any stream chat not to ruin it for free. It's like, yeah, there's that. Oh, well, yeah. That's the other Spoilers. thing, like... So, like, in Soma, when, when certain things happen, I, I wouldn't be reading chat. I'm in the game. This is what I mean. I wonder if, like, this is a format that you've just not really experimented with or something. I get the... Imp I guess it, it might just be, like, a difference in terms of preferences because, um, like, I legitimately, like, really enjoy being on my own. Like, Me too. a decent yeah. amount of the time. Like, I just like being on my own. And I think that extends to the experience of playing video games as well. Is like, I don't really give a shit about co-op most of the time. Like, I'm really in it just for me and for my experience. And I find that generally, I have a lot more fun when it's just, like, me on my own. And then it depends. Like, with Resident Evil Village, I probably would have had less fun if I didn't stream that one. I think it just depends on what kind of game it is. Yeah. Um, it, it's... I, I am I am unmoved on this one because it's just this I I feel like I uh 
I do feel like it would hurt my experience if I was playing Soma on stream. Whereas Resident Evil Four, I could see that being really fun to play on stream. Well, it's, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Have you ever, like? I just don't know if there's been a scenario. Uh, Metal's like half dead potentially, but any game I've ever streamed <laughs> um, that I thought, yeah. oh, it would have been better had I not streamed this game. I don't think I've ever had that experience. No, I, me I, either. I could. Yeah, definitely it, see it, it. It would seem to me, Molly, that you've you've streamed enough that you can be streaming and like disassociate yourself from the fact that yeah. you are live, yeah. and you can just focus yeah. on the game get, as like, if you maybe, were just yeah. playing it on your own. I just own. want people to kind of fuck off while I'm playing video games. <laughs> is, is kind of yeah. what I say. Yeah, honestly, I think that way because I, I started in like 2014 ish, so and I just, I was happy to stream literally every every form of game, and I've had mm -hmm. so much fun with it, and so many like highlights have been created that I've always just been like, oh. I, well, if you remember the Soma videos I've made, for anybody who has seen them, my most, like, the f most fun I had making those was collecting the Christopher Odd and Markiplier reactions and listening to their rationales for the choices they made and watching them have to deal with what you could call emotional turmoil live. It's, like, really fascinating to watch people try and deal with it. Um, and, they, you know, they both took it very seriously, so it was, like, super interesting to watch. And, of course, I'm going to be super interested in seeing my friends do it, because, like... I, I, I mean, would love to know the rationale. If, right you, now, if you're course. that interested, because somebody said recording it, the thing is, is like, you guys better be prepared for like 90, 95% <laughs> silence, because that's yeah, what it would that's, be. That, I would honestly, sometimes that's what I hope for. This, a lot of this game is um, observation, but there are those moments, and you'll know them when you get to them, where, you know, you're like, okay, now it's time to, let's think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, thing. if it's it were like me you... wanting to disappoint people, by the way, like it's 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 not that at all. It's it's specifically what I feel would be better or worse for my personal experience with that game. It's not about an inability to perform. I could, I just, <laughs> I don't want to when I'm doing that. Yeah, I guess like, the only like, thing I wanted to push back on was just like, oh, well, I wouldn't be so sure it would be the the lesser choice for you personally. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't be so quick to assume that would be the uh, case. Um, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I think but the problem is I'm pretty sure I know myself well enough to know, like, what my preference is a lot of the time when it comes to, like, just recreation in general. Like, a lot of the time, I have a preference for, like, silence on my own yeah. to really focus on it. Um, though, obviously, there is a utility to streaming certain games. I just think that, uh, when it comes to my well, I mean, preference... You know, I think of talked about this before but like the origin of efap movies was literally just that um i watched the mummy with wolf we were like oh that was good watch the mummy returns we laughed at a lot of it we're like that was really bad and then we're like rags you around we're watching the third mummy film and he was like yeah and oh there was a God, part in that, that film amazing. we still have to wait a little longer because we're not quite there but there's a part in that film that happens that the three of us absolutely lost our shit over like laughing and i and i was just like fuck if only i had recorded this it, it, it would like it would have been perfect to construct a video out of and then I was like, you know what? I'd watched uh, Death Wish Upon, sorry, with Metal like a few months prior, and I was like, I can show Rags and Wolf that, and I can record it, and then that's what you know made that. And then it ended up being like just loads of fun. Um, my point being that sometimes you know it's just like I wanted to watch a film with two of my friends in silence or peace or whatever, but I was like, oh man, this actually would have been really great if other people could see it. There's um, there, yeah, there is that, but but. I, maybe I am like, because it seems like you're potentially to the extreme on one end. I may well be extreme to the other end. You're talking to somebody who like gleefully goes to the cinema on his own to watch movies. Like that's probably fair, of the time. actually. I don't. I've I, only done that I once really, in my life. I will almost I, always I do the same all thing. the time, man. And I remember I, I had that conversation once alone. with him. I just remember one time when I went to the cinema, it's like, you, with anybody else, I said no, and it's like, oh, that's sad. It's like, are you a fucking idiot? Like, why the <laughs> fuck would you say that to what? me? <laughs> like, you're lucky. It's pretty sad. I don't know it is pretty sad, yeah. You clearly have... Well, <laughs> I don't think it's sad at all. It's just <laughs> fucking hilarious. You just don't have any friends. Why do you lock again? everyone what out of like, your life? <laughs> what if it was somebody who had a lot less self-esteem and <laughs> you said that why to them? Why are you shutting like, people out of your life? No man is an island, I'm, Fringy. No yeah. man is an island. I don't know if that's true. <clears throat> strongest man is strongest alone, Rags. Yeah, and it. And I, it look, oh I'm God. not. I'm uh. not fucking Aquaman, all right? I don't. <laughs> I don't say stupid yeah, shit. Yeah, you're like not that. retarded. Yeah. You should get the Aquaman. Aqua Snyder. I, uh, as someone who's played and finished Soma, I, if I could go back in time and have it streamed instead, I wouldn't. I would still prefer to have it me 
the game, no one else focusing. Just yeah, I mean, us, just just it. equally. Um, when the credits so. hit, I remember just looking at chat and then having this big old conversation, and I was like infinitely thankful that I'd chosen to stream it. Um, I did see someone say, to be frank, it's kind of sad that we're going to get to, we're going to wrap up this stream with a bit of philosophy, right? So, it, it, here we go. We start I off, how, about, how about we start off the this. next stream with a little philosophy? Well, no, like, no, 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 no. I, I, I feel like it's furious. important to address this because, because right. it's like, I think, like, I feel like I'm past the point where it would upset me for somebody to be like, you did an activity on your own. That's sad. It's like, why do you believe that? Do you believe that? for any actual reason at all or do you believe that because people tell you that that's bad or sad or pathetic or like a loser there is real value to being able to do shit on your own and to be okay on your own like yeah. holy fuck like you gotta find some value being on your own um the activities that you do you do it for whatever reason you know you prefer ultimately so like I don't know why anybody would feel compelled not to do something because they're doing it on their own. I think that's bizarre. I think you need to get over that if that's like a really big hang up. It's not that there's anything wrong. I mean, obviously there's not anything wrong with doing things with other people if that's your preference, but nobody would ever say that that's like a bad thing. It's more just, I don't know, get, get past that hump. It's okay to do things on your own. It's okay to enjoy solitude. Yeah. All right then. Be, yeah, I agree. Got to be happy with yeah. yourself before you get happy with somebody I, else. So I agree. Mm -hmm. Plenty of activities yeah. I would prefer to do alone than with with groups. Yeah. I saw I somebody in the in the chat say philosophringy, and I thought that was a fun word. <laughs> 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 that should be the name of a segment, philosophringy. Yeah, like, that's so a I've good been word. Reading um, Socrates lately is my next take. <laughs> That I just pillaged from him. Well, I love how it was supposed to end like an hour ago. It's like suddenly a whole yeah. bunch of new topics. Dude, I am so exhausted. Like, I am fuck. very, I am so, I'm actually quite tired. And not that it's a huge surprise. Uh, Super Chats legs. will be saved for the next time. And literally, I think what we'll, we'll do is the next EFAP episode is going to be Super Chats. So we got too many to catch up on now. So, uh, as well as Super Chat catch ups between, more than likely. But I think we managed to cover Resident Evil 8 quite effectively. You know, gave longer it. than the amount of time that a game like a like a playthrough goes. You know. Yeah. Oh God, you're right. Oh my God, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. I think my first playthrough was either it was like it was like ten hours. So yeah, we gone over it. Damn. Um, to be continued. No, no, no. <laughs> oh <laughs> fuck! Please no. <laughs> uh, this will be up as soon as it's allowed to be through processing on Moolah. We got. Um, an EFAP Extended Universe video coming out. That'll probably be tomorrow. Yeah. Ringy might remember what it's about. Metal, Will, and Rags will. Wait, uh, which one, sorry? Well, I mean, I guess I could reveal the title. It's called, uh, Rags' is Snow versus Fringy's Goo. Oh! <laughs> so, yeah. have fun with that. I the goo that. is the new element of the Fringy lore, alright? We got... Oh. Batwoman is on the way, Mortal Kombat is on the way, the Snyder Cut, Eva Moves is on the way, as well as, uh, uh, what else is there? Other things. <laughs> There's always other things, they're on the way. Um, Udo, other things. I'm, things are coming, main channel things, and that's as specific as I would like to be, uh, I guess, if, if, if you want to go from left to right about what everyone's doing, where their channels are, and what you're up to, I, I'm more than a bit for you. You want to go first? Uh, end game video, getting back into the rhythm of hashing out that script. Not today, but definitely over the, and then the friggy comics, still working on that. But that's, that's the main stuff right now. Excellent. Uh, Indigo oh, Gaming, yeah. what are you doing? Where are you? What's happening? Uh, I'm in the middle of editing my third episode of a cyberpunk documentary not the game but the uh genre so this is going to be mm. covering uh more of the 90s like you know johnny mnemonic the matrix uh comic books novels all sorts of stuff it's going to be about two hours mm. long um it's really really big lots of lo lots of lots of stuff to cover but it's voiced it's uh, scripted just editing um probably going to be another couple of months because these things take a long time to make but uh yeah excited about that probably Hopefully by summer. 
that's my that's my estimation at this point excellent well um and of course thank you very much for for coming on and lasting 11 hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i appreciate it I, I think we joked about it it's like oh it's this won't be pretty quick it won't be like a you know half a day stream like your other ones yeah <laughs> never, well, never you trust could reason never you could trust reasonably that. play and beat this game in the time that it take in like during this efap I, th I think yeah. Rags missed the time where all of us said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah, I have, That's I'm... what happens when Oof. you get tired. Yeah, it's I'm totally tired. understandable. Yeah. Very much so. I did finish yeah. one playthrough where we were playing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me on. I, I think I, I appropriately got the full uh, EFAP uh, helping. Oh, yeah. No longer an EFAP vir virgin. I've done the, done the <laughs> 11 hours. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming in. And uh, it was really good talking with you. Um, Obviously, I, I I would spend more on each each person as we're going through here, but I think everyone is actually dying. So, John, yeah. how you doing, buddy? What what's up with you? Yeah. What you making? Uh, no problem. I'll be quick. John Graham on YouTube. I do a show called Arby and the Chief, and uh, I'm working on season eight of my show. I've written the last two episodes. I'm in the thick of shooting Ooh. those. So, um, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, I did mine already, so it's all good. Metal, what are you up to? Uh... Streaming, lo so lots of know. lots of lots of streaming. Uh, I've been doing those last couple of weeks, uh, keeping the, the the channel going. Uh, was busy with the Resident Evil stuff now. Now I can finally throw that away because uh, I'm sick of it. <laughs> 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 yeah, because five playthroughs. I think that was a bit much. I think I overdid it, but I had fun. Uh, actually, not quite sure what I'm gonna play next. I probably just play some Binding of Isaac on uh, on my twitch and Heimers. and yeah now that i'm uh, done with the resident Evil, so i'll probably go back to the john roig 2 video and chop away did, on did that you ever bad play, boy did you ever play hellblade uh i have not played that yet no but i got it in a humble bundle a long time ago if after playing resident evil 8 it might be because <laughs> i love hellblade i think it's great mm -hmm. um and I think it succeeds in a lot of areas that RE8 fails. It's really? It's very, very cinematic. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's really cinematic. And uh, you, you might want to give that a, a look if uh, if you're kind of in that mindset. From my like, brief understanding of the game, I honestly thought you were like setting up a joke or something. I had no idea that Resident Evil 8 would connect to it even in any way. But Oh, I mean, I mean well, here's the thing. I'm, I'm like, I think in a... Re Hellblade is like a version of Resident Evil 8. But it's a lot better. It's trying. If you think about this, it has different segments. It ha It tries to go for some of the same vibes, like suspense and drama. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very graphically beautiful. The gameplay is it's fine, um, but it. I, I think there's some comparisons to be made between the two. But I think Hellblade succeeds at kind of creating something that's of value. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I might give that a look. See. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically you can basically find me on the on the Twitch. I'm pretty sure, I'm I'm very confident the link is the, the, the down below. Uh, <laughs> if you prefer the YouTube archives and you don't like to watch the Twitch or it doesn't work, as I found out, a lot of people have problems with watching Twitch. Uh, just look for Battle Commander on on the YouTube's. I have my archive channel there. All the vods go up there in mostly the next day immediately. Um, Miss, Miss, Mr. M, what's up with you? What's, what's, what's happening? Uh, you can find me on YouTube or Twitch on YouTube. I do, um, semi-frequent video essays on video games. For example, a, uh, a look at Thief 4, the 2014 versions, you know, whether or not that was a, a really terrible game or just a really terrible <laughs> Thief game. Um, a breakdown of everything wrong with Valorant, things like that. And then um, on Twitch, I, I have a uh, a show that's very reminiscent of this one uh, every Sunday. Though much heavier into the tangents. And, <laughs> and that's it. All right. How's, how is How are you feeling about it? How's it going? It's good. You, we're, we're like... I'm at 18 weeks now, so I feel like, you know, I'm keeping it up. Like, it's going going well. Like it's going to start toddling soon, right? Yeah, you know, it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, I have fun. 
I get to talk about video games and, and hang out. And uh, I, I tell you what, it has made EFAPs a lot easier because, like, now I'm doing six to seven hours every week. <laughs> uh, six to seven hours. Right? <laughs> like, well, okay, I'm not quite at that dwell. You you know, if you look at the EFAP no, timeline, they know. were at, like, six or seven hours for quite a while. <laughs> no. I remember. I remember, never. like, the first time that it went for, I, I think it was, like, a Mission Impossible Fallout one. It's like, oh, man, thanks, guys. Seven hours. That's a lot to ask. <laughs> now, look at us fucking Now, every time we're below, literally. if we're below seven, well, I'll just say if we're below you nine, people, like, it's short. <laughs> People say short bad already. <laughs> yeah. What do you yeah. mean you only stream for seven hours, you fucking fraud? Uh, yeah, so, you know, getting yeah. there. Mr. Raggleton, what is up? How do you, how do you, how do you do? Hi, doing great. Pretty tired. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll work on videos when I can. They'll be out when they're out. Um, I, EFAP, I do EFAP is a podcast to do in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Um, it's great. We have a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I should probably um, mention that. Uh, Rags, Fring, and I are on a podcast called EFAP. You can catch us like weekly. Podcast yeah. called EFAP. Yeah. And we have friends who show up, and yeah. they talk to, and we talk about stuff. Um, yes. Uh, Games, this, movies, before we go, TV. This whole this comment. I guess y'all are such losers, man. You're gonna make Mahler less accountable for his actions and way of criticisms in the future. So I've throughout what? this stream, I've been keeping a, I've been keeping a pretty <laughs> decent eye on chat. It, it's on my <laughs> monitor here to the side. I've got it. It fills up half the screen so I could see it roll by and stuff. <laughs> um, so uh, there hasn't re there really hasn't unless I just have magically been missing them and, the, and my luck is horrible there. There's not really much in the way of rebuttals that I noticed. Uh, pretty much all of it was Resident Evil was always bad when we say that this <laughs> was bad um, <laughs> or are just assertions that this game is great. Or that were nitpicking. There, there really wasn't a lot of substantive rebuttals to a lot of the stuff that we said, and I am legitimately interested in maybe seeing some of those every once in a while. And I feel like you should know a little better if you're somewhat familiar with EFAP. Um, if you just say that no, actually it's good. If you say that, we can't do anything with it. No. If you would like to provide an example or point to something and say this disproves your point, then go for it. I'd be curious. Like, if someone says, no, actually, the gameplay in Resident Evil 8 is mechanically rich and very rewarding, I would be very curious to hear what their arguments are for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but just saying, no, 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 actually, the game's super great. Y'all are just that's duh, and you hate that's duh, and blah, blah, blah. It's not really going to well, help much. There was so. some elaboration. He went on to say... Um... Such a sad, fickle mind. You guys are probably okay with Mauler suggesting horrible things in life because that's all you are, followers. Well, he convinced me to come to a fucking 17-hour live stream, so... I'm, I'm, also, I'm, also, I'm also German. Yeah, I'm friends with that guy. Like, I, no wonder they hate me. Yeah, sorry about that. My bad. I just, uh, yeah, so that's... Can I say that I, I hate the inventory? Um, so, for Resident Evil Village... The Resident Evil 4's um, so cache was it was it was colorful. Everything had distinct shapes. The ammo was different colors. The herbs were different colors. The grenades were different colors. It was a lot more interesting visually. And the new one is just oh, it's modern, so it's gray, and it was kind of shitty. So. I agree. That was a step um, down. I, yeah. That was. Oh it. man! Again, no one, uh, no one really cares about your opinion, or even if you like the game or not. I'm glad Friggy or someone called him out in his rants on the RE2 remake. I, I don't. Why, why do you believe that it's I uncommon feel... for us to disagree and actually yeah, so talk about it? That's a lot of people whole point care about. Of the show. Yeah. So a lot of people care about my opinion. Uh, more people care about my opinion than they care about your opinion. Oh. Uh, <laughs> So, oh sorry. God. Um, I sort of right. made a living. I sort of made a living around the uh, idea that people care about what I have to say. Um, us, I think that when it comes to I RE2, I think I say. explained why. Thank you. But I think I explained it's pretty well why I didn't like it, and it wasn't for me. Uh, I'm sorry that you're really, you really don't like that I didn't like a game that you like. That's too bad. Clearly, uh, you, just, uh, you can't handle that, which is fine. But if you want to get back to us later on another chat or live stream or 
uh, Twitter or Discord or <laughs> TikTok or whatever. Good God, you're insufferable, Rex. Sorry, <laughs> oh, right. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but if you want to tell us why we're wrong about Resident Evil Village, I'm I'm curious to hear what you have to say. So you can get back to us whenever, uh, when at your leisure, really. Um, we'll be around a while, and we intend to be around a while. So that'll be fun if that happens. We'll see. And with that. Okay. Splendid times will be had by all. Is there anything else anyone would like to say before we sign off? Oh, my brain's melting. Goodbye. I, I want to say goodbye. Uh, my Monday is oh, going to yeah, be goodbye. shit. I goodbye. Go. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming by and listening to our long ass discussion. About listening to Thanks our so long much. ass. Thank you. This. Thanks for just showing up and sticking through and listening to. Hell me, yeah! This is it's great. been it's, very fun, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, very it's fun. been a roller coaster. Thank you so much really for has. joining us. Thank you all for the donations. We will be reading them. It will happen. Can't wait for the day where I say, "Yeah, we finally read them all." We've just had so many <laughs> long faps in a row. It's been insane. Yeah, the I'm next all... one needs to be a short fap. No, it ha it's going to be long because we're catching up with super chats. <laughs> it's going to be like eleven hours again. I'll have to play Resident Evil seven times. Oh god, no. Not no, again. I'd rather play Hit and Run. It's better, mechanically. <laughs> it's True. More varied, you know? It has Simpsons reference. Yeah. Anyway, without jumping into another topic, you see, because we've covered like 17,000 of them tonight, the topic is now good night, everybody. Thanks for good coming, night. and we'll Goodbye. catch you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Hello, farewell. Hello, next lose. chat. And see you later. Have a good night. Don't, don't forget, it's dark. Oh, no. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> It's bright again, fuck.